along, get along game. Go 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 along, get along game. My mama's cooking. Go along, get along game. My mama's cooking. Go along, get along game. Go along, get along. 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 Go
I'm gonna slow it down for the Texas nigga. <laughs> Say shit, boy, unless you get the fucking script from me, boy, and then you put them Negroes in their place. Now go get them, boy. Get them, get them, get them, get them, Captain Jack. Get them, go get them, Captain Jack. You let them know what they want, boy. Captain Jack. Go get them, boy. Go get them, get them, get them, get them, get them, Jack. Get along, gang, demon. There's a go along, get along game, demon. Oh, God! Catch eyed demon. Catch eyed black face, short little demon. Oh, God! Catch eyed demon. Catch eyed black face, short little demon. Oh, God! Catch eyed demon. Catch eyed black face, short little demon. Oh, God! Catch eyed demon. Catch eyed black face, short little demon. Oh, God! Raccoon eyed bastard. Raccoon eyed black face, short little bastard. Oh, God! Raccoon eyed bastard, raccoon eyed black face, short motherfucker. We see you now. Bastard, 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 Charlemagne the bastard. We see you now. Bastard, perm head, bastard, commercial looking bastard, Charlemagne the bastard. <laughs> Tell me. Hey, Tommy, I'm gonna have some fun with you, bitch. Mama's a mistake. Down by the thing. Daddy dropped off. A little fucking mistake. You tell me. You tell me. I have fun with these bitch ass niggas. No love from his mother. No love from his father. Your bitch ass nigga. Like my daddy. Hey, Tommy, I'm gonna have some fun with you. Mama's little mistake. Down by the name. Daddy dropped off. A little fucking mistake. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. No love 
love from his mother, no blood from his father. He'll be a cherished nigga, be living in Christ. His name is Tell me, tell, tell me, tell, tell me, tell. He wanted my attention. You called down the tunnel, and now you got it. My mama's cooking. My mama's cooking. Yeah. Fuck dancing little hoe you is. Another one. Another one. Fuck dancing. 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 Fuck dancing little hoe you is. dancing. Fuck dancing little hoe you is. dancing. Fuck dancing. Fuck dancing. Fuck dancing. Dancing, you a whole po out here. Buck dancing, po out here. You a whole po out here. Buck dancing, po out here. Five old mouth of the south say. You a whole po out here, boy. You a whole po out here. Buck dancing, po out here. Put them Negro in they place. You let them know it's they for buck dancing. Get mad at me. Get mad at me. Get mad at me. Put them Negro in they place. You let them know it's they for buck dancing. Come good, come get them. Come good, come get them, boy. Get some bones. I'll get them. I'll get them. Yeah. Oh. Buck dancing. 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 Even a stitch, even a stitch, but dancing, even a stitch. You to say something like that. You are stitch, 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 but dancing, even a stitch. Oh my lord, the disrespect. Money. Oh, this is 
answer my question, bitch. Why did you go to those colleges, bro? Why did you go to those colleges, bro? Ugly motherfucker. Oh, here, bitch. You still ain't answered my question, bitch. Who paid you to go to the college? Mr. Ryan Steven Snitch. Kids don't smoke weed, I'm not promoting weed. I ain't playing the judge no more. I'm playing the Lordship. Turn up. Turn up. You go to hell. Turn up. You mean to tell me. 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 Turn up. You witch. Turn up. You go to hell. Turn up. You witch. Turn up. You go to hell. You're a miserable ass elf, 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 elf. You witch, you go to hell. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm gone. Guilty. This is M. Hall. You're a corrupt ass elf, 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 elf. She's a witch. She ain't black. Let's, let's, let's get the fuck out of here. I'm gone. Guilty. Go back. You're a racist ass elf, elf. Yeah, yeah, you a racist. You go to hell. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm gone. Guilty. Lizzo the lizard. You a miserable ass harlot. 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 She's a witch. She's a hippo. Let's, 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 let's get the fuck out of here. I'm gone. Sit down. Guilty. Not guilty. God damn it. Turn up. Turn up. Turn up. Not guilty. Guilty. God damn it, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, you mean to tell me, turn up, you mean to tell, turn up, you mean to tell me, turn up, you mean to tell, turn up, you mean to tell me, turn up, you mean to tell, turn up, you mean to tell me, turn up, you mean to tell, turn up, you witch, turn up, you go to hell, turn up, you witch, turn up, you go to hell, turn up, you mean to tell me, turn up, you mean to tell, turn up, you mean to tell me, turn up, you mean to tell. Becky with the good hair. <laughs> Thank you with the good hair. Thank you with the good hair. 
Becky with the good hair. Matt, Becky, Rico Suave, wave head, perm head, do ultra kick head, motherfucker. I'd have come up fight that chucks. I'd have whipped Will Smith ass. You ain't never enforced no motherfucker like me, nigga. Fat titty boy. Fat titty boy. Fat, fat titty boy. Fat titty boy. You wide, John. Titty boy. Fat titty boy. Fat, fat titty boy. Fat titty boy. Gorilla tank. Titty boy. Fat titty boy. Fat, fat titty boy. Hennessy and Coke drinking motherfucker. Hey, niggas that's listening. Hey, you niggas. You niggas that's listening. We can start the show now. <laughs> hey, all you bitch ass niggas that's listening and ready to start the show and shit, waiting on me. Because your show, your show is my show. And my show is your show. No content having bitch niggas need to wait on me to stop playing my music. My show is your show, and your show is my show. You bitch niggas need to get a 1099. Woo! I done made it to Mexico, y'all. I'm tired in the muffin. I done made it to Mexico. I had to leave order, y'all. Woo! I done ran to Mexico. Oh, Mexico. The police was at the door. And I ran to Mexico. <laughs> hey, the police was at the door. So I ran to Mexico. Mexico. I said, the police was at the door. And I ran to Mexico. 
Man, he cool. <laughs> hey, my feet hurting, man. I got a goddamn boot on. I had to run through the woods, get scraped up, scratched up. Man, oh my goodness. I'm messed up right now, y'all. Man, 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 I'm messed up right now. Hey, shout out to Mo Spears, man. Mo Spears, that guy. Shout out to Mo Spears for the beautiful music. Man, look here, man. They had me running in a boot, man. In a, in a, I got the flu. I'm coughing and shit, running through the woods. Man, I got them. They at the front. I unlocked the back. Jay at the front. I ran out the back. I'm like, who the fuck called the police on me? Yeah, these niggas were waiting on me to go live. I'm, I'm talking my man. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what I'll do. But one of these days, this boot is going to walk all over you. That's how I was feeling walking through the goddamn wood, scratching up the front of my toe and shit. <laughs> I done scratched up the front of my goddamn toe with this boot on hauling ass through the wood trying to get away. <coughs> and I don't even know what the fuck I did. I'm talking my man. I was just getting ready to go to sleep. And I got to hear this cross-eyed ass girl that can't see nothing straight sitting over here talking shit on a panel. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Motherfucker, girl, you can't see nothing straight. What's wrong with you? Yeah, I'm in Mexico. Mexico. I'm in Mexico. Mexico. Somebody called the Popo. Popo. <laughs> they done called the Popo over on Week Weasel Wednesday. They done sent the goddamn Popo to my dodo. Oh, these stupid motherfuckers talk about a, a cough and fart. Yeah, I heard about that dumb ass shit when I moved my chair and they say I farted. Oh, man, you know what? I'll put my ass in front of this microphone and fart right now. Who gives a fuck? You stupid motherfuckers. You, I'm a grown ass man, motherfucker. I fart. But I didn't fart. But if you want me to, motherfucker, I'll cock up and fart right now. Fuck you talking about? I'm grown. And you will get the view for it. You will watch it. You will watch me fart. If I sit here and fart for a half an hour, one of you motherfuckers be in here watching. So shut up. And I'm not talking about the good people over here. I'm talking about the detractors. You niggas are listening to me fart for 10 minutes straight. <laughs> that cross-eyed ass lady sitting over there talking all that goddamn shit as if she know me. She mad as a motherfucker. God dang, lady. Why don't you go get a man? I could tell you ain't got no man. Kevin Samuels just said, you go goddamn get a dog, die alone. And lo and behold, she talking about I'm walking the damn dog. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, these bitch ass nigga ready to play my show. But that cross-eyed demon over there need to put some goddamn glasses on. Can't see nothing straight. That motherfucker look like a turtle without the shell. I'm talking about a goddamn turtle without the shell. An emoji, at least. A cartoon character face motherfucker. Sit up there and talk about a nigga all night long. A bitch ass nigga ain't got no show until I start my show. Cause my show is your show and your show is my show. You's a bitch ass nigga. You can't make no content, you square nigga. Your show is my show and my show is your show. Every time I go live, bitch ass nigga ready to queue up his goddamn computer. Cock-eyed motherfucker look like a turtle without the goddamn shell. Yeah, a turtle without the damn shell. I'm going to make sure y'all hear that while y'all playing me. You look like a turtle without the shell. You hard foot motherfucker, you. <laughs> Since y'all got, got me running to Mexico, Mexico. Y'all got me running to Mexico. And this cock out ass demon get to sit, sit up in her goddamn house talking about me. Don't try to fast forward that shit, nigga. My show is your show, and your show is my show. Bitch ass nigga, no content having ass nigga. My show is your show, and your show is my show. Bitch ass nigga, I'ma send you a 1099 fuck nigga. Your show is my show, and my show is your show. You a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> and who is that goddamn cock-eyed ass cocker spaniel goddamn turtle without the motherfucking shell hey look here check this out that one lady that one lady that's in that chat look like a goddamn turtle i want you to hear this slow young lady <laughs> 
I'm going to say it slow because I know they fast forwarded me. Lady with that cock ass eye. I'm going to slow it down for the Texas nigga. Lady with that cock ass eye. You look like a turtle without the shell. A nasty stinking turtle without the shell. Yeah, so when they speak that shit up, it'll sound about right. <laughs> Woo, I ain't shit today. I done had to run to Mexico. Mexico, I left the dog at all, but I got my motherfucking Mike Tyson. I made sure I ain't leave that Mike Tyson. I'm sorry, y'all. I left the dog in the cage with two goddamn days worth of food because I ain't know. I say, fuck that shit. I have my brother come. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, y'all. I got a cough. I'm in Mexico. Mexico. I found me a ride to Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, man. I'm in Mexico, Mexico. Cockeyed turtle without the shell. I'm talking about the turtle in the mirror. Oh, yeah. She got to turn to the side to do a braid. Oh, yeah. I'm talking to the cockeyed turtle. She got to turn to the side to do a braid. <laughs> Since y'all say I'm crazy, I'm talking to the car guy lady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they made me run to the border. Hey, Carcito, I done ran to the goddamn border, dog. I got the fuck on, boy. I said, look here. One thing about it, I was trained a long time ago. If the police knocking at your door, that give you time to run out the motherfucking back door. And if it ain't no goddamn warrant, we don't do no talking. We don't do no talking. No talking. No talking. We don't do no talking. No talking. No talking. No, we don't do no talking. No talking. No talking. We just get to walking. Because guess what? These boots are made for walking. And that's just what I did. And just like the Mexicans do, I just walked over the border. I got the fuck on. I walked over that goddamn border. <laughs> yeah, y'all said I'm cracking up and shit. My therapist is cringing. I ain't got no motherfucking therapist. I made all that shit up. Y'all believe I got a therapist? What the fuck I'm gonna go to a therapist when they need therapy? I don't got no motherfucking therapist. Shit. My therapist is called pray. <laughs> I just sit down and I pray. I say, Lord, you already know. I done fucked up again. And now I'm in Mexico. Mexico. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No warrant, no talking. No warrant, no talking. And if I got a warrant, still go call my lawyer because no talking. And if I ain't got no lawyer, send a public defender, a public pretender. But no talking. I said, no, 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 no talking. <laughs> <coughs> I need a motherfucker that know how to beatbox. Boom, 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 boom. Man, where a nigga that know how to beatbox at? Yeah, I need a nigga that know how to motherfucking beatbox. <laughs> yeah, God work better. I just got there pray. A turtle without the shell. How in the hell can you see anything the right way when your eye go left and to the right? Man. I'm talking about man. That motherfucker thought that shit was going to bother me. I said, oh, shit. Somebody texted me. I said, oh, Lord, the police at my goddamn door. I said, hold on, what the fuck the police got going on? You know what I'm saying? I got low. I ducked down real quick. I said, oh, shit. Nigga, you got to get low. I got low. I had to YouTube up and listening to YouTube and shit. And that motherfucker, doop, 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 doop. 
I said, oh, I looked out the window. I heard, I saw the police truck. I turned that motherfucking volume down. I know he heard that shit. He tried to knock three more times. Motherfucker, I don't give a fuck if your knuckles start bleeding. I ain't opening this motherfucking door. You better kick that bitch in. <laughs> I'm not opening no motherfucking door. Are you crazy? You the police. I am motherfucker gonna text my phone talking about man. We said the police. We just look at. We just worried about you, nigga. If you worried about me, you said the police. Ain't that's why Black Lives Matter marching and shit? Cause what the police did. You some bitch don't give a goddamn about me if you suck the police talking about you worried about me. You could have, you should have called a counselor or some goddamn by me. Shit. You should have called a goddamn counselor. They sitting there listening to your live, calling you lame and boring, saying hello to them. Please, they miss you so so fucking bad. <coughs> <coughs> hey, hey, people that's watching me. Hey, people that's enjoying my content on other people's channel. <laughs> hey, she listening to me. Hey, I'm glad she listened to me because she got to hear that. I'm talking to the cock eyed lizard. Oh, yeah. I'm talking to the girl that had to turn. She has to turn to the side just to do a break. Oh, yeah. Crazy motherfucker. Yeah, crazy motherfucker. Yeah, it's an APB out for me, y'all. They looking for me. I've been running scared. I got to Mexico now. Now, y'all motherfuckers want to find me in Mexico? Catch me if you can. I'm the tall-ass Mexican man. Yeah. These boots are made for the walking, and that's just what I'll do. And one of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. Hey, look here. Y'all in the chat, tell me, y'all got them, tell me where y'all think I'm at. I need people in the chat to tell me where they think I'm at. Yeah, I bet these niggas going to turn that goddamn live off, out going off on that goddamn cockeyed lizard, looking like a turtle without the motherfucking shell. Stupid ass nigga need a goddamn dingo hopper for his motherfucking mustache. That nigga need a dingo hopper for that thick ass mustache. Raid! Back door ass, back panel. Them some old ass looking brown ass doors, nigga. Them some ugly ass doors. My apartment doors better than them motherfucking doors, nigga. The people that rent my apartments, nigga, they living way better than you, bitch ass nigga. Them people in them apartment, my apartment living way better than nigga. That old ass brown ass door. Nah, this ain't incognito, man. This me. <laughs> yeah, right, this me right here. Motherfucker look like a turtle without the shell. Got the nerve to talk about everybody. And a Pee Wee Herman, a black version of Pee Wee Herman. A motherfucker that just sit on his ass all day, eat fruit and snacks and shit because he an old ass nigga trying to be cool. Sitting there talking about a nigga all goddamn day. Talking about I said something about his mama, but you ain't talking about the nigga who actually said something about your mama. You dumb ass clout chasing bitch. I ain't say no motherfucking thing about your mama. When I come into somebody live, I super chat when I fuck with you. That's anybody. I don't know what the fuck they talking about. I joined this live, I super chat. Yeah. Bitch ass nigga always gotta make up a reason to talk about a nigga. You niggas is sweet up. Sweeter than a honey on a honeycomb. Sweeter than a honey on a honeycomb. Damn, did I leave my goddamn? Oh shit, man. I gotta go back to the goddamn house. I thought I had my goddamn Mike Tyson. Oh, hell no. I'm gonna go back to the house. They're gonna have to lock me up. I'm gonna go back to the motherfucking house and get my motherfucker Mike Tyson and get my dog. Yeah, I gotta go back to the house. Fuck this shit. Mm hmm. Yeah, I got away once. I'll get away again. Yeah, I got away once. Hey, this bitch ass nigga say I was lying about my phone bill and shit. Bitch ass nigga talking about I'm lying about my phone bill and shit. Hold up, man. This nigga say he ain't never seen no $400 phone bill. Bitch ass nigga, it's a lot of shit your stupid ass ain't never seen. You sit by a fucking window all day. You sit by a motherfucking window all day. How the fuck can you ever...
Motherfucker talking about he ain't never seen no $400 motherfucking bill. Bitch ass nigga, you sit by a window and a back door all motherfucking day. How in the fuck can you, nigga, $400 about your whole goddamn rent, bitch? How the fuck you gonna know about a $400 motherfucking AT&T bill, bitch? And it's a wireless pack. And if you ever knew about it, it costs $400 a month, you punk. You know what, better yet, I done made it back to the house from Mexico. Let me just show you better than I can tell you. I done made it back to the house from Mexico. Bitch ass nigga, you think I'm finna run to Mexico for what the fuck you niggas talk about, nigga? What the fuck you niggas talk I wish I would run to Mexico. Warrant Wednesday would tell them bring their ass. I ain't gonna answer the goddamn door once again. Nigga, if you got a warrant, nigga, do a no-knock warrant. Because I ain't answer the motherfucking door. You can kiss my black ass. <laughs> but check this out, though. Look at these stupid motherfuckers. I ain't leave nobody. But check this out. The nigga said he ain't never seen no $400 bill, right? What that say right there? $400. $400 for a wireless Wi-Fi pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $400 per month. <laughs> Yeah, nigga, the fuck I look like. Nigga, tell me he got a warrant. But call the police, tell him I'm at the house, motherfucker. Call the police, tell him, come on. <laughs> you motherfucker, you motherfucker crazy, man. Kwame, when you said she has to turn to the side to braid her hair, I burnt myself with my tea. You really funny as fuck, and I enjoy the comfort of you. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yeah, man, bitch ass nigga. Th <sighs> you know what I'm talking about? No, I showed it anyway, because these niggas, I want to show these niggas something new in life. You know what I'm saying? Because they're ignorant to certain scenarios and situations, and what you're ignorant to you will say things that you don't know what you're talking about. And I want to show people that if you're ignorant to something, don't speak on it. And if you are ignorant to something and, the, and they show you otherwise, then apologize. DJ Academic sentiment you shared earlier was fire. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, hey, man. If you don't know nothing about no shit like this, if you don't know... You know what I'm saying? That you got, you could, they have wireless Wi Fi packs that cost you 400 and something dollars a month and your brand pay for it. If you don't know shit about that, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Don't, don't speak on shit you don't know about. Y'all niggas want to make up all these scenarios. Y'all niggas want to front and fraudulate on your channels and make it seem like y'all really bought something or y'all like that. You bitch ass nigga probably called the police because you tell them I had a gun at my house. And that's why I ain't waste my motherfucking time answering no goddamn dope. Fuck I look like. You niggas are weird. Ain't no way in the fuck a nigga like me. I told you I was a Geechee nigga. I don't even like the fact that they came on my property and they say private property. I don't. <laughs> I don't like the fact that they came on my property. That's dead ass wrong, in my opinion. I didn't call them. Yeah, I didn't call them motherfuckers. As long as they donations, yeah, that's what it is. As long as they donations coming in, they'll say whatever. Breaking news, y'all. Kwame got a warrant, y'all. He got an APP, a APD. Uh, what is it? How you spell it? It's an APP, a APD. What does it mean? Man, you don't shut your motherfucking weird ass up, nigga. Look at this nigga here. You don't shut your motherfucking weird ass up, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, this is an epic week, Weasel Wiz. They got you nigga panties in a bunch. I done, I done warned you niggas. I shouldn't have did that. I done warned you niggas with them trademarks. 
Yeah, I'm going to put the world on notice in a minute. All the way from TikTok to Instagram to Facebook. All that goddamn money off them pretty hats and them pretty shirts you niggas was selling. Ooh, I want some of that. That shit looked like good money y'all niggas were making too. You niggas on YouTube putting up my logo and all that shit. Yeah, that looked like y'all trying to steal my brand and act like it's yours. Yeah, that's not right. That's not good to do to somebody. That's rude. And I'm hurt by that. I'm so hurt by y'all rudeness and shit. <laughs> I'm so hurt by this. I don't know what to do. I can think of one thing. I can think of one damn thing. I sure can. I sure can. Cha -cha 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 -cha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, look at here. I'm so happy to show y'all where I'm at in this beautiful house, just chilling, minding my business. Oh, no, no, hold on, hold on, wait. Let me go back up. I'm in Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> nigga talking about they sent the police to a welfare check. Bitch, you going to be wasting your time sending the police to a welfare check for me. They going to be wasting taxpayer dollars because, God damn it, I don't got there. Uh-uh. I don't even know. My leg hurting. I don't know how to get to the door. <laughs> oh, holy shit. <clears throat> yeah, I don't even know how to get to the door. I don't know how to get to no damn door. <laughs> oh, the chat is lit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trademark lawyer want to talk to you. Trademark, trademark lawyer want to talk. Yeah, they want to holler at you. Trademark lawyer want to talk to you. Trademark lawyer want to talk. Trademark lawyer, yeah, they, they want to ask you a question. Police, trademark police want to talk to you. They want to ask you a question. Oh, yeah, I'm about to goddamn go back to Mexico, y'all. I had just got back to get the smoke. Now I'm going back to Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> I'm for the break order now. I'm going back to Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, uh-huh. Time for me to go back to Mexico, baby. Let me hurry up and leave for the police get here this time. I ain't going to do nothing but get low again. <laughs> They didn't take that and send the underwear. They didn't take that and steal your underwear. A bunch of obsessed weirdos. Man, listen, man. I don't know what's wrong with these niggas. Why Kwame think he did this? I'll put cases on all you bitches. No, yeah. I ain't gonna put no cases on them. They put cases on themselves. If you go back and listen to what these niggas been saying, Kwame's stupid. Kwame don't know how to handle his business. Kwame's a jackass. Kwame don't know what a trademark. It take me two days to get a trademark. It take me 30 seconds to get a trademark. And I'm sitting here listening like, okay, it might have took you that long. I ain't never heard no shit like that, but it took you that long. But what these niggas was doing was they were listening to a weasel that came to the internet telling all these motherfuckers how dumb I was and steal all my shit. So it was people out there that did an intent to use. And with that intent to use, they can question your trademark. And that's a six months process after you do that. And then they got to object to it and they didn't file the appeal. They didn't object. They took it to the door almost. But then after that, they knew better than to go to court because they full of shit. They full of shit. That's why I told you that dumb ass nigga that was giving all that advice. Oh no, you don't have to make a shirt. You just got to fill out an intent to use. Yeah, you can fill out an intent to use, but if you never motherfucking used it, I'm already selling commerce and I'm selling merch. Dumb motherfucker, we're going to date it back to that and what I said, and I'm going to win every time. See, that's what happened when a motherfucker just run their mouth so fast and long and just do all that shoe flowing and talking, trying to sound all extra intelligent, while a dumb, slow nigga like me just sitting back waiting on no motherfucking trademarks to come back so I could put TM on everything, nigga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to put TM on everything, nigga. These niggas coming over here giving these niggas advice, trying to shorten a nigga bread, fucking with it, fucking with my business this whole time. Niggas talking about my business and how fast it's moving and growing and doing. And you niggas over here disparaging and fucking with the ebb and flow of a nigga business every day. A bitch ass nigga go sign an intent to use on my shit. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
You don't get to sign no intent to use on my shit, boy. You got to use it. Y'all listening to this dumb ass nigga do all that motherfucking talking. Yeah, all you got to do is just, you can use this shit. All you got to do is just copyright it. All you got to do is just goddamn trademark it. All you got to do is just do this. Nigga was saying copyright when it's like, how you going to copyright merch? How you going to copyright and saying, nigga, you stupid. You don't know what you talking about. So that's why I was trying to tell people, y'all listen to this shit that nigga be talking about and these people be talking about all you want to. But I showed today, the proof is in the motherfucking pudding. And oh yeah. I got the proof. I got the juice. I mean, get away. Yeah, that juice. Juice, juice. How <laughs> that song go? I eat. I forgot what he said on that song. I got a goddamn, I got to play that song. I got that juice. That way. That's your got it. Juice. Yeah, nigga. Y'all nigga been doing all that goddamn talking, boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's time for me to do some talking now. They call it a wellness check. I don't give a fuck about no wellness or no welfare check, you stupid son of a bitch. So I'm going to call you dumb for saying some shit like that to a nigga that can time your ass out. Now get in the corner, bitch, and shut up. Mm-hmm. Missing Incus. Yeah, nigga. $400, nigga. It's more than some of them niggas rent, and they mad now. I just had to prove it to them. Them niggas don't even know how to apologize if they don't know what they talking about. But don't worry. It's going to be TM, TM, TM. It's going to look like TMT around this motherfucker. It's going to be so many TMs. Yeah. It's going to be. Yeah, I'm stupid. I'm real stupid. It's going to be TM, TM, TM on everything, nigga. TM, TM, TM. Cock-eyed demon. <laughs> Ooh, that cock-eyed demon, man. Hey, that cockeyed demon is mad. Kwame got the TM. That cockeyed demon gonna be mad as hell, boy. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Do what the post. What? I got a cockeyed demon saying I ran away in the woods with a boot on, and you can see me right here at my house. You cockeyed demon, you. You turtle without the shell. Turtle without the shell. Yeah, I want to make sure y'all hear that. I want I, Since they want to play my stuff, I want to make sure they hear that over and over again. Turtle without the shell. Eyes cock like a pistol. She got summer eyes. She got summer teeth. Some over here, some over there. That motherfucker, that fucked up. You need to buy you a man, girl. Go ahead and get you some extra shifts and buy you a man. Because shit, ain't nobody going to come there willingly. You know they're going to run with that narrative now, Kwame. What narrative? Yes, yeah. Trademark, baby. Call me Trademark Shorty from now on, y'all. I want to be known as Trademark Shorty. I'm probably going to have the most trademarks in the black sector. Trademark Shorty. Just call me Trademark Shorty from here on out. <laughs> Trademark Shorty. Hey, 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 Shorty. Let me drop this link, man. I want to see what y'all think, man. They just sent the popo after me. I thought they just said this was YouTube. So now we gotta we gotta like Queen Regina again because these niggas done called the popo. They can't goddamn talk about Queen Regina no more. Nigga, call me trademark shorty from here on out, man. Call me big soldier. <laughs> <coughs> 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 they tried to treat me like a drill rapper. No, I ain't doing no more drill rapping. Uh -uh. No, I ain't doing no more drill rapping. That drill rapping got the popo to my dodo. As soon as I turned into a drill rapper, boy, that shit got real. They sit the hip hop motherfucking cops in my head, boy. Yeah, trademark shorty.
Nigga, you think I'm finna goddamn uh, play that just cause you sure gave me some money? Shut up, nigga. And thank you for the money, dummy. And I'm finna time you out after this cash out. Watch this. Let me show a nigga like this what to do. This nigga cashed out me and still got timed out. Oh, Aaron Black, come back better. Aaron Blank, come back better than what you are. Don't do us like that. Don't come, don't come over here with that negativity. You know what I'm saying? I'm safe. Don't come over here with that negativity. I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Ain't that the old saying? I'm too blessed to be stressed. I better wa watch out for skin and life. She's a turtle without the shell. Looking like goddamn fried chicken gizzards. Talking all that goddamn shit. Motherfucker looking just like some burnt fried chicken gizzards with a damn wig on with cock ass eyes and got the nerve to talk about somebody every day. Fuck this shit. This week we's a Wednesday. Welcome, bitches. <laughs> It's Weak Weasel Wednesday. You motherfucking fried okra face looking motherfucker. You with a wig, with a bad lace front, having ass. I need to get my homegirl to do, get you a lace front. Because your shit fucked up. Your baby hair ain't laying down. That shit sticking up like alfalfa in all your pictures. I don't think she never had no motherfucking baby hair. Hell no. Yeah, she look like some burnt ass chicken gizzard. <sighs> yes, yes. I might start my own roasting league. Yeah, I think I'm going to start my room. Since I birthed that idea and the mother niggas tried it and they couldn't do it, uh, I might start my own roasting league. Goddamn bewitch project looking motherfucker. Blair Witch project looking motherfucker that they left out there and forgot that we they was on set. She looked like she blended in with the woods. They, they goddamn forgot that motherfucker out there for two years. And then when they did Blair Witch project too, her motherfucking ass was back in the goddamn show. They didn't even have to pay her. She was just walking through the crowd as an extra. Ugly motherfucker. Let me hit this goddamn mic tight one more time. Puff, puff, pass. Uh-uh, it's COVID out here. Uh-uh, ain't no passing. Ain't no passing. But look at this nigga right here, man. This nigga back over here, man. This nigga here. This nigga standing with a bunch of niggas. Yes, yeah. Hey, for my haters, I gotta say something to y'all. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Cause the Bible tells me so. <laughs> you bitch ass nigga need the Lord. I'm trying to tell you, boy. For real, you nigga fucked up. <laughs> Sister T, tell me, I guess I'm not the only one on one tonight. Fuck that shit, Sister T. This week, we's a Wednesday. I'm tired of this shit. These bitch ass niggas think they got there actually doing something. These niggas ain't doing nothing in real life, but running their goddamn mouth, obsessing over a man, getting they queef, them niggas queefing and shit. Having goddamn spouts with goddamn menopause. Them niggas don't know what to do. Them niggas been taking estrogen pills and shit. I don't know what's wrong with these soft ass niggas. <coughs> Bro, you really the best at this roasted ish. No cap. Yeah, but they try to call it beef and make it a problem and all that shit. Well, I don't want no problem. I'm a big seven foot on the sidewalk, bitch ass nigga. I say I'm a bitch ass nigga. Cause sticks and stone may break your bone, but words would never hurt me. I taught that. I would talk that in school. These niggas get mad about every damn thing. Yeah, these niggas going to hell. <laughs> that's all I can think of. These niggas going to hell. So that's why I got to goddamn pray for these niggas. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Because the Bible tells me 
So, hold on, y'all. Oh, so fly, I see you up in here. Show them how you get so fly. Show them how you get so fly. Show them how you get so fly. Look at so fly up in this thing. Girl, I knew you was gonna come back. You tired of them bitch ass niggas, ain't you? Well, look here, baby girl. I want you to come on. I heard you say you would rub my feet and shit and make me some soup. Now, I need you. You know where I stay. Now, come on over. I know you shy and shit. You don't want to show the people on the internet. Now, come on over here. Show me what you're working with. Hey, so fly. Show me what you're working with. Come on over here and goddamn make me some soup. Rub my goddamn feet. Make me feel good now. I ain't going to give you nothing now because I ain't no thought. But I'm just asking you to goddamn rub my feet now. Don't come over here with no expectations or nothing. I'm not with all that now. <laughs> hey, don't come over here with no goddamn expectations or nothing. Yeah, you ain't getting nothing now. That nigga talking about that liquor is strong. No, this goddamn Mike Tyson strong. Yeah. Nigga, you don't do liquor like that. You don't go with no goddamn liquor. Let me go get me some liquor. Yeah. She said, I got a nice voice. You have a really nice voice. Ooh, so hey, look here. So fly. I got a really nice never mind. So fly. All I'm saying is, were you real serious about rubbing my feet and uh getting me some and getting me some soup? Cause if you were serious, uh, you know. But why don't you stop all that talking, girl? <laughs> Show me just how you can rub. I had my share of rubbers. <laughs> this that new shit, y'all. This shit from Mexico. Mexico. <coughs> 400 bucks we has, he has his family on the plan, stupid. I don't have my family on no plan. Hey, stop saying people's name in my chat now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to goddamn boot you up. Yeah, just because you make soup don't mean you getting loot. Somebody rocking, knocking your boots. Yeah, I ain't rocking, knocking no boots tonight. I'm sick. I can barely breathe. Yeah, but uh, so fly. I'm just so happy that you over here. I don't know why. I, I think you might like me so much, so fly, that you go over there and listen to that bitch-ass nigga disparage me, and you be defending me in your head. I know you do. And you taking a huge risk from coming over here like this because they're going to DP you. But I got to tell you something, so fly. I done left you for her Lima. <laughs> yeah, I done left you for bow-legged her Lima. Yeah, she been in here looking beautiful and she can fight and I don't think you can fight. Uh, Lima came up here and talked to me and she said she could beat a motherfucker to sleep. So yeah, I think I like her Lima. Mm -mm. You ain't even want to come up here and talk to me. Mm-hmm. True essence. I ain't cutting up. Hey, hey, boo. Hey, boo. Oh, Lord. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is messed up. Oh, my goodness. This is messed up right here. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I just want to talk. I just, I, I just want to tell you and Halima something together. I just want to tell y'all something. He's talking about Mr. Window, yeah. Yeah, that, that nigga, he missed the back, though. That nigga missed the back, though. We made that nigga jump from a window to the back, though. Stop it, man. I just said that's what you need. You're going to make it sound like I'm trying to holler. No, no, no. I'm making it sound like I'm trying to holler. Because the fact that you knew that I needed that, that's half the battle right there. I could tell how sweet and how good of a woman you are. The fact that you would bring up rubbing my ugly ass feet and making me some soup at the same time after that. Yeah, that's good enough for me, boo. You a winner in my book. Just stop talking bad about me. Missed the hole in the roof. Fuck the hole in the wall. The hole in the roof. Sh 
shit, it's everything bad. I got a hole in the roof, my window got a tarp on it, knocked out, everything fucked up. I'm just a bust. I'm just a busted bust. So it's only right that my window is bust, cause I'm a busted bust. It's only right that my window is bust. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for the trademark police. Hey, trademark police want to talk to you. Trademark police want to talk to you. <laughs> trademark police want to talk to you. Hey, hey, you, you over there. Come here. Come here, don't you run. Don't you run. I'm the trademark police. Stop right there. Don't you run right there. Come here. Hey, hey, hey. They gonna be chasing you niggas. You niggas talk about somebody was chasing me. They gonna be chasing you niggas. I'm sitting right here with my feet up, sitting here, goddamn, with something nice in my hand. Yeah, I ain't got to goddamn go nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. Mm hmm. Sure ain't. Hey man. Hey, listen here. How much? How much it is for y'all? One of you dudes in the chat. To date that cockeyed cocker spaniel. To take on one date. How much? How much I gotta cash out one of y'all? You gotta send me a picture of y'all on a date with her. You gotta see if she can look you. You gotta be able to look her dead in the eye for five seconds without laughing. If you can't do that, the date is off. You no more, no money or nothing. You gotta be able to look in her eye and not motherfucking laugh for. 30 seconds straight. Huh? I'm just saying, $10, that's all you need? Oh shit, hey look, $1? Go ahead with it then bro, go ahead, take her on a date, and, and $1,500, oh hell to the no. I mean, I was thinking if somebody would go charge that much. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking somebody would go say that high. So hell yeah. If she would find a nigga say, I'd do it for free, dog. If she was one of these beautiful ladies in the chat, they'll be like, pay me? Nigga, that shit. I can't, I can't not holler. She married. Man, ain't no goddamn body married to that lady. I can tell you anything. I got a bridge in Miami. Did you see her motherfucking husband? Did you hear that nigga go up there and tell her, hey, baby, come to bed? She up there talking to niggas all night long. Yeah, he rep money talk. I'm straight, bro. I'm married. You ain't got to do nothing with her. You could have just said, hey, man, shit, you got to give me $200, take on a date, and, and got them laugh real fast. No, hold, hold it 30 seconds, and then laugh at the second 31, 31 seconds. You could have took your $200 and said we going Dutch and jumped up and ran the fuck out of there and don't tip the valet. Yeah, you could have hauled ass on a dog. You ain't had to give her none of your goddamn money. You could have said we going Dutch, jumped up, ran out that motherfucker. Don't you get no drink, get you a water. Cause all you gotta do is have 31 seconds. Cause at 30 seconds, you lost. 31 seconds, you won the bet. Jump up out that motherfucker, run. Hopefully you still seeing straight and she don't put your ass up under a spell. And your eyes don't go cock like a goddamn pistol. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you can get the fuck on up out of there unscathed. And you still can see. And then you just run through the valet and get the fuck on. And don't come back. Yes, yeah. Hold on, this is the show, man. I gotta catch the show. You know how you know how we gotta catch that show, man. I can't be doing so much talking when it's the short. Yeah, yeah, I gotta catch the show. Mm -mm. Yeah, hold on. I gotta catch the short. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. You gotta pull that motherfucker in three, four times before you let it get that, that smoke back up. And this CBD. This ain't nothing but CBD. Straight up CBD. Yep. That's all it is. CBD. I got my goddamn boots still on though in the bed, just in case they goddamn come knocking again. I'm be spreading out the goddamn. They at the front, I'm out the back. <laughs> oh. If she is married, y'all saying she married, right? 
if she is married, then she ain't getting none that night. That nigga cheating on her motherfucking ass. How the hell could he get hard and her motherfucking cock out ass out all night long? Hell no. Maybe he want her to go out late and stay out late so goddamn she can look like somebody else by the time he get back. Cause he just get drunk, keep the lights off, and she look like goddamn Janet Jackson. He loves his side piece because he can't stand her. It's cheaper to keep her. What the? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her husband love her goddamn side. Yeah, he loves his side piece. Her husband married her because she got the money. I guarantee she make more money than that nigga. That nigga probably the goddamn, I ain't, ain't nothing wrong with it, but he probably the janitor at the school. Yeah, he been to the school all his life. He ain't never left high school. That motherfucker went to high school four years and probably got them got out of high school and, and asked for a job. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And that's what's up. A good brother. Keeping them kids clean. Nothing wrong with that. I will not laugh at that. You know? And don't y'all laugh at it. That's just a real life. It may be, I think. Just saying. We don't know each other, but since we talking about each other, shit, I'm going to say something back. Fuck wrong with you talking about me every goddamn day and then week we's a Wednesday. <laughs> She be on my back. She been on. She been walk, she, she been running panel to panel, nigga to nigga for two years now. First she was with a light skin chico to bars wanna be looking nigga, jailhouse stank sweaty back motherfucker, and then now she got them. She I don't know how many different niggas she done been with, but her husband cheating on her. I know that much for sure. Allegedly, I think I snapped. Walk around all day in a figure eight. <laughs> Somebody said that in the chat. Walk around all day in a figure eight. Uh uh uh. That he nigga. Incognito. I'm hollering. Somebody done made an incognito man. Uh 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 uh. Yeah, happy Weak Weasel Wednesday. Fuck these weak weasels. Just for the day, though. Tomorrow, I'm back to therapy sessions that I don't never go to. I'm just going to be praying. I told y'all, Diesel, I guarantee. <laughs> no, nah, I don't smoke. I don't smoke. I don't smoke. CBD. CBD. Look at this nigga. Watch this. Still not at 1K? Well, I got one less because I'm timing your motherfucking ass out. How about that, Blizzy? <laughs> now, carry your ass back where you belong, punk. You add up the motherfuckers that's listening to my show now, and we at goddamn 1K. Excuse me. KAB, she wants you, but she's not going to admit it. Who don't? Who want me? Which one? Crazy eyes? No, nah, she can't see. We, we ain't going to never see eye to eye. So, yeah, I can't be with somebody I can't see eye to eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. Now, that's one rule I got. I'm not picking on her, y'all. I don't want nobody to say that I'm picking on somebody just because I got a preference. My preference is I must be able to see you eye to eye. Pupil to pupil. I hope I'm saying it right. I'm a little slur. I got your pupil got to be able to look into my pupil. That's just a preference of mine. That ain't me picking on her. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I'm i not trying to say that there's anything wrong with somebody. I'm not disparaging anybody. I'm just saying my preference is two eyes front. <laughs> I almost had a choke to death episode just then. Woo. Hey, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I That's just a rule of mine. I'm not picking on this young lady. 
I just have to be able to look eye to eye with you. You know, it's a very sexual, sensual thing to be able to look someone in the eye. I was always taught to look someone right in the eye. And I just think she'd be in a sly fox if she can't look me right back in my eye. You know what I mean? I think she'd be in a sly fox. And yeah, so so I don't like no sly ass fox. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm not picking on her. I'm just getting the feeling that she acting like a sly fox because she won't look me right in my eye. That's all I'm saying. So don't be telling you to because I'm not saying anything. I didn't laugh. I didn't joke. I'm just being for real. That's my preference. Yeah, it's just, that's my preference. That's it. Okay, okay, I'm done coughing, I'm done coughing. Whew. Yeah, I can't cough like that no more. I gotta goddamn get one of these halls, man. I gotta get one of these doggone cough drops. Whew. <laughs> Michelle, what you sick of me for? What did I do? What did I do? I ain't doing nothing. Ain't nobody doing nothing. Somebody talking about, I can't take no more. <laughs> she don't see where you coming from, Kwame. No, she don't see where nobody coming from. She don't know where you're going. She don't see where you're coming from. Now you turn her to the side. Now she see every goddamn thing. That motherfucker got laser binocular view. You turn her to the side like a goddamn telescope. She got telescope vision. You turn her motherfucking ass to the side. Tired of this shit. No, uh, so fly. No, don't you have a heart now? No, don't you have no goddamn heart now? Well, y'all be talking bad about me. Talking disgusting and filthy about me. Calling me all sorts of names. I'm gonna start attacking all you motherfuckers. Not attack. But I'm going to start lightly joking back on all of you that's fucking, fuck, fuck, fucking with me. You guys are not YouTube content creators, but yet and still, every night, every day, you guys are going over there being very disrespectful. And I'm about to, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm getting awful tired of all the disrespect. So if it ain't going to be no respect, it ain't going to be no mother respect. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Music, please. What kind of music? Yeah, oh, I'm going to get them. Oh, I'm going to got dang on show get them. All them nasty Bigfoot motherfuckers. They motherfuckers, I know they got squid worth goddamn oyster, lobster, clam feet, motherfucker. Octopus feet having motherfucker. I already know. Cause ain't no fine ass women sitting up there talking so ugly every night. Fine ass women don't go nowhere talking ugly every night. They just got them to go somewhere and look pretty. They ain't going nowhere and talking so ugly and nasty and foul like these, some of these damn, I don't even want to call them women cause that's going to disrespect women. Yeah, that's going to disrespect women. That's going to disrespect D Santana. Nigga talking about he like his man matching and shit. Hey, this the dude that say he like his men to match. He like his men that know they colors. That's the type of men he like. You should have wore that. Uh, nah, we ain't gonna let you stay. 
we'll block you. Get you the fuck on. Yeah, we'll get you on because you a punk. Yes, yes. Oh, no, Proud Kwamenak is up out of here. He gone. He a naughty boy that's hiding and faking like a Kwame Knight. Ain't no such thing as no damn Kwame Knight. Yeah. That's a goddamn naughty boy, D. Santana. He mad because I wasn't running through no woods. He mad because I didn't go to Mexico. Mexico. This nigga just mad. What the fuck you so mad at, bro? I don't even know you. I don't see it all. <laughs> Coding and trading don't mix with ignorance and arrogance. That's dumb because I wouldn't be getting the coding and trading jackass. The kids would. So, no, nice try, but you're not that smart. <laughs> I can talk all the shit I want. I'm 40. You can still put uh, coding and trading in the schools for kids, you jackass. You motherfuckers so soft and sensitive. I swear, boy, don't make no sense. I don't like the way you joke, so fuck coding and trading in school. Fuck the kids, because uh, you joke a lot. That don't even make no sense. That make no sense at all. When you called no game raising that titties last night, was hilarious. Yeah, that nigga got a goddamn whole A cup. Nigga coming up here trying to give so if that nigga stop sitting on panels talking about another man, that nigga can goddamn get down and do some motherfucking push-ups, get in the gym, and he won't have them goddamn teenage titties. That nigga got teenage titties, man. Oh, boy, walk around with teenage titties talking shit. Motherfucker got them acting like he got all the game, weak game. You need to tell yourself something. Get rid of them teenage titties, weak game. Get down, do 15, 20 push-ups every day until them teenage titties go away. So all you got to do, can't be sitting on no goddamn panels. And it's still Hunter Biden's laptop, Hope. Yeah, get rid of them goddamn teenage titties, nigga. <laughs> you mad, you mad. <laughs> Training, bro. Yeah. <coughs> 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 Motherfuckers here crazy, man. That's all they got to do. Yeah, man. It, all he got to do, Cino, is get down and get rid of them damn teenage titties. That's all he got to do. Instead of sitting on goddamn panels all day, wanting to talk about me all day, you could do a better job of getting down and getting rid of them teenage titties. We game need more training, bros. <laughs> Let me drop the goddamn link, man. What y'all think about them calling the popo on me, man? I thought this was just YouTube. I thought we don't take it off YouTube. But now these niggas calling the popo. The link in the chat, these niggas calling the popo. Put my Halloween costume on camera. Man, shit, I don't need no costume. It's scary enough just being a black man. 
But shit, I'm not going nowhere for Halloween. I told you, I'm a sidewalk nigga. Mm -mm. No. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold up. Get the fuck on up out of here. Uh uh. No. Oh no, that's the wrong thing. Time out. Who is Ryan Road? No, I don't like the way your hair look. I don't like the way you looking down like that. You look like you sneaky. I don't like the way your picture look. Mm -mm. You look like you sneaky, boy. And it look like you trying to look like me, and I don't like it. So you might well get your country ass on. You ain't even change your picture. You trying to be rude, boy. You ain't going to be rude up here, boy. Is you dumb, stupid, or dumb? I, I, I got them 6 9 told you niggas. Is you dumb, stupid, or dumb? <laughs> hey, y'all, hey, take a wild guess who was the first person in the back room, y'all. Can somebody take a wild guess who was the first person in the back room? Somebody take a wild guess. Put in the chat the person you think was the first person in the back room. Let's see who can get it. Hamburger looking weasel. Hold on, I don't got I don't get no names yet. Put the name in the chat of the person you think was the first person to hit the link. Cause that's waiting in the backstage. Oh, somebody got it. Somebody got it. Oh, somebody had it before you. Somebody had it before you. I didn't see. Oh, somebody had. Yeah, somebody had it before you. Somebody had it before you. Dang, a lot. Everybody knew that this nigga was the first person. Goodness, Mo Chris, the first person was Swagger Dash. Look like he got the D first. He said D, he didn't say D Santana, he just said D. Pause, you know how they gonna try to clip it up. But yeah, man, everybody knew it was you, boy. So shit, I might well let you up, man. I, I gotta let you up. Go ahead, bro, what you gotta say? Man, I don't wanna hear shit what you gotta say. <laughs> That nigga, that bad as hell, man. They gonna study this channel, man. What's making these nigga come back like this, man? The nigga, they, he, you think he called the police? Yeah, I can't even talk to this nigga, man. That nigga might, uh-uh. I'm done. No, sir. Y'all wanna hear from this dumb nigga, man? Hey, the chat gotta say if they want you up or not. If the chat say no, I'm good. I don't want to talk to you. It's hard to talk to somebody like you all the time. Don't let them up. I got somebody say, don't let them up. Deny it. Don't let them up, KB. Nope. I told y'all. Who's next? Nope. Yeah, bro. You ain't getting up, man. The chat done be told you. I'm listening to the chat. No, they don't want you around. Well, almost the whole chat was no, except two people. Damn, except some people that said, hell no. <laughs> it went from no, 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 to hell no. Yeah. Hell to the no. Ah, hey, look, they don't want you up, bro. Yes, Jesus love you. For my haters, yes, Jesus loves you. Haters, sing it with me again. 
Say, take it from the top. Say, start with yes. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Cause the Bible tells me so. Yeah, I need y'all to sing that shit every morning. Bring him up, have a convo. No, man, they say no, man. The chat already said no, man. I can't do it. What's up, brother? What's going on, KD? You can hear me? Yes, sir. I don't, I don't mean to promote nothing, but what you know about these right here? What is it? Oh, I don't know nothing about them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what's Grandma that. cookies? Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm going to about these. I know all about them. <laughs> Hey man, what these people want with you, man? Man, listen, man. I just, you know, just chilling, man. The people set the police in my house, so I'm just shaking it off. You know, I could have been killed. You know, they, you know how they, the police been doing people lately. Some police, not all. I mean, shit, or they could have got killed. <laughs> shit. No, we ain't saying that. Hell, oh man. yeah, you right, you right, you right. That was a joke. I was joking. I was joking. Yeah, I'm about to say, oh lord, they coming to you. They coming back. <laughs> So they coming back. Yeah, yeah, I don't want no smoke. Hey man, um, I wanted to talk, I wanted to ask you, because I was thinking I was gonna do like a like a interview type thing. Okay. Uh, I was gonna do like an interview type thing. You on live too. <laughs> So I was gonna do like an interview type thing, but do it like where we like playing Madden. You feel me? Like I'm interviewing you, but we playing the game. You know how you? How would you feel about that? Uh, playing Madden and you interview me? Right. That's gonna be just me way. asking you questions. You know. Yeah, we might get, we might just set something like that up. I gotta get a little better at the game first. Excuse me. I gotta get a little better at the game first. Shit, I ain't I ain't really even played Madden. Before. Check firing you up right now, boy. They say your girl walk all in on you. They they, they firing. That you was up. my mom's. That was my mom's. Okay. <laughs> that was my mom. My mom, I say hello. <laughs> yeah, you um, I put her card on your live one time, and she was getting uh some calls for it. So, oh, that's appreciate you for that, bro. Appreciate you. No problem, brother. Uh, I also <laughs> wanted to ask you a question, man. I wanted to ask you, did you see, well, you talked about the stuff with Candace Owens. Uh -huh. How do you feel about that? Like, how how do you see that? And just the whole, you know, scope of what's going on in that organization. How do you feel about that, seeing that they're, you know, doing what they're doing? I'm not going to say what they're doing to get you in trouble. I'm going to just say doing what they're doing. Uh, what what part of what Candace Owens is doing? Because she's doing a lot. Because she has the black uh, the documentary. Mm -hmm. So what part of what are you talking about? Uh, I want to talk about like the financial, like how they've been disputed. Damn, I can't even say it. Um, you know, how they've been handling their money. How, you know, some people have been getting 10 million, 2 million, and they've been getting caught up. Allegedly, we're going to say allegedly, because who knows if any of this, but because her, I mean, I haven't really seen it. I really do want to see her, her, you know, her project, because it looks like she's gone in debt, and she's gone to like the highest points to really expose to let the people know what's going on with this organization. And I really want to see it. Like I'm really excited about it, so I'm looking for it. Well, yeah, I mean, the documentary I saw it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's factual, but most of the stuff, I mean, if Candace Owens put it out there, she's going to pretty much fact check a lot of that stuff. Right. So, but I'm going to stay out of it because I don't want nothing to do with nothing that they say. No, people, definitely. So I'm going to leave my opinion on that to myself. I do think on the uh, on the documents that you can see, the tax documents, uh, mm -hmm. and that she alleged that was being moved around, you can kind of follow that. So if that's true, that's crazy. Right. But basically, right. Uh, the black community has built uh, money for white folks in the in the gay, in the homosexual community. Uh, Pretty much. We went to those organizations and not us. 
Allegedly. Exactly. And look, yeah, allegedly. Let's keep it. It's alleged. We're not. This is not. We're not state stating anything. We're just. Yeah. I don't know, know shit. It's alleged. And I'm high, so I can't even be accountable for my thoughts. I'm right there with you, right? I'm right yeah, there I with you. Know, you know. I don't know nothing. I don't even know what I'm saying. This is entertainment. <laughs> hey, you gotta chill, man. Calling people cockeyed lizards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get right back to that, man. You better make me roast my ass again. Hey, but I'm gonna holler at you, man. I'm gonna say a few more roast things. I'm gonna get the hell up out of here. All right, man. Appreciate you. All right, bro. Hey man, this nigga still backstage, man. You like a pus bump. What's wrong with you, boy? Don't listen. Ain't nobody happy when they got cockroaches. When they see a cockroach, they want to stomp a cockroach, man. So why in the world did you still over here? <laughs> Don't be high in mama's house. <laughs> These motherfuckers will say anything, man. These people are trying to get you to fall in line. Oh, I know. Shit, they scared the shit out of me now. Maybe they had the police about to bring that 40 million I told them they could have gave me and calm down. Yeah, they could have gave me 40 million. I would have left them alone. <laughs> Raid! Hey, D Santana, man, you still in the back? Man, it's one o'clock in the goddamn morning. This is not a dad that take his kid to school. This nigga in the chat talking shit all night. Hey, look here, man. Man, this man here, boy. Lord have mercy. They bored as hell. Uh, I don't even see the link. How are uh, they even back that man? He was the first one to hit the link. Let me pay, let me paste it again. I gotta get down. Let me go to my YouTube and pin it. I gotta do it on my phone. I don't know how to do it on the computer. Man, D Santana, man, God, dog, man. What's wrong with you, bro? Slow fly ain't try to got done. She try to slow fly. You gonna come up and hit the link? All right, now I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna pin it. So fly, I'm pinning the link. Hey, why won't it let me pin it? There we go. I ain't banning D. I just don't want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to you right now, D. They, the chat said no, man. You got to convince the chat for me to talk to you. Wow, dad shaming. Huh? You tell a damn my punk. But dad'll get you, dad'll get you blah. Dad'll get you blah. Dad'll get you blah. Talking shit about my kid. Dad'll get you blah. Dad'll get you blah. <laughs> what up, bro? What's good? What's good, man? What the hell done happened now? Man, them niggas done called the police to my house. What? <laughs> yeah, they're the same thing. <laughs> same thing they Queen Regina about. They, they they got them set the police to my house. Bless you. But what I mean, what, behind what ground? What what the folks say? I don't damn know. I ain't answered it though. But I was I was uh, I got like a drill rapper. So I showed a gun on my last live, maybe two, and the motherfuckers called the police on me. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, they do know they do know, they do know you're an upstanding citizen, right? Right. So you so you're allowed to have guns, even if you do show it online, right? They must think I'm a stanky fella.
<laughs> but yeah, I also don't understand it. I'm smart enough to know if it ain't no warrant, I'm not opening no motherfucking door. Hell no, nah, motherfucker. You think I'm gonna open the door and the motherfucking goddamn police out there and they, they got me on video talking about a gun, bitch. Y'all gonna try to act like I brought came to the door with the gun. Hell no. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I said that's worse than your whole witness. Right. <laughs> I see I seen the wabbit uh Playing you doing something, I said, "What the hell is he talking about? Talking about uh, Kwame going to jail or some shit?" So he must be, he must be the one that sucked that shit. <laughs> if I go to jail, yeah, he had a lot of talking about the, uh, uh, Kwame, the they Kwame need that Kwame got arrested or uh, some shit like that. I was like, "What the hell is this nigga talking about now, man?" I don't, you know, I don't even be clicking on this shit. After. I clicked on that. It was just a whole bunch of niggas on panel talking about this. So I, I, so, but that's why see these niggas so desperate now. But that's why I went on. I went and acted like I ran to Mexico. That's why I came on the live like I came on the live. So now they at the house. I, I showed my camera. I think I'm at the house here. So now they mad. You don't think calling someone a pedophile is desperate? Man, you don't shut up, punk. I ain't calling nobody no pedophile. Oh hell no! Live, who the hell is that anyway? Who the fuck was that? Hey, who? <laughs> He used old boy name. Oh, name. Man, let me go back and look at the replay and see who that weapon. Look at yeah, that damn replay and see who that weapon was. Real quick. He used the guy face. Oh, try okay. to be show. He used some old weirdo ass dude face. I don't know who that is. Right. Mm hmm. Man, what's wrong with these niggas, man? Clock chasing that. Man, they done sent the police to the crib. Yeah, but I thought they say they don't do that. That's all they do. And see, that's the thing. They, they, no they keep going back. They keep going back on what they stand on. It, 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 it's. I'm starting to wonder what exactly it is that they stand on because everything they talk about, they stand on. They're going back on. Man, I it's like time. I ain't never heard them stand on that because. If you look at the history of all these content creators that's doing what they're doing um, to Kwame or whatever, they've been doing that to everybody. They just switch people. You know what I'm saying? It's whoever they feel like hot. If you go in their history, I've seen them do it to all kind of folk. It's just that most of them niggas done stepped on their ass already. You think Kwame giving them some mercy? Huh? That's a damn thing, bro. Nah, it's just Kwame an easy picking because he's he, he an ex-NBA player. So they know that goddamn he ain't going to get in the mud with him like that, like that. You know what I'm saying? So they just figure he's the easy it's like, them, the, 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 the I'm pick not, like them. Talk about him. I'm only talking about him because it's week, week's a Wednesday. But other than that. I right, right. I mean, they want you to talk yeah. about him. But see, it makes you see as your position in the world, you know, whether, whether you know you accept it or not. Is we we done got in it in our head that an uh, NBA player should be you know going back and forth with a normal person and all that stuff like that. So it puts you at a disadvantage every single time. You well, say if you do if you do like what these other dudes do and step on there, they just gonna look at you be like, damn nigga, you ain't supposed to be coming off that high horse. And then like it just makes you look bad. So they know you at a disadvantage, and they just take advantage of that shit. Well, the reason why I'll never accept that because I, I just like I, I just can't accept those social constructs. If I, I do get something, it, don't put me in the same jail they put you in. So. Right, right. And I feel the same way. If I was in your position, I, do I get feel it, the same I'm, damn way. But, but I'm not just, saying you're wrong. That's the way it's set up. So I do get it. Right. Yeah, I'll be the same. I, that's why I can relate with what you be saying. I'm like shit. You know, Ben, we from the same place. We we already know, nigga. We the same type, nigga. Like. <laughs> no folks don't give a damn if you are an NBA player, if you're a nigga, you're a nigga, you're a nigga. Yeah. You go in the same place yeah. I'm going. Man, listen, them, to me, them niggas look weak in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, they look weak oh, to yeah. everybody, but they don't mind looking weak. Oh, yeah. That's the thing about it. That's, That's one of the issues that the common man kind of has where it's like, you know, we, we're, we're made to want to stand for something, to stand on something. When we see somebody that don't do that flat out and they willing to do it for whatever the price, it's like, man, you know, it's damn, yo, it's, it's hard to like, you know, take that and just come on here. That's crazy. Feel like that's happening. Oh, shit, that is crazy. Because what they want to be able to say is, 
you know what I'm saying? Oh, he ain't like us. We we normal people. He 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 this and that, this and that, this and that. So they try to stand on that little bit, you know what I'm saying? Instead right. of treating the same like love, big facts. The same amount of things, the same amount of toes. Like, c- come on, yo. Like, same same amount of eyes, same amount of nostrils. Come on, yo. Like, it, it, when you start to really right. just look at things that they try and even portray, like, they try and make people look like gods, but you telling me these That's gods right, look like me, does some people need to believe, like, you know, hey, we gods, if you, you proclaim them gods, they look just like me. So it's like, there's, there's no way the mentality of somebody that kind of just knows that the possibilities can happen. There's no way you can limit that kind of mentality. It's just when they try and when they find that kind of mentality, like when you talk about the yays, when you talk about, you know, you know, with qualms, when you start talking about these kind of people, that limitlessness starts to scare people that want to hinder, you know, the, the potential of what they could be. And it's like, hey, I think I can be that. You know, that means that nigga going to strive to be that. Well, I mean, when we look at our athletes and, and, our, and, our, and, our, and our entertainers and stuff, we expect, well, I ain't going to say we, people expect them to be some kind of different superhero than the normal person and shit. So they can't, they can't say something that's normal as me and you. Like, for example, if I say something about um, the president or anybody or whatever, no, nobody's going to say, damn, that's fucked up you just said that. But if he said it, Oh, all of a sudden, it's all over the internet. It's everywhere. Everybody got to make their judgment or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's just that they looked at it in a different construct. So I, I totally get it. But it's like, I mean, I understand that construct. But based on the fact that, you know, it, it's the differentiating factor. What's in his pockets? Or will we say more or less it's his skin tone? Mm. Like, is it? Because you know we're black, and you know if you get too much money as a black man, you know eyes are always they always on you. But if white man had that same money, would those eyes be on him? I ain't gonna say I wouldn't say that because I've seen a lot of white men that have been treated like that too. It just matter who you submit to, you know what I'm saying? Who you gonna deal with? You get what I'm saying? Who you gonna who you if you gonna let them folk dictate your life or not? It's about your alliances and all that stuff like that. I mean, now we gonna get a little. We might get. We gonna get a little harder because we don't expect it to come from our people. But shit, uh, I've seen white people that get just as much as shit for you know uh, just because of their status. It, it's that celebrity status that 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 really fucks you more than your colors and skin tone. Now the black does come into account, but you know, once you make it to a certain spot, if you make it to a spot of success, man, this world is built on hate. So if you be be successful, now you give people a target that hate on your success, and that's Perhaps a sad reality. Mentality. Right. It's so a sad we'll reality. probably be about that. We'll probably be about the pocket. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, Kwame? I, I didn't know. I'm I'm terrible with technology, so my fault. You know what I'm saying I'm, I'm swagging that. It's so all good. Bad. I don't know if this drone's working or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't It's a little person. choppy, but go ahead. We can hear you a little bit. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, that was making good points, man. Like, I'm surprised I'm even on here. I'm, I'm just, my fault. I'm still a little bit starch. But, uh, nah, it's complete facts, though. But, um, oh, shit, man. I got to turn my notifications off. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, nah, um, I got a question, though. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, what's it called? I mean, it's it's definitely uh, now on, on this. It's it's something completely something different. But uh, I always wanted to know from like a successful standpoint, like what 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 do you used to? Because I can't imagine like when you first got in the NBA, like. How many people just start hitting like probably people you ain't never seen in like probably ever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And just be like just start feeling entitled for all the work that you put in. Like 
I, I, I just want to know, like, what, what did you, like, used to tell yourself to, like, just stay away from or, like, because it's hard to avoid them. It's hard to avoid because they'll do anything. Like, even even after you be like, oh, wait, because you, you can't, um like, react negative, like, towards them because then it's going to be like, oh, um, see you acting brand new or something like that. And then, like, it's a whole nother, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, people around you change. They make everything about money. So my opinion, my regular opinion, I realized that it became null and void. People started to say, well, you don't understand me. I grew up in one of the worst parts of the neighborhood of the town. But as soon as I got some money, it'll be people I grew up with right next to saying, man, you don't understand us. You don't understand the struggle. Nigga, I was just here last year. <laughs> It was just like, you know, it's the, the right, hard, right. <laughs> so the hardest thing, as you can see what I'm dealing with on YouTube, the hardest thing is that no matter what, it's like they want to erase the first 18 years of my life just because I became successful at a game. So no matter what I say, they look at me different. They're going to view me different. They don't want to hear me speak because they think that I'm this celebrity, this made up thing. And I'm telling you, it's the worst thing that people ever got brainwashed to think. They would kill Muhammad Ali if he ran through the neighborhood now. And it's sad. We don't understand how brainwashed we are. We didn't come up with this word. Uh, no offense, but certain white people that want to control people did. And they're definitely controlling people. We're all watching what celebrities do. We're, well, how do you make 99% of people watch the 1% when most of these people are not going to ever make it to the 1%? Yeah, that's a fact. Big Damn, fact. but you articulated that better than I could because that's exactly what I was trying to say. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> it's amazing how I can listen to these dumbass motherfuckers on these lives every day say the stupidest shit in the fucking world. <laughs> and people are like, I don't give a damn about that. He ain't nobody. But if Kwame say anything out of miss, you know what I'm saying, that he could miss yeah. speak about some shit. Oh, it's shit. There's 18 videos up of a bitch trying to tell you you know what I'm saying? That he ain't really like that or whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. That shit amazing. There's always a new false narrative. Yeah. So a lot of the times, the, the family members, I'm telling you, what a young man. I, I used to mentor a young man. I won't say his name. That He played football. And he his story was kind of like mine. He came from a large family. And his hardest navigation was the fights and the things that he had with his own family. Because now they looked at it like he's just supposed to give it to him. He's supposed to give you something. He's supposed to – now my restaurant, my ideals, this man trying to play football, but he got to navigate his uncle's restaurant ideal and this person's ideal and that person's ideal. And if he tell him no, then somehow he's a fuck nigga or he ain't like them or he don't want to see them succeed. So it's a the, – the crazy thing about it is I had some uh, white friends in the NBA that they would ask me questions. And I never get, I never, I had to go back home and analyze why they were asking me these questions. But they asked me, what did you buy with your first check in the draft? And I'm like, my mom a house. And what else did you buy? And I'm like, I bought my brother's this. And I'm just going down the list of things I bought. And then, so I said, well, what did you buy? He said, my dad taught me how to buy stocks. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? I said, man, you a bad son. You ain't buying no, my mama no house. He said, my daddy bought my mama a house already. Why would I buy her a house? I said, you ain't your sister or your cousin, nobody, nothing. He said, for what? My sister's a doctor and this is that. And I just said, well, damn. And I realized, I said, white folks compete in their family. They compete. Yeah. Oh, and they family. already had their foundation set, so he didn't have to spend his money on nothing but learning how to make more money. Mm. No damn, that, that, that's a deep lesson damn. right there. That's damn. real shit. That is real damn. shit. Damn. Damn. But a lot, a lot of these black athletes, they'll be broke because the family, their ideology is nigga, we made it. And that is the worst ideology ever. Is he made it and you guys need to be a supporting cast. If you if he needs his car ship, you get a trucking business and then maybe you can meet his teammates and, and you can ship their cars. It's, it's networking. Mm -hmm. He is your biggest networking opportunity. But instead of looking at it like that. They'll look at it like, just give me something. And I'm and I'm gonna tell a story about it just in my HVAC field. Cause when I came in this trade or whatever, um, the dude that you know kind of taught me the trade, he 
his son from my thing. He was about eight years old when I first started working with him. Man, he would bring him out on the weekends. He would help us and this and that, this and that, this and that. Now that young man is like 28 years old and he's running a business, you know what I'm saying, with 10, 15 employees or whatever. He was trained that <coughs> coming up. He didn't have to ask his dad for no damn money because he already had the wherewithal to already put everything for. And that's something that we do miss in the hood or going through our, our bullshit or whatever, whatever. We're not getting trained up to this. So we we playing catch up by the time we fucking adults. We got to go off and get somebody else's Thanks. education. Go off and have somebody else Thanks. employ us instead of learning how to be a boss coming up the whole time. Not even knowing we're a boss yet. You know what I'm saying? But just knowing how to do this trade oh, already or whatever it is that, you know, uh, you know, either brother, mother, or whatever taught you. And it's almost second nature. You know what I'm saying? So that 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 is a good point, you know, and they're competing. So, you know, you are like, damn, my brother's a doctor. Um, my sister's a this and this, that, this, and that. Nobody has to sit here and depend on the next person and have to call them a fuck nigga because they don't invest in them. Like, no, you're supposed to invest in yourself. I invested in you coming up. You know what I'm saying? You're just supposed to learn. Yeah, that's a good point right there, man. Right. Right. But I mean, we can't help. Now, I, now I'm not blaming ourselves because we can't help our circumstances. You get what I'm saying? We, we dealt with a lot of mental health, especially back in the days and stuff. So now that we're breaking out of that and we have the technology and shit to reach out to other people and all that, we ain't got no excuse no more. We had an excuse before, and that's just, you know what I'm saying? Our ancestors, they were being, you know, oppressed. They were going through, they were fighting for civil rights, the right to vote, you know what I'm saying? All of that stuff. But now we don't have the fucking excuse. Now we're choosing to be ignorant, choosing to be stupid, choosing <laughs> to rather put our kids, you know, in front of a computer instead of teaching them, you know, lessons, valuable lessons and stuff. We're choosing not to have families. We're choosing that shit. Like, we were forced back then. No, no. Right now, people now, now we got now everything at our fingertips, and a motherfucker. I, you I, can't don't, pay I, don't, think we, I don't think we choose it. I, I, think, I, was I think it's, it's being engineered. Yeah, it's being it's being socially engineered. We're telling these little girls they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. As soon as they come out the womb, and they ain't accomplished nothing yet, just because they're little girls. We don't say black boy magic. These little girls are. are it, it's not like that. They're being told that you don't need a man. You don't need to have a family. Mm -hmm. It's almost shunned upon. Woman king. A woman yeah, a king. Woman has, yeah, a woman the woman value has. of a queen. What, what happens to it? Yeah. When we really start getting into the aspects of society, when we see things from the perspective of what's truly going on, like when we talk about, you know, we talk, we talk about the strides towards financial freedom, yet Yay, yeah, as the richest black man in American history, we see what he has to go through off of just saying what he feels. But what freedom are we truly striving towards now? If, if he, every time he speaks, every time he says things, they say this man's crazy, but this is the richest black man in American history. And it's happening right now. That's a good point. Dang, I ain't look at it like that. Dang. Like, well, they got us. They the media wants us to call the richest black man in American history crazy. Like, if we really start addressing the titles, the labels that they don't choose to place that are earned, there they still calling this man a rapper. What you calling Jay Z a mogul, but Kanye's worth even more. Like, are, are we? And then on top of that, he speaks on something towards allegedly toward. The Floyd family, they want to sue him for 150 or 250 million dollars. Go ahead. Bro. We said, I, was saying, I was just saying good night to Mama Pineapple. Oh, my bad. <laughs> but they want to sue him for like 250 million dollars. But you got to think about it, though. You, you still got to think about it, brother. And yeah, we can always be for our people and everything and, you know, whatever, but money should never make you above your sensitivity because if that's your brother say you're George, you know you're George for a brother and somebody with that much power comes out and say that didn't really happen to your brother that's fake i it could be your opinion you get what i'm saying but if the whole world saw it what's his, what's his least power over, what's his power over you his power over who you 
Who's power? You said someone with that much power. What's Kanye's power over you? No, no, not over me. I mean influence. I meant to say influence. Power. What's, his, right what's his influence over you? Oh, not over me is nothing, but he is over a lot of people. They look at him as that. Well, that's their problem. They shouldn't put no, <laughs> no man should have no influence over you to the point where it's altering your emotions and your feelings. Shouldn't behave and decision. They shouldn't. Behavior but behavior we don't. We, we 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 do understand how the human the human reacts. I, well, so, that's I mean, I, I don't understand. I, that I've is never right. Said, but I've but like I'm saying, if a billion, it, right just right. like if that's just like if anybody, like if a very very popular person come on on the television, you do you are responsible for what you put out there to the world. I, I mean, think somebody, I think that's what they told us. Now, that's true. That person, if if I look at things from the Constitution, if okay. everybody has a freedom of speech, I'm not the person that's going to take away your freedom of speech just because you make more money. That's a dangerous path to cross. That means that if I become, if I'm destined to be a millionaire, then that means you're going to take away my work, my my way of my ability to speak just because I bust my ass to get more. That's the American way to bust your ass and get more. That don't mean but, I got to stop my voice just because I bust my ass. To get I ain't more. saying you got to, but you have to be accountable for what you put, the information you put out there. Like I said, for instance, if it's you and your brother was you know, murdered by the police and you went to the funeral, you know what happened. And somebody comes on a public platform, you know what I'm saying, of that statue and they say something I'm like, okay, you got your right to your opinion, but I got the right to fucking sue your ass for slandering my family of opening up that trauma. You know what I'm saying? That's just the American way. I'll say this about a lawsuit. Anybody can file a lawsuit. True. You know what I'm saying? Now Here's the description. Here's the description. Hold on, let Kwame finish up real quick. I want to hear his perspective. My only only problem is that people are putting titles onto other people. Kanye don't. He has a right to his freedom and his happiness. He don't feel the way that y'all feel. You guys are trying to force a social construct onto people. He has a right to change his name to Ye. He has a right to not believe what you believe. So at what point does are you guys going to friend on someone's rights when they say, hey, I don't believe in your social construct. I don't feel like I'm above anybody. I just have more money than you. That's it. He just has more money. Right. That's You're true. right. But and like I say, and like I say, if I come up here and I say that, nobody would give a fuck. What I was going to say was, the reason in my end was when we talk about somebody speaking an opinion on how somebody became deceased and having that opinion be able to be sued for $250 million. There's a they've, never, they've, never done that. That. they've never done that to a white man. I've noticed. It, they're always sensitive I, to uh, 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 you got, I got to stop you right there, Carmen. They just we saw that Alex Jones. Jones. Hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me Let me do a fact check. They just did that to Alex Jones. This man is sued for a billion dollars and they just won. Dude, because of what he said Alex about Jones. Alex. Come on, man. They don't listen. look at Alex Jones. Hold on, hold on. Right. Listen, bro. Yeah, yeah. Hold Let on. me finish. I heard, you. I heard you, but they look at Alex Jones like a right wing Republican. They're going to sue them all the time. Name he got Hillary. sued by he got Name sued by the, the people we'll about that Sandy Hook stuff. We'll give you Alex Jones. Name a clean cut white guy like Kanye, never hurt nobody, just made one little mistake like this, and they sued him for that type of money. I mean, we're only talking one on one though. Because we only name we yeah. we can only name Kanye right now. So I'm just saying we can only name now, Kanye. Now here's why I was gonna come with the example. Like we ain't naming a whole bunch of people. We only named the one on one. Hold on, hold on them. Alex yeah, Jones, Alex Jones went way out to the left, like it didn't happen and all these things. And we know that these is kids that died. So, and George Floyd died, but Kanye West made a mistake because he looked at a documentary that did show a level of fentanyl. I don't agree with his take, but right. he might've made a mistake because they saw the level of fentanyl. But do I-, I, and, I, and, I and I feel the same, we agree though. We definitely agree though, but- if you're putting it out and you, and you and without the facts after the, the case that being done, I mean, I can see if we were speculating. If we were speculating, that's different. But they went to court. You sound like and a robot, they, real quick. Check your mic. Okay, my check bad. your mic. Mic check. Okay, okay. How about now? How about now? Try to say something again. 
How about now? Check, y'all check, hear me check. good now? My check, my check, my check, my check. I sound like a, I'm gonna go that out and come back in. I'm gonna go out and come back in. It's Buzz Life shot. I'm gonna go out and come back Damn, in. Your shit fucked up too. Damn, me too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, your shit sound like a robot. That that was a good question though, man. Like I'm still sitting here thinking about, like, test, um, test, test. If there was another, if there was like another white man, like, I'm still thinking about. That. I don't think I can find an answer for that. One. I might have to Google that one. Yeah, like we all know Alex Jones. Like that, that was crazy for him to say that and go that far. That was just dumb. But like any other, any other person, there's been white men that make money that done made mistakes and done said stuff, and they allowed them to re retract, recant their statement. They don't just go out with a lawsuit a day or two later. This is made to, to me, made to embarrass this brother. And it, how are you going to ask for more money than the people who actually killed George Floyd or the city who was responsible for it? So it's just like, to me, people can do what they want, but just my opinion, this is unfair to Kanye. Now, should he Bash. say what he said? No. But should he be allowed to clean up his words or apologize? I think so. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and um, on that podcast too, man, he was probably drunk as ever too. Right. But my my point was it was like if if it's already been proven in court that's what now if it if it was before court and we just giving the opinion that's one thing but if it had already been proven in court that it, it is when we speak on things just like you know if I came on here and I, well, and I wrote, put out a robot or whatever yo yo mic chopping up again bro okay, what the hell? Man, I'm on the fastest Wi-Fi. I'm on every goddamn thing. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> Let me yeah, shut up. Here. Yeah. I must be saying yeah, something wrong. Let me shut the hell up. <laughs> they got this man sound like a robot, man. That's fucked up. Soon as I go, hey, <laughs> there you go, go. There you go. I'm talking about. I must be talking about the wrong shit. Then let me shut the hell no, up. No, it's, it's clear now. You good? You good right now? I'm about to say I done went and got a Wi-Fi and everything. I'm on the new phone, and everything. God damn. Damn, man. But like, like I was saying, if it's um, if it been the court and it's been proven, you know, through the court of law, we do have to be responsible about the information we put out. That's just my point about it. You know, what I'm saying just I like they hell. I 100 percent agree with that. I, I think that show set people up too. They giving them alcohol. They, they asking him questions. He is an intense guy. I th I think he made a mistake that he should have got a chance to clean up. Because it did say something about a level of fentanyl. I think he was trying to say that. But the level of fentanyl, you're correct. It was proven that it was a lack of oxygen. So he should have been able to correct that, I think. Well, he he he, he did alive today. And he has a chance to correct it. You know what I mean? But it, it just, you know, the family and me just thinking as a person that's lost a brother or lost a mother or something like that, you know, and I can only imagine losing something to the police. You get what I'm saying? I would have been fucking livid. You get what I'm saying? I'd have been like, what the fuck is like millions of people just seen this and we know that there's already that question out there, you know, especially when it comes to certain people. I would have been livid, you know, as a family member. And I'm just thinking outside of myself, you know what I mean? So yes, I want the freedom of speech, but once it's proven, like damn, like don't help carry a narrative that's you know not true or proven not true that that's my what, thing man. what is this person talking about he reported what the doctor said in open court kanye did what did the doctor say in open court that's breaking that the news. guy had that he had fentanyl in his system but see the only <laughs> only th uh, and with him saying that i don't have no problem with him saying he got fentanyl in his system but what he was saying on drink champ was his knee wasn't really on his neck like that that's insulting. Like, come on, bro. We we you're telling us we all blind. You know what I'm saying? Like, we watched the video, and yes, we wasn't there. But there, the people that actually were there, they came to testify. You get right. what I'm saying? The man is doing time about this shit, and we know how hard it is to um to convict the police officer. So it definitely was the evidence that he had his neck on his head. I mean, on the man neck, and the autopsy say. He died from lack of oxygen. Yes, he did have fentanyl in him. It could have maybe sped up his blood system or whatever. 
but we let the doctors determine that and they determined that the man's cause of death was from the knee to the neck. So it's kind of insulting. Well, they, they got, they, what they're doing is Candace brought out some court documents that saying different camera angles had his knee on his shoulder. I don't give a damn if his knee was on his shoulder, neck, whatever. At some Any point, of them. When a man is begging for his life, you got to get the fuck up on. Why? Why is that even a talk? Amazing right? things. On his neck, right. Get off of this man and let him breathe. If you feel, like even if he, even if he would have lived, it would have still, it should have still been outrage about the way you know what I'm saying of how they handle him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, only why they only outraged because he passed. But even if that man would have lived, that type of shit should have had a light on it, and we do not need to be accepting this type of shit. Right. So I didn't. I didn't agree with uh, Candace on that, and I didn't agree with Kanye on that because my thing is, if a person is terminal and they got cancer, I can't shoot them and say I didn't kill them because they got cancer. So if he right. had, a, if he had a lethal dose of fentanyl, sit him up, sit him on the ground. He ain't going no damn where. It's five of y'all cops. And if he can't breathe and he in the fit and all get him, then at least they'll know without any doubt what happened. Instead of you kneeling on a man's back that long, I would never want to uh, uh, lay on the ground if I felt like some cops gonna stand on my back. I don't want to fight y'all. Just lock me the fuck up. Right. And, it, and I think that's really the only bad. thing that really got him in trouble with the family. You know, just him saying that he wasn't really on his neck like that. Cause I that will that's what would have. Made me live it. I was like, hell no. Nah. You can't end like you could do something to them. So the only how you could teach I, people is to hit their fucking pockets. Well, I said, honestly, the main I, thing I is his last breaths. Yeah, I say, main thing is his last breaths happened with that cop in that position. Hold on, they the said fact Candace. that that happened right there. What did Candace say, what about she say? today? That was, I don't know what she said, but well, she had she she good. had a documentary. What well, what Kanye said, and somebody asked me that I watched the full interview. Yes, I I actually watched it three times. I was, I watched it at work. I was gonna do a live about it tonight, but I changed my mind. I might do it tomorrow. But anyway, what she what he said was he seen a document documentary that she made where it's showing that he wasn't really on his neck like that and that George Floyd didn't die from, you know, that cop put his foot on his uh, knee on his neck. But uh, Nori them, Nor them cut him off kind of before he got too deep into that. Well, I'm with Francis Green. Neck or not, four cops on one goddamn man is, is obsessive to me. That's too I'm with you on that, too. I, I feel yeah. like even if he wouldn't have died, I'm with it, it should have been just as much as Mike Brown. Right. I had a cop one and time, nothing, nothing. Uh, Kwame, quick quick story. I had a cop one time. I was in Atlanta or whatever. I'm going to cash a lottery ticket. You know what I'm saying? I'm minding my business. I ain't doing nothing. Never been so innocent in my motherfucking life. And I pull into this parking lot or whatever, and I'm going to just make the story fast. But long story short, a whole bunch of cops came out uh, undercover. They was ICE cops. They came out this side building or whatever. They thought I was some foreigner or something, and they was having some kind of sting in there. I ain't got no idea about, but they just racially profiled me, pulled me out of my truck, guns to my head, all this shit. Like these folks could have killed me, but being that I didn't die, because they they did all kind of excessive force shit to me. But being that I didn't die, when I called the the regular police, I called CNN, all the motherfuckers like, oh, you must have did something wrong. That's what they pretty much was telling me, and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. I got witnesses out here and all that, but the fact that I didn't die, nobody gave a fuck. But we, they'll let this type of shit happen, you know what I'm saying? And until you die, that's when all of a sudden you can sue and they want to sweep it up under the rug, all of that bullshit, you know what I'm saying? When it could be, man, we could just do something about it and stop giving them man, passes so much until somebody's dead behind it. Man, they got, I ain't gonna lie to you, is, yo, that's... they got a lot of conflicting stories about this case from what Candace Owens is saying, but I'm not speaking about this damn case. I'm gonna let Candace Owens. Yeah, yeah. Don't get yourself in no trouble because I could talk about it on my channel. Yeah, well, yeah, if you man. talk about it on this channel, motherfucker, you ain't oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, like I say, I think the only thing I'm gonna say is from my from personal them. experience. I think it's wrong that regardless of whether they say a knee on the neck or knee on the shoulder, knee period for eight minutes with your hand in your pocket, to me, that's too damn much. If you got off of this man, he may have had a chance to live. 
Now I'm claustrophobic and I know how they making these cars so goddamn small and putting their hands behind your back. They treat animals better than they treat some motherfuckers they take to jail. It's like I don't why do I gotta ride so uncomfortable and so fucked up just to go to jail? If and I the if reason I, that I do my I do my time, I'll, I'll go to jail, but goddamn, why I gotta ride like a hog? And the reason yeah. they do stuff like that, cause they so used to getting away with it. Like I said, if you don't die, if they would have did that to him and he didn't die, nobody would ever gave a fuck that they had their neck on uh knee on his neck. If he'd have just went into a coma for a while and came out, like none of that none of the stuff would have been spoken about. So they get they get away with so much without being checked that that's that's why that stuff has become normal. And like you say, it's like now I agree with him on putting you in a fucked up car though, because you can't make these niggas comfortable. (laughs) A lot of niggas are comfortable going to jail. They go to jail for the hell of it. So they try to make it uncomfortable as possible, but there's still a line that gotta be drawn. Hold on, ears. I think somebody could give you some pushback. Style by hustle lock said about three times you misquoting him. She said I misquoted Kanye. Kanye clearly said he saw a documentary. I can't his own. He said it out of his own mouth. Yeah, he did say that. And he said that uh, and, and where he was not, where the cop wasn't really on the man's neck like that. He died of an overdose of fentanyl. I'm not yeah. misquoting it. I'm saying what the, I'm, I'd have watched the damn thing three times because I couldn't believe in my goddamn self. I wasn't mad at him for saying it. I just said that was irresponsible. Right. I mean, I'm not misquoting. Him. I, I'm not saying, oh, oh I hate Kanye. Or none of that. No, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying what he was saying. That's it. <laughs> That's this Well, shit. If they, if, I mean, I'm not gonna give no pushback on it because I really didn't see all of what he said, but I know it was an uproar about what he said, and I damn sure don't agree with the, like I said, the need. Period. But that shit hard to watch. Uh, like when. Just looking at the documentary, I had to fast forward that part. Yeah. Right. And me, I listen. Even stuff that I don't want to hear, I'm like, it it make me cringe. It's still my responsibility to pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I I just watch everything. Even if it's somebody I like, somebody I don't like, I try to take it from the same angle, you know what I'm saying? And look at it human. And, you know, it wasn't right, but it's just right to say what he want to say. But as a family member or something like that, I would have been fucking livid. And if I can't get you no kind of way, I'm going at your damn pockets because you're going to respect my family. That would be my opinion about it. Well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't sue if it's my family member and they died and that brother. Now, if he didn't give if he was just going on there and he don't give it, I gave him an opportunity to make it right and he didn't make it right. Then I'm going all in. But if I, I can agree with right, you there. I would definitely give a person to say, hey, look, I know you only saw a documentary, but I think you need to clean up what you said because that documentary or whatever is inaccurate. And I would show why it was inera- inaccurate. And that's that. And, you because, know, because what I, he said is, is super viral like, right now. You got millions of people that have seen this now. So yeah. it, it's Would like, the richest black man in America be more helpful as an ally or as an enemy? Right, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it over. Now, I would, I'm guaranteeing you if they talk to Kanye, man to man. Uh, I think Kanye, they allegedly said Kanye donated uh, two million dollars to the to the daughter, didn't he? Yeah, he donated Ooh. to the to the situation. So of course, so a man, so you can't give this brother a chance to make it right. You know he's not trying to be malicious. You know he might have got fed some bad information. You know, said he was bipolar allegedly. So why not get a brother a chance to clean up his mistakes? Because he's a billionaire. He has the most resources. Nah, he has the most resources out of ears, anybody. No ears, no ears. I can't accept that excuse. His money. You can't count no man's pocket. But li- listen to what I'm about to say. You ain't no, listening to what on, I say. Let me, let, me, let me just say this. I'm talking about okay. just from this point of view. You talking about how much money he got. I'm talking about from a good hearted person standpoint. He didn't have to give nobody nothing. So for somebody to get, come out of their pocket and give $2 million, you don't turn around and count their pockets and talk about how much more you got? No, no that's that, what I, that ain't what I'm saying. I'm saying he has the resources to find the right information from his money. I'm not saying, oh, he got beaten and he should have gave up this and that. No, not that. Not, not saying it like that. I'm saying he has no excuses why he wouldn't have the right information. 
because he has the he has now, unlimited resources. Come on, he is, he get, now if they all if they already control. limit exactly what it is he speaks on, on if they limit what exactly he speaks on, but they not already limit what knowledge he Hold can on, possess. Let me, let me get some perspective there. So you saying because he got money, he can't speak out of turn, get drunk on drink champs, and say something stupid, and and be forgiven for it, and get a chance to apologize. I'm not saying he can't be forgiven. He can't give him a chance to apologize. What I'm saying is this man has more context, more research to find out the actual truth than to have to say, I'm going to quote what somebody else is saying and give out some misinformation on a platform well, that's reaching believed, out to millions. He, he, what if he believed the information that he got from somebody that he thought was good, good at researching? And he just said something wrong. I just don't understand. I can agree. I can agree to that. And he can't. And he has that right to believe that. But there's a court system that proved that different. So I would think that he would use the same resources that talking, court system. I'm not used. talking about him having a right to believe it. I'm saying he believed in bad information. His personal belief. If, yeah. Okay. If, His personal belief thought, was bad. Yeah. What if I he thought understand. that the person that gave him that information was actually an ally? You see, he bought the bipolar from. Candace Owens. So clearly he trusts Candace Owens. So he got the information from Candace Owens. It may have been bad information. Can You see he's not from a malicious place. He gave $2 million allegedly. Allow the man to come to the family and apologize. And I, I agree though. He should be allowed to do that. He should be allowed say, to do that. If you but you know once Kanye, you get that toothpaste uh, out of the toothpaste. Hold on, what you say to this? Okay. What you say to this? If you're gonna sue Kanye, then why ain't Fox News up next? Mm. Yeah, they done had that shit. They done been sued too for the same type of shit. You remember what the no, Bill O'Reilly shit? I'm not, hold on now, ears. You you you, you go around what I just asked you. Fox News said almost, Fox News said almost the same exact thing, damn near. So okay. why ain't Fox News next? Or say or right along with Kanye. Who I can't say if they is or not. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, as if it was me, as that family member that's probably suing his ass, I would say you're bringing a Fox News narrative to this. That's what I would feel like. So then why not sue Fox News as well if you that they, messed up about it? It, it's, it might be possible that they have. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that's Because true. there's a lot of people that are getting sued for pushing that narrative. I don't know if they is or not, but there are a lot of people that's getting sued because of that narrative, being that it's been proven in court. That I, I, that think, it's, I true. think it's exactly like you said. It's about Kanye's personal money. We don't like to see a nigga with no money, and that's my opinion. If they're going to sue Kanye, they should, get sue Black Man. they should sue Fox News and everybody else that said that shit. But it's an attack on Kanye, Kanye personally. Ain't no way in the hell somebody give me $2 million, and then I can't go to that person and say, hey, man, that's some fucked up shit you said. You won't notice, nigga. You need to apologize publicly or we're going after you. I'm not no day, two days later, got no $250 million lawsuit just because he got money. I but how do you get in contact with a billionaire? The same you way you got him to apologize. Him to the, the same way you got in contact with him to get the money? And through lawyers? Exactly. True. But then if you but then you got to pay those lawyers and you ain't getting nothing out of it. How you know? Okay, ain't no lawyer ain't gonna go talk to Kanye for free. You gotta hit their ass with a bag. But if you promise them that that's, it's gonna be a lawsuit that's behind, what you, that's what you assuming though is. Oh, okay, they, okay. I'm pretty sure if Kanye gave two million dollars, I'm gonna have somebody's personal contact that gave me two million dollars. I'm gonna have the manager's number. I'm gonna have somebody number that can get me in touch with Kanye, and I'm gonna make sure even if I gotta issue a public statement. It's so hot in the news right now. I'm issuing a public statement. You got you got two days to recant what you just said, or the lawsuit gonna hit. If you don't do that, then you know what it is. But I thought it was illegal to, to, to get. Out. I, I could be wrong. I thought it was illegal, like to get out in front and threaten to sue people like that. No, it, it, it may be, but I, people do that all the time. You already seen motherfuckers just do that to me. I know, I know, but I know, but I, I, know, but I let them. I, I I know they. I know that they shit don't fly because I already know what the fuck. You know, so I know that they cancel themselves out by jumping out there and doing all that. So I, I just heard, listen to I it with heard, a grain of salt. I just heard Herschel Walker say he's going to sue somebody if they don't recant. I've heard a lot of people. That's not threatening. That's just putting you on notice. That's just like giving you a cease and desist. 
Somebody can put you on notice that you put out false information and that if you don't recant it, that they can sue you. I don't see nothing illegal about uh, or illegal about that. OK, I, like I said, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm always open to be wrong. But just the fact that to me, they didn't reach out to him after they, he allegedly gave two million. Like, come on, man. And Kanye done said some things like we can't we can't not forget the element that Kanye done said some things that's going to piss a lot of people off. Now, what, so, what if he didn't get him two million? Let's not act like that Kanye didn't say something that's going to piss people off. Even 50 Cent, 50 Cent said it in his own way. Kanye is going down a dangerous path because we all know there's certain groups and there's certain things that you cannot say. And Kanye said those things. And he said he ain't sorry. He, not, he missed that part. That dude asked him on the... Uh, he, he said asked, he put his he life said, on the line. Apologize for those things. He said, no, absolutely not. And then he apologized for the way people felt about but wouldn't that, wouldn't that kind of fit into what you just said, though? Like, uh, the people giving him a chance to apologize, and he's saying, I feel how I feel. No. Well, I respect the group that did give him a chance. That's the only people that did. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. That's the, that's normally the protocol. You just proved my point. They, did, they brought him on an interview. And they asked him, are you going to apologize? And they allowed him to say what he was going to say. They let him apologize. That was his choice to say no. Yeah, that was his choice to say no. Now, he could have said, I'm sorry to everybody. But the way he said it, I don't know if they're going to accept that. He said, I, absolutely not. And then he said, I, I, I think he said, I apologize for the way you got if I hurt people, <laughs> if I let people down, I apologize for that. <laughs> I think ears mic done went out. No, no, I'm here. I'm just listening. I don't want to be cutting off. I'm, I'm giving the other brothers a chance to put in. Oh, go ahead now. Well, what one, one thing I definitely say is what Ye really did, honestly, I see he exposed when we talk about when we talk about exposing snakes in the grass. You got to cut it. You cut it with a sharp blade at high volume speed. A lot of things happen irrationally when it comes to yet. You can't think about what's about to happen because you don't really know what's going to happen with him. But then when he comes out and he says these specific things, and even before drink chance, for some reason, Puppy was texting him. Hey, that White Lives Matter shirt is telling us you don't love black people no more. He said, hold on, yo, this is fabric. Nah, nah, that, the message you're portraying is saying that you don't love black people. And then he called him fair off rip because it seems like the way Diddy's coming back is irrational. Why well, are you, you see why anything are you coming to that conclusion? Can, can I ask you this? Do you see anything weird that, okay, he say Diddy would say that to him and then he would go on to Diddy's platform, not with Diddy, to maybe, you know, talk with him and maybe them get an understanding, but just go on this platform and then all of this comes out. Like, I, I don't know if I'm the only one saw that and thought that was weird, but now, I one just thing thought that I say, was strange. One thing I say that kind of nullified it is within two days they ended up wiping the video as if he was never there. Why was so he it's there not from like the beginning though up. if they already had the smoke like that? That's that's my thing. Like, okay. They thought you they all thought right. he this man already there. told people it's a green light if they wear this shirt and y'all know that there's a clear disagreement with it. How do you end up on his network you know what I'm saying? Knowing that y'all two have these kind of beliefs or whatever and these kind of problems. Because he was dissing Diddy all through that fucking shit. So, I they mean... They thought he was going to show up with the mentality that he was green lit. He showed up with the mentality that he knew he was green lit. He returned with a red light. Within two days, they shut that video down because of what he said. Man, the if, video if you itself, come on my network oh, and you oh, dish... If you come on my network and you disrespect me, calling me the feds and all kind of saying all kind of shit about me, I don't give a fuck what you said about somebody else. You getting the fuck off of my channel. And that's just real shit. 
We can make it out about why, everything dude. else. But if you come on, if you come on my network and you say you call me all these things and you say all these misinformation things about me, yeah, your shit is coming the fuck down. That's just my opinion. Now, and he said that before they even had the episode. So he knew that that's what time he was on. He was he was approaching the circumstance as if he said, okay, well, maybe he's mended it now because I'm giving him this platform to speak. And Ye simply let him know it ain't nothing mended. This is how, per se, we're still going to go about it. I'm standing on what I'm standing on. Whether America or oh, anybody don't care. like him, this man continues to say he puts his life on the line. It, it, it continues to wonder me why this fight continues to be pushed on. Yet now, Ye is saying he's putting his life on the line and the, the moves are irrational. But still, you see it quaking because people are popping out. Yeah, I, Why I think stuff popping out is like a thing. I think we could have stuck together more than we did this. Just like the, the J folks, they brought him over there like a man. They sat him down. They're going to make millions of views off of his comments. Just like the young lady said, they asked him a question. They're not going to take the video down. And they got what they wanted from him. And if they're not satisfied, you know what they're going to do. They're going to cancel them. So that's how I, I that's how they should have handled it, in my opinion. I just think it looked bad that, you know, they go that far, in my opinion. But his comments was definitely out of place. And, you know, hopefully I think, apology would do it. But taking $250 million, that just don't make sense to me. But, you know, sometimes they just that's throw that out. family, though, man. You know. But it, Why does a black family high. want to take two hundred and fifty million from a black man? But now, I, bro, when black it comes to that type of stuff, I don't want to be hearing no black shit because we all are black people. That man that died is a black man. But so we so gotta stop so giving so people just because they made a billion or they're a good no, musician. I'm, I'm saying it just because he gave two million. That's what I'm okay. saying. Okay, That's okay. A black man that gave you two million dollars, and there's so many white, there's so many white news stations that said. The same, almost the same kind of stuff. It was disrespectful as hell, and they not being sued. You I get now. I, I totally yeah, understand I that part, and I wouldn't say they are not because these folks been sued a lot of folks. I think, you know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm gonna have to do some more research on it, but I believe he's more, it's more than just him being sued. He's just the most popular one that's being sued. Well, I mean, what influences his popularity? Right. So do you think it's do you think if he if he was saying that he was in fear of being greenlit or if somebody gonna greenlit somebody from wearing a shirt, do you think that that's the responsible thing to do? Green light somebody over a shirt? No, no, definitely not. There's, there's, there's no reason to do that over fabric. No, so I understand opinion, what that's what's wrong with our community more so uh, than the police. Our community but, is too it, it's too sensitive. To words and it turns deadly. Uh, but the what, no, the no it's like, man, I, polish. If we can get rid of the no snitch clause and get rid of that snitching shit, because niggas that's on the sidewalk, you ain't you can't never be no snitch. Then we gotta start now the roughest part of that. Because now we don't have I say the roughest part of that, that is like my bad, my bad. I, I keep I keep interrupting. No, go ahead. The roughest part of that is we're depending our protection on a system that's never really been on our side when we talk about necessarily 12. If we was to say, all right, we're not going to do this because we got old homies that's going to tell us, yo, you, you, there's repercussions behind what you did. What did that's limiting our mindset towards what exactly it is we're about to do to the point that we're not going to do it. That's deeper than 12. Whereas we look at 12 already, they're already looked at as oppressive figures towards us. Like, how, how can we have a piece of respect that's not accompanied by fear towards 12? Whereas, like, we can have a uh, or we can have a pops or fake pops that we just kind of, you know, call pops that just live on the block and he just know. Hey, don't you don't you do nothing stupid. But he's saying that because he mean that today. 
Like that's that always hits different than 12. 12 can only mean but so much. They're only accompanied by fear. That's the power that they have. And the sad thing about it is that high number was strategic. Because if you talk, if you start talking about settlement, it goes down from that high ass number. And so that's why they put that number up that high. They know that's that's way exactly that, that's what but, I would say. But even with the unrealistic unrealistic number, that's still a number. If they accept it, you got to fight that number and work down from that number. If I were if I'm working down from a if I'm working down from a lower number, that's easier to swallow than a number like that. And that that, that to me was a little bit excessive. But well, when it comes to that green light thing, I, I kind of want to touch on that just a little bit. Man. I felt like um, when Diddy said that, it's like we we all know what the green light means, but we can all understand that that was going to green light a lot of people who didn't understand like what his motivation was behind it. Because everybody had the opinion about his motivation behind it. Because if we're talking about fashion, there was nothing fashionable about just putting those words on there. I mean, let's all just be a hundred. Well, you know I don't agree saying? with that. I don't agree with that. I think it was fashion. I think it was, that's what fashion does. You, They do that. All the people that it, that is in fashion, they make the most outlandish outfits to make a statement. That's the reason why he made that statement. It was doing fashion week. Everyone was watching. So we don't have to agree with his method. But we all know what we can agree on that we can back up by fact is that during Fashion Week, there's a there's a certain number of eyes on Fashion Week. And that's one of the highest viewed things, which is Fashion Week. And that's why people make statements during that time. And did you did you hear what he was saying on what's the name when he said, well, the reason I put it because my wife is white, you know, what I'm saying my uh, my the, the Children of my son is white. And I feel like we're being dragged into this black white thing. And you're telling all the black folks they should jump behind you when it was your choice to go marry a white woman like you don't know what comes behind that. That be actually, my issue. I actually think people didn't pay attention to what he said in the interviews after he wore the shirt. People are so caught up in the shirt. His interviews nice. after that shirt, before he made that little mistake that he made on drinks champs those interviews were beautiful before he did something that offended the jay people his interviews explained everything he did and he grabbed that situation and he started talking about black lives matter and the thing that he really wanted to talk about and people didn't pay attention to that they were still so butt hurt about a shirt i don't I actually, a for a shirt i, I actually paid attention or white, white lives matter shirt i would wear all lives matter shirt and what did we do i I what thing you got to say about Drake? It it it's an awful lot of like he went. Hold on, y'all. I can't hear y'all. You're talking at the same time. Who, My who man, go ahead. I'm going to let him talk. I'll go out there. All right. This going to be quick. One thing I will say about drink champs is it's an awful lot of liquor that goes into them cups and goes down you know, where it needs to go. There, there is, we do have to kind of see, well, we do have to understand that, you know, that's, that is happening during that three hour and 40 minute interview. So, you know, yeah. there is a piece of that there. Now, that's all I was saying. You go ahead, Ears. Well, Ears, somebody said that he said, uh, y'all made my wife rich. I remember him saying that because all he was making a common general statement, white lives matter which they do because motherfuckers kept up with the Kim Kardashians so much that they're billionaires. Even the little sister is a billionaire. They're, they're, we're not buying black people belts. We're buying white people Louis Vuitton belts. So I don't even understand why people get so bent out of shape when the, the money we spend proved that everybody else lives matter than us, more than us. We don't go shop with each other. We don't shop. I don't, know. I don't know who Gucci is besides Gucci Mane. Well, shit, plenty of motherfuckers know who Gucci is, and he ain't no black man. They go no, hide his, uh, Nick, Nick, neither is Bissy uh, Lago. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we talk, <laughs> in, in my head, and this is just my opinion, when the whole shirt thing went down and he went on these, you know, interviews or whatever, 
it seemed to have turned politics all of a sudden from the fashion or mm -hmm. the hip hop, you know. So if you're going to tell me this statement, you know, just in general about what's going on, I'm fine with that. But then when it leads back to politics and it leads back to a party kind of shit, then it makes me feel like it's a play. The same, way, the same know. way when Hillary comes out with the hot sauce and shit, I know you're trying to play on our mind. So, I don't you know what I'm saying? I feel like he's out. trying to play on white people's mind. Not our mind. I feel like he was trying to she play on the white people's mind to like, so, hey, when I run on 2024 or whoever I endorse, y'all need to like me just as much as me carrying the black vote into. Because I feel like Kanye is trying to win over a black vote to either bring for himself or someone else. That's just my opinion because every time he does one of these antics lately, it's been leading right to politics. I think he was playing politics the whole time. I mean, it's clearly to see. I think he wanted you to see uh, the message about Black Lives Matter. If somebody raised and, and show you that stop getting behind these groups because they don't help you. If they really raised $80 million and dispersed money out to all white companies and LGBT, that is fucking nuts. And y'all missing the point. You're more mad at Kanye than seeing what he actually was trying to say. Stop this hatred of white people because you don't really hate white people. And yeah, I can't say Balenciaga. I don't know what the fuck that shit is. I'm not rich. My bad for me. Yeah, but there, there's not there's mo most people, nobody really hates white people. Everybody work with white people. From the big wigs on down. Ain't none of these rappers really hate white folks. They love white folks. They work for them. They own the companies. They hey, and, that, and I get it, Kanye. He made that point. He said all white people are rich. Matt Miller. He said Trump. He said all of them. And he made that point. So it's like, so I got that out of him. Like, sometimes you just got to know what your enemy is and know how to work with him. And sometimes you got to deal with what you got to deal to create something different in a new route. You know exactly. what I'm saying? But, you know, so there's points where I agree with him. But there's are insensitive things that I think I didn't agree with him because sometimes I just feel like the man out of touch. Yeah, you black. You what Kanye said was more insensitive than what Black Lives Matter, the organization or whoever that stole all this money or dispersed all this money out and it never hit the black community. All these black men and women that died and they rioted and made money and fought in the name of George and Floyd and all these people. And they didn't they allegedly didn't pay the bill at the apartment that he stayed. Like, come on, that's that's right. You're gonna worry about what somebody say yeah, more than what actually yeah. No, not necessarily, because we all we all know where Black Lives Matter started and where it ended. See, the the, the Black Lives Matter, the organization on, is different from the people. I, I, hold on, ears. I don't know where. So tell me where. Break it down to me. Okay, okay. So a lot of people, like you know myself, of course, I'm thinking Black Lives Matter. Us as a people, we need to just put more light onto what's going on and as far as we killing each we other and I get what I'm point. saying you gotta what let me go. you gotta let me get to the point because you can't just say stuff and throw it out there because then you're gonna ask another question behind it so sometimes I was trying to get to you know what I'm saying uh why I'm about to say Lord. what I'm saying go ahead brother now hold on now I'm gonna put you on mute I want him to have the floor go ahead here Okay, I, I kind of had lost my train of thought, though, man. I'll I let him go ahead, though. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a I, I was, no, I was, I was about to get to the point. It's just that I want this, instead of saying that on the back end, I would have rather say it on the front end because sometimes we have to think as from normal citizens or from normal people, like, okay, yeah, we don't have to agree with something, but we still have to think of it as, you know what I'm saying, how would you feel if it was you? You know what I'm saying? So there's a Black Lives Matter of the people of how it was like, okay, we all matter and everything. And then it gets infiltrated from these organizations and stuff because they see that, yeah, we could be powerful if we all came together. If we all use that money the right way and all that stuff like that, it could have been powerful. But if you infiltrate it and then people are using it to uh, in, in, in a way to you know, who, to separate who the, you. Who's the people you speak of? Because the leader and founder of it. The leader. The leader and those people who misuse this money and that right now we have black people say, hey, look at those black people that did y'all so wrong. But you're not thinking about the people who 
we're really there for the right cause. We're only thinking about those 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 slick ass motherfuckers that infiltrated the movement. And now no we can just throw Sorry. now we can throw away now we can throw away the whole fucking cause because somebody infiltrated the movement. It still doesn't stop oh, I, I what's going on. Push. Hold on, ears. I got to give you some pushback. You keep using the word infiltrate. How can you use the word infiltrate when the woman who started the Black Lives Matter movement, she's the one who retired or let a, or, or walked away and allegedly bought all these houses? She wasn't infiltrated. She was the founder of it. It's the difference between the founder and somebody like she's not the only. She founded it on people's intention. You get what I'm saying? Like you come in I and know. everybody's in. so okay, she, yeah. So if, it, if there's one, so if there's one bad apple, that don't mean everybody that was behind that bad apple were bad apples. They just got bamboozled at a time. So, so if the she's the founder, apple? she go ahead. I'm asking, what was the good apple though? I, I hear a bunch of words, salad. I'm gonna be honest. I I mean that's because you gotta actually listen, bro. You kept cutting me off every time I was trying to get to a point. So you can't say that you can't hear the message if you don't even let me even finish half the time. But, but I go ahead. Now I'm about to cut you off. I didn't cut you off. Now I'm cut you off. But it seemed like you're not answering the question that I'm asking. I asked about money. You started talking about the split of the organization and the feeling. And because when I was going on about it, you cut me off. That's why I couldn't okay, get well, to the point. I'm, I'm going back on mute. Let me know when you're done. No, I'm gonna go ahead. Cause I can't. I, I, I mean, I was just correcting you on what you were just misquoting what I was saying. Cause well, you'll I, say that, oh, I, you hear you feel. You'll say you hearing words salad. But I was saying when I was trying to make my point, when I, even when I first began and started off, you stopped me before I could even get to my point. And then when I start talking again, you actually stopped me again. So when you get, if you get confused on my point. Then that's where it gets. So you don't allow it, it, it. Wouldn't that's where it wouldn't make sense because if you don't let to let a person get but to here, that point, you don't have to adjust your talking style. You have to allow for interjection in a conversation. There's a thing called interjection, and when you say things like it was infiltrated, but then I got to interject and say, wait a minute, how can you use the word infiltrate when the person who founded the whole organization was allegedly one of the people who took some of the money? So that would not be an infiltrate. That would be somebody who started the foundation and misused and misappropriated funds, and she's the leader of it. How is that? How is that infiltrate? Because she was using the emotion off of the people who was willing to get behind it. That's what I'm saying. But does that make it an infiltrate? Yes, it does. If the founder you're, you're infiltrating the people. If you if you know that these people heart are set on this or set on uh doing something about something corrupt and you come and take advantage of that, you know what I'm saying, by saying, Hey, look at me, I'm a black person, I can do this for you or whatever. Yes, you can infiltrate a movement. The same way with the Black Panthers. Hey, they had this, they well, I ain't gonna get all off, but you know, that's what infiltration is. So who infiltrated the movement? You just said that. I didn't say the she woman did. who started the organization. There was the people God. who like Black Lives Matter, our lives matter. Y'all killing our kids. They was marching in the street, and then you have a person say, "Hey, here's the organization. Let's put it in the corporate way. Let's put it lay. Let, let's let's put it all up front and all that. This and that. You're infiltrating what the people were standing from. Or you can I call it honestly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the word infiltrate. I would use the word she robbed. Well, well, I mean, I mean, both of us can have a different vocabulary or whatever, but it wouldn't say that I'm wrong. It's just saying that we're looking at it as two different words or we're wording it different. Well, I'm just, I'm speak just on this? when you use the word infiltrate, that means someone has to come in and change what you had already in place. Uh, unless if, I, what's the definition of infiltrate? Someone has to come in, right? Right, and that's kind of what she did with the with the organization of it. Because so think was, about what was think about what was happening at the time, right? When the whole uh because it started with the guy that got choked out about the uh cigarettes, right? And then we had the because we, we all focused on the George Floyd thing, but it was actually a collection of things that was happening. And you had people standing up with the Michael Brown thing. You had real people out there in the street that were really fighting. 
the Tamir Rice thing, you had people that were out here wanting something to happen. Like, but then it comes where you say, we got to do it in an organized way so you can have a person come in and look like they're about to be the Moses and lead us along. And people are so already emotionally drawn into it that they can go along. Now you get infiltrated. Now your movement is infiltrated for somebody's personal greed. Here's why I can't accept the word infiltrate. From what it looks like, it wasn't infiltrated, that it was very calculated. Because I don't think it's a coincidence that the founding people of a Black Lives Matter organization are a, power, are a part of the LGBT community. And majority of the funds were allegedly spent on organizations and friends and family and a lot of LGBT events. So I don't think that was a coincidence. I think that was manipulation. I think that was stealing. I think that was misuse of people's funds and the people who donated to that cause I'm sure they wouldn't be uh, they wouldn't be donating to get escorts and things of that nature. So that has nothing to do with infiltration, in my opinion. It, it was calculated. You're talking about somebody that allegedly Candace Owens seen this woman in pictures with somebody that owns a restaurant and then they receive two million dollars and they're not black. I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that's infiltration. I think that's calculated. Sound like the go along, get along game. Right. And then now they speak of these two groups and they're divided. When Black Lives Matter came out, nobody said nothing about no different organization and no different group. And they said that after they found out when people started questioning the whole the nuclear family thing that was on their website. We're here to destroy the nuclear family and this and this and that. When when people started questioning their mission statement, that's when this whole so-called split and, and all this thing so-called happened. But initially it was just Black Lives Matter. And so we, we can't like paint this with a broad, uh, a, a sensitive brush. If we're gonna attack Kanye when he's trying to point out the fact that, hey, these funds raised $80 million. $80 million could have went a long way. Can we see 20 million? Can we see? And then allegedly some more money got invested in the stock market. Is that money going to go to the black community? Hey. Sound like a pyramid scheme. We don't like to hold people accountable when our feelings get involved. When our that that slogan was a good slogan. It sounds good. And that's what's wrong with us. We like things that sound good. And then we get too embarrassed to admit that damn, they fucked us over. This person might have fucked us over. This person went from, how do you go from uh, yelling and shouting with no money and now you move to the houses on the hills where ain't no black people, where it's almost the less black people you can find. And we say infiltrate, I think that was strategic. The well, we're pretty much saying the same thing, but we're disagreeing about the wording. And that's something that as black people, we have a problem with also. Because we can all be on the same page, but then just because if somebody say a word that you can't agree with or you don't, if you ain't understanding the point of view, then it all can get, you know what I'm saying, a clown or, you know what I'm saying, backfired or whatever like that. Can you read actually what saying the same thing? The importance of what, communication. Hold on now. Do you, can you read what uh, Snoop Jones just said, Ears? Ears. Can you see that screen? Uh, you talking to me? No, I'm talking my ears to the street. Oh, okay. I'm off my back. His mic might be out, but I agree with this same sentiment. And this is yeah, I, I see. I see what he's saying, but just because yeah, he right. said it and he agree with you, that doesn't mean that it's it's co it's correct. It's I'm saying that when with, it's not about agreeing with me. I think that is an actual fact. I don't think you can infiltrate if it came from within inside. The person who created it stole, allegedly. So how can that be infiltration? That just don't make sense to me. Okay, but you're saying the person is a black person that started, but then there's they're said that George I'm not Santos. Color. I'm not okay, saying but, Okay, well, okay, if a white person started Black Lives Movement, that wouldn't that wouldn't feel like an infiltration. I think he put the money up to start. He There is no starting that. I think uh, Patrice McCullough 
uh, is the one, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but allegedly she's the one. We just keep saying this dude, George Soros, but the person that took ownership of it and said that she started it was Patrice McCullough. Now, wouldn't that look like infiltration? I mean, it look oh, well, I ain't going to ask you because you I got know your opinion now. I'm saying to me that looks like infiltration because of a white man that's um, supposedly has other agendas. If he's going to fund a, a movement of black people feeling oppressed just to turn around and it turns out to be a scam, that would look like an infiltration to me. That's all so I'm you saying. you feel like George Soros is uh, infiltrated. That's what I'm saying. But if you're saying that this this black woman, the one that started, but we know that who funded it, okay, now it would make more sense, you know what I'm saying, of why well, the, the it's looking the way it's it. looking. The people funded it, though, is we can't prove. Everyone just says George Soros funded it. But there's people out there that gave $2 million, $3 million, $5 million. The people, the people funded this organization. And that's why everybody is so upset. It was, it's real celebrities and real companies. You can look at all the, the, the names on the businesses. They donated to this company. So the people fed this company, not just no one man. Yeah, they fed it. They fed it out of out of the emotion of what was going on. But they didn't they didn't believe they could. They were thinking the face of it, just like we're saying right now, is a black person not knowing the face of it is this white man that has another agenda. So that's what infiltration comes in. At. That's what I'm saying. That's my mm. opinion. Everybody in the chat could say, oh, he's crazy, he's stupid or he's slow or whatever. It's not my fault that y'all are only going off no, it's, of it's making, who, it's they, more... who, who they like and who they think that, you know, um, might say something that might make more sense if the information is, isn't all the way there. No, it just this time you you saying it with a little more sense. When I asked you who you thought was infiltrating it, I never heard because I was trying to get to that. I was trying to get to that part, but you know what I'm saying? It was I was going off of what you were saying as far as with the woman that you're saying that got you know what I'm saying that's uh that's on the face front of it, but we never speak of George uh Santos. We never speak of the person, you know what I'm saying, that was behind it. It's levels of it. That's what I was saying. Like, so that's why I feel like the infiltration comes in because you got a white man starting the Black Lives Matter. But his real agenda is behind the Democratic Party and all that stuff. And they're seeing it as an opportunity to play on the black folks emotion. OK, now that that whole George Soros thing makes a little more sense because you're saying that now we hear a person and I've heard that name several times. I don't know it to be true, but I've heard that name uh, at least uh, 20 dozen times on every situation that or surrounding something like this. So. Right, right. So that's what I mean by the infiltration, because, yeah, we're saying this this black woman. And yes, she took her cut. She went and bought all those houses and all that shit. He probably knew that she was a person that could be bought. So and but he knew that white people would follow behind. Her. I mean, not white people, but black people would follow behind because they would have known that he was behind the shit. How many black people you think would have donated to that shit? Nobody. They were like, hell no, nah, we ain't about to donate all these millions and millions of shit. What the hell did white man got to do with a black man, you don't understand that shit. But if you got a black woman and then you put them up to the forefront, yeah, you could trick a whole bunch of motherfuckers. And then now she runs off like a fat cat because he already knew she was a snake. Now nobody trusts no fucking body. And now here we are where we at right now. So let me ask you this. What if she devised the plan up with George Soros instead of it being an infiltration what do you what do you think about it being a plan along with George Soros, Soros or whatever? I mean, it's still infiltrating the people, you know, like you, you she's she she's coming in like a sheep in wolf clothing. I mean, a wolf in sheep's clothing. You, you're the black face. Yeah. If they're working together. Yeah, we, we know that it's still an infiltration, though. Because you're infiltrating the people. Those those two might have been working together, but they're still infiltrating the people. If you get what I'm saying, I don't know if that is making any sense or not. No, I'm, that's I, just I, in my I, opinion. Infiltrating the people, or or, or or what? I just think they scammed us. Or Im right. infiltrating the movement, or whatever. And it's still a scam. Yeah, I, it's not. I'm not saying it's not a scam. I'm saying that that's how the scam was able to happen from the infiltration. 
And, okay. and and people can call it misleading. I mean, misleading is, is a more simple term. I'm seeing a lot of people saying they misled, they they tricked, they infiltrated, bamboozled. You can use multiple words to describe what was going on. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't train, it doesn't change what actually happened. Triggered. I said they got triggered. They got triggered. The big thing Here's, that hit Here's, with, uh, black, on, with Here's, black lives matter. Ears, they they with you. Ears, they said what ears is truly uh, alluding to is controlled opposition, which is a form of infiltration when it comes to cultural movements. And he, he definitely is um, pointing on what I was trying to say. Now I'm not looking for people to agree or who don't disagree. I just want to make people to understand what I'm trying to say. I'm not confused on what's no, going I understand, on. I understand it's it just that you know. I'm just I'm just articulating of what I saw and what I think that, you know what I'm saying, was going on or whatever. I agree with you totally uh, 100% when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the movement was corrupt. It started at the top. Of course, it started at the top. But then we have to look who's at the top, not who's second to the top. Who's at mm -hmm. the top top? You yeah. know what I'm saying? And who they trick as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a lot of us just emotional about what happened. You know what I'm saying? So we wasn't thinking deep on like a business aspect. But a person that don't give a fuck, they're thinking about it from a business aspect. Right. Now, uh, that's where the money went. Yeah. Is Juicy Fruit still here or no? Oh, yeah, I'm here. I was just saying. Hey, uh, thank you for your patience. Are you ready to uh, add to the topic? No problem. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, um, well, I think, I mean, every it got all cleared up, it looks like. Um, but, um, you know, I, I just agree with, I mean, I agree with Gary in the sense that, um, you know, no matter who did what at the end of the day, and I think you said this earlier, Ears, is that, you know, like to throw the whole thing away makes no sense because um, the leader or whatever did something wrong. And of course, um, you know, everything Patrice McCullough did was wrong. Anybody who misappropriated or abused those funds or whatever, I really feel like they need to uh, confiscate and repossess everything. They need to be trying to pay back the Black Lives Matter movement or whatever um, and obviously throw her out and get her um, out of office. I don't think that she purposely uh, tried to, you know, uh, scam the movement. I think, unfortunately, um, she, when, you know, when, when faced with having access to that much money, I think uh, whatever she, her character, I just don't think that, you know what I'm saying? I don't think she ultimately was trustworthy would have an access. I think a lot of times, you know, $80 million, that's more money than anybody's ever seen. And so you start doing stupid stuff like buying yourself houses and buying, giving your baby daddy a million dollars and all that when, you know, that money's not yours. It's not yours to be doing whatever you want to do with it. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a fan of Candace Owens. Um, but I'm, I'm happy that she exposed her. I think it's great that she exposed her. Um, but yeah, me too. I'm, yeah, but what I'm concerned about is, you know, if now they're going to throw the whole thing away just because um, we have some bad apples in the bunch. I don't think that that's right to just say that Black Lives Matter, the, you know, it's just should be scrapped. And that's so what I say, you, like, the, the coming together if, as a people, that's where, like, that pure stance of Black Lives Matter, that's why I see the the emotion and the kind of pure movement behind it. The whole world was out there marching behind that idea of it. It wasn't about the money at that time. It was mainly about the people. And we saw that. We saw it in the streets. We saw it everywhere. People was taking off work. We saw that. Of course, I agree. Black not, Lives not, Matter. Hey, now, hold on now. Not to cut you off. I actually agree with this young lady right here. Because the mm -hmm. money said it all. When you follow the money, right. it's still an ugly truth. Follow the money. Where did the money go? Right. 
Where but the they saw an opportunity from? though when when they seen all the no, people. No, I don't. I, I'm just saying when the feds come in, when the feds came and got my brother, they followed the money. It told a story, and they didn't question that story. They didn't say why you sold drugs. They didn't say oh, you had to feed your mama. They followed that money, and they and that told a story. And but doesn't it tell a big story too that she is not being prosecuted for what they're saying she's doing? Because we've seen journey. people pro. We seen Show people prosecute again. for, huh? No, I'm, I'm answering your question. You saying it's funny? Why? Show them that shirt, homeboy, at the top. They ain't gonna get prosecuted because that why. And then we have to ask that question. Why is that? We have to ask that question. Why? Why is? Why is why she? Why is she not being held accountable for, the for same them? Why then we have to. Them. Then we have to ask the question: Who would be holding her accountable? And then that would be our American government. And we yeah, would ask them, yeah. why is it? Answer. You're not letting me answer. I can. You answered a lot of questions. Give me a pause. The same reason why Jesse Smollett, the same reason why everybody on that liberal side that do something wrong, they got people in position in every level. They're not going to get prosecuted. But when we right seems to get prosecuted. Nobody on the left seems to get prosecuted. Okay, and with that logic, though, with that logic, wouldn't wouldn't that would have been a thing that our past administration could have pushed forward, especially if if she was doing it out of a liberal side? Are you saying like they're protecting her? Absolutely. Okay. She, it, that whole movement was a political thing. You listen, I you might don't understand this go along get along game. Maybe you think I'm joking. Maybe you think I'm just playing. There's guys walking this earth. I can ask you how did certain people get out of get out of these charges that they that they had before and knowing that my brother would have got 49 years. How did certain people get out of these charges? You've seen some amazing things happen right in front of you that can't be explained. You was, you was a street cat at one point point. You know. Yeah, There's I know. A, I know. I, I oh, definitely oh, I get oh, what you I get what you're saying. I get exactly what you're saying, but I'm saying that. There's a front where well, we have to look at both sides. Absolutely. At a front, we got to look at both sides. And like, That's what I'm both saying of right now. That's what I'm saying right now. I'm highlighting this brother comment. He said, come on, Kwame. Trump is protected as well. I never said he wasn't. Trump is, was the former president. They all president, former presidents are protected. They all are protected. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's not just one side. That's what I was saying. It's not just but one it is, side it, protecting it. It's, not, it's, it's, a, it's a... That's okay. not necessarily true is Brett Kavanaugh said a lot. You have never seen a trial like Brett Kavanaugh on the other side, bro. You got to be honest with that now. Are you never seen about, another Brett Kavanaugh? Kwame, are you talking about Brett Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court justice? The Supreme Court justice before that man was before Trump tried to appoint him. They tried to lock. They tried to uh, arrest or uh, say the man did all kind of shit in high school. Well, I mean, going? if if there Martin, if there's proof of it, then you have to at least listen to it. We can't just say, "Oh, we like you." you and we know that you're a part of the organization. School. Say because say say you know you're a part of an organization. Like we know that he's a part of the you know the 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 Yale organization and this and that this and that. Okay, say we know that you're a part of the organization. Yes, can we not at least question it? You coming up and you're going to be in one of the highest positions of the land. Yes, we do need to check into your background. I don't care if it That's does go back to the house. They do that same check on the other side. They do. They do, though, Kwame. They, they do, though. Uh, all, I'm asking, what are y'all, all I'm asking is, what I gave y'all Brett Kavanaugh. Give me the person that y'all talking the, about. The new okay. Supreme Court Justice, the female, the black female, they dragged her for filth. And homegirl didn't even have no background. But the way they dragged her for filth, they did, she didn't have no issues, no nothing, and they still were trying to vote no. So many, you know, it, it was. What did they so, What did they say about her? Um, I mean, you would. It was a very long. You would have to have watched it, but they were just. It, the crazy thing was, was that you know when they go and they do the votes, they all said the same thing. They were they were complimenting her. They're like, oh, we think you're this, we think you're that. You're very accomplished. You're this, you're that. And then at the end of it, they were like, but I vote no. And they, I mean, it was so many of them that did that and you know this was a black woman who was again very accomplished very educated had no uh background especially nothing like Kavanaugh are you talking about the lady that couldn't define what a woman was 
Um, she's the only black See, y'all female. holding out stuff on me now. Hold on. I don't care that she's black and I don't care that she's a female. They asked a woman, and that's what's more shameful. They asked a woman oh. to find female, and she couldn't do that. Uh, but the point, is, the point is, we can have a, agree, a disagreement about what they asked her or what they did. That's the point, though. This man did something controversial. She did something controversial. You know, they still got to sit there and pull you out in the streets. I agree, yes. So yeah. defining yeah. what a woman is is controversial? Well, no, to, not, to, to not, say it in just that, that broad brush and not say what, what it is, what she was actually saying, you know what I'm saying? That could be, that. that's a different point. The because it... Oh, I'm sorry, yes, I didn't mean to... No, 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 no. Go ahead. Just for I don't want to. I don't want to uh, overtake anybody. You know, I don't want to overtake the panel. Go ahead. I, 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 I was just going to say. Pedos off. Was she letting pedos off her records? No. Um, I didn't hear anything like that. No, nah, I didn't. Letting no. pedos off. Look at her record. That's no, nah, I, I didn't. No, nah, I. <laughs> no, nah, nah, that, 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 that's not true. I just remember her as the lady that couldn't define what a woman is. Well, let, let's go to another person there. Uh, there. There's another guy that was that that was run, that was supposed to be Supreme Court judge, and the fact that Obama was letting him in, and I know I know when you say that name, everybody goes crazy, you know what I'm saying? But the fact of that guy had nothing on his record, also. But being that being that they 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 blocked him from getting in, and then when you're having somebody being able to force three people in the, the Supreme Court justice system. That that definitely does brains questions, especially if this person is not an upstanding citizen to the fact of you couldn't do all those things that he was accused of and reach that highest position. Why should we just throw any uh, somebody else that has those accusations behind him and not question him like that? Right. And I think the point that you're trying to make is, which is a good point, is that no matter who it is we as the people have the right to question them because you know the to be a supreme court justice that is a lifelong job so whoever we put in there they're in there until they die so it's imperative that we know who these people are that we know their character and that we know they are upstanding citizens and the issue with kavanaugh was you know i think he was accused of of the R word and some other stuff. Wasn't it like some blackface? I, I don't, or something like that. So, you know, there were a lot of yeah. things that came up on him that were just, you questionable. know, and the fact that he, yeah, I, you know, exactly questionable. Um, And it, you know, so just, I, we have the right to question. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I agree with that, Eric. Now, I definitely agree that you got to question these jokers if they're going to be in there for the rest of their life. It just seemed like to me, in my opinion, uh, one side gets questioned more than the other. Um, but I do understand that this young lady got questioned. But to me, uh, it was more, it was brought on by what she said, because I thought that was weird. A woman that can't define a woman, that, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but I, I don't think that's more like, I mean, that, and this is me. Like, if we're going to weigh both of them on the scale, I'm like, okay, well, I'll, Will I deal with a woman that's questioning women or will I deal with a man that has no respect for women or that will, you know, violate a woman, you know what I'm saying? And just because of your connects, it gets brushed under the table. Like we as a people, we might not want neither one of them motherfuckers. So we wonder why the fuck is this our only choices? And then I start asking more questions. Yeah. Hey, hi, everybody. Hey there, Miss Rittenfire. How you doing? You all right? What up, what up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll they talk called earlier. I wanted to make sure you was all right with your boot on and police knocking at doors and everything. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got low. <laughs> okay. I was making sure. You know, I told you turn on the damn camera. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. They were on camera. <laughs> okay. I wasn't going outside. Okay, good. I'm glad you, you wasn't going outside. So I um came up because I was looking through my uh, archive as you guys were talking because I have actually covered this a long, for a very long time. Uh, this whole conversation you guys are talking about today. And it, it's just interesting that, you know, we all have different points of views, the valid points, very valid points of views, uh, different points of views, but they're both valid on both sides. But uh, I agree with you, uh, Kwame, 
uh, they're just a basic uh, definition on what a woman is. We have one woman, we have one man. There's a basic definition. You should be able to say that. But the, the agenda is not uh, she couldn't identify what a woman is. The agenda is who lobbied her and pushed for her to get into the position that she got into because she doesn't want to offend a certain community by identifying or uh, what a woman is today. You see what I'm saying? Because we have what's called trans. So when they asked her to identify what a woman is, she didn't want to do that because of who helped push her in that position. Now we have these people in these positions and everybody has organizations, but I just find it to be uh, out of my research being a blogger. I found it very interesting that all these organizations popped up within the last five years. And then a lot of them is by the alternative community, which is many times is why I get kicked off the internet because I expose it and put it out there. It's not that I hate or anything like that, but I just find it interesting that if you're supposed to be for black lives matter, why is this hidden agenda under your mission statement of that organization that I found it to be interesting. Most importantly, I find it to be interesting is that you not only uh, not invested in anything for black people and black lives matter, but the fact that you, uh, uh, you know, collected all this funds, which is no, no problem with her getting made paid. If it's her organization, she good, she should get paid. Nobody should ever doubt that. But you should also put the money where it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? So even if she did buy, uh, say, for instance, a $5 million home, but she put a lot of schools or trade fundings or all these type of things in black neighborhoods or whatever, then nobody can say anything. But this woman didn't do that. What she did was she bought compounds. She invested a lot over in in. Uh, in the UK and British countries such as Canada. And then she went in, in uh, California and bought a whole lot of compounds. She gave her uh, baby daddy $4 million. But Trayvon Martin, who uh, was the reason that, that this organization was founded in the first place, she gave the family $200,000. And I found that to be very, uh, you know, disturbing. Uh, when it comes to Brent Kavanaugh, like, and the young lady said, we're supposed to question everyone. we That's with both sides, whether you blue or whether you red. That's the one thing we're supposed to do. But the one thing is, is that when we're kids, we're allowed to make mistakes. We're allowed to mess up. We're allowed to do anything. But during that testimony, if you really paid attention to it, the lady said out her own mouth that he was so intoxicated during that encounter at a party that he was trying to come on to her. That's like a drunk man trying to hug all on you and kiss all on you. And you're like, get off me. He was so intoxicated that he fell all over her, fell on the floor, all this and all that. So I'm thinking to myself, if you really pay attention to what she said in front of Congress, I'm thinking to myself, then why are we here? If you said that he pushed you on the bed and couldn't hold you down because he was so drunk and fell off the bed, then why are we here? Like, why are you sitting up here in front of Congress when what this boy did when he was a, a, a foolish teenager? I mean, like, so we all made a lot of mistakes as kids, but what have you done? Because a lot of times since that in, that encounter, he has done a lot of things to even be nominated for a justice of the Supreme Court. So I, uh, obviously he come from an Ivy League background. So a lot of them come from an Ivy League background. But one thing about it now is that we have these organizations that are all in cahoots with each other. And one organization that is behind them all is the biggest one of all. And that's the alternative organization. That's the one that George Soros pushed. The, everyone that is supporting of that, he got kicked out of Hungary because they wasn't buying that. They told him to take, they did a Kanye West on him. They told him take his billions and kicked his butt out. So what did he do? He comes over here to the States and he spreads all that around. And what rules over here? Money. You get Bad whatever you want. Around me. Cream, get the money. Go ahead. You That's get right. the money. Right. So we have a prosecutor in Chicago that um supposed to have prosecuted a guy that falsified hate, right? We know him. Big, high-profile case, right? So this prosecutor didn't profile, didn't even try to, uh, you know, go forward with it, right? 
Well, why not? He staged a fake hate crime and why he's not being prosecuted? Because, and who is he part of? He's part of that community. Are and you talking this, about Jesse Smollett? And this, and this oh, absolutely, and that, this man. particular um, prosecutor in that county, Cook County, Illinois, is also a heavy advocate for the community. But who gave her um, money? Who bagged her? George Soros. I have never heard one person donate two million dollars for a prosecutor's position. There's there's people running for the president of the United States, and they may have four hundred thousand, you know, donations and different donations from different big companies that want that particular party to be in to push those laws that they want to pass to the powers that be. But a prosecutor position, two million dollars, that already bought her reelection. That already bought her reelection. Everything on oh my, that's what I was telling you about when you was talking. You was like, dang, I seen you been doing this for a long time. This has been strategically done. All those movements are part of, and their agenda is from the LGBTQ. Yeah, that's, and, that's why I said what I said earlier, because uh, when the feds came a knocking to go visit my brothers, the first thing they did was they tracked the money. They tracked the money. Tracked yeah, Absolutely. When you track the money, it tells an ugly truth that no one can deny. Follow the you money, follow the paper. Follow, follow the paper. Pa follow the paper. You know what I mean? And then not only that, when you do certain situations that happen, like say, for instance, you sit up here and you say, okay, these women have these positions. You notice that a lot of these men, and I talk about this movement, right? So these movements are all connected, you guys. They're all connected together, okay? Whether you go from Black Lives Matter, Ready to go for me two times up, Emily's List. Emily's List is an organization too. Okay, a lot of people don't know about Emily's List. Emily's List is an organization that's ran by the LGBTQ as well that put women in political positions. But what are the criteria to be part of Emily's List? Well, the part criteria is you must be a registered Democrat and you must believe in abortions. So you must what? be pro-choice. You have to wait a minute. You have to be a what? You have to believe in abortions and be, and be a registered Democrat. So why is it necessary that you believe in abortion? You you have to believe in that. In order for that, you have to push. That's the agenda they want you to push. Now, who was yeah. a part of Emily's list? I did this. You watched that video I did that day because you donated to my channel. So you I should you should know this. Mm -hmm. But Emily's list pushed Kamala Harris. Push Kim Fox, push the new justice, uh, Kataji Brown, uh, push uh, Chu from Pennsylvania. And all these organizations are bagged up by the LGBT, and these uh, are LGBT funded organizations that lobbying for them to get the agendas that they want. And this is where it all is about. And George Soros funds that organization he's been pushing money up out the lgbt that's what it's all about and they are powerful they are very powerful they have owned hollywood for years but now they risen to a new height and every organization out here they purchase including the naacp so now they got the naacp on their side they got black lives matter me Too, Time's Up, Emily's List. They got everything. So there's nowhere you can go that won't include them. There's no organization. Now they're protected. Why they're protected? Because they have not only sit up there and have people lobbying for them, but they have really purchased the whole Democratic Party. That's why when you had your president come in office, he gave Trump all this flack. And I'm a registered Democrat. So I don't want nobody talking about some, I'm a Republican. But after me doing all this research and getting kicked off the internet because of what I put out here off this research and everything, when he and Trump, the last election, they were, they were talking about C-19. That was the biggest thing. But once he got in office and after he got sworn in, the first week he was in there, he went on an LGBT tour, pushing all those agendas. They paid for him to get in there. They pushing it. Who was sitting up there supporting all these people? Kamala Harris. You seen her at a rally with Time's Up with Jesse Smollett. 
down with Obama. Sitting up there having a shirt on that says love is love with the rainbow on it. None of your politicians is supposed to be for special interest groups. Your politicians is everybody's politician. They're wrong when they sit up there and say, uh, time's up. Because she could be lying. He's a man. Even if he was a criminal, you still his president too. He still have rights as well. People forget about that. They work on emotion. Emotion is where it's at now. It's, they're capitalizing off of it. And what do they call it now? Victimhood. Everybody's a victim. You can't say things. Cancel culture. There's a lot of things I do not agree with what Kanye West said. But I stand by him not because I agree with what he said. No. Because he has a right to say it. It's basic First Amendment. Right to free speech. That's exactly what I said. And everybody right to needs- free speech. How are you going to kick somebody, evict somebody's money out of a bank? Because what? you don't like what they say. He can wear White Lives Matter shirt. He got mixed kid children. Facts. Miss Spinfire, may I ask a question though about that? Just Please. this person, what do you think? Because I, I do, I agree with free speech as well. And I believe that everybody should be allowed to say what they want. But do you think that somebody like Kanye, especially, you know, someone who's so big and who's so influential um, not only to black people, but the thing about him is that he's really influential to white people. Like white people listen to him, support him, all of these things. And so Where the um, do you think that he should be careful about what he says because of that? I don't think that he said anything controversial. I think what he did was put something that people ain't used to. And that's a mirror. People are not used to the reflection of reality that they've been hiding for so long. See, once, because see, the thing of it is, is a lot of things in the world we don't want to talk about. You understand what I'm saying? It needs to be someone like him to say and pull the sheet off of everything and expose something. I'm a little person. You, We all little over here. They're not listening to us. It would take somebody like him. You cannot fight racism with racism. But Miss Spitfire, um, I th- with controversy, it, it's a difference between okay, just saying something that's controversial and saying something that was proven in court, though. You know, what I'm saying that it, there's a little bit, there's a, like you have to be a little bit more responsible there if it got proven. That that's not necessarily true because here's the thing about what the court system is. Okay, so the court system is this: there's a lot of evidence that don't get shown. There's a lot of evidence that the jury don't see. When you are on a jury and you looking and you listening to all this stuff for weeks at a time, there's a lot of things that you bypass. You're not going to be a jury that's going to sit up there and say, even if uh, Derek Shuvin, right? You're not going to be a jury today that say, oh, and see what you see and say guilty. And then you got to be the one to go back in your community. And people know that you're on the jury. And then you get those people exposing your whereabouts and now you at risk. Do you actually think that anybody was going to sit up there and say Derek Chauvin was going to be uh, not guilty and they have to go back to their community, even if it's a white community, and the world seeing what they saw? They're not going to do that. There's I a think lot they of would community. because there's been a lot of cases where people have been shot on camera and stuff like that, and it wasn't the popular decision, and the jury made the decision that they thought was fair. I mean, that they thought was true. Well, that was proven. But I'm talking about something that is like high profile, like such as this. And we, well, that's we, what I'm saying. We've had juries like that. We've had absolutely. cases like this. Before. And we did. And we see the consequences of that as well. Just like even with um, OJ, he catching flag now. People don't flip the switch. So what I'm saying is a lot of those things happen. Just because it was it was in the jury, that's what that's 12 people. All right. And it's, it goes by who they believe. And who and basically won, but a lot of times we have an appeal process. Okay, Miss Miss Day, if I can ask this then. Okay, say George Floyd was your son, and Kanye West came and put out that narrative, which if you you done been to trial, you done went through all these emotions, you done saw the video a thousand times, you done watched the proof and everything, and then a person like him comes out and puts his narrative out there, and it reaches damn near a billion people. 
and people are taking your word as gold, would you feel the need of some kind of justice or something to be done to uh, to put that back in perspective of what was proven in court? No. Oh, okay. No, not at all. Because at the same, same time, regardless of what he says, he has the right to feel the way he feels. Just like there are people who believe what Joe, uh, George Zimmerman did. There are people who believe that he stood his ground. You understand what I'm saying? At right, the end right. of the day, at the end of the day, the person who killed George Floyd was that police officer that kneeled on his neck or maybe and maybe some substances that was in his body that helped um, uh, accelerate that death. You know what I mean? But other than that, he didn't do it. He don't That's have to. Uh, the problem with that is he doesn't have to agree. OK, with well, I get you now. On, I Smith definitely Fire. agree, though. I definitely they agree. A, I get what you're saying. Hold on, hold on guys. Spitfire, they're having a problem with a lot of people are saying, I think Ears and uh, Miss Juicy, uh, they have a problem with saying that uh, but because he has a, such a large platform that maybe him, you know, being a billionaire, being that he has so many followers, that maybe he should be held to a higher standard of what he can say. I don't but, agree with that, but that's but what see, Oh, no, I think I anybody know, should be held like to that standard. Say, it, even if I came on my platform and said uh, 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 something like that that has been proven, you know what I'm saying, different by the court of law or whatever. If I came to my – just like when I did that whole um, – I ain't going to say his name, but that political guy that I talked about, and I gave my opinion about what happened in the election. YouTube shouldn't be able to strike my shit and all that, but they do because it's not a proven fact. My so it, it happens with – if it can happen like that, it, it should be able to happen to even a, a small guy like me, even when it's a big guy like that. I mean, I'm saying he shouldn't be held exempt from something that can happen just to anybody, you know, if you put out false information. But, but it wasn't false. Off. It wasn't false. It wasn't false information. The, the information was – I mean, the guy got convicted of what they said he did. Yeah, but he still had the substances in his body. He did have that. That wasn't false. But that's what I'm saying. That's what – that that wasn't the point, though. He said, I have proof that the guy didn't really have his knee on his neck like that, and that's what, and what killed him. That's not uh, that's not the truth. Now, it is it, it's not false that he didn't have fentanyl. If he would have said the guy died with fentanyl, that's fine. But he's saying that the, die, the guy didn't die of what the autopsy just said. We don't know what his proof is because he didn't put it out there. But that's what he was saying. He said, I'm going to, I can show proof that, and he was only saying it from the Candace Owen video that the cop didn't, he didn't die from the cop having his knee on his neck. He died from the fentanyl. But the autopsy know. didn't say that. So right. people can't say you don't know if that happened when they went to court about it and that wasn't was the cause of death. We got to at least give them folks credit for their profession. My my concern with Kanye's comments specifically was just that, you know, not that he's not allowed to say because he's a billionaire and a public figure, but the reality is, and, and we do have to be honest about that, um, because of his you know, it does kind of matter. And my my main concern when I heard him say those words were, oh my God, now there's going to be uh, room in, you know, white people or whoever's minds to say, you know, now there's doubt about whether or not um, the, the officer, uh, you know, really was responsible, which means that now it may open up more um, arguments and doubts on what, you know what I mean? Like it, you know, to say um, now, because the, the fentanyl thing, this is the first I'm hearing about it since Kanye said it, but now that's going to raise doubt as to whether or not the officer was wrong. You know, if you really, you know what I'm saying? When, you know, like everyone has agreed, we all saw the video the man's, the, his knee was on his neck, but now you have somebody, a huge public figure, figure, a black public figure at that, saying that, that no, that but he didn't kill him, his knee wasn't even on his neck. So now, you know what I'm saying, now white people and others that may be, they might be like, yeah, see, look, these black people, they over here tripping, ain't no police brutality, we, we ain't, it ain't even as that bad part. as they think. That was my concern, was my that, truth. you know, now it just completely, you know, now there's doubt where, you know, we could clearly see what it was. And, and I, I think that's the, di not to cut you off, but I think that's a lot of people's point when it comes to the white lives matter thing too. 
yeah, we know white lives matter. We know that you should be just as concerned as white lives. But I think people are feeling like it's contradicting the black lives matter or is mimicking it, uh, you know, or making kind of fun of it. If you look at it in that kind of way, because what was interesting today is I heard a brother, he was going over that video and he had a white dude up on this panel. And I know one white dude don't speak for all, but that white dude was like, that's got to be the dumbest shit I've ever seen. It makes me feel like we can't even, we can't take him serious. And you watch all these black people follow him blindly. It, it almost like you can't even take us serious. It's and that's just not that's not like a blindly. shame thing. I'm just saying in general. Well, we, we, that's the same. That's the same thing that happened when we took when all of us follow Cardi B. Right. 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 No, right. Know. In any in any rapper, in any rapper, not just I'm not just picking on Kanye. I'm just saying, like, if we're our leaders are gonna be just people that can sing and rap to us real good, and we'll just go off of every that's, fucking thing they that's tell that's us, that's and that's not our brightest mind, not our rocket scientists, not hold our on, here's, hold on, here's, that's how it's always been. P. Diddy been saying vote or die since the motherfucking two, early 2000s, and I always, I always thought that was stupid as fuck. I always thought that was stupid as fuck. It's, it's like we got picks now, though, or something, though. We got picks because P. Diddy and all these rappers have been leading this charge for our community for decades. And now we talking about we don't need to follow our rappers? We No, followed. I've always been saying that. Like, I always thought that was the dumbest shit, but I'm, I get, I look stupid to a lot of people. So, it, right, you no, know no, what I'm saying? No. My one opinion don't matter like that, but I never look for my, my, my political advice from a damn rapper or my financial advice from a damn rapper. I mean, yeah, you might have got rich so, off of rap, but what you do after that impresses me. You know, what so you do with you, the money. So let me ask you this. If you don't look to your rappers and your celebrities for political advice, then would you look at a political person who is looking to rappers to promote to you? No. Absolutely Never. not. Well, no. Hillary, Hillary Clinton. That Hillary all, Clinton. And that's why I didn't vote for her motherfucking ass. That was oh, about, <laughs> I was about to say all of your politicians, a lot of the Democrat politicians, this has been their playbook for forever. No, but Cardi, back that thing up. But I mean, I'm I'm seeing the other side, they do it too. Oh, they, just oh, what you trying to say? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say I agree with you, Kwame. When Cardi B interviewed Bernie Sanders, I thought that shit was was just laughable. I couldn't even believe that you know that was on there we were taking that seriously same thing with hillary clinton it's a joke it's a joke you know definitely these people are not uh you know kanye west none of them are anyone that we should be you know uh seeking any political advice or stance or anything on we obviously need to be doing the research ourselves but there will always be people out there who won't do the research themselves you know what i mean and, and especially right. when we're talking about white people you know, you when they hear some a black affluent person like that say something counter to what everyone, you know, the majority of other black people are saying, uh, you know, they're going to go with that. They're going to go with what sounds better to them. They don't really want to be responsible for killing black people in the streets. So well, that's anybody, but that's anybody though, Juicy. Just like when you were saying about uh, bl the people may want to, um, you know counteract what they said previously when it comes to Kanye West making those statements. Um, I, I do have something to say with that. I think that we see a lot of times we can see some things and it, it can be not what we actually see. And I'm not saying I agree with him. That's not what I'm saying at all before people get in the chat and get to going crazy. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if he says he has something that can that's counteract the what we believe and what was proven in court, we don't know that to be true or whatever. But even if it is, if, if, if that can prove that somebody is innocent, if that can prove that it wasn't if the way we thought it was or whatever, or there was another um, act that contributed to the death in addition to the knee or whatever else, I don't think that we, whether you white or black, should be uh, detained falsely. Yes, I think that that was, I, I think that that's something that could be you know take another look at you know what i'm saying like what what is the real reason here what's well, going but, on here but why wouldn't that be done during this trial in the case why is that being pulled up uh a year or how long that stuff been uh, how long that was ago two years i ago. mean because 
Yes, because he could have easily stood up at any given moment and gave out that same information. Or just go to a channel, any channel here. You go. We don't know. Cor- he could go create a channel right now and put the evidence out and everybody see it and you prove your point and then say it. But we don't but know when something he without it. the proof. You know, we don't know when he received it. He just said he got it. He, we don't know when. That could well, have been why, why not show it and then say, you see, I got it. Like no, no, like just putting the idea out there and making people have to divide. I, people, between. I have no idea why people would do the way the things that they do and why they do it. But the fact that the matter is, we if he do, if he. But does. we both know something, and I I can tell you a wise woman when we see something that's just not right, we question it, and that's what you're supposed to do. You know, yeah, when you stop questioning the things that people do that are odd. That's when you, you you are what Kwame would say going alone to get alone because you might like that person, you might like the fuck out of them, you might like their work, you might like their business moves and all that. But when they do questionable things, you have to stop and you know ask yourself the question. And that's just my opinion. We the last group, we the last group of people that question the people we like. We got you can't question LeBron, you can't question Beyonce, you can't question Jay Z. Y'all won't be honest about the real, actual truth. We don't question people in our community. We so don't. We, that's right. So, that's right. He's speaking like the truth. It, it, it be hard. It be hard for me to get with certain people because they glance around what they actually see in their face. In real right. life, we do not question nobody that we call people our vote for who they like. They don't even vote for they the mass subject matter. Like. And that's what some it, people what don't even know the person they vote for. They just go find a name that sounds cool, like. Like, oh, I like this person. I'm like, or if it, on, it, it goes with a party, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, they don't go, they don't know the cause because just because a person is part of your party doesn't mean, because like this time, even though I'm a registered Democrat, the last time I didn't uh, vote Democrat, you know what I mean? Because I just believe that I just wasn't going to do that. I just, I just wasn't feeling what they was doing and, and all this uh, different type of stuff going on. I don't think that political people should be uh presidents and vice presidents and all that for special interest groups i just don't believe that you are the president of the united states you are the vice president of the united states that means everybody included in it right not a particular class of people that's almost impossible though because you you, you, hold on here let me pose a question to the chat real quick because i want to i want to move it along a little bit let me ask y'all this what is it going to take for us as a community to not vote for Democrat, Republican, Independent, but vote for the the party that actually sit down with our brightest minds, like how Dr. Claude Anderson allegedly wrote something up for Ice Cube to take to both parties. How about we we do that? We say we're not voting unless you see this plan and at least hear this plan out. If we're saying that Dr. Claude Anderson is a smart representation of the black community and they sat down with a group of bright minds why are we not pushing for people to at least see that? Who go first? Me? Yeah, you know, you can go around the board. No matter okay. me. Okay, I'll speak on that. First of all, that would be a good idea, but however, they're not in office because of ideas. They are in office because who has the money? If you ain't coming with no money to push your idea or what you call agenda or anything else, you can forget it. Money talks. And that's just my perspective. Well, my uh, thing is... Oh. <laughs> go ahead. Right, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Juicy Fruit. Go my around, bad. Ladies, ladies first. Ladies Juicy first. Ladies first. Ears. Yeah, we go to Juicy Fruit Ears. And then... How you say your name, brother? Luis? What? Yeah, Luis. Luis. It don't matter, bro. Okay, Luis. Okay. I was just going to say, me personally, I can't speak for everyone else, but um, I never just go with what's popular um you know i definitely try to do my due diligence and follow um what all of the candidates are saying and you know paying attention to what their their actions really more so even than what they're saying um and it you know it's always very disheartening because it seems like no matter what whether they're left right whatever they all just seem to say what they think we all want to hear um they all full of a bunch of promises that when they get into office they don't really um you know, do so, you know, I mean, I, I, as an, as an individual, um, I can only do my due diligence and, you know, vote for whoever I think is, uh, best, you know, but I don't, um, 
you know, that that's kind of my answer to that. Yes, you up, yes. Oh, okay. Well, when it when it comes to politics, man, I, I vote for policy. And, you know, and I do look at integrity also, but you never know who these motherfuckers be, you know what I'm saying? I learned that over a period of time. But as far as my issue is, it's the choices that we have put in front of us all the time. We we could look either on the left or the right, and this is not motherfuckers that we feel like should be leading us. And even we could look in the middle and then say, well, damn, I, I might like what you stand for, but I can understand why other people wouldn't like what you stand for. So where do we go from there? If we get a party of black people, we can't even come to an agreement on um, what is hidden and what's not hidden. So it, I don't think any black people right now would feel comfortable knowing that they're in a black society like that. Everybody say this shit, but they're lying like a motherfucker. We fear each other. We don't trust each other. Everything you could think of under the sun. So with that being said, where 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 is the perfect place to go? Nobody knows or whatever. Because when I look at the red party, I see just as much as bullshit I see in the blue party. Both of them have the hidden agendas. This one might be with the LGBT and and these things of uh, Planned Parenthood and all that. But then the other side has just as equal as like. So now we're choosing the less less of evil. So. I'm going to just leave it right there. I know that's not like a solid point or anything, but that's where I've been at with politics, you know what I'm saying, the way I've been now. So out of the bad three evils, the middle, the, the right, and the left, I've been choosing somewhat the middle. I chose the left before. If I see someone on the right that I feel like is trustworthy, I'm always willing to, you know what I'm saying, make that decision because I know it's really about your tax bracket a lot of times at the end of the day. I'll move on to the next person because, you know, we can get into this all day. <laughs> um, how y'all doing, chat? Kwame Brown, how you doing, brother? Oh, hold on, chap. Yeah, so, uh, Luis, real quick. Go ahead, bro. Um, When you asked the question, I was putting my phone on the chart. Can you uh, repeat it one more time, please? Well, the question was, uh, we always talk about, uh, I'm, I'm trying to see how, what would it take for us to because they always bring out hot sauce and all kind of nonsense, so we never seem to get who we looking for in office. Um, so my thing is, why can't we just bring that plan together that Dr. Claude Anderson allegedly came up with some of our brightest minds so they don't go talk to a Cardi B and they don't go talk to people that don't, you know, know politics like that. What is it going to take for us as a community to say we're only going to deal with the party that sit down and look at this document and really take it serious. I mean, I feel like wouldn't the government lose money if they did something like like if they did something that made sense, I feel like they would lose money by doing it. Um and I feel like when it comes to politics, like I feel like or whoever's in charge of like instigating all this stuff, I feel like they make money by this whole division, like just dividing people. With this whole like, you got like like you said earlier with the whole voter die thing and just like some of the most outrageous like if you watch the debates, like I remember as a kid when you I hate to sound like an old man but like I remember as a kid you would watch the debates some of the stuff would make sense and I feel like now it's literally like I feel like a high school uh, debate. I'll learn more with that than watching a debate now with politics. And um, I don't know. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. And I feel like we, we've been trying to find that answer. Sheesh. Since like beginning, uh, since the beginning of this whole political thing, like, so, I mean, I guess I don't, I don't know. I feel like uh, I don't want to be like ears, like ears said, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be here just going off now. I can go all day with this, but like, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. That's a good question. I, I don't know. That's, damn. Yeah, that's why I tried to ask you. We got to get something done. What's up, champion? Go ahead with the question. If you heard the question, go ahead, bro. The answer is very simple. I don't know why we're making it look like it's a, it's, a, it's a rocket science. We have two options. Either we pick our candidate, use our money to sponsor them 
and then they go in and do what we want, or we bypass that and go straight to what we need to do without involving the government. It's that simple. It's places in Africa where they don't have a government. They don't have uh, Democrats, Republicans, and all that. They still get things done. They still get by with their, with their days and do whatever they got to do. Okay, it, it, we, we are making it seem like Republicans and Democrats are the pedestal of our life in America. They're not. They were there before we came here, right? They were there when slavery was going on. Republicans were there. Democrats were there when slavery was going on. So at that time, what were they doing for us? Both parties. Nothing, because they both were benefiting from it. So now that we have moved past slavery, we need to understand that if we want to get involved in politics to where we have leverage in politics, we have to pick our own candidate, sponsor our candidate with our own money, and then when they get into office, then we can tell them what we want them to do for us. The people that they have right now, they are not going to do what we want them to do for us because, number one, we don't sponsor politicians. We really don't. Okay. And number two, the agenda they have is for those people who give them money. So when they go in there, they're going to serve the people who pay for them to get in. You know what I'm saying? So we need to either bypass that or pick our own candidates. Or if we will go with the ones they have, we have to sponsor them with our money so we can tell them what to do. It's called lobbying. That's what they call it, lobbying. We could either do that or we could bypass it. That's just the truth. There's nothing else around it, really. Man, I totally agree with you on that. Oh, yeah, um, I do too. Hey, uh, only hold problem on. is you can't hold trust on hold, on, hold on, hold on, ears, hold on, ears. I got to get a gentleman at the bottom of chance. I'm, I'm not oh, yeah, trying to yeah, cut you bad. off, but we're going around the panel. Go I ahead, Mr. You. Brother Hicks. Brother Hicks, can you hear me? Hello? I think he might have froze or something. Yeah, I was just about to say that. He's, he's popping up. Dang, that's a shame because uh, he's been waiting for a long time. Uh, try to come back out and come back in. I'll let you up. Go ahead, Ears. No, I was saying I totally agree with him on that. It just it, – it's so hard to trust – a person, you know what I'm saying, trust people like, you know what I'm saying, these days. Like, we'll always think we might have that person, but then something to come around, like these these corporations that's already built and everything, it's, it, it's, it's kind of hard for a new movement to come in like that. You, like, we are a small percentage of America. So we kidding. wouldn't be able to do it by ourselves as just black people. We would need another race to merge with. I and, think in I America. Think our government. I don't think we need a large government, and that's the, right. I think that's problematic. I think yeah. that the, the larger the government is, the problem that it, it would become, because they would take over the people when they actually supposed to work for the people. Now it seems like they're dictating what we can do, right? And that's a problem. The, so, the, the, not not to cut you off, but another question that we need to ask ourselves as people is very simple. What is it that we are trying to do as black people that we need the government so bad to do it for us? What is it in 2022? What is it that black people are trying to accomplish that we need Republicans or Democrats to do it for us? What is it? I'm dying to know. I mean, economic system. I mean, um, I say nothing. I'm with you I don't think we one. need them. Yeah. I, you. you know what, Champion? You were, you were on the panel the other day, you and another gentleman, y'all kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But the one thing that you said that I really agreed with, and I think, you know, we as black people, we might really just have to get past politics and really start to work on being self-sufficient and Thank building you. within ourselves. Thank because you. like you said, champion, from slavery days, Democrats or Republicans, none of them have really done anything for us. Thank All you. They, they, they just really haven't. And and although it would be nice, you know, to be able to choose our own candidate and support them, the reality is, I, you know, I don't know that that's possible. Like like you said, given our numbers and the fact that, you know, first of all, our numbers, then we have to be able to have the money to back up that candidate. Then we have then we have to find a good, trustworthy candidate that will actually do what we need them to do. So I think rather than. You know, we could keep doing this politics thing until the cows come home. But in 2022, like you said, what are black people going to do 
to better themselves. We need to start building. We need to start, you know, making sure that our children, that we build up trust funds for our children, that we buy real estate, land, like Mm -hmm. Kwame is talking about, things that are assets that are going to acquire wealth. We need to start learning about insurance and infinite banking. You see what they did? They just threw out $140 million of Kanye West money. Who, what bank throws out somebody's money? So if they can do that to somebody like him, you know they don't care about us. We need to start having our own banking systems, our own infinite banking. We We need to start educating our own children. My children are homeschooled, all of them. Hey, hey, Juicy Fruit, you sound sound like my neighbors, Juicy Fruit. My my neighbors, both of y'all, you and Champion, my neighbors say, I don't give a damn about politics. I care about my family. And that's I it. We got to build family. one family at a time. I think that's yeah. how we're going to get stronger. Yeah. I think, you know, we keep trying to hope, looking for these people to do stuff for us. They're not going to do nothing for us. And that's right. we that's the trick. We that's to that's, that's, that's how they keep church. extracting our money. That's the trick. That's how they keep extracting our money because it's like our community seems to be the only community that's waiting on a savior. We're waiting on a leader. They're right. not they, they they elect government officials, but they're not waiting on them to lead them. They're already ready to roll. And Fact. that's what we right. gotta do. We gotta be a leader of oneself. That but and them, that's, that's and them other eco- their other economies, they also have different forms of currency. So until we have a currency of our own, like we always gonna have to do what the fuck we're told. Now, now, ears, ears, watch this. Ears, watch this. You see, I always talk about black people. I'm not talking about Pookie and Ray Ray. I always talk about the black people who are trying to do something, who already have a lead way trying to do something. Because I know how hard it was for me to come up with $25,000 to start a business. Had it been that I was given a loan, I would have started that business, the trucking business I'm doing now. I would have started that shit with somebody else's money and then paid it back. Right. I always believe in the blacks, the few blacks that are trying to do something. If there is a way we can help by giving them loans, the same way the white man will give them loans is if we can install that same uh, program to help the blacks that are trying to do something, we will have more blacks, you know, having small businesses and being able to help other blacks and then slowly, gradually and with time, black people will be on top economically. Not just a few rich niggas with me. No, I'm talking about like the average person is what I'm saying. I'm not worried about the rich black. I'm talking about the average person who have a nine to five, but he wants to start a business. And he probably got his um, DBA or he got his LLC, but he need, and he went and got his certification or his permit or whatever. He just need a little money to start. If we can focus on those black people and give them this little money so they can start a small business. I don't care if it's a food truck business. I don't care if it's a, or hair, whatever it is that they want to do. If we can help these people, I'm telling you, man, we will have a lot more uh, successful blacks than we do now. But it's just black people, people, black people always come at me, people always tell me, oh, we don't, we don't trust them. How are we gonna trust them? It's not about trust, man. We have a system in America that works for the white man. That same system will work for us, okay? Before you give a loan, there's things that you have to go through, like a questionnaire and all that shit, credit check and all that. The same way they do it and insure their money just in case they don't get it back, they can go to IRS and claim that oh, we could do the same thing. But this time but we're giving there, it to black. There, but there are certain things that that well, that sounds good and that is good and that's a good idea and everything. But the problem is with us as though these black people that spend money for many decades for some apparent reason we tend to feel better giving someone else out the culture the business that is the problem so even if you get someone to loan you the money and to start a business they don't show the same support as they do someone else i have seen black beauty supply stores get shut down because for some reason they had, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's business wise. I don't know. But we who do support the beauty industry go straight to the Asian beauty supply. No, you know why, Miss Spit and Fire? The reason for that is, and I know personally because I tried to start a beauty supply uh, store. The reason why it's difficult for us to support is because the Asian people have a corner on that market. So they buy the products and everything wholesale. 
But if you are not, and they are very close network, and if you are not within their network, i.e. really their color, then you as a black person, you're going to basically be paying retail. Then you have to charge your customers either the same amount or more just to be able to make profit. Facts. So unfortunately, in a situation like that, that's a market that's cornered. Now, really, that's where black people, we got to figure out how do we manufacture those products and then we can buy them and open up our own stores and stuff like that. So in, in that particular case, um, you know, that's what's going on with that. Absolutely. To, that's, a, that's the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that people have to do the research uh, to find out how it is that they can go and be productive, even if they wanted to open up their store, so they would be able to sell and be uh, competitive. You know what but I mean? But the reality is, you know what the reality is, and what Champion is saying is right because I know there are a lot of, um, especially like other ethnicities, they do that. They pull their money together, allow one person to borrow it. They help each other. And yes, unfortunately, right. black right. people in this country, we have not figured that part out yet. That's but the even, point I made. Facts. But even Facts. without that, but my point is this: is that we don't need anyone else. When we I started don't. my business, when I started my business, nobody helped me with anything. I couldn't, right. I didn't borrow, I had to, I had to bust my hump and work, save up my money, make good, do whatever I needed to do to get my business. Every single person on this panel in this chat can can create some type of side hustle or something that can create, you can have a business on the side where you can be making some money and continue to grow yourself and grow your wealth and grow, you know, for your children and, and create businesses and things like that. We don't, I mean, it's good to, you know, to come together, um, but it's not impossible to get out of the mud and do it on your own. I'm, I'm proof of that. Yeah, I get it. It's, right. about, it's about, it's about the, them being your business and sustained ability is what it is at. You can start, right, but, then we, it, but how, but, but, but within five years, a lot of the businesses are closed. How do we get these people to start a business and stay in business? And how do we get the community to support the business? Because here's the thing, just, uh, I'm just going to keep it a buck. Just, just on YouTube alone, just on YouTube. Okay. People can make even blogging a business. They, they have done it. There are some bloggers on here that make millions of dollars. There are some on here make pennies, right? But even then, I see certain people support certain people. You get what I'm saying? We don't do that. We need to come together as a community. We, we tear each other down too much. First, we have to get our community together. We have to change our mindset. We have no, to change fire. our mindset. Spitting fire, you you right, you hold right. On, about... Hold on, spitting fire. That's not gonna happen. Uh, oh, if, what I, if what I just showed on the internet didn't show you that that's never gonna happen, uh, I put money in everybody's pocket just by letting them use my video. Yeah, that's right. true. That's true. <laughs> and, and right, because do, and put some more money in my pocket while you at it. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave them a blueprint. I pretty much said because I realized YouTube only use this sector is like a beef sector. It's the black sector. And so all everybody do is come around, see who's making the most money, and they all flock and they hate. It's like little bees on honey. Instead see? of doing that, when you take your subscribers and leave, and then this person take their subscribers and leave, and they click up like that, everybody's losing. Absolutely. Mm. This mm. is exactly why when, mm. you, when you, when I came on your channel, and you allow me to promote uh, my platform on your channel. And then I, what did I do? I came back on my channel and promoted yours right back. Because it's a win-win. That's how you It's a win-win right. situation. I, and I right. tell people that all the time. But, and then too, okay, let's just talk to YouTube stuff for a minute. Women and men, they tend to support men bloggers before they support women. But that's neither here or there. That's neither here or there. Let me get <laughs> I know every Friday, Biz Biz does his market watch. The last Friday we were on there with Biz, there were only maybe like two or three people on there. And Biz was dropping major gems about the stock market, crypto. I was on there talking about businesses and what you can do and all the, you know what I'm saying? The, the information is out there. But if our people are not um, seeking it out, then you're right. They're going to start a business and it will fail. You do have to do the proper research. You do have to, I'm sorry, go ahead, champion. You were going to say something. Right. Um, you see, I'm going by what's happening already, right? We in our neighborhood as black people, there are small businesses there already, right? 
they are selling things that we already like, right? So what I'm saying is this. It's not about black people not coming to a black business. No, if you sell what they like and what they use, they will buy it. It's, it's just how this works. It's supply and demand. If we can take up the small businesses in our neighborhood and make it a black thing, that's all we really need. That's not what I, I, let me get some pushback on that, champion. That's not what I experienced. What I experienced having a, a business in the hood, uh, most, most black folks, especially when you have some money, there's an age old thing. Uh, when you made some money before in life, and I think they did this to Floyd Mayweather, it seemed like us as a people, we don't want you to make no more money. That nigga got money. I ain't finna put no more money in his pocket. The absolutely. Moment, absolutely. The yeah, so, you, you, I, 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 I support you. I hold support on, you on that. I have a friend that's, he ran for mayor. Everybody loved him back and from my, from my hometown. He played quarterback for the high school, everything, the rival high school. Uh, matter of fact, my high school. He, he came down there. He came back home. He used to be a rapper. He came back home. He started a business. Everybody loved him. The moment he got a drop top Bentley, no one comes to his restaurant. And it's so <laughs> sad. He sends me pictures of it every day. He said, dog, how do you deal with your own people? He's about to move to D.C. He's like, hmm. man, I can't, I can't do it. The hate is real. As soon as I got this car, they can't stand me. Yeah. And they brought it, it up. It is. And that, that's what I'm saying. Motherfucker set it on motherfucker set it on fire. It was so bro, mad. It, at it. It is, it is what I'm talking about. <laughs> motherfucker, yep. bro, a nigga outside of the man restaurant, a nigga set niggas was so mad they set the man Bentley on fire. This is a man that got that's out of the mud. Funny, but that's damn. fucked up. That's, that's I'm that's talking about up. a dude, bro. Yeah, Ooh, man, this man bro, got it out of the mud, bro. Man. And the most <laughs> in, probably uh, a very that's influential person, bro. And niggas is that, that mad yeah. about it. Yeah, mindset it's got to change. The and mindset they, got and to they change. bragged about it. They bragged about it on Facebook. That's unfortunately, it's true. If I I'm mean, being honest, some of the worst uh employees I had, unfortunately, were black. And I and I and I really thought, you know, here I am. I'm in a you know predominantly white area. Um, I'm a young black woman. I done started my own company and, you know, I hired all of these black therapists that were under me. I thought, you know, and they were like, yeah, you know, they dapping me low key. Like, yeah, you a sister, you own this company. That's what's up. And then I hired them and they get in there and do the worst work. It was, it was, it was disappointing. You know, that happens, that happens, yeah. but it, it still would never be a situation where, you know, I'll never hire another black. I'm going to always bet on black, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you another story then, Juicy Fu. You're going to always bet on black before the, the mentality change. No. There's a, there was a, like a 60 or 70-year-old man that owned a liquor store in my hometown for years. Turns out one dude, a young kid, robbed him one day and gave him a heart attack. He went to the hospital and died. Oh. In his own neighborhood, oh, Sunday community. Damn. The only black owned liquor store in that side of town in the south side where I'm from. Now that building is all of that whole space is owned by Arabs or Arabic, however you say it. I give you one better. I give you one better. So you remember when I first came over on your channel by almost a couple of years now, right? So I come from another sector and they came over there and we had this conversation about Kwame Brown. And one guy argued with me. And I, I won't say who he is for the sake of, but one guy argued with me and said, well, I won't donate to his channel. I said, well, why not? You know, he a brother and everything else, like he doing this YouTube thing, why not? Well, he, he an NBA, ex-NBA player. He got money. I'm not donating to his channel. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Like, I, we had this big heated disagreement on it, but that's the mindset of the people. You have their mindset is I, I don't know I don't know champion I don't I mean, know I mean here's what I'm saying we have to play this shit in reverse when you have it when you have a Chinese uh, or um, business in a black neighborhood they will put black people to work there you see so when you come there you see black people working there but a Chinese motherfucker owned the beauty store so we shop there we don't break them we don't press them right we don't do nothing right so we could have black business in a black neighborhood and have a white motherfucker work there as a supervisor. And then put some white faces over there, and then have them. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, 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 look, we have to change in reverse. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I, hear I hear you. Hey, I hear you. I hear you. There is. <laughs> hey, call me. Hey, call me. There is something about. There is something about black people. Whenever they see a different skin, they act different. So what you said. You, you, you have a you have a black business. 
you put some white faces in there, bitch, and you put maybe three black people somewhere down there and then mix it up like that. So they're gonna come on there, they're gonna act normal. But if you have oh, a black bitch, hey champion, you understand how sad that is. Act normal, it's fucking true. But do you understand how sad that is? They don't like those black folks. If white people hear this shit. Do you understand? <laughs> okay, how you didn't get a Kanye. You didn't get a Kanye. <laughs> you worse than Kanye. <laughs> 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 I think the deepest source and problem that we really have as a black people is people don't realize the reason we are really free is because we've been so brainwashed from slavery that we've literally become the slave owner. Fact. We're free now to kill ourselves. We can, they don't need to have us in slavery no more because we'll do it ourselves now. And that's what the deep issue is. We have to break free from that mindset and stop that hate and whatever they instilled in us because it's still there a lot of us have a lot of anger for a lot of reasons and, and black people we have to admit that all of us got some anger so with that being said it's a deeper rooted issue we're hearing that a lot of people have to overcome within themselves and a lot of people were saying like earlier in this show about uh you know holding old, uh, old boy accountable yay and i don't think that's that's fair. That's the whole point of what Kwame is trying to say. How are you going to hold that man accountable when, you know, another person could say anything? Anybody should be able to say anything. If freedom of speech is not freedom, it should not be in the Constitution. If it's in the Constitution, we should be able to say anything we want and not be held accountable. Period. End of story. If we are held accountable, then that means freedom of speech needs to be taken out of the Constitution. We need right. to change it. OK, right. so if we have freedom and we are taking it away, then that means the people that are agreeing with this Constitution being taken away from us are being basically the people that are accepting this brainwash of these copyrights and, and, and YouTube silencing you. YouTube silence you is an example of this whole system working. They silence you because they have this paperwork you signed before you became a YouTuber. You have to follow their guidelines. That is the copyright. Thing that that's what uh, Kwame Brown is telling you in every job we have. Every job has this policy thing that you have to follow. That is the brainwashing of having you stay in line. That is the issue. The issue is they are breaking our rights, not them silencing us. You're accepting your silence by saying uh, he shouldn't be able to speak his mind. You should not accept someone telling you to shut up. Right. No, my, no, Ooh. I'm not saying and, that. And, my and, question, oh, my question we gotta true. take a moment. We gotta take a moment for that one. God dang, that was good. That All was right, it. Go I mean, would you, yeah. would you, would you agree my, that the rules are not the same for us? That we, we never the rules, the rules should be the same, and that's what but Kwame is saying. How long can you can not I treat him any quick? different than the regular person because can he be puts his pants on can I be like clear I do? Can I be clear real quick? Go ahead. I'm saying I'm saying that if something is proven through our American court of law that it is not, you know, saying that it is one way, me, if I was a family member, a brother or something, I would have not appreciated. And yes, I would have looked for damages of what the heat that you would be bringing back to my family, the the emotional stress that what you just said and what you just stirred up of something that I'm trying to get past. So the issue should be the people so, and their response, on, not brother, the person finish. speaking, but let each person's though. individual hold on, hold on, response. Hold on, hold on, brother. Let him, let him finish. Go ahead. Quick. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I was just speaking in perspective of the person as an American person. If something has been proven in court or whatever, and you come on the platform, I don't care if you're a big person, a millionaire, or a small person. If you tell a false, a false truth like that, I have the right just as much as a person have the right to, you know, feel like they can say whatever. Okay. I am going through the emotional distress now because of your voice or whatever. So okay. in that instant, that's what I mean. I ain't saying that I don't, I think it's wrong for the man to be able to speak out. I think he should be able to say what he yeah. wants. But once yeah. something is proven or whatever, please don't, you know, go and stir up a narrative knowing that you have that power to, to do okay. that, whether you're a small person or a big person. Can I chime That's in on that? I mean. Can I respond to can that? I, can I chime in on that? Hold on, champion. Let them respond, and then you can go ahead. Okay. okay. So, so my response would be: what I say should not be held accountable to me. That everybody takes what I say and reacts on it. 
each person that receives what I say and decides to act on it should be held for what they do. That is each person's decision to make a reaction. So the person, like, if I say I want to do something tomorrow, like go uh, flying, and somebody that hears me say they want to go flying and they actually die from that flight, is it my fault they decide to go jump parachuting just because they did what I wanted to do? No, it's not. That person decided to share a food parachute he had an accident that happened i'm not responsible for that accident you're having that man be responsible for words not actions words Speaking. that's not fair okay so let me let me follow up with what he's saying now i don't know if i can say this on youtube but this this case went to court don't right? say it, dude. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm just saying like i'm not i don't want to like go into details but the case went to court and the other the the person's defendant was saying that this person didn't die from whatever it is that happened to him on the video, right? Where is the okay. lawsuit for that? Because if somebody is saying in court that this we know he died from what, what happened in the video, but somebody's defending it saying, Oh, it didn't happen, it was something else that killed him. Where is the lawsuit for that? Why is that person not being held accountable for saying that? That's, that's what one. we're talking about. That's and, what we're talking on, about right now. now. The person that's hold on, saying that. Hold on, that's number one. That's number one. Number two, your opinion is not law, okay? So if somebody get hit by a car and they die from it, and I come out and say, well, I don't think it was the accident that killed him, I shouldn't be held accountable for that. That was That's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Somebody else can come and say, oh, well, he died from the car accident. I can say something else. That's my opinion. That doesn't mean it's a fact. You see what I'm saying? So let's be very careful on how we attack people's opinion because now what's going to happen is if you say anything contrary to what I believe, now I can sue you for some money. And that's not fair. Same thing with abortion. All right. Some it's people believe now. Some people believe abortion is a child in the stomach. Some people believe it's not. Right. But okay. we know what it is, but we know what it is in the stomach is a child. But you, you see what I'm saying? But nobody's being sued for Oh, that's a that's a baby in there. That's not a baby in there. Nobody's being held accountable for that. They're making it like it's an opinion, but we know it's a fact. So this is the same thing with Kanye West's situation. He gave his opinion on a matter, and I think that should be that. He shouldn't okay. be held liable for that because it's thousands of people with the same opinion or a different opinion. But asking for two hundred fifty million dollars, I think that's ridiculous for somebody saying what they think, even though he might he might be wrong. But that's his opinion. So we need to be very exactly. careful on how we go after people for speaking yes, their opinion. exactly. That's my point. You shouldn't be able to silence him. Yes, his opinion may be wrong, but he has the right to say it. You should not be held accountable for saying things. Right. Saying something does not hurt anyone. Saying something does not kill anyone. You have to actually pick up some type of weapon or some type of thing to actually kill someone. Words right. ain't hurting anybody. Yes, it might hurt your feelings, but that's part of life. People tell you you're fat and you're skinny and all kinds of stuff all day long. Sure Words do. are a part of life and they shouldn't be able to kill you. If they do kill you, then how strong are you? Like Words are not that powerful and you're giving them too much power. I think it's way more sensitive because they look at Kanye as a celebrity and a, as a rich person. It's kind of like it seems like uh, they do that same thing with women. It, domestic violence seems to be a big thing when the person is rich. But we all mm -hmm. know there's some dudes in the hood that's whipping on girls every day. Facts. They get three days in jail and they get right back out and whip them some more. Yeah. Facts. So Facts. They, they care when the money and is they, And ain't no girl suing them either. And, 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 and you saw what happened. Uh, and, and you saw what happened. You said this, they wouldn't care, the champion. But if, if it's a dude with some money, then it, then they come up with this social construct of, oh, your platform is big, your influence is big. First of all, black folks been left Kanye West alone. They wear his shoes because they sneaker head. If you look at, I went to Kanye West's concert in Philly. I played for the Philadelphia 76ers. I brought a suite. I was damn near, me and my crew was damn near the only black people in there. It's mostly white, Latinos, yeah. and everybody else. They don't fuck with Kanye. After Fine. he, when he, especially when he decided to go with Trump and wear a MAGA hat, black folks don't fuck with Kanye like that. They just wear shoes. Right. But that's my point, Kwame. That's my my concern is that um, it's, the, it's the white people that, whose ear that he has. 
and that and 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 so beyond the George Floyd case and whether he died by the cops' hands or not, you know, at the end of the day, something that somebody says, and I understand, Mr. Jones, what you're saying that we should not, what we say shouldn't matter, but the reality is, is that it does, and that we should have free speech, but the reality is that black people don't. So we, you know, and we shouldn't have to watch what we say, but the reality is we do. We have to watch what we say because if he presents any type of reasonable doubt as to what happened to George Floyd, the next time another black man is in the streets at the, at the hands of, of, of the police or somebody, they're just going to have another excuse to be able to, you know what I'm saying? It's going to raise uh, that I, type agree, of doubt. I agree with that. I agree with what you're that, saying. I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree with what you're saying to a certain degree. Now, where I have this, uh, uh, you know, kind of, you know, opinion on it is because what Kwame Brown said earlier, he said, when they tag you with a celebrity, once they tag you with a celebrity, everything is different for you now. Had it been a regular guy, a Pookie or Ray Ray would have said the same exact thing. I don't think anybody in their right mind would ask for $250 million because first of all, Pookie live in the ghetto on food stamps. So, we know why this is happening. It's not because yep. of what he said, in my opinion. I think it's Control. the person who said it. Once they tag you with this celebrity with celebrity tag, everything is different now, for you. Now y'all start to get it. Adrian Peterson. <laughs> now you see how they control an election. Right. They control right. everything because they don't complain right. about Kanye's influence when he's saying what they want him to say. This is right. nigga, you off cold and there's a problem. Now the George Floyd comments, I'm going to say again, I don't agree with those comments. I think right. he should, I, I agree with y'all or Snoop. I think he should have a public apology. If what Ears is saying is correct and he said what he said, yes. I, I don't agree with knee on the back, knee on the neck. I don't give a damn what angle they got. That's too much. That's too yeah. long. Yeah. So hey, I, don't I, agree with, I don't agree can with I add to that, I'm Kwame? just saying he has the right to can, an opinion. Can, can I add it? Let me, let me add to that, Kwame. And it, it, it really, what I got out of that um, Kanye interview, it really did prove a lot, and I like this genius about Kanye, and it's a point that you've been making a lot, too. They don't give a fuck how much you talk about niggas. He could have talked about a nigga, too. He was blue in his face, and nothing would have ever happened. But the minute he started talking about them other folks, I held <laughs> <laughs> he could have said anything, bro. Listen, he could have said anything about any nigga on the planet, like anything about any nigga, it would have been no black backlash. But he said something about them other folks, and it went haywire. Uh -huh. right. and, 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 let, and let's not forget, let's not forget, he made a comment. He made a comment on TV. He said he's the only person in this planet who can save Gap. So white people took that as a threat. So we need to also look at this as maybe they're coming after him from another angle. You know what I mean? We need to also kind of be aware of that, you know, right. because for, for you to come out and say you're the only person that can save a business, a white business, and you black. Woo! See, that's that. That's why I be telling people. Yeah, they scared of niggas with money. But, that, that's, but, that's what happened with, that's but you what notice what he said, when too. He about NBC. You notice what he said, though, with that, too. He said, because of your influence, he said, you don't have to sell out a lot. It's your influence that sells. Right. So he knows he's influenced. He's he need if they get the uh, what he said, the um, the uh, the yay check mark, they're good to go. So, of course, they're using him as, you know, they're OK with black folks, whether it's with um, Gap or it's with Adidas whether it's with, you know, politics. I mean, he's playing it to his T, too. And, I mean, I don't know how this shit going to unfold, though, for him. I ain't going to lie. Hey, not, man, on, that, uh, on that voting topic y'all had earlier, I wanted to say, I added a little bit on that voting topic. Uh, I don't actually vote, never have. I don't think I ever will. Uh, the main reason I don't vote is because I don't believe in the people they present to us. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I just think the whole voting thing is a game. Uh, it's a game to me that's it's a seesaw system. In my eyes, if my vote is the deciding factor of whether or not we can kill, rape, or steal somebody, then I don't want to believe in a system oh, of a vote oh, that oh, changes oh. that decision. Number right. two, uh, I think th in order to find a solution to that, we just need to go back to the basic laws that pretty much, I hate to say it, the Bible presents and not change it. All this changing of the laws, that means there's a game being played. The law should be set in place, not changed, period. 
Yeah, but but you have to change the laws, you know, at, at the same time because uh, when you when you have when a it law, comes to marijuana yeah. and minor laws, yes, but when it no, comes I'm, to no. main laws, it should be set in stone, not change. Everybody right. should understand molestation. Everybody should understand murder. Everybody should understand serial murders. Those should be set in stone, never change. If that's what you're doing, this is what you're facing. And when it comes right. to minor laws, I definitely agree. You can change those. Right. But then you have to understand the reason why we have politics in the first place in America is because of money. You see what I'm saying? It's because of money. So if the money swing too much to this side, now this side wants to do That's something. Why I say get rid of the game. Move it to this side. Game. If we swing too get much to this side, now they want to. So it's a game. That's why I don't want black people to partake in it. We need to bypass it. Okay, like literally bypass this this politics thing and, and get to our business and get to our program yeah. by supporting each other or maybe coming up with our own political party if we could do that. You know what I'm saying? But if, if that's too much for us to do, we need to bypass it, get to what we need what to do, and get called? on with our life. <laughs> what will our political party be called? It will be called the Black Kwame Tube Political Party. <laughs> <laughs> you so uh, <laughs> Don't you put that on me. Don't you put that on me. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> you so call it here to the streets political. Shit, uh, yeah, me. Hell no. Nah. Yeah, get that shit on me. me. Don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. <laughs> that ain't the smoke I want. No, I sir. No, sir. <laughs> just left my goddamn house. It's your turn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kwame Brown's National Convention. Uh-oh, no, 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 no. Y'all trying to get me back. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Are y'all about to, hey, look here. Y'all about to make me vote uh, Biden and Democrat everything. Y'all <laughs> I mean, you're so crazy. Yeah, yeah, y'all are scared. Y'all say that's something that's scared. Oh, Lord. Wait, wait, wait. Stacey Abrams, Warnock, I'll vote all of them. I'm for 2024. <laughs> I'm scared now, uh-uh. But for real, though, I mean, if, if we can support somebody who we like, like, you know, Ice Cube, if he come out and run the that, I'm... But take, but check this out. If Say we did that, right? Now, mm-hmm. wouldn't that if we put money behind somebody to do what we want them to do, what what mm-hmm. would make them different from the other groups that are right, putting money behind right. somebody let me tell you, else let me, let me answer that's that. doing let me, what they want them to do? Let me let me answer that. Let me answer that. Now, let's say we pick a candidate and we put money behind him and he get into office. He's not going to join any other group and do nothing they're doing because his his our money is why he's there and we are the one paying his tickets so he gonna do what we say it's called lobbying it's, but it's, what i'm saying is what, we, so what, what i'm saying is we've been talking about that lobbying all night but, That's what, but we're what, what i'm saying what i'm saying is home, let, listen listen what i'm saying what, what would make him any different from the person that they put the same money behind to do what they want them to do say the mm-hmm. lbgtq what would make this person that we're putting the money behind any different from the person that they're putting the money behind to, because to do something because again, we're accusing them and we're accusing them that they're bad people because they're doing that and we're doing the same thing. And then that person will take money from others because if we're not giving him what he wants or you know how hard it is to please black folks. They want you to do one thing that when, when they think they put two dollars in to, for you to do something and you ain't shot them out of some shit. It's going haywire. Joe, yeah, yeah, we have to understand that politics is not just one day, you're not going to be in, in office for one day, that. you have I at least two that. years or four years. So, we're going to get what we want in, in, the, in that time spam. We're going to get not maybe not immediately, but we're going to get what we want because we paid you, we, we, we voted for you, we campaigned for you, we paid for your campaign, we did everything we we're supposed to do to get you in there. So, now that you are in there, you owe us that natural debt. Of doing what we want, you might not do how, it. The first how many day times you day. think that's been? Well, you know that every that time somebody is works. in office doesn't necessarily mean that the things that you put them in there to do. Right, I was just about to say that. that. How Depend many on times how we try. That. That's the truth. Depend on how you get in. Depend on how you get in. No, no. Depend on if how you, you get if in. You put because them in office for a subject, like you want a certain thing to be pushed or a certain bill or a law to be passed, it doesn't guarantee that that's going to happen just because you put them in there. You know that, right? Right. It, because your your crime. priority might be stopping crime. Somebody else's no, priority might be like uh, pregnancy or, 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 ears, ears, or, ears. or you program. Somebody else's priority might be infrastructure. Like you got all these people putting in for different things. So now you got to get everything across okay. the table settled. 
Okay, I'm so I'm gonna we've tried right? this a, a lot of times with a lot of people that I mean, first you got to get that person educated, you know, what okay. I'm saying make sure they stay grounded. Like it's a lot of factors that come into that that type of stuff, and that usually comes from good society and communities from the jump. Okay, so I'm gonna break it down. I'm 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 gonna break it down. I'm gonna break it down politically so you can see how this works, right? Okay, break it so down. It, break it down. Champion. Okay. So if you get into office right now, right? Say you took money from blacks, you took money from LGBT, you took money from Pamper, you took money from different different organizations to do different things, right? So how this works is some of the money that you took, right? When they ask you for something, if you can't get it done, you have to go talk to other people in politics who can help you vote for that bill to pass. That means you will take some of that money that you took from these people and split it with them. Then they're going to give you their vote. That's why they want money to begin with. You see what I'm saying? So, for example, if I'm trying to pass a bill to where I don't like stop signs in my neighborhood, right? And I give a guy 100,000 bucks and be like, I don't want this stop sign right here. I don't want it, right? He's going to take that 100,000 go to Congress and get some of his friends to get behind him to remove that stop sign. So from the 100000 that I gave him, he's going to give them a little bit of that to get them to vote on. This is politics. This is all money business. Same that's way. how that works. So whatever you pay for, you're going to get it. Trust me, you're going to get it. Whatever you pay for, that's not true. I think you, Can you hear me? I think in a perfect world, that's how it would go. But that's right. not how it would go. Right. <laughs> look at, look at that's how it go, right but now. we don't if see... You, Look at what's happening right now in Georgia with um, Raphael Warnock and all that, right? Just right. a couple years ago, black people did everything to get that brother in office. And now, you know, from what I understand, he hasn't exactly upheld to everything that he said he was going to do. He's this fighting against a fucking Herschel Walker. Like, come on, man. And, and he, 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 should, he should be a walk in. actually lose because apparently right. he right. had been and doing, he hadn't been doing correctly. So I guess my, what I want to say to champion is... Wait, hold yes, on. What's wrong with Herschel Walker? What, what's up with Herschel Walker? I mean, because here, we, because here we are, go, we're looking at somebody's running, I mean, somebody's athletic and uh ability instead of the person that was actually in the community you know what i'm saying working through all these things i mean come on this man had man we don't but even have to go I, into this man's so, background so, but so we're talking about what this there, man is we're talking about who the two people that's in front of us and we have a choice of this man's resume and this man's resume the best candidate so i'm okay. saying what what makes Herschel walker not a good candidate because i thought he did well in the debate that's all he does in the minute, debate. This is what I'm saying, the champion. Wait a minute, this is what I'm saying, the champion. Champion, when you put yeah. somebody in office, right, and you mm -hmm. want them to push, uh, say for instance, you want them to push something that you want them to push, it's no guarantee that they're going to be able to do that. They have to. There are Spoon things that they have pay. to work. They have to work <laughs> with other people and counterparts and different parties and all these type of things and they have to vote to see if that's going to pass there's no guarantee that those things are going to happen like that Spin fire. if you Somebody pay said, if you pay no if you pay even if you pay to get them pay. in there there's no you know, guarantee do you know why do you know why they haven't changed the curriculums in our school system because some people are paying for that to stay there that's what I'm, when you vote and when you pay is different thing if i come out and vote for you to do something and you don't do it that's different but right. if I give you money and say, here, it's a brown bag right here, right. and you collect that money, right. you will do what I say. But so here's the thing, you will do it, but there's no guarantee it's going to pass because there can be another party that can pay just as much money to try to block what it is that you exactly. want that person to do. Exactly. And that, that's not go that way. Yep. That, that's facts. You're you speaking you ask, facts on that. You yeah. speaking facts, but but then but then the lobbying, we know lobbying is, is, is a thing. We know that happens. So what is that? Again, it's paying to get what you want. It's Absolutely. a matter of it's, it's but all about the who's who, the highest bidder, here's right? The, the highest thing. bidder. Absolutely. Right. But here's so the thing. Please. They lobby to for them to get what they want and the best candidate to for the choice to get those things done. But there are also other lobbyists that's coming in to try to block what they're doing, especially exactly. what you want. To get done, counter uh, blocks what it is that they're trying to do. So it is all. Then they have to fight, and then they have to vote, and then they have to go and see what's gonna pass and what's not. That's how that is. Lobbying only gets you into the main fight, but the fact is, the other people are lobbying too. 
it ain't just you lobbying. Or, or for example, champion, let's say your candidate that you're talking about, right, that we pulled together and we paid to do something. What if another um, entity came and they offered them more money, right? Because you're talking about money and you're saying that if we pay them, they'll do, right? But what right. if this, what if this candidate that you're talking about, what if the LGBTQ community came and offered them double or triple what we paid? For their, for their, for their, that happens too. And that's the that sad, that's the sad reality of politics. They're gonna start though. working towards the LBG two TQ. That's back. They don't care that's about what about. And now they have our money, and now they're in office, and now they're not doing anything that we want them to do. That's so fact. And that's the sad reality of politics. Right? It's not always about money. I think the issue is, is that we don't do a good enough job of vetting our candidates we really need to focus on that too like you, who you know well, we don't have a vet you, you can't vet who you no, don't know no, 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 no. but no. even when you vet them oh, shit, oh, motherfuckers will oh, say oh, well why oh, oh, hold on hold on let me give a little pushback we do not we we i i try not to get frustrated we don't be honest enough we don't have a vetting process just like everybody else attacked me for just asking ears a question i simply ask ears What's wrong with Herschel Walker? I didn't interrupt. I listened to what he said, and he could barely get it out without the people in the chat and out everybody going crazy for just asking a question. So that's why I know it's all about who we like. If we like somebody, then the other person that you don't like, you attack the person for even trying to find out who right. the person is worth a fuck. The, the, right. Is Herschel Walker the greatest person in the world? Probably not. Is Warnock the greatest person in the world? Probably not. So you're talking about two imperfect, two flawed people. Why can't I ask a question about the, the one person? Isn't that the best thing to do is ask a question to learn? Right. Thanks. Our community, we, we, we so... We, That's why so I say you look at their resume. I, I, I ain't no use of looking at the... Uh, I look at people's resume. And like I say, it's... Like you said, if we're gonna vet people. people we gotta take that vet too. into. We gotta take that vet into consideration. Mm -hmm. Don't say after we vet them, if we like them, oh, let's just pass along all the stuff that we vet and then find it out doing the vet. Oh no, that stuff needs to take account. Or better yet, we can bypass that, right? If because you can hear me, is, yeah. Well, better yeah. yet, we can bypass that because my thing is this: if you have to get something done through politics. Whatever it is you're trying to get done is going to take a process, which means a long time to get done. So whatever you can do for self right now, start doing that. And then when it gets to the big part where you need politicians, then you start looking that way. So if you're talking about getting our communities together, clean up our communities, put people on, get people's businesses up. These are things we can do without politics. We can do these things without politics. So we can start doing those ones. And then when you're talking about big things like our high schools not having this and that, that's politics. Then we could look into who to vote for or who to get the job done for us. But the little things we could do, we need to start doing those ones. You know, that's just my thing because we don't need politics for everything. We need politics for government shit like high schools not having trades and codes. That's 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 politics. That's why they don't have trading and codes because of politics. That's right. why I will come out and vote for somebody to get it done. But if we're talking about, you know, our communities, owning Crazy. businesses in our communities, real estate. We don't need politics for that. We just need some niggas with money and some niggas who don't have money who are willing to uh well, well, here's, why. Here's, why you need, here's why you need politics for that. Uh, here's why you need politics for that, champion. Um, when you start getting the permits and you start trying to put together your plans, you have to go to the, the city council or the other politicians, or you're not gonna get it done. Right, but but brother Kwame, you have to look at this though. Permits. They have requirements, right? So once you meet the requirement and pay the fee, you will get the permit. Unless they're that where I'm from. they don't want to give it to you. But what I'm not saying where, is not where I'm from either. But yeah, not where I'm from. I mean, it don't work like that. But you could you I mean, I don't know if every state is the same, but in Texas, I know that you know uh, most of the requirements I know the people that, are always the same. Shit. They ain't got them. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm saying like, hey, your your permits go to the top of the list when you got an envelope with five thousand dollars in it, right? But if you want to, uh, let's say you want to buy, let's say you want to buy a land in Texas, right? You could just go straight on, you know, and and make inquir and make inquiries and all that stuff and get the land. Now in in Mississippi or New York, I don't know how that works. Same thing with food truck in Texas. Same thing with towing. Same thing with the foster care thing that I'm doing. Once you get your permit, your background is clean. You're going to get, and you pay the fee to get the permit, you will get your permit. 
Now, if a bunch know, of black people do it at the I same time, black folks, I know some black folks that bought some land, was try got it permitted, was trying to um do some stuff there. Once the powers that be figured out what they was putting there, they rezoned the land. I mean, it's a lot of racism going on in Texas. I, I get it, but we, we have to fight, man. We have to fight. We have to fight. Now, if a bunch of black people come out and, and go look for apartments to start a business, of course they're gonna they're gonna show they're gonna slow well, it down. What I'm saying is I'm a, I'm agreeing what? with you, champion, but I'm just saying you gotta do a little bit of both. Uh, I think politics has its hand in everything. It has its hand in our educational system. It has its hand in our prison system. It has our hand. It has its hand in everything. It's, it has right. its hand in our immigration. You cannot get around politics. And for the longest time, I grew up, and all of my peers and all of the black people I ever been around, they always say, "I don't talk politics. I don't do politics. It's almost forbidden." And politics is the reason why some of my brothers and uncles went to prison. The 94 crime bill, the 91 or the 92 crime bill, whichever year that was. So it's, it's so many things that politics affect that I think that we don't really realize it's politics. The roads, but, schools. But look at this. Politics. But look at this, though. The reason why they have these, these the, the reason why they have these politics in place in the first place is to minimize certain group of people, which is us. So how can we trust the same system? Is what I'm saying. How can we trust the same people to do to do it right? They haven't it's done it right. It's not about trust. Don't trust them, but you got to learn the system to know how to navigate the streets. I is it possible? Right. I don't trust the ride certain places, but if I got to get somewhere and I know I got to go certain places, I just be aware. You gotta you gotta know how to navigate politics in order to move and shake in a business world. Is it possible to bypass them or go around no. it? You know what I mean? No, I agree no. With I'm telling you, no. Not when I you're trying to make some real money. Yeah, it has to be, but it has to be both. But I think, you know, I think if we rely, I still think we need to rely more on ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, agree I agree with you, Kwame. There's just some things we're in this land. So there's just some things that we have to follow. We, You know what I'm saying? And we need to know the game and be able to follow the rules, follow the politics so that we can can play that game with them. But I think, you know, we're always going to do, I think we're going to do better if we really focus on building our families, starting small with our families and then working our way up to our communities, our businesses and stuff like that. You know, we have right. to create some type of leverage. Um, right. And, and you, you know, well, you don't have to do big things because when you do big things, then you involve politics, just little things, like little things. You know, I know people who I have helped personally start a hair business. Okay, this 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 lady that I was friends with, with her kid, she wanted to do a hair business and I told her to travel to India because I told her she can't buy it here. If you buy, if you buy it here, you're gonna buy it so expensive, you have to sell it expensive, nobody's gonna buy it from you. So I paid for her ticket to go to India and she went over there and got a hookup. And now she buys it for real cheap. Like I'm talking about real cheap and she makes a lot of money now, you see. So these are the little things I'm talking about. People who want to start a small shoe business or a clothing line, like little things like this can help you help your family. You know, I'm not talking about somebody who want to go out and, and start a real estate business where you're buying lands and houses and all that. No, you need politics for that. But if you're talking about something small, like a food truck, for example, all you got to do is buy a truck. You know how to cook? Okay, bet. Start cooking. That's right, it. Well, hold on, hold on champion. Let me let OG say something real quick. He's been sitting here patient this whole time. Go ahead, brother. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Everything you're saying is true, and I'd like to say salute to you, Kwame, salute to the panel, salute to the chat. This is my first time on YouTube. I'm a little bit, of, I wouldn't say nervous, but I might not be able to present my, my ideas well, so bear with me. Everything you're saying is true. Uh, champion, what you're saying in theory is true. Everything you're saying is true. That's not in real life, though. <laughs> it's just not. Kwame's been preaching, and he has showed everybody example how the black community operate, and it operates everywhere. I'm from Detroit. I'm a businessman. People don't share shit here. You know what I'm saying? Detroit been ran by black people for a long time. It got worse under black leadership. I'm not saying white is better. Or this, that. I, I don't even believe in racism. I don't even believe in it. If, you, if you're a person and I can trust you and you're a man of your word, See, I, I go about strictly about what people do. If you lie to me once, you lie to me twice, I'm not, we ain't going to get to the third time. And politicians get up there, especially the liberals. You know, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. You know what I'm saying? Well, what I have noticed is this. Most of the time, out of 10 times, 
when Republicans get in office, black people do well financially. Because some of the things, the policies that they, they put out there, everybody said they're for the rich people. That's not necessarily true. It's to help people get rich. And then you learn how to, you know, I used to have a thing as a, um, Mr. Dix, you know how to make money, but you know how to keep it. That's what we get to when we get into business. Because they can put all type of, thumb, you know, hurdles in your way. It stop you from succeeding in business. You know what I'm saying? You go to families, you go to friends, you go to politics. You say, well, you know, well, I'd like to get this, you know, city contract. Oh, you can't get this city contract. You can't do this and another. Then they start going through all this stuff. It was a little different when Coleman Young was in office. He was getting black people into getting some of them city contracts, and black people started to do well under his leadership. And Facts. You've, seen how, Facts. you've seen how they cut Coleman Young down. See, Coleman Young was like a Kwame Brown, you know what I'm saying, a lot of other tough people. And I hate, I, it is, I hate to say it, but it's just facts. It's like a Donald Trump. They threw everything, and they're still throwing everything at that, that man. I don't give a shit about Donald Trump. I like his policies. I studied his policies. You know? Oh, and that, should, oh, let me ask you this, and that should be, yes. Hey, oh, let me ask you this. Now, I said that same thing. I don't know Trump. I don't like Trump. They're, they're, but in our community... They call it vetting, but when you say things like that, like I like the First Step Act, and I can explain it. I Fact. like school choice. I can explain it. Fact. I like some of the things that he said, but it's just the man overrode the message, and they, and they get so mad. Well, how do you feel, or did they do this to you in Detroit? Did they call you a Trump uh, boy well, and all this other crazy stuff just for stating your opinion? The thing we got to look at is the agenda, and, and no disrespect to the, the, the female, the black, white, agent. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect, but they don't want to see a man do nothing. I looked at Donald Trump as like a, a grandfather. Hmm. He going to tell you the shit just the way it is. He ain't putting no sugar coat, nothing. He ain't, he wasn't even trying to do none of that. You know what I'm saying? But what was his policies? What was his policies? Are we doing better than Build Back Better? <laughs> if, if anyone can say we're doing better right now, I can definitely say no. I had several projects in, in a way, and this pandemic, you know, I know we don't post to talk then, and I ain't trying to get you thrown off of YouTube, but can't always believe what you see. Have anybody ever been in a work environment where you see a person create a problem, report it to your boss, and then they step in and fix it? Has anybody ever had that experience in life? Yeah, that's the do low twist. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. That's what they do in life. They do that in politics. They do that in families. They do it everywhere we go. And you just have to recognize that stuff and move out the way. You know what I'm saying? You don't let people stop you from doing what you're doing. You just find another avenue to do what you do. You know, and I've been listening to your panels for quite a while, Swami, and I take my hat off for you because you tried everything. Everything. <laughs> and you show what the black people will present. You go and try to open up a business. I didn't have several business. Not one of my family members came and seen me. Hello. Mm. Not one. That's why I be listening to Chad. That's fact. That's fact. Not only did they come, not only did they come and patronize with me. Oh, his stuff's too high. This that, and the other. This that. Yeah. How would you know unless you come? And then, like you said, <laughs> first, uh, you, you gonna give me that deal? Yep. I, I can barely pay my bills. I gotta pay this tax, people. Because see, that's what people don't understand. When you open up a business, most people go out of business for tax purposes. That's the government doing that. You know, taxation without representation is a motherfucker. You got to believe it. They're going to tax your ass until you close your doors. And then you start finding out they got all this. And not, you, you open up a business, and then they want to charge you taxes on, on your equipment, taxes on stuff you buy. But what we don't get the knowledge of is it's also rules and regulations that we can write this shit off. One balance out the other. You can come out on top. You close down your business, you take a loss, you get burnt down. The average person don't even know that you can write that off in your taxes. So when, when, when um, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump was doing a debate, he said that. They could, well, you ain't paid taxes, this and another. No, and, and all your friends didn't either. That's why, that's why you ain't talking about the money. Like Champion was saying, the money, the money, the money. They, they pay these politicians to put these loopholes in there. We just got to have a, 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 a decent accountant. To show us how to don't just do my taxes. Show me right. how to move in the next year. 
show me how she move in the next tax season because they're changing the tax season law. If they wanted to be fair, they have a set tax for everybody. If they wanted to be fair, everybody for 20% taxes. When we get through paying all these taxes, say you make $100,000 a year. When you get through paying the federal taxes, they're going to take 40, 45%. We all know that. Kwame definitely know it. You know what I'm saying? They ain't never made that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? Sales right. tax, real estate, everything. You're probably working uh, down this seven, eight months before you can get paid. We was in the real estate business. And, and when I was younger, I didn't know nothing about this. I'm just trying to buy up houses and this, that, and other. Then they went around to change the laws. You are going to write off certain things for your residential thing, none of your businesses. So when you had to go and replace your door on your businesses, you can write that off. You can't, these are some of the taxes black politicians here in Michigan and, not, and specifically Detroit. They, 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 everybody, black ain't your friend. I don't even look at black. Absolutely. I got a son that's on YouTube. He got, I think he got a hundred and some thousand, maybe a hundred, really close to 200,000. You know what I'm saying? But I, like I tell him, I got a daughter, she got a, hold on, take a minute, her PhD. You know what I'm saying? We used to think alike, but the education systems that was in front of us now, especially in colleges, and now they're trying to push that stuff down to our children, you got to change a person. My, my sister told me, we was talking about certain laws and this, this. She said, Daddy, you can't mad at women being able to do what they do. Y'all gave, y'all made them laws. And I couldn't, I could, how could I argue with that? This, these are facts. These are facts. So do, do black men or men in general need to have dick discipline? Yes. Do we want, who making all the money now? You can go on, what's that, fans club? What they call that? Fans only, you can make a million dollars in a month. On, only fans? Yeah, only fans. You can make a million dollars in a month. You know what I'm saying? So what is it promoting? I don't want my daughter swinging from a pole. I just don't. Absolutely, aunt. I don't. Hey. I'm telling you certain things, and she come on, start while she's swinging on the pole, and want to be proud of her. No, you go sit no. over there. But we're gonna have that kind of conversation because we're gonna like what I got they're to putting say. On fans, shit. The poll ain't the worst thing no more. I mean, now, well, the same thing they're doing on the on the poll. You know what I'm saying? I never pay three dollars. Same thing they're doing on the poll. They're doing on fans only. This ain't this. What is the old profession in the world? <laughs> Anybody know it? Cross, cross oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the old profession in the world. Women been on that game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody, and all men basically get caught up in it one way or another, whether it's your wife, it's your girlfriend. It's, and there's no down on woman. Woman just doing what works for her. Women only do what works for them. We only do as as men that works for us. When we when it stops working, we need to change what we're doing. Everybody know the definition of crazy. You know? Everybody know these things. But I ain't going to hold your panel up. I like to listen to more of your stuff and I chime in, you know, say when I can. Man, shout out to you, on for even coming shout on the out. panel. I liked it that. Shout out. It was, a, it was a real gems in there because that is something like, to think about. Is like I was telling my son today. I like I was telling my son today. I'm 68 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I done lived a little life. All my family from down south. You know what I'm saying? Uh, lead the hatchet. You probably might know something about that. You know, the so, little towns in Birmingham, the little country towns and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. My, my father said the first time... You just, and like I said, I'm not against white people. I'm against individuals, whether they're black, white, male, or female. It don't make no difference to me. You cross me twice, sure. I can't fuck with you. Right. I can't fuck with you. I can't trust you. 50 Cent going through some things with his son. I was going through the same with my son. That's the reason me and my son had a conversation. You know what I'm saying? And I said, you know, as we try to work through our difficulties, since you want me to get on your YouTube and talk gangster shit and all of this, no, let's talk about how we're trying to build our relationship back. And maybe somebody else can learn from that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I politicians. I got a brother been in politicians ever since Coleman Young. You know what I'm saying? And he's the crookedest motherfucker I know. Seriously, I do some crazy shit. I'm from a big family. It's 11 of us. You know what I'm saying? And you have to learn stuff in life as you go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody gonna really tell you the truth. If they was building pyramids before Christ and shit, 
Where is that knowledge at now? So each generation, each century, you know what I'm saying? They dumb us down, they dumb us down, they dumb us down. We're in the greatest part of getting dumbed down as possible. When they threw Trump off of Twitter, we didn't, we didn't have a chance. And it don't make no difference if I like what he said or not. Then they send the FBI in his house. We ain't got a chance. They coming as nuts. Administration is in power right now. They want to hire 8,000 more F, uh, IRS agents. They're passing laws where, where you do anything over $600 transaction, the bank's got a call. It used to be 10000 Now yep. 600 These are the things we need to be looking at. These are, I, I don't, you know, like Kwame always said, you know, they come to you talking all nice and this, that, and another. You know what I'm saying? And, and they go along, get it going. That ain't no new concept. Kwame just, you know, that was just, you know, the way he expressed it. So people can understand the thing better. But that's that's where it's always been. That's where it's always been. And, and then when black people do get into an office and try to make some changes, you know what happened? They find something about his ass or put him in a situation where they can blackmail him. This is gangster shit. This is mafia shit they do. This mafia stuff you do. I was in court a couple of years back. You know what I'm saying? And I had everything on my phone. I recorded the situation. You know, they wouldn't let me bring my phone into the court. The guard at the... the bring your phone in. They wouldn't let me bring my phone in court to present the evidence. The police didn't even want to listen to it when they came in and arrest me. That sound about right, huh? Is that what I'm saying? saying? And what I had to do is this. I had to get everything off my phone and get it in some type of recording or, or, or some, what do they call these files? You know what I'm saying? That you have to Hard put it drive. on. Flash drive. Right, right, Flash right, drive. right. Flash. You know what I'm saying? And then they was, I was able to present it at the last minute. And the judge threw that shit out. Now, person was straight up, straight up lies, straight up. In Wayne lies. County, in Wayne County. Hmm. Frank Murphy. Yeah, Frank Murphy, you heard about it. Uh, look, I'm, in Detroit. Detroit. You heard I'm about in Detroit it? too. I, I promise. You know, I'm talking about just because black people get in office don't mean they mean you no good. They don't mean you no good. You know That's what I'm saying? You really got to go by, but see, the only thing between me and you, you be having some valid points every time I've seen you on the show. And most of the people spitting fire, everybody I've seen on the show always have valid points. But we are living in real life. Absolutely. They ain't how it go. Remember Kwame Brown? I mean, not Kwame Brown, uh, Kwame, uh, what was it, Kirkpatrick? Yes. He wasn't doing yeah. no more than other, he wasn't doing no more than other politicians. Yep, you're right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't doing no more than Bill Clinton. He had a little side piece, and that's how they brought him down by the side piece. See, the time is Hey, you want to know what's funny? Oh, his side, house, his side, he had some, had some text messages. I'm told that, why are you in my business? Coleman Young told him then, you know, yeah, I got some skeletons in my closet. You got some skeletons in the closet. You want me to follow you? Yeah. You think everybody Call got me, some skeletons? Call me, Brown. Uh, Call me Young had a woman. He had a baby. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what? Hey, I don't understand. You know that. They, cl they claim my father had a a a, a, a illegitimate child when we buried him. Shoot, and my all, thing, all my, my, my got these babies hey, out here. My, my thing was just, my thing was this: his wife is still living. We ain't gonna put that kind of pressure on her. So y'all put that shit to the side. I'm not gonna even entertain that conversation while my mother's still living. That's gonna hurt her to death. She with this man from. They got married at 16. When my father died, he was 70. He was 10 years old. My mother, that means when she died, she was 65. They went through some ups and downs. We went through some ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? But you know when our life got cut off, you know what my father did? Because he worked for Edison. He climbed that pole and cut the motherfuckers back on. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember. This is actually that an day. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about like, you, you, have, you, have, have, you have, have to do what you have, have to do. Tommy? You remember you used to have to have a key to get the stuff turned back on? If you had that key, you could turn it back on yourself? He had the key. So, like, so my, I, I, I have a question. The key. What they learned yeah. from him is that we can't just do, <laughs> do the key thing. We got to cut your shit off on the pole. <laughs> See, <laughs> big family, you got to do what you got to do. You see, know what I, have a I have a question yes. for the elder. 
not to cut you up, I have a question for the elder. You know, you say you're 68 years old, you know, yes. so I feel like, you know, people like you are missing from the society. Most of them are either in the nursing home somewhere. Right, you might have one mm -hmm. or two like you are, listen, who are listen, out listen. there. What else? Right? I don't need so, to interrupt you. We're not missing. Well, I'm, not I'm saying missing. I'm not saying like missing. No, it's listen, I, listen. The young generation don't want to hear shit we saying. That's what it is. That's, that's old what school. it is. They don't want to hear what we got to say. And cause exactly, the society has changed. Right here. <laughs> the society no, has me, changed. I, I didn't. I didn't finish the question. What I what okay. I was saying is how I grew up. You will see elders physically, like you will see them physically, like either walking around or hanging out with each other somewhere, and they'll be giving out jams and advice to different different kids or whatever at will, right? But right. In, 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 in my society here in America, you only see them, most of them in a nursing home or somewhere or, you know, it's never like a group, like a, where a bunch of elders are together in a community. And then you have them dropping jams on kids, telling them, hey, look, man, I did all this shit right here. This is what you're going to get if you do this. You know, I feel like this is what's missing. That's why our young kids have no direction. They can't can listen I, to the Can mom. I chime in? Because I, 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 I would, I would just say this, this right? Let him, it's let a him big finish bit. my question. Okay. So, so what I'm saying is people like you, you know, don't you think that yeah, I can have a lot of influence on the young generation if it was a situation where we have a community where there's a bunch of elders in the community instead of, like, in the nursing home, basically. Listen to this. If your own son don't listen to you, you think these other knuckleheads are they going to listen to you? When you, open up six, seven, you, when you open up six or seven businesses hoping that he'll, you know, do one, and he, he turned out and wanted to do the streets, and there's no disrespect to my son. He's doing well. He changed his life around. But I sent him to college. I sent him to college. You know, he got the Pell Grants and this and that. We weren't from a rich family where we could pay for all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So when I was young, most people that went to college, they had a job. They helped pay for it plus the grants. Even though they wouldn't, I don't even think they had Pell Grants back then. You know, so, so you had to, my sisters, my older sisters, they had to work themselves through college. Mom and dad can do what they do. Sometimes they can't do it. They, sometimes mm. they just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? And you and, and, I, and I, my family was considered a middle class family, but I had also had family on the east side. They felt that we was poor simply because we had 11, 12 kids. No, oh, don't go around Mr. Hicks' kids. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got to look at all these different dynamics when we have these types of discussions because everyone on the panel have said some valid stuff. If you're reading it out the book and, the, and rules apply. When black people start doing things, I say, and what's happening right now, it ain't even black things. We got 87, 86 million people that voted Republican. They don't have a voice. Hmm. They call them traitors. And I'm talking about if I can win a if I can win an election for my basement, you know, well, God bless me. <laughs> he won an election God without campaigning, me. and then if they didn't show up for no campaigns and still won the election. <laughs> so look, draw a crowd good. of five people. <laughs> and hey. I'm not saying I'm not trying to say Democrat or Republican. I'm talking about, we have to start seeing things for what it is. Someone mentioned Jesse Sumet, whatever his name is. You know what I'm talking about. I'm told the average black people they was quiet because they knew this nigga was lying. Yeah, they knew he was lying. Nothing added up. Nothing. Nothing added up. I'm talking about, and then most black people was quiet because they, you know, they, they be wanting like, oh, they got off. Jesse gonna get off. You know, people can believe what they want to, but when we stop learning how to recognize the truth, we stop learning how not to recognize a person that nothing but a straight up liar. We don't know how to build pyramids no more, do we? Somebody been lying to people. You know what I'm saying? People wonder why people. Everybody had the big question when I was younger: Why everybody hate the blacks? Well, maybe because they stole all our shit. <laughs> maybe because they stole all our shit. That they was they, they knew in Africa long, 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 long time before Christ. You know the same story is in the Muslim thing. Same stories. You know what I'm saying? Samanas. They had a similar story. 
So they took a piece of this, a piece of that, put something together. Next thing you know, we got a white man on our motherfucking mantelpiece. Along with John F. Kennedy and, 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 and Martin Luther King. I think every black family had them three pictures on their on the thing. But like I said, I don't want to tell you. I know, you know, I know, you know my saying? grandmother did. I'm going to tell that was just a thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, we believed in people. But John F. Kempty said some real shit. That's why they shot him. He was talking about the, 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 the what they call it, the war industrial complex. So, you know what I'm talking so about? So let me ask you this. So you believe Hold on one second, champion. I ain't trying to be rude to nobody, but I just need to get in there for one second. Like, real yeah, talk, brother, give brother. me one second, and I will shut the hell back up for another ahead, 20 brother. minutes. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> hey, hey, look, it's hard for me to get in, too. That's why I'm, I'm so quiet. <laughs> Thank so, you for your patience. I think they be sleeping. Hey, look. Yeah, that's so why I keep I, it up there. Go ahead, though, bro. My guy. Man, well, let me say this first. Shout out to everybody on the panel. It's very um, funny that Aunt saying what he's saying because I think of a lot of us do agree, and it's cool that you're from Detroit because I'm from Detroit, and Coleman Young granddaughter used to teach me personally, and it's funny mm -hmm. that y'all was I'm talking. From Detroit. And it's funny that y'all was talking about Kwame Kilpatrick also because one of the females I deal with, her daddy was involved in that case too. So it, it's funny that you, you touched on those things because it is true. A lot of times um, I would say, number one, because it was a lot to unpack, accountability. We don't, we can't just give black people passes in our hood because we like, oh, they black. Let's just like uh, uh, take away from their sins and this and that. We got to hold people accountable. Number two, we do have to look past color at a certain point. Like, honestly, like it's about who's going to help us get where we need to go. Not necessarily a look that we're trying to present. No, number three. I'll say this, when we talk about this whole Republican, Democrat type thing, like a female, right before I had got on here, I, I was um, just having a conversation, a female like, I don't fuck with Donald Trump and this and that. Can't really tell me why itself or something probably about grabbed her or they didn't deal with black people a certain type of way, this and that. Not even nothing about the political structure, nothing about politics, nothing about nothing itself, a, a, a revolt saying vote or die. Something like that. Like, so that's another thing. We actually had to privy ourselves to knowing what we're talking about instead of just looking at the TV and going, yeah, since P. Diddy, and I'm using examples. There's nobody I'm really attacking. P. Can Diddy. I Can I interject just one second? You know why men start grabbing females by the pussy? And I don't want to be disrespectful. The main reason why... <laughs> Men had to do that because it was it was women around, and my, when I was in high school, that we thought was women. And you get all romantic and this, that, and other, and next thing you know, there's a man laying up next to you and shit. <laughs> so well, a real female back in the real females back in the day, they understood that if they was gonna give it to you anyway, if they was gonna give it to you anyway, they understood that, and that's why. That community was getting attacked. Don't play games on me, motherfucker. Whatever you is, let me know. Oh, uh, we uh, all respect though. Donald well, Trump wasn't, wasn't well, grabbing well, pussies yeah. to check and make sure. Trump yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna oh check. I, well, I don't he know where Trump crazy. from. I'm not, I don't know where Trump from. Trump was from a rich family and this, that, and other. So he probably had other means of, you know, checking that kind of shit out. Just, like check, just like checking their records just and just shit, grabbing. checking their birth certificates and all this shit. But when I come I from here believe, in Detroit... I just believe behavior needs to be, come, needs to be questioned at the same time as a leader. Exactly. That's what I believe. Exactly. Like, it don't matter what somebody... I, you, I, it ain't about what somebody told me. Like, as a voter, you know what I'm saying, I want to be judged on my brain also. It ain't about because, you know, what someone told me. But like y'all say... If someone is proving that they are lying about things, even if it doesn't have to contain with, you know, their uh, what uh, what's going on in front of us as far as the policy and stuff. If you are proving that you are a liar in a lot of instances, I am prone to not trust you, whether it's going to be with my government, our money, Facts. our economics. I don't care what you did with your economics, but if your economics Facts. show that you are greedy, yes, I, I, I can't trust you for that reason. They don't mean I don't trust the party. But or somebody else that might be from the party, but I just can't trust you as an individual. That's all so, I'm saying. Yeah. I feel the same way about the other person on the left. So don't think I'm that just because I'm saying that about him, 
I'm so not. I don't, I mean, that I don't care if they're going to left or right. If you yeah, left right. me twice, I'm out. You know, right. so I'm not going right. another direction. So just you know, let. So but my thing that, is this: when we talking about when we when we really serious back talking about. But it Trump, blows me. Is those are only choices. That's what blows me. Uh, hold, hold on one yeah. second, fellas. Just let me land right quick, please. Okay. So with, the, okay. with that with that being said. I would say it's a lot of variables if we're talking about the community moving forward versus black people moving forward versus the consciousness of black people and versus a whole lot of other variables that we have to put together. And I'm going to just say this because, you know, I wasn't alluding to what Unc was saying when he said grab him by this. But let me say this also. When he said that, I could understand that because we're not going to sit here and play like we don't know. Now, that might have not should have came up. But the real truth is, as they call it, locker room talk. If you're a billionaire, like he said, it's like the females. You can just go up to them and grab them by the woo -wah. It's not. It's like we see this in the hood from a nigga that just got an average icy chain can go a little further so i can understand the concept but we get it because we everybody want to be sensitive like unc said that's like your granddaddy just letting you know what it is sometimes we can't be crushed and so sensitive by what somebody's saying now if he say but, i want to are somebody or if i want to hurt somebody or if i want to this and that because i guarantee if you was in that room and you had the millions of dollars you'll probably understand more what he's talking about like and let's I, just keep it a buck. But right. we gotta keep it a buck though. Sorry. You're acting like that's the only thing. Like no, not, I'm not saying no, I'm not saying that's the only thing. I'm just highlighting that because if we really have to go back and forth, I'll tell you this Donald Trump can't be more racist. It what we would consider racist, right? I doubt if he's any more racist than anybody on this panel. And I'll follow up with this. You're right. I'll follow up with you all have I don't really think I don't I, I don't really get too sensitive. I have a daughter. Uh, I I'm gonna follow you. up with this. I'm gonna follow yeah. up with this. I'm not. I'm not sensitive about, about the things he say. Hold I on, go by champion. what he does. Hold on, champion. Let me right. see where Juicy Fruit was going with that. What, what was the question about the, the daughters? My my point is this: locker room talk or whatever. He didn't say I want to grab them by the. He said just grab them by the. He was basically just saying, "Oh yeah, just do it and see." And we laughing and ha ha ha. It's funny, but it's really not. Because the reality is somebody like him with a lot of money, like you said, millionaires, billion, whatever, they're literally going around and just grabbing women and doing whatever they want to women because they have money or because of who they are or because of whatever. And that's not something that should be um, a, a behavior that we should just sweep under the rug and say that it's OK for a, a president to be able to do. I don't that was something that when it came out of whatever you could say about him that right there was something to me that was just completely unacceptable because well, it I is think, not I okay think, i think the words that you said was different than actually what trump said i think he said, what he said was they will allow what he said was they will allow, the, right. they will right. allow right. you to grab him yeah, yeah. He said, no that's not I'm, what he said that's How about this? Mean. While y'all figure that out, I'll just pull a transcript up and then yeah, we, pull, we just, yeah, I got you. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, pull do the, that, please. Pull the transcript up because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking my memory said that he uh, said that he was so famous that girls would allow him to walk up and grab him right in the pussy. And now that's what, that's, that is what Trump a, said. Uh, me being a former number one draft pick, there's a certain we can't paint women with a broad brush, but I think the type of women that he was talking about do exist. And I think women need to stop running to the aid of other women for every little thing. Your life is your life. Your life is not connected to every woman in the world. Your success is not Beyonce's success is not your success. We got to stop making women cloak together and it's mostly black women we got to stop making y'all run together band together like everything that happens happened to you um, and not uh, only that i'm gonna tell you the truth i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep it a buck with you we have to be realistic some women want to be grabbed by the pussy hello some women that's like all, it like that's that all I'm saying. Right, right. we act like we ain't never because i'm telling you i had some rough ones you know what I'm saying? And I liked it. I don't want no I, bitch grabbing me by the pussy. Who else gonna grab it by it? Who else gonna grab I, it? I've we never seen that as a bitch. <laughs> no, I've never seen like we, Women don't like sex. 
I you never seen that, that as a deal. I mean, hey, hey, it ain't that, that a man just walk up. It ain't that a man just grab people act as if women do not like sex. Women have grabbed men by the jewels. That's not things that just go one way. And that's wrong. I but mean, I, I never looked at that. that I never you looked at that as the deal breaker. It ain't wrong if I invite if I'm all right with it. Yeah, right. That's if, the I, key. if I'm a type of woman, if I'm a loose woman, like say for instance, like uh, Kwame said, he when he was in the NBA, there are women who are loose and they want to go for those guys who are in the NBA, NFL, or Married any and kind all. of sports. Then they want that. They want that attention. They would do whatever. Married so it, and all. It could be wrong is if she just wasn't putting herself in that position, didn't want it, wasn't even there, minding her business, and oh. he just turned her around and just grabbed her. But if she I- there for that, how's that wrong when you at? Right? You can't be... Uh, see, that's the problem with pe- women. Women want to act as if they don't like sex, they want to act as if they don't want to get touched a certain way. They want to act like that. You, They like it just as much as the men like it. But this is what we forgetting, Miss Spitting Fire. They acting like we didn't just see Kevin Gates get his genitals grabbed on stage that's by what a woman. I, that's the and, point I'm making. Yeah, so <laughs> she's she, juicy for uh, Kelly. Hold I'm on, just y'all. saying, I, all I'm saying is we need to respect each other. Hold on, hold on, Juicy Fruit. Let me say this, though. You said we need to respect. We need to respect all people's private parts. And yes. what I'm start what I'm starting to see now is that it's only respected when it's when we're talking about women. Right, when these, absolutely. When these, when That's the point I was making. Getting, when these little boys are getting molested, these women are not even getting jail time sometimes. That's we right. Got, we got an unhealthy push just for woman, woman, woman. Right. There's no way in the world that somebody can walk up to the stage and grab Beyonce's uh, private area and not everybody pummel that dude and that dude not do 15, 20 years. Oh, That's yeah. Right. He going to get a Dave Chappelle beating. Kevin, you, you Kevin, Gates, Kevin Gates was sexually assaulted. The show went on until he stopped the show. And of course, he made a decision that wasn't the right decision. But how can you tell somebody how not to feel about being sexually assaulted when he's been sexually assaulted with, as a kid? Hey, hey, Kwame, I, I know this is a little off. You remember the girl did that to Bootsy and Bros? Yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> Listen, a, girl that to, a girl did that to me. So it's disingenuous when I hear women cry like that. I'm seven foot tall. Women walk up to me all the time trying That's to look right. me up and down That's and check my shoes. They got to stop acting like yeah. that. And they're wrong for that. And they're wrong. But there's, 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 not a, there's, not a, there's not a push to talk about it, nor is it a penalty. I can't go Listen. up in the police station and complain and say, a girl grabbed my penis. They're going to laugh. They're going to laugh, right. they gonna gonna laugh them out of the police station. So we got to stop that. First of, first of all, we have to understand is a woman do certain things to give you a sign that she's going to permit this type of behavior. You don't walk up to a stranger you don't know that you ain't right. studied and she studied you and do them kind of things because they brothers, her father's going to come up there and kill you. But she ain't going to tell her brother, she ain't going to tell her father if she permitted this. She might even tell a lie and say you raped her once her father get to know it. We, we didn't have that kind of situation. OG, OG, we oh, can't okay. say the R word on, on YouTube. You got to say R word and not the rest of it. We didn't have a situation here in Michigan. The great Tommy Hearns, he had a situation with his son. You know what I'm saying? And his son was all up in his, in, in his wife, you know what I'm saying, his mother's face. And Tommy Hearns said, well, you know, we ain't permit that. They had a little scuffle and stuff. They took Tommy Hearns to jail. I stay in Southfield. He stayed probably about half a mile from me. You know what I'm saying? So we got to look at things for what it really, really, really is. You know? And when we talk about the George Floyd situation, you know what I found very strange in the whole thing? I wouldn't care if they put his neck on his neck. It's that all oh, that shit was wrong. What I found strange was they had it on camera for eight minutes. Have you ever seen that before? That suggests them something to me. Everything we see, some of this shit is staged. You ever seen that? that this channel used to call the FX channel? Yeah. They used to have some, some, some murder mysteries and this, that, and the other dramas, how people set people up, where's all the skies and this, that, and the other. You ever go, if we see something, it ain't always, we, we ain't always seeing the truth. Hollywood is good at stage Absolutely. I, I used to they think that until I started hearing people speaking this same matter when it came to the Maude Aubrey's thing, you know, and being that it happened at home, I know, I know damn well it wasn't uh, fake. You know, it just coincidentally happened on camera. 
Right. So, you know, when we hear that, it just like sometimes we do have to be genuine and think that these and know that these things really did happen. It just happened to happen like that. Mm-hmm. Right. But, and but another thing one, is, 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 is one, okay. Th- oh, go ahead. This is what this one thing we got to realize, man. Common sense ain't even common no more. People can't, you tell a person one and one is two, they'll tell you you're a lie. So they got people's mind all messed up out here. Yep. Everybody heard of the Pipe Piper when he was a kid. You know, the nursery rhymes and this, that, and Yep, up. the Pie you know Piper. If you, they will run your ass over a cliff and don't give a shit. If right. they got to kill one black man, one white girl, one, they don't make no difference to prove their point. Get lost, pass. It's the second minute is for a reason. Uh, let me just, hey, Kwame, let me ask you this real quick. I want to just ask you this. We know that you 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 was an ex NBA player, basketball star, all this and that. So when we and I'm just talking about locker room talk for right now, nothing none too extra. Just talking about locker room talk. How many times have you heard men in there talking about whatever it may be that would be considered rude to the like to the public eye or some that people will pretty much say, oh no, Kwame or whoever saying this, they might need to be out of the NBA. But we know that that person is just probably just talking and is genuinely not an RS or nothing like that. Like, doesn't that conversation genuinely happen? Because I have it. And I'm right, not right. a millionaire. But the thing about it, um, I used to think that us men was everything that these women were saying. I, th- I used to think we was rude. I used to think we was <laughs> Nasty. I used to think we was foul until I I got injured and I had to stay back for the whole summer. And I watch. I listened to what the females said in their locker room. And I'm I'm here to tell you, it's not that far apart. They say the same shit we say. They act the same way we act. Almost. They most. A lot of these women get in groups and they act worse than us. They act like the Thanks. worst condition of men. And Thanks. a lot of women don't like to be honest about it. But I'm very honest. I'm very transparent. Me too. I, I have daughters and sons, so I don't have no reason to put one over the other. And I think a lot of times we're putting females over our sons and our sons feel that. Um, and it's a sad thing that now the, the pedos and people that are attacking the kids, they know to go after the boys because they're not going to say anything. Mm-hmm. And I think that, right. I think that women you, with this women's movement and stuff like that, it made women act as if there's a certain way to approach. Like, say, for instance, if you're dating a woman, it's almost like you have to be like, okay, we're going to have, make an appointment for sex, okay? I can have sex with you at Thursday at 5 o'clock. Is that consensual? And can I touch you here if we do? And then we can just start and just go on and just start having sex the way that they're moving. So we can't just act as if women don't like sex. We can't act as if women don't like to be touched. We can't act like that. Because at the end of the day, women and men are here for a reason. That's what we're here for. You know, this is why we all got here. So when we act like, oh, you can't say you doing this to a woman or a woman don't do that. No, women do it too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've been been fortunate enough to be around the women that like to be touched. Yeah, yeah, and women, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you got some women who don't like to be touched at all, you know what I'm saying? Right, but what are you supposed to do? Like, if you got a man or something like that, y'all at home or whatever, he gotta ask, he gotta get permission, or be thinking, I mean, how does that work? I, I, I agree with this young lady, she said, Women talk nastier, they do, they really yeah, do. They do. Absolutely. Yes, that's and not y'all ever realistic. Heard those Zane books, those Zane books that they write about the sex and all that shit. Yes, absolutely. Man, them women and, be getting it in. I don't understand. I don't understand this. When I when I that's be that listening me too to stuff. But do, here's the thing. What I wanted to say about the man at the bottom, I can't see because you got the thing up. But he's in the middle. He's from Detroit too. He was saying some about at a few minutes ago about Trump. Um, people not liking Trump or something. I, I got it revved up if you want me to play it too, just so uh, you know. Something, something he said about Trump. But anyway, black people used to like Trump until he started running for president. Facts. Right? Facts. Right. They I like the Trump. They like to build they like to build gates. I didn't <laughs> they, understand what you say what that's the they, they they But I think some some people Facts. forgot Facts. about wasn't he like a slumlord and stuff in the But it, it, it's a difference between liking somebody as like a people. millionaire or I mean, wanting somebody to be the leader of your policy. Like a slumlord. 
But sure, all, a lot of people slum lords. But listen, listen, no, my, he, my, my issue is them folks should my, probably laid on their rent and they didn't want to say nothing. But but what well, 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 let's you say something the about this then. Because we always speak about black people and everything. What about that that uh, the Central Park Five and this man putting the hit piece out on those young black men? Now we have we skip they over that was, a whole they bunch. Thought he, they thought he was they thought that they were guilty. It's like like people got to stop acting like they don't know what real life is about. There's a lot right. Of people, right. There's a lot of people that thought those gentlemen were guilty. And I don't white know, people, yeah. Okay, I'm not going off the color, but I'm just saying if I thought somebody was actually a R wordist or a pedophile, I'm not going to like you until it's proven innocent. And there's a lot of people, I don't think that has anything to do with race. I think people are making it about race, but if I thought you were actually guilty of that crime, I'm not fucking with you. I might write a hit piece too. Yeah. But, but me, I would then go back and apologize if they were seen to be innocent. Well, that's why fine. didn't he, he didn't do that though? He didn't do hey, that. Can I add on that's, to that's that? A, that's, 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 hold on, can I, now, hold on, let me, let me add on to that. Because right. not only he, he put his own money and got a whole uh, uh, article in the he paper. Took out an I mean, ad anybody in the, in the would, paper. if that was your child, anybody would look like that was a racist move. I don't think it has anything to do with race. I think, I think you guys are making it about race. And Trump could have been a black man, and I would have thought, and I'm pretty sure at the time there was some black people, some Puerto Rican people thought that these people were guilty. You got to look okay. at it. The Honestly, do you think he would have did that if those were white boys? Hold on, hold on, let me finish. This hey, I was living in New okay, York at okay. that time. Hold on, hold on, hold on, OG. At the same time, time, Bernard Guest had shot five hold on, hold on, black kids hold on, hold on, on the subway in New York. Hold up, y'all getting too emotional now. You gotta let me finish my point. I, I've been very quiet on this panel the whole time, but it seems like when I'm starting to talk, people are not letting me finish my point. This is not about race, in my opinion. You can make it about race. But this is a logical explanation for something that sounds like that. If I thought you were a race, if I thought you were an R wordist or a pedophile, I'm not going to like you. If I had the money to write an article, I would put up the article. The only thing that I would do different is apologize. So I can agree with you guys on that part. But that doesn't necessarily deem it as racist. And far as the slumlord thing, I have apartments and we are very hard to rent to ears. We are very. No, I, ain't, I, I don't agree. I don't disagree on that. Yeah, we are very hard to rent to as tenants. You know how many people that done beat up my apartments, roaches, I know. All, all kind of shit that they leave those apartments. Yeah, toward I, I don't. I don't disagree on that part. As far as, uh, I don't Man, disagree listen, on the part. I let, as I, let a woman, his... I let a woman come into one of my places, and I thought I was doing her a favor. She had five kids. She left the pampas. She damn near left the kids. She left roaches. I had. <laughs> <laughs> Man, damn, I'm my man. If I Damn. was white, they would call me everything under the child of God because I was mad than a motherfucker. Yeah, I'm making me not want to like black people now. Damn. Man. Man. Listen, it's nigga, like, buddy. We don't, we don't, take don't, it off. We don't take it off. about what actually happened. Instead of when it's a person that's white, we want to paint everything as racist. Right. Yep. We want some yep. Sometimes. Like, I don't like that. We be Say that. Bullshit. Well, what I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, if it was five white boys, and, and, and you're telling me you feel like he would have did the same thing, just in your I, opinion. I don't want to. I don't want to do the ifs and the feel like. I just okay. want to give mm -hmm. a logical explanation for a situation that don't have to be about race. We can't make everything about race. Five, like I, ears, would, I would make ears, that. About I got a question for you, see a white man to, to see a white man put that out without the information. And the, the, the say, okay, there's no evidence. Yeah, what do you mean without the information, just, their parents. You gotta, you gotta stop leaving out some uh, very mm -hmm. crucial points. The parents at that time, whether they were coerced or not, the parents thought that they were guilty. The parents went down there and let them be interviewed. We gotta put everything in perspective. Me, you not talking to my son. My son didn't do shit. That's gonna be my stance. Mm -hmm. Ears, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, is it safe to say that everything that uh we we pretty much know if it's a black person and a white person, it don't ever it not all the time has to come down to racism, racism, right? So can't somebody just be like that nigga wrong or that white boy wrong, and they just be that or like he said misunderstood? Like everything doesn't have to come yeah, down. Yeah. To you feel I get what you're saying, and I'm, let me answer that. I definitely, uh, I definitely agree to that. 
But we're saying that this guy had no sympathy for it, for, for one, as we can look at it for 20 years down the damn line, you know what I'm saying, after it, after it was proven. You know what I'm saying? So now I have to ask that question. Was that a racist move? Now, in the moment of it, I can probably understand. Still, I think that it's irresponsible for you to, as a white man to look at these black guys, and I highly doubt it, and I'm just speculating that he would have did that if that was five white guys. So I that's why I would look at the difference. Like, what is it about these five guys that you're going to, you know what I'm saying, go out your way to try to help these guys get a death penalty and um, no, you don't have any physical evidence. Now, yes, the parents let them go down there and all that stuff. That was a mistake. We know that us as black people, we have been um, troubled by ignorance of stuff like that in the past. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. still does not make it right, though. And it doesn't make it right what he did. And like you said, and I know you agree with it, this man never apologized even when he was asked about it. That's, that's so, I mean, I, I do it. have to look at you at a sideways when those are your actions. I just don't think it's about race because he didn't apologize. I just think Trump is a fucking dickhead. Yeah, right. I was just about to say right. the exact same thing. Like, I think he was like, fuck him. Everything that he's okay. shown us in the past, he's a fucking dickhead. He don't want right. to apologize. He's arrogant as hell. Yeah, okay. so I don't so, think he has anything to do with racism. He's just a fucking right. dickhead. Right, it don't have to be arrogant. I, I mean, all uh, colors. It ain't got to be nothing so, about his race. So here's my thing. Here's my thing. Well, we'll here's agree to disagree on that one. I don't so think he here, really cares my, about who he messes over. What they white? Wow, really? He yeah, just he cares about thing with Trump. Though. Trump here's cuts out Trump. white people, uh, Spanish people, black people. He say all right. kind of shit. He don't give a fuck. Uh, I promise. Here's, here's, here's my thing. It's about rich and poor for him. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here's my he thing. With, here's my thing with Trump though. Here's my thing with Trump though. Early on, I learned not to be emotional about the things he's saying. I was looking at what he was doing. And if we want to talk about what he was doing, as in what he put on paper, most of what he was doing was benefiting black people. Mostly. No, that's, yes. That's, that's can a I, fact. Can I, can I, that's can I give you a list? 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 All right. If you look at the First Step Act, who was the most people that came out of jail from that? What race? Blacks. That okay. Said I got some start doing that until okay. Let okay. me let me give you a pushback oh, on, on that. Here's, let me. Here's, can, here's, hold on. You ask one question. Here's, let me you made one here. point. Here. You made a you made a point. Can I can I counter that point? Go ahead. Okay. He didn't do anything that different that any uh the president before him did because he actually oh, okay. let out three. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. He actually let out three times as many of those people, and those people were also black. So we're giving him credit for some shit that on, everybody else was doing. Also, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to disagree with you on this. Oh, Barack Obama. Okay, Barack Obama. When he first up, came into office, hold on now. When when he first came into office, his first four years, he didn't free no black people from nonviolent crimes. He didn't do that. Okay. As a matter of fact, people were still going to jail for the same amount of crime that Trump was releasing them for. After his uh. Uh, his second his second term was still the same. So the first step act freed a lot of black people from jail. Now that's one thing. The second thing that uh, uh, bro, Trump, hold on, bro, hold on. You just you just put out misinformation right there, bro. That's information. How is that, that misinformation? I pulled, that, because I I pulled it up. I pulled. I literally pulled it up. I showed Kwame. I showed um, Angela Stanton. I show. I play. I put up the numbers, bro. You just put out inf the misinformation. I gotta okay, stop so, you there. What's okay, the so, numbers? Ears okay. want to know. Yes, hold on. The number, the numbers was Trump had allowed uh, uh twenty seven uh felons or whatever he pardoned twenty seven felons, and uh Obama had pardoned two hundred and fifty something. Okay, oh, okay. Now let me, let me, all, the, all on, together, on, Obama on, had on, gave him, all, right all together. All together, Obama had gave immunity. Hold on, all together, Obama had gave immunity to over a thousand people. Trump was right at four hundred, and that's immunity. And nobody was act, never asked for violent felons to get out. We're talking about nonviolent people. We're yeah, not right advocating about that. the violence. Ears, okay. When did he do that? When did he, did he do that towards the end of his presidency when he was going for re-election? He he did I, some he at the beginning of no, he did some at the beginning of his election and he did the rest at the very end. Just like I, Trump. Okay, did. I just remember at just, the end he was just like just going. remember remember what I just said, just like Trump did. Trump waited till the end of his election to uh do a lot of his part. All presidents okay. do that. All presidents Okay, do that. ears. Ears. When you give a presidential pardon, that's you being using your presidential power to do that. All presidents have the power to do that. But when you come up with a law and put into paper, that means that is a law. That means it doesn't matter who the president is, that will continue to happen. 
Obama didn't come up with a law that permit nonviolent cr criminals to get out. If he did, I didn't see it. It wasn't on TV. It wasn't on anything. You just see what check, I'm saying? Uh, just check the WhiteHouse.com um, um, thing. You know, don't take it from me. Don't take it from nobody else. Go do your own research. All right, okay. Let's give, let's give OG a chance to say something because I put him off the panel earlier to finish my point, but he back up now. But let, let's let him say something. Me? Oh, oh yeah, thank ahead. you. No, I'm good. I, I'm just. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, I'm just listening. Can you hear me? Fine. Yeah, we hear you. Yep. Okay. Uh, say something about the Central Park Five. I think. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Because. Uh, like, I live in New York now. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, though. And I st distinctly remember that. The backstory is a guy named Bernhard Getz had killed, like, five kids on the train. I don't think he killed them all. I think he killed, like, two or three of them. But he shot five. So that was the climate that was going on around this Trump thing. And plus, uh, at that time, Trump wasn't as big as he became because he wasn't – in you know, in Atlantic City and in places like that, he just was you know had rental properties you know in Manhattan. Uh, around what uh, year I'm was not this? Actor, just so I can know. Oh, this had to be. Oh my! If I had to guess, I'm going to say late eighties, early nineties. Okay. Late eighties, early nineties, because that's when I was going back and forth to the city, and you know I was younger then. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the the uh the story that I'm telling you is accurate. I might have the dates, you know, a little twisted. Uh, it's that Mike Tyson. <laughs> anyway, hey. uh, that was like that's what was going on like in in the city at that time. I'm not uh trying to advocate for Trump or, or or put him down. He did some good things. I think he's sort of he was like the just I can't say the name, but the the brother that just outspoken of his time, he's like the white version of that. And he still is pretty much in a way, if you look at the way they approach certain subjects, especially like doing the COVID-19 thing, he seems just like, you know, the way that brother be talking. I know it sounds like it's reaching, but if you really look at it, you'll see some parallels there. Uh, right. The other topic, I'm oh, sorry. I was going to ask you, do you remember the job numbers? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me get the Tisdale, Tisdale one. Do you have that information about what Trump okay. said? Yeah, I, I already got it. It's on the, um, I got it ready to play if y'all ready at any time. Go ahead, play that part. Where, where, what did he say about grabbing them? What, how did he say it? All right, let me just type in my own little pass code. It's on the iPad, so y'all might be able to kind of hear, but if y'all don't hear it clear, I just... Run it down what he's saying. So, two, one, one, six. All right. It's... You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. I just I don't even know it. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. Pull them out. That's exactly, uh, rewind it back because it sounds like he said when you're a star, they let you do it. That's I'm what he said. Yeah. It sure was. I gotta use some tic tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing her. It's like a magnet. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. All right, now, Juicy Fruit, what you say to that? Um, to me, that doesn't necessarily sound like that's the situation where they were allowing it. What he it sounds like what he was saying was, well, when you were star, you can get away with doing whatever you no, want. No, 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 I, no, no. I, I agree with you. No, no, no. You guys know, okay. and I understand, and I understand you guys okay, are not changing semantic. words. Words mean something. And the fact that you guys have called me a celebrity over and over again, and I've been around celebrities, I want to tell you that is no news in what he just said. That is 100% facts. Hey, and I agree with you, dude. Words do mean what you say, because if you listen before that point, he said, I'm putting on chapstick so I can literally assault a woman. That's pretty much what he's saying. He, he said, said I because, can't even help it. I just kiss him. Right. And he can't even kissing? help that. He can't even help that his behavior, his behavior is he's putting on chapstick because he might just assault a woman just because he feels like he can. Tick, like, tick. Me as a, that, that is, that is not, say, that is, that's bullshit. 
we gotta go off of we gotta go off of the clip that we heard and this is where it gets dangerous juicy fruit wanted to change the man's words to what she sounded what she thought he said when i rewind it for you to hear him say when i they let you that means something and i'm here to tell you i played with Allen iverson michael jordan uh kobe bryant i'm telling you this is irrefutable evidence i've seen it with my own eyes married ladies will leave their ring on and give fellatio in the car to these type of men damn this is not, a, this is not no, a, what you a, skipping a, over though okay, bro, is, saying, is that not, is that no, he's no, ears, no ears no ears i'm not I'm skipping not over. wait 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 i'm not skipping over anything i'm speaking about the part that we heard if y'all had a part, if you wanted to play another part, then play that part. The part that we played and the fact that you guys can't accept what you just heard, it's let you. And I'm telling but you, it, you has been around no, it. Again. But I'm no, not- it, it's showing that y'all are willing to skip over what the man no, just actually said and go to the part that you want to debate of. You that man gotta, is saying. got to stop doing that. I I'm played the saying- video. I, listen to me. I played the video and we were going off the video that we we're talking about to add in another part. You could have simply said you could have gave us that part and simply said, now go back a tick or let me get up this video. And what do you think about this is a way that you communicate that you got to be able to do it fairly and properly. What you guys are doing is not fair. This is improper what y'all are doing. I, I disagree, bro. I believe what you're doing is not fair, bro. Disagreeing. I'm going off of facts. I, all right, right. Well, if I can't speak, this man said, it. my bad. My, it's, not my about, bad. it's not about that. Is it's not about your bad and doing what you're doing now. I've been now because I'm trying. I'm trying to tell my opinion, but you're saying I, your I, opinion is the I'm only not, one that's I'm not talking about. No opinion. I'm talking about facts. Did we just play? And that's clip? the facts. That's what I'm saying. You're yeah, you're saying about facts, and I'm saying the facts is what this man just played. He we could play it again. The man what? said, I'm putting on chapstick because I might start kissing this woman. That right there yeah. is T-Pax. leading T-Pax. into T-Pax. what he said no, after no, that. No and that's what stick. you're that's what you're uh, that's what you're can ignoring. I, we can were I talking about him? hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all are conflating two different topics. Well, I can no, we're here. saying that's what we were yeah, saying, you and you're conflating the next topic. Years. You keep talking about somebody cutting you off, and you keep cutting me off, sir. All because I was Hold on. I'm saying in the beginning, Juicy Fruit challenged the fact she talked about Trump grabbing women in the pussy. That's exactly what we was talking about. We wasn't talking about a kiss. You guys changed it to a kiss. I'm specifically talking about the wordplay about the grabbing it in the pussy part. If you want to go to the kiss, we'll go to the kiss. But let's not skip past the part where Trump said, and when you a star, they let you grab them in the pussy. Now, did he say that or not? Yes, he did. That's oh, now. If you want to go to the kiss, let's then move forward to the kiss. But let's not do that when they play an audio and then Juicy Fruit try to change what the audio said to no, how sir. she feel it. That's dangerous. You cannot no, I, do that. May, okay, first of all, I didn't try and change it. I was going off a of recollection of what I heard however many years ago before he was elected. Now, you had the young man play the audio, and okay, I guess you were right about the words if, we, if we're going to argue semantics. But, but again, th- that could really be perceived one way because what you're, I'm not, I'm not negating what you and Spitfire and everybody is saying that there are some women out there who want to be touched and they don't care. And if you're famous, they'll let you do whatever because you're famous and you have money. And I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, but I'm thinking of a bigger picture with other, when, when men hear him say that, cause he's Trump and you're whoever or celebrities or whoever. But when you hear a man in power, say something like that, you know, you have oh, to think about Oh my God, here go the man in power stuff. I'm thinking about my Maybe son. Maybe he knew the woman. I'm not, I'm not my thinking about the kid sounds like he knew I'm the not, one. I'm not, I'm not, all you I'm can't saying make is every that people... argument about a man in power. That's that's white liberal talking points. I have no. A I'm son. not. I'm, he's well. He was. He ultimately was the. Okay. President. After you but finish, my... then I'll, I'll finish. After you finish. Okay. Thank you. All I'm saying is, is that you know somebody like him who ultimately became the president. If you have young men or boys or whoever, and they hear somebody like the president say, "Oh yeah, just grab them by the pussy." It's it's all I'm saying is is the. That's behavior. not what he said, actually, though. But don't context matter too? 
context definitely matters and this is where they, the, the lines get blurred when people want to make it about how they hear it and how it sounds to them and whether it works in their life or whether it doesn't work for them that's not the way it works in the one percent world Fact. what he's saying is absolutely right when you're famous these girls will dial up and, and go do anything for some of these famous guys some not all but what i'm saying is you guys are speaking from liberal talking points about a man in power when you start right. riding that slippery slope slope i have a son that's not famous and these rules that you put in place are going to affect him right. if a man can't say that you let him we got to go off the average joke we can't keep going off of these so-called powerful men we got to go off the average man and if the right. average man say what trump said you will allow those words to stand where they are because he's trump you want to add in things like power influence the reason why these girls want to have sex with him is because of those things his power and his influence so we have to stop this i'm not for any man that'll take advantage of a woman but i'm not for this weak ass shit that's trying to make it seem like this man or any man is just out there trying to take advantage of women i'm not doing that absolutely if you did something wrong i'm going to ride but if you're saying that a woman will let you grab you in the pussy based on your social social economic status i'm going to have to agree with that we I love our people. rappers but look at what they be saying they be saying worse shit than that but we buy their music we let our kids listen to them uh our boss all up in your face little baby or some shit like that we listen to it in the radio with our kids in the back seat we have no problem with that so let's be real with this shit. if we're gonna be mad at this guy Let's be mad at our rappers because they say the worst shit to females, degrade females, and get they get money off of that. And we buy the CDs and we let our kids listen to it and they talk to it every day. So what, what was the what's your stance on that? You see I what I'm saying? I don't agree with that either. I think we need it's all about respect for me, respect of the woman, respect of the man. I'm not saying it's right for anybody to grab anybody by their genitals our, I, mean, and I don't and i don't our think they don't respect women we don't need to worry about what trump said we need to worry about our rappers calling our daughters throw babies facts but fact again facts what i just said yeah but that you just, but then you but of, then did too kwame you got rap a uh, female rapper saying putting it down in my throat to the, hit the right the little thing i want to megan the stallion right Megan's you Italian. know what i'm saying like women have to see the thing of it is, is the reason why i'm anti me too is because of the simple fact is we want to hold men that we say accountable or a man that is his social economic status to a higher grade and this is why people like you who say i don't want to be a celebrity gonna have a hard time yeah because yeah. people going to continue to to run that narrative you know what i'm saying well, I, I, like, but these rappers are celebrities you, 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 you can't these say rappers are celebrities they don't have a problem oh, with hold that on, hold on champion miss spitting fire i actually have an easier time because you know why the way I carry myself and the way I move, the gold digger chicks don't come around me. Facts. I think more men should act like that. I don't open, I don't leave with my wallet. I don't leave with no celebrity. I tell them I ain't no celebrity. I'm not going to no celebrity parties. I'm not going nowhere around them. Okay, but let me tell you this. Let me say this. We cannot, as women, and, and this is old school and old fashioned what I'm finna say, and it's not just not like gold diggerish or anything like that or horish or whatever like that but men of power and men with uh men with security or whatever i would say like that that is a turn on to most women hello so when Fact. we act as women when we act as if you're in power you can't do this we can't act like him being who he is is not attractive it's attractive. That's why you think a lot of people in the pastors and stuff be having these affairs in the church. It's a the way, they, the way they have it going, only broke niggas gonna be able to have sex. And then <laughs> a female rapper, right, a female rapper right. said she used to drug niggas and rob them, and she's a famous female rapper, and she said she used to drug niggas and, yep, and, and, and rob them, and, 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 and nobody said nothing about that. About that though. No, and yeah, yeah, they're not mad about that. There wasn't even no investigation on it either. Exactly, and they're not so mad about that. Saying, now, and you're right, but so what I'm saying is, when women act as if men are empowered and they can't say this because you are rich and you are famous and you are this, that is that is not taking accountability for the truth. Fact. That's so, not accepting the truth. 
That's that's just being that's really playing victimhood. Yeah, Fact. white men, white men can go out. And, my white men can go out and, and get women rich need to stop and then get women. That's what that's the whole point of getting rich is so you can hot dog on the women that are willing and ready and available. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's and what women men, like it. And that's what like men it go get cars the... for. That's what we go get everything for. Mm -hmm. get back. Let me tell you something, Kwame. Back in the day, like the girls in the in the neighborhoods, right? They used to like the guys with the hot cars. Yes. And the guys used to spend all their money on the hot cars because the girls liked it. They still do. So that's the point I'm making. We cannot act. We got to stop that, women. We got to stop. We ain't being realistic. So, Juicy, I got a question for you. What do you think about, like, for example, I use my me, for example. I can uh, agree with Donald Trump said. For the guys that kind of agree with what he's saying and have our own understanding, what do you think about us? Do you think we in the wrong for feeling that way? Do you think we have a certain mentality? What What's your thought about the guys that are not Trump that feel the same way? Are we misled? What's your What's your idea behind that? Um, I think it's dangerous for any man to, to think, whether he's rich or whoever, that it's okay to grab a woman by the vagina. Just like I like I said, I don't think it's right that women grab men. I don't think it's right that anybody grabs anyone um, if they don't want it. So I'm not, again, like I said, I'm not a celebrity. I don't know, but like Kwame and all the rest of you have said, there are some women out there who uh, want that and don't mind that. Um, there are groupies. That's and fine. Groupies. And guess yeah, what? If a, if a woman, I used to love groupies. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be honest with you. I used to love them. That's I was in the young, I was young. When you're trying to have fun, it's no different than whether I would have went to college. You know, when I went to college on a visit, there was groupies. And it's a little more innocent when, when you're young. But when you mess with them groupies, boy. Huh? You messing with them groupies. Oh, I don't do that now, but they your butt on the bus and, and, and do what you supposed to do. Oh no, at the age that I was, I needed my groupie experience. I mean, I learned a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I learned a lot. You and, needed and your so, groupie experience, Kwame. Yeah, I needed my whole phase. And I think some men haven't experienced that. And some women haven't experienced the type of ladies that we're talking about. And that's cool. But I'm just trying to make people aware. That just because in your mind you can't fathom a woman allowing a man to walk up to her and grab her in the pussy. You haven't been around some of these magnetic, magnetic men. Being around MJ, I'm telling you, there was 50, 60 women in a lobby at 2 o'clock in the morning down there everywhere we went. So it's Kwame, watch this. And that bring the people. Now you remember the top. You remember the top. The top seventy-five players, right? When they did the top seventy-five players, if everybody and Michael Jordan, I'm saying this. This is me, not Kwame, not nobody else, not champion, not spit nobody. This is me saying that. If we noticed, we looked and see Michael Jordan grabbing all on Mary J. Ash. She ain't had nothing to say. Hello. Because hey, Michael Jordan has, has a billion dollars. But look though, here's here's my thing. Outside of being a celebrity. Pookie and Ray Ray, they do the same shit. Exactly. They, 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 Pookie and Ray Ray, you have never seen them approach females. They are the most aggressive <clears throat> way of saying it. The, they have the most aggressive way of approaching females, and they still get them just like that. You see what I'm saying? Pookie and Ray Ray, they don't walk up to me. How you doing? Can I get you? Nah, they don't do it like that. They have a whole different approach when it comes to approaching women, and they like that shit. So let's not make it look like women are just a bunch of snowflakes just walking around. They don't want to be touched. No, they like Pookie and Ray Ray. So Absolutely. trust me, Trump is just they love really shit. You want to know some champion? What this is? What's crazy about this? This kind of remind me because we know that, and I'm just saying, we can see how this culture is going. Just like we see the Boston coach and the uh, the worker, the the miscellaneous. I mean, the mysterious woman that's not getting any of this blame for allowing this man to do whatever man. they did, but man. he getting all of the, like, he getting everything that the media can offer, saying he's he not married. this and not she that. Was. She's the only one married in the scenario, and he got the worst punishment. Right. She unknown. We don't even know who this person is. In fact. All women. Facts. Now, see, I wouldn't have had a problem with that situation if they was going to, you know, suspend him and he got paid. I could stay at home, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> make that 500000 a year, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, me, and the, me and the lady know what's up. I don't want to put her business out. Hopefully she don't want to put my business out. We good. You know, well, I think what people fail to realize, 
it's a certain dynamic between men and women. Women going to show you signs that they're attracted to you. Facts. And, and it's up to a man to pick up on them or not. Sometimes a man, a girl be giving you all these signs, you know what I'm saying? They said, they, they'll be telling the girl, I, I don't think he know what to do with the pussy if I gave it to him. Because she didn't give you all the signs. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, and that's the Ray J, Ray J gave some crazy stories like that. Man, I'm just holding back. If I tell you some of these stories, you would think women are the worst thing in the world. And I don't want to make it look like I'm bashing women, but I'm telling you, when money and celebrity come into play, you it's another word for these women. I'm telling you that. Y'all heard Chris Brown. He said when the rich nigga wants you I'm and your broke nigga can't do nothing for you, these yeah. ain't loyal. They leaving their man every time coming back yeah, home. Yeah, talking about with a homeboy. Kwame Brown, you talking about you talking about celebrities. I'm talking about Pookie and Ray Ray. They do worse. Like they appro see, their approach is crazy. I've hung every out with girl, Pookie and Ray Ray. That's what you, that's what you gotta realize. Every girl, majority of these girls that sleep with a celebrity, they sleep with a dude that they like that ain't got nothing as well. Facts. That's, that's how it happens. And they, they take and they take the money from him and go buy him some shoes. Absolutely. I got cousins that they running this scam all the time. They letting they sending them girls after them celebrities so they can get them get in them niggas' pockets. James Harden, James Harden used to give a girl twenty, thirty thousand dollars for a date. Oh damn! You think she's saying no on that date? I was just about okay, to say, how on. many females turning that down for that date? Come on, man. nobody, nobody, and 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 it's gonna be some females out here to probably this just to prove to him that she ain't on the slut walk tip. She, right. I don't, y'all, I only want the money. It ain't. I'm just saying, situations happen, and we do got to be mindful of it. But it, to me, it ain't all what the media is saying. I'm going to tell you that right now. Fine. I just, got, I just got one more thing to say about this stuff before I leave. You know what I'm saying? Like I was saying, the, the, the dynamics between the man and the woman, it's a special dynamic. You know what I'm saying? You got to go through a whole, all these stages of this, that, and other. You just saying you just did your whole night. You went out to eat. You went to movies. You did that and other. Then you got to sign a cent for them, this, that, and other. At that particular point, you need to leave. I ain't finna go through all that. I can't even trust you. And so I ain't gonna have you up in my house. Hold on. Somebody said this, and this this is what I wanted to get to on the topic, but it got off. It got. It, it didn't go off track. It just went into a bunch of different things. The fact that Kanye and Candace uh, exposed some of the details in that documentary, uh, us as a community, we are not evaluating further what happened to that money and where specifically where it went. If they sent four million dollars to trans groups and and baby daddies and all this stuff, like why are we not focused on that? Once again, the black community was duped and used or infiltrated, whatever word. Fuck arguing over semantics. Death happened, and, and on the backs of black men and women, large sums of money was acquired, only to enrich certain people in certain groups, and it's seeming like almost none of it affected the black community uh, at least not that we can see and Be that's why I think, and, and that's why i think that them people need to be held accountable of, of, of returning those funds facts or something because that's a misappropriation of funds the black lives matter ain't here got nothing to do with no trans community or yes, issues yes, it was See, the on the issues of what black people are supposed to endure. I don't care about your sexual. I would have liked to see a special investigation put out about that. That's you know what I'm saying? saying? Like you know, Fact. they need to get that. You know what I'm saying? Then you buying all these compounds and all this net. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. The fact that you started this uh, um movement over Trayvon Martin, and then you gave the family two hundred thousand. You gave she gave her baby daddy millions of dollars to start a sweatshirt business. You know, no, so no. I, I don't understand. Wow. But we made that Kanye, the, but cancel the, Kanye. The, the movement from the beginning is a fraud. It's a it's left a wing. Is a left Absolutely. Wing, <laughs> it's a left wing agenda. They went on their whole it, it's nothing about black life because if it was, some of their money could have went to the city of Chicago. They could have got some more vocational program. They could have got some more juvenile program so people don't have to go to jail from, from high school. They don't want to go to school. They have an extra backup school they can go to for four months and learn how to do something with their hands. They could have used that money to do something in Chicago. They didn't do that. They could have came to uh, L.A. 
Los Angeles have the most homeless people. Everybody's on drugs. They didn't do nothing with those ones over there. It's just a lot of stuff they could have done with their money, but they didn't do it because it's an agenda that the left wing was using to collect money from people. Now they got the LGBTQ involved in Black Lives Matter. Like, what does that got? What does Black Lives have to do with sex? Nothing. But this is again when when they come on the news on CNN and start running this program, y'all keep donating y'all money, thinking y'all doing something, but y'all ain't doing nothing. You want to help black people? Open up programs to help black people instead of giving money to these people that you don't know and they get rich off of it and your poor ass over here still trying to get a job. You know, it's always some type of agenda. Like, for example, we know in every field, it's always going to be some people that's, you know, LGBTQ or whatever it may be. So it's always going to be some hidden agenda. Like, I'm sure that besides the two guys that we've known in the NBA to be like one guy and maybe another guy to be kind of spicy, we don't hear this stuff, but I'm sure that they they they're in the nba nfl major league baseball you know nhl and these people might not be ready to stand up with their face out there but hey behind closed doors who knows they ready to put their money their power their influence towards everything facts facts this is what we this is one of the things that we need to understand it ain't even about saving black lives or civil rights issues no more they didn't took over that. How long we've we been fighting for civil rights? How long we've we been the, fighting for that? Now, how do a, another community come up and take over that? And that's the only thing they're concerned about or talking about. And they change the laws. Right. You see, they they're doing some crazy stuff right now. You know, they they have your kid in school, and had this man. There was a thing on YouTube where this man had to go to the school because he came home and said, "My son said that you got him walking around in a dress all day." And he was really upset, really upset. And he confronted the Absolutely. They, they, they called the police on him. They took, I or, think or, they or threatened him to call the police. I think they Pardon took me? that kid from him. Well, it's, it's, but it's getting worse it's, than that. They, they taking all the parents' rights away. Yeah. They can inject right. your kids with a certain medicine to stop his uh, puberty stage, whether it's a girl or, right. or, or a boy. And they don't have to tell the parent. And if you and the parent requests anything, they have to send the parent to jail. We, yeah, I'm not, women, women, please. And that, and that seemed like that's the most important thing that they're trying to push. Because, like you just said, that's a slap in the face. How do we get skipped in the line? Uh, there's black LGBT people, so it should have been uh, about all blacks. It shouldn't have right. been about just a, 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 a group. You know, it's not about who you have sex with or it's not about what you identify as. It's about freedom. It's about equality. And we've been fighting for that <laughs> since forever. And, 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 the, forever and the thing is, and the thing is, and we'll be, we be asking for the littlest shit. Like, we asking for freedom. Like, you're not supposed to ask for freedom. Like, I don't believe in asking. Like, you don't own my freedom. I, I don't believe in asking. You take your freedom. You mark your land and stand on it. That's mm -hmm. how everything started. That's how this country came about. Asking and begging for civil rights is, 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 is ridiculous to me. We keep singing and making songs about, we don't, we've passed that. Another thing is, you know, we're talking about black life. Okay, let's talk about that. Why is every time, every time you have an abortion clinic, most of them are in the poor black neighborhoods. White folks have to leave their neighborhood and come to a poor minority neighborhood to get abortions. Can we do something about that? Black Lives Matter? Did not do nothing we already that. did something about that. You see what I'm saying? So, so this Black Lives Matter movement, like I said, man, I don't believe in it. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because if you if you care about black life being killed by the police, you will lobby politicians to pass laws to end qualified immunity. Qualified immunity is what gives them the right to shoot you and go home with a paid uh paid paid leave, right? Paid leave. That's what they call it. So when you shoot somebody. You go home and get paid because of qualified immunity. Why aren't they talking about that? Why aren't they talking well, about? Well, when you talk about it, then people say it's fake. Because mm -hmm. one crazy. thing we do know, you can hide your sexuality. You can't hide this black golden skin on you. I promise you that. Well, you preaching now, Facts. Boy. Facts. I'm hoping for this. I'm hoping soon later people stop stop thinking about race. Just, just put it behind. It, it, it is what it is. 
If you want, if you want to stand on your ground like my man uh, Champion was saying, you got to learn the laws, and you work within the law, and you can get ahead. It's gonna have, it's gonna have people gonna step in your way, black, white, male, female. It's gonna have just jealous people stepping in your way. That's just right. part of the life. Seriously, I. So let me, me personally, me personally, more black people did me harm than white people. True. And most I of mean, me, I, I, and I would say to that, it might have been family. I mean, someone real close to you. We used to have a thing when I was growing up. You know, saying so we talking about the women and this, that, and the other. We had a saying with me and my friends. I don't mess with your sisters. You don't mess with my sisters. Because I know you don't mean women no good, and you know I don't mean women no good. So we ain't gonna even do that. Let's get this money. Mm. <laughs> Let's get this money. And once we got the understanding, we can get this money together. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but a woman gonna always come up into a place, whether it's intensity or not. Some men just jealousy. She don't want you to let her go. You don't fight with her, argue with her. When you find out that she's cheating with you and y'all supposed to have a relationship, leave her alone. Ain't no coming back. But see, we have to learn these things through life. Like I said, I'm 68 years old. I'm still learning shit. I got I'm a question for all y'all in here. Cause I, I, so we talking about BL, BLM. I want to ask y'all this. I see they one of the main people that like to push the whole defund the police idea and stuff like that. What do y'all think about defunding the police? The same thing well, I think about one person talking about defunding the Fed. It, well, it doesn't make sense. I mean, not defunding them. I mean, maybe restructuring it. That that should be done. But if it's not an agreement with you, you shouldn't defund it. Here's here's my take on that. We don't have to defund them. We just need to get rid of one thing. Just one thing. Just one little thing. Qualified immunity. That has to go. Period. If a police officer wants to continue to be a police officer, after you have removed that, they have to get their own private insurance. That means if they do anything on the job, they shoot somebody, they hurt somebody, their insurance will have to pay whatever that whatever they, it is that they did, their insurance will have to pay it. The reason why they have qualified immunity is because the government don't want to pay anybody for any, any they don't want to pay for their damages that they cause on the street. You see what I'm saying? And they don't want to hold the officers accountable. So they need to get rid of qualified immunity. When they do this, every officer will be very careful on how they deal with people, including how they approach you, when they use aggression. All that stuff will change overnight because now they don't have the backing of the government that allows them to do whatever the hell they want to do. I saw a video, uh, a, a guy called the cops. He, he called the cops because uh, I think his car had broke down or whatever. They came over there and ended up, ended up shooting him. So these people are crazy, man. We need to get rid of qualified immunity. That's the only way. There All is no right. other way. Juicy, you go ahead. That's a start. That's the start. Oh. The police have to be restructured because the police evolved from runaway slave catchers. And that's, that's the fact. approach that they take to policing right now. They originated as runaway slave catchers. So fact. thinking along those lines, the way the police are structured now, they have to be restructured because if there's no more slaves, then you don't need slave catchers. So your policing goes in a different direction. So uh, what you say about the qualified immunity, that's part of it. Another thing is, in my opinion, I think they should be drug tested because they are on prescription drugs that if you and I took, we couldn't drive a damn car. Right. right. That's just my opinion on that. Now, Drew, I think one of the ahead and then we'll get spit and fire. Oh, you weren't done, bro. Me, no, I was, I was seeing if OG was done because I want to get uh the ladies' opinion real quick. Yeah, I'm done, brother. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Juicy so what, 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 what oh, was it? What was it? Um, what did I think about defunding? Uh, um, yes, I just I think that's absurd. I just think that's absurd. I think that you know, what I'm saying what we have to do is just always try to think of better ways to uh, develop something that is going to be positive and better or whatever, but we should never try to defund something that's supposed to protect us. You know what I mean? We're supposed to, you know, restructure things, but not defund. And then not only that, how are we going to defund something, but yet she funded for policing. You know what I mean? You put that narrative out here, defund the police or whatever, but you got private uh, police. Securing your property. You know what I mean? You ain't defunding them because you're funding them. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is just the hoax that these people put out here in these streets and, and these organizations. And they capitalize once again off poor folk problems. And then you have all these big, rich organizations donate to them because it looks good for imagery. And yet, black people, again, it is the guinea pig. And they capitalize off our emotion. And I'm tired of I don't want to hear another organization popping up. <laughs> I, I, I don't want I to hear nothing else. The hell with, with, I, we, we'll figure this out. The people need to figure it out. I don't want nobody, I don't want to be nobody else's charity case. Uh, okay. And that's uh, how I feel about it. Juice is gonna go back. Are you there still? Yeah. Um I, I want to hear your opinion on it. Oh, okay. I agree with ears and champion 100 percent Both of their answers I 100 percent agree with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh what about the Lewis? Lewis, Lewis, are you there, bro? Lewis might have went to sleep. All right, go ahead, OG. Uh, it's just like what Ears was saying uh, earlier about being infiltrated. We keep saying Black Lives Matter. We ca we kind of forget a, a TIFA organization was a part of that kind of stuff. When that stuff was rolling to Detroit, a lot of Detroit residents said, no, no, we ain't finna burn down the city here. People was yep. catching buses. Bus, bus loads of people was coming to Detroit. And their aim was to tear this motherfucker up. Excuse my French. And a, lot of, a young black man got all on the news and he said no we ain't even doing that here we're not doing that here and every time there was a demonstration just then another police surrounded them they had cameras they wouldn't approach them but the community was telling them we ain't finna go burning down nothing up in here and that's how they kept things under control uh, somewhat in detroit you know what i'm saying so we, we got us we didn't just talk about black lives matter it was another secret organization that nobody wanted to miss exist. Exactly. Called a, T a Tifa. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But no, them the ones that right. no, them the ones, right. them the ones that had the, the, the truckloads of bricks and the truckloads of bombs and the truckloads of this, that, and the other. Those are the ones that they were they were just doing a pro matter of fact, when they first started doing it, I was so proud. I was a proud yeah. of America. When I said black right. people that's and that's white that's people coming together doing some stuff. I was proud as hell. But see, that's why I agree with Ears on that point where he was talking about George Soros because there's a lot of talk around him being the one funding uh, the, the buses and bricks. And Because how do these people get to all these right. different cities and have hotels? That's a lot of freaking money. Exactly. exactly. And they got that so fast. Yeah. And they got and that so fast. It gives that name off and then now we're divided in between each other. We had a movement going and then yep. now people start to see corruption and now we're pointing the fingers and shit. And now the whole strength of the black people that were coming together for a good cause, it gets thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. yeah, a, a lot of a lot of what I've noticed through society is a lot of other races have learned how to pimp us. You know, we yep, were speaking facts. on the Asians earlier, how they pimp us through the hair. We can see the Arabs there pimp us through the corner stores in our black community and the yep. liquor stores in our black community. Facts. White people they have pimp us through, you know, just you know, our politics and things like that. We right. are the only ones that haven't learned how to monitor to gain our own economy off each other. We everybody else is pimping us. You know, you, know well, we they, have, you, know, you can see how these niggas act on YouTube. They ain't gonna how much as soon as you start making more money than the average mm -hmm. YouTuber, what they gonna do? They're gonna say, Oh, that bitch ass nigga ears. Oh, we gotta fuck his channel up, we gotta take his shit down. Right. We do that in real life, and right. that's why we can't defund the police. And the fact that my nephew is a cop. I do agree with y'all's sentiment of it. It doesn't need to be defunded, but excuse me. What my nephew told me is that they're trained to 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 police black people in a different way. They're trained to watch us. They're they're being trained at the police academy a certain way, and so it, it, that's the training that has to change. And the fucked up thing about it, there he said that the training comes from the numbers and the statistics from the crimes in certain areas. Yep. Now so it's uh, like I have to disagree. Train the police the, if they're going off of just the numbers of what happens where you live. The reason why I have to disagree with they have to. I be wish trained the police or, would just. I, the, I wish the police would just. Uh, I wish the white police would police the same way the black police do. Right. I, 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 I black police officers killing the killing the white. No, no. no the I reason why. I don't, I don't, 
I don't want them to kill. This is what happens. We have to have. We had a cop that I'm not going to say his name because ears know his name, but I don't want to say his funny name. You probably know who I'm talking about. Ears. They start with an M. But we had a cop that was a cop for years, and that cop demanded respect because he grew up there. He's from the neighborhood, so he had a different approach with it. They, he treated us. He'll lock your ass up. But he'll treat you more like a, a, a old school granddad. Look, yep. don't let me catch you fucking up, cause my job is to catch you. That's how he'll talk to you. And and he wouldn't he wouldn't come and press you. He wouldn't come and do none of that. But if he had to do his job, he did his job. And so we need more. What what they did was they started taking p- the people that's from the community. They'll send you an hour or two hours away to make you uh, go into another county where you don't know the people. So you're more likely to have an arrest. Absolutely. Uh, my, my police officers, my my nephew, because he's policing in an area where he's not from the community, unfortunately, the community treat him like a white man. As soon as he get out the car, and my nephew, if they understood anything, he's trying so hard not to lock you up. He's trying to give you a pass. He's like, look, when you see me, just don't be dumb. Just just make, you, make sure you good, because I'm with my partner. If he by himself... He might give you a pass, man. Pull that shit out, man. Give me that weed. Go on about your business, but it's the it's the mouthing off. It's a lot of dudes that because of this social media, when you a black cop, they, man, my nephew done told me some things. I'm like, damn. He said, man, as soon as I get out the car, bitch ass my motherfucking punk ass cop working for the man, just disrespect them all crazy. And if you think that you're gonna be able to talk to a man like that and think you're gonna have a good result, then I think you nuts. We got to change the way we deal and talk with police because some of them want to be an ally to you. Mm-hmm. Some of them really want to be an ally to you. And I think if we all as a community can make sure we put officers in the community that's from the community, yeah, that, that would help out a lot. Yeah, that now, actually does why, matter. Why why I agree, I agree with you know what you're saying and, and the things you're saying, you know, make sense. But when people talk about training, 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 the reason why I don't like that training thing is because they get training to begin with so if you train me to do something as long as i know that if i fuck up nothing will happen it don't matter how much training you give me i will do what the fuck i want to do so being held accountable and being held liable for their actions is more important than training because if you remove qualified immunity it don't matter if you trained or not common sense will tell you if you shoot this person and kill him you are liable for that shit so Chance. therefore, you will not do it unless your life is a, is a, is an immediate like threat. You see right. the gun, you have the gun, he's pointing the gun at you, then you shoot his ass. That's the only time you will see a situation like that. But you pull up on somebody clearly unarmed, and then you start busting shots. So the qualified what the, so the qualified immunity thing is. So you're saying that if a cop shoots someone, then it's coming out of their pocket. Qualified immunity means if you shoot someone, you don't even, you're not even liable. Go home and get yeah, paid. You just go to the, you don't get charged. Go home and like get paid. A, like if you shot thing. Ray Ray, it wouldn't be that. Right. Because okay. if you, qualified immunity is out. like, it's like so, uh, having so like. If you um, get rid of it, if you get rid of well, it. Well, they do it. They do an investigation, of course. But if they do an investigation, they're not going to charge you. You might just lose your job. Okay. Much. Right. Maybe. So, let me ask you. Maybe. So, maybe. So, maybe. So, champion, if you get rid of it, what are you saying it goes to? Okay. So if you get rid of qualified immunity, now every police officer should have their own private insurance. Just like if you have a car, you have insurance, right? Like so they, should have their own, insurance. they should have their own private insurance. So that way, if something happened on a job, let's say they shoot somebody or kill somebody, the investigation will be done by a whole different entity. Not by the okay. same police department that's going to pay you. All right? right? Because if the same people are going to pay you, then they will do an investigation that will favor them. But if a separate entity is going to pay you, then a whole separate entity has to do the investigation. And it's not going to favor anybody because the investigation is being conducted by a whole separate entity. You I know what I mean? And at, the end of the the day, problem. Oh, and at the end of the day, the police is not the ones paying the money. So they will make sure they do a thorough job to investigate the, the matter. If I agree with sense. that. The only problem that will come with that is be less people trying to become police officers. Boy, you yeah. just and that's fine. Ears. And that's fine. Sure. Hey, ears, you just took the words right out of my mouth. You're gonna see and a mass exodus of cops because you absolutely. Have- but you we don't. Think- okay. But if they have the insurance, you got to You got to think of. Oh, go ahead, just. 
I was just going to ask champion. So with this insurance, is it similar to like malpractice insurance where if they are found guilty or liable for, you know, doing something that this insurance will pay versus the uh, police department of the state or something? Yes. 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 Yeah. Just like, uh, just like the other guy, just like the other guy, I think his family received a million dollars, but the, the state paid that. Now, the, insurance sorry, the will be city or the state pay that. Sorry, the city, the city paid that. So now the idea of having an insurance is this: if you have too many incidents, insurance will drop you. Other insurance might not be able to take you because they're gonna be like, nah, you, you, you crazy. You, you, you went over there, you shot somebody, you went over there, you, you whooped somebody's ass, you went over there, you, you, you too, you too risky. We we can't really take you. So now you can't even be a police because you don't have insurance. You see what I'm saying? So this will force you to be a good a good cop no matter what. This is what I'm worried. This is what I'm worried about, though, champion. With the political realm, the way it's going now, with everybody with such a heightened sensitivity to whatever cops do, they convict you in the media before the facts come out. I think it would make cops afraid to be cops. Well, the 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 the, the what I believe is we don't need a lot of cops because you have oh, we need a lot of cops. Hold on now, hold on now. You have societies in Africa in China, in India, where they don't have too many police, and they're still living. Everybody's not dead. Well, we, far, we far from that, bro. I'm, I'm I, I know that. that. I, I know we're far from that because we have a lot of mental illness going on in our community, and people are not taking their medication, and everybody can carry a gun. Yeah, I understand. I'm about to say, these niggas got a lot of drugs. guns, you man. You got to think about the drugs that are, that are put into I, our I, 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 I get that. I get that, but with the amount of cops that we have now, what, what is really changing? Nothing. People are still dying in Chicago. California. They don't have, hold, on, they, hold, they, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, California, a... California. If you go on the streets of California on Skid Row, from the beginning to the end, you're gonna see a bunch of tents on the street, a bunch of needles, a bunch of drugs, and a bunch of shit on the floor. Champ. They have cops over there. But who killing more? Like I hate that you use Chicago as an example, really. But who killing more niggas in Chicago? Is more cops killing niggas, or is it more niggas killing niggas from their own blocks? That's what I'm saying. It's more niggas killing niggas, but having a lot of cops have not changed that, is what I'm saying. The cops out there is probably afraid. It could Even change. if you put more. Even if you put more cops, it's not going to do anything. I don't want to be a cop because the job is so hard. You got to make a split-second decision. Um, you got people that are doing certain things. My nephew got in a shootout the first month on the job. A guy shot at him as soon as he got out of his patrol car. So it's like Man, this gun thing has gotten so out of control. I just don't think we're we're being completely honest. Yeah, I would never, but I hear think... me out. But hear me out, though. If you are a doctor, you mm -hmm. are in the same situation. All right, people make people come to the hospital sick, looking for help, and you are trying to help them. While you're doing that, if they end up dying, you will get sued for that. The hospital has to pay some kind of compensation. So this is the job that you chose. This is but what your comes life is. Job. Your life is so, not on the line, though, from that person that's coming in sick. Like they ain't coming in with a knife or a gun, and facts, you're not facts. expecting it. So there's a facts, different kind of uh, facts, threat. But there. fact, facts. But you are there to help. You are trying to help, and while you are helping, you end up making an error and they end up dying. So but they're also, not gonna say, "Oh, you know what? Let's not sue this doctor because he was trying to help." They're gonna be like, "Oh, hell no!" Champ, but you know the big they're going difference. To get their money. The big difference is that somebody could take your life. That's yeah. the key. It's like when right, you're sitting right. there, like, I truly understand what you're saying, right? And I would say more so than taking their immunity away, maybe we should have more rigorous investigations with more honest people instead of just saying when they shoot somebody, it is all on them. Because it's going to be a lot of times that you can argue they was in the right. Because sometimes we can sit here and talk about how black men get killed. But I seen something not too long ago where the cop was like, stop, bro. Stop. Yeah. And he was trying his best to be patient with him. Then they started I've wrestling. I've seen a lot of them in the right. I've seen a lot of there, them in the right. There's a lot of situations like that. But what I'm saying to you is we, we can't going, just cry you know. Black Lives Matter all the time to give just so we can but, stand on something, bro. But listen right. to this, though. Listen to this, though. What I'm saying to you is this. It's a lot of situations where people run up on cops with guns and knives and all that. Just run up on them. And they're giving them a chance to stop. And they don't stop. It's a lot of situations this like that. This is true also. But, but, what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is you are more likely to make a better decision when you know you are going to be liable for your actions. Or you watch are more this, champ. To think before or you, you liable. 
or you liable to make a better decision because I heard you speak on training. But here's the thing. This is how they're trained. It's a training center for police up the street for me right now. They they train them to this is how you approach a car. This is how you watch your, your blind side. This is how you enter a house. This is how you look for somebody coming around the edge. They're not training you to be like, this is how you talk to somebody. Don't go straight for the gun. Da 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 da. If if we notice people that's been in more high volatile situations like soldiers and stuff like that, that don't come back with PS, you know, the all of that. They, they, that don't come back with that. They're actually more better with the community and dealing with people because they've been put in situations where they know they can lose their life and using their mind is much more key than just running up with a gun. These people really be scared, not put in certain situations before. And now you telling them, hey, man, it might be a gun right here or this guy might be reaching for something. You just just be patient with them. These people ain't been through the trenches. You asking them to risk their life. I'm, I'm not. Say, I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying to hold be. On, hold on, champion. Hold on, champion. I'm gonna say something that majority of people don't want to touch on. I think the training need to go both ways. I think we, being that my nephew is a cop, I, if I was a cop and you run, and as soon as I get out the car and you calling me a bitch ass nigga, it's gonna be a problem. So the training has to go both ways. Our community need to heal, so we need to get the cops training. We need to get some more people that, like you said, maybe put together a team. That if a cop does a shooting, you have an outside investigation, not an internal one. And right. we gotta train our community to respect cops. We gotta start respecting authority. And a lot of times and, and, trying to go viral, way. trying to go viral is getting people fucked up. Trying to go viral is yep. got. And I, 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 I agree that I, I'm I about agree. to get up out of here. I, agree with uh, that. I gotta I gotta get I agree with that. something, but I just wanna salute the panel before I get out. Man, shout out to you. Uh, good shout having out a conversation with you, fellas. Salute Peace and blessing right, there. But a lot of times we, I we think must they, be honest that our community is a rough community to serve. Yes. We, we, we have to start saying that, listen, we need to have men and women in the neighborhood checking these little teenagers that's talking to adults crazy. That's that's doing some of the things that's getting people killed. Absolutely. We gotta, we, it got to be on both ways. We can't just have it one way. Kwame, this is how right, all our community is, right? You, We would say this is how foul our community is. We'll say, don't snitch. We'll also say, that's none of my business. And we'll also um, be like, uh, what's the third one? I always do. It's none of our business. You won't do nothing and you won't call the police. That's how volatile our, our community is. Like, yeah, we want to we make a safe haven for gangsters. I don't get it. How can you have, we can't cry that baby's getting shot when you have civilians saying that they don't want to snitch. You're not a, and it, a civilian. I'm not that, I'm not in support of that. You know what I mean? Because when I talk about black, you know, police and black people, police and black people, I don't try to exempt black people from it. I'm not saying we're saints and we're perfect. And I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is one person is a professional trained and being paid a salary to do something. The other yeah, is not a listen, professional like my, and like not my, trained. But like, my, but like my mom used to tell me. If if I don't whip your ass, the police gonna whip it, and you can't have untrained children out here because the, these some of these kids are wily coyotes. We have to put some accountability on the parents that's having these kids out here being so disrespectful. We just have to put some accountability Fact. on the parents. Period. Yes, you have. We, to, we have to do that. Some Fact. of the things these kids are doing, we wasn't doing in my era. We wasn't doing in Miss Spitting Fire era. We yep. weren't doing in Brother Hicks era. And the police is there to catch you doing a crime. If you out here in the streets and you get caught, you got to go do your time. It and we no expect authority. We, expected, we respected authority. Let, right. Let's also talk about quarters. They have quarters now. You know, they have quarters that they have to meet. So sometimes they will make up some shit or just but start some shit just to get your ass in there. I like what WAC 100 said. Or somebody said that sometimes you got to goddamn be proud that these niggas work that hard to get to jail. Some of these dudes are working hard. They appreciate jail. They love it. My brother said he wanted to go to prison. He was a teenager. He didn't know what he wanted to do in life. He said prison helped him. So it's people like we got to we got to understand that it's I, even I was in that mentality as a young kid. I'm thinking, OK, everybody in my community go to jail. So we got to go to prison to be a man. A lot of our boys and our youth think going to prison makes them a man. We have to be accountable about that. 
We got to start changing the imagery of what young men are so that we could be proud of the guy that go to college. Absolutely. With the Fact. guy that's going to college, they sleeping with the niggas that's selling drugs. Yeah, that's also true. I ain't gonna lie. I was just watching uh, I forgot who live I was on, but he was saying, Why don't we start having uh college graduate parties as opposed to coming home from prison parties? Boy, them coming home from prison parties be popping. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, the truth is when you go to prison, people feel like you have a harder life over there versus going to college, and that's true because going to college, you go home, you eat cereal, the next day you go to school. You come back home, you know, but being in prison is like you you in a cage. So you coming out to the world where you have women. You, you have shouldn't food, the whole goal, you goal have... is not to get there in the first place. Of course, so I'm not saying have that. A party I'm not saying for the accomplishments it. and the hard work of, of college. I don't they support don't, it. I'm just telling you they why they have the party. And what she's trying to say, champion, is that our community don't champion the guys that go to college. We champion right. the murderers, we champion. We, in my community, we we was we was saluting the dudes who shot people. Right. We was afraid of them. We were saluting the shooters. They run the community. I can't fuck with that. Yeah, because the, the, the shooters run every cred. community. That's street cred. I can't now, fuck with that. Kwame. That's street cred. Yeah. The I can't stand by that. Street. Yeah, I can't stand by that. Cred. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing more beloved in our community than a shooter. I can't stand by that because yep. I didn't grow up like that. I didn't grow and up. Then like the that. drug dealer is the reality of the U.S. hoods. Like it's they, the drug yeah, I didn't. I didn't grow. He got the money, but the shooter is one of the most important guys in the drug dealer's little game because you got to protect them. The Absolutely. Yeah, but, then, but then, but then, you, you the movies is where they had this shit. You know, you have the movies, you have the music, and you show it on TV, and they glorify and they get rich off of it. So a kid watching that, I you agree. would think that's the life. You see what I'm saying? Versus if they was watching something else. I grew up watching people who are, was having debates on TV, people who was doing spelling challenge. That's what I grew up watching. But so you if, you're not, if, you don't, if you don't know how to spell, you don't know how to do a debate or even have a, a, a logical conversation, you are a dumbass. But, but let me but tell that's you something not what these kids are I don't mean to cut you off, champion, but let me let, because I forget. I forget. I'm sorry, but I will forget. The thing of it is, in my day, we had... Uh, uh, movies with, with some violence in it, right? And we had we we see that, and it was interesting and stuff like that. But we knew it was a movie. For some somewhere, uh, in the next generation, they want to mimic it. We just knew it was a movie for entertainment, right? Now people want to make that reality. But hold on, spitting fire. Did they really know? Because at some point, I'm I always put this on the OGs too. These youngers ain't just learned this out of nowhere now, movie or not. They ain't because no youngin ain't it seen his his neighborhood be destroyed and he 19 and was here 20 years ago. Them guys from 20 years ago did that, and that's what he's seen. Now I will say that. Uh, media, movie, TV, entertainment does have something to play with it, but looking outside and walking into that world has something to do with it too. Now, of course, that's what Fact. I, that's the point Fact. I'm making. That's the point I'm making. When we knew movies and and music was just that entertainment, he said uh, some champion said something. It's the music that they listen to and they want to grow up and mimic it. So what I'm saying, like Kwame said, what I'm saying is when in my day we knew that that was just entertainment now real life is something totally different that was something totally said but no. i was going by what he had said he okay. said that yeah, they because... want to mimic what they hear and see on television and the music yeah so... because as a kid as a kid you, you see when you watch the same movie as a kid and you watch that same movie as an adult what you see is different when no, a child, I'm about when I was a kid, when I was a kid, we knew that that was just entertainment. For right, so... but then, but then, but then you have to understand that all kids are different. When I was a kid, I used to see um, when I watch a movie where somebody gets shot, I used to think they were dead for real. And then when I see them in another movie, I'd be like, "Damn, this guy was dead in this movie. How come he's in this movie? Wow, that can't be real." <laughs> so that I went through that as a kid. I'm telling you now. Right. So I sometimes, sometimes kids think shit is real. So if you're glorifying these gangsters, these drug dealers, these killers, you, you and they're rich in real life, you know, some kids will see it as a way out. Like, okay, maybe if I act like this, I'm going to get rich. Well, maybe if I say like this, I'm going to get rich. Champ. And they start doing those things. 
let me let me just say this, and I want you to take back off again. But because you were saying we know it's um kids now. I was born in '91. I'm sure it's people on the panel older than me. Maybe oh, I'm the youngest. Maybe there's people younger. Who knows, right? So, but I'm gonna say this: in the era of Ice Cube, Tupac, all of this other stuff, we know that back then, and we can say it now because we don't heard it a million times. If if you rapping this back in the nineties, they was standing on this. They was this. They they was making it like the image was realer than ever. Then like you, it like like we looking back now. Everybody thought Ice Cube was super hard. Look at the movie. He wasn't the toughest guy out there by any stretch of the imagination. But they just felt like he was real when he was talking all this, you know, running for the police, this and that, Easy, e uh, uh, Tupac, Biggie, whoever. These niggas, what, I mean, some was trench bound. Some just grew up in the hood and stuff like that. But them lyrics wasn't even as real back then. But they pushed it off to our generation like, oh, you can't even rap like this or this and that if you ain't standing on the this and that. So how right. is that even possible that people thought that? was like that when right now we see that people that's older in the older generation to tell a younger guy uh-uh that ain't real we was saying this real stuff back in the day and we was really doing this and that right and then and then and then what's crazy is nowadays well if you if you if you if you're rapping about violence back then they really didn't commit the act they were just rapping about it but now it's like you have to commit the act first and then rap about the shit you know what I'm saying? So these are things that kids are watching and they don't know what's real and what's fake. So they're mimicking what they're seeing because it's being glorified. When a guy shoot a guy on TV, he don't go to jail. But when you shoot a guy on, on, in real life, you go to jail. But they don't know that part because they don't see them motherfucker go to jail from the movie. They see him get rich. So now when they do it, they go to jail. So they realize, oh man, I shouldn't have done that because that's fake. So our children, their brain is, is not what we think, man. It, it's, it's far... I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I used to see shit on TV and think it's real. Maybe I'm, I'm being just real. old school then. Cause you I, old I, school, because you had, Spin Fire, you had black and white when you was growing up. You had black <laughs> and white. And, you, and the TV had a the TV had a knob. It had a yes, knob that you have to keep flipping. It did, it did. Right, and you have to use a hanger to get some channels. You have to, you have to yes. you know, wrap the hanger around the thing. And then That's you have to keep school. wiggling that shit left yes. and right to get channels. I know, I knew, I knew your era. See, we grew up in a, in a different, we got remotes now, you know. So that's <laughs> the thing that's killing you. <laughs> there is, there is hey, some I, truth I, to I, the I, TV I, thing, though. There is some truth to the TV thing because I'm telling you now. Uh, you know, we grew up in this era. So when when they see we, things, we take they think our it's real. kids. We take our kids and and sit them down in front of a television, watching a cartoon where Bug Bunny take a shotgun and and shoot Daffy Duck in the face. This is right. what. We ain't this never is what. Tried to go out there and, 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 and really do it. No, but, but, but that's a little fire, but it is something. Painted, that, but that image is painted inside your mind, and you never right. forget it. You never forget. You never forget it. You but never that's see something. it. That's y'all who ain't never. You might not I remember did. it. I thought it was funny, and I moved on. Well, now, when I, I didn't come, think I it was funny it because <laughs> I didn't think it was funny even as a kid because Daffy Duck looked like me. He was the right. color I was. <laughs> but but that that big thing did that give that me to shoot. When no, I got I my BB gun, I did shoot my brother with it. You see? What? You, you, you shot your brother? <laughs> yeah, when I got my BB gun, I thought it would be funny to shoot him with a BB gun. Now, I, got, I, tried. Tried. You know, I shot somebody I, with I a BB gun. I got really popped with one, too. I learned real quick how to do that again. Everybody whipped my ass. I did shoot him with a BB gun. That's what you get the idea. I, 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 just, I, I wasn't exactly. One, one exactly. A lot of a that lot was... of the largest companies in the world go out of business on advertisement. They pay billions of dollars to to to, to sway your opinion, to force a narrative on you. The advertising right. make more money than anything on this planet. This it's how strong to give you the perception to paint an illusion for you. And it's like the sister said, uh, a lot of people. They don't know the difference between what's real. They try to make it a reality. I think that the Scarface movie and and yes, that I other movie, The Godfather, was the yeah. worst thing. Was the worst and shot us. Movies right. like that and just you, don't make no sense to me. You one hundred percent right. Every Negro in the yeah. world had a Scarface poster. Show did. They yes. Facts. Yes. yes, they did. Facts. Yes, they did. And what, what about the movie? It started colors? with Scarface, and then it went on to that the nineties, early nineties music that um, Tizzle the One was talking about with Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube and all of them, and it's just been like a snowball effect after that. 
you know. Right. It was and one the movie time when the New York rappers was actually taking Italian names. Like, uh, absolutely. Of all the snitches. You know what I'm saying? I don't care, I don't care what y'all say. I still love Trina. I don't care how many twerk songs she made. <laughs> that lady helped my teenage years. <laughs> everything in them blood. songs. Yes, so man. look, champ, OG, spin That's fire. I found also... a good album back in the day. Explicit lyrics only. It didn't say explicit lyrics only. Yeah, it <laughs> wasn't by. This <laughs> might <laughs> not. When Trina said that part about five or six best friends, I said, "Oh." She said, "You don't know nail hope." I said, "Yes, yes." I <laughs> right, <that."> right. <laughs> and it was this... it was girls out there dressing like a acting like. Like the power of music, people don't understand how much power it actually has. Fact. Yeah, okay. we have a lot that of power. power. Yes. Yeah. Anything. Made church girls act like just like her. Yeah. This and a- I know it might have been a song or an act for her, but these girls wasn't acting. <laughs> All right, I that's first, what I'll tell you that. When I, I first, I, when I first heard that champ. song, I first heard that song, I believe I can fly when I was a oh, kid. Oh man. <laughs> I climbed on the fucking roof. Spread my fucking hands and jumped. No, and got my ass fucked up. No, I did that. Oh my yeah, god, see, me, what the hell wrong with you? I did oh, that. Hey. When I got that, hey. when I heard that song, hey. I know basketball. And I said, I'm gonna fly oh, like that song. Like, I believe I can fly. And I, I did my first dunk, but you jumping off roof. <laughs> yeah, that nigga was tripping, tripping. We was living, we lived in a house where it wasn't that tall anyway. Uh-huh. But that song made me really like think I can oh, fly yeah. for real. Oh. Okay, but what I have to say this. I have to say this. What about what is the difference between what we're talking about now Mm -hmm. and the Rambo movies and all these other movies that actually do a lot of killing too? Hold on, can I can I can I touch on that? Yes, please. (laughs) I would say one one big reason that the Rambo movie is different compared to what we talking about is Rambo. Huh? I want you to see if you're gonna say what I'm thinking. Go ahead. I'm going to say, number one, Rambo is like some army man that's going to a whole nother country to do something. And the stuff that we see, like what I'm talking about specifically right now, let's say compare Rambo to Boys in the Hood. What's more impactful for the black man, a black young kid, Rambo or Boys in the Hood? Right. That's the point I was making. Boys so in the, the Hood. The point I was making is, is what we put out here. Like when it's them white people putting some things out here, they're putting things out here to make them look like a hero to make them look to make them you know uplift them why don't we superman spider-man right? batman people to put more hey don't say I- spider-man my son did the same but you know what now that i think about it i bought my son that damn spider-man outfit that shoot the little uh stuff out the little um they got a little button that go in your hand and there's a little thing that go on their wrist that if they press if they squeeze down on it it'll shoot the little silly string out or whatever so my son go way up in the backyard way up to the top of the little steps they they, they built like double layer steps and they had like a little seating area and some flowers and all that shit mm-hmm. i seen him do it from the window and he shot the thing he said spider-man let's go and i said I, i'm running to the door i'm like boy you bet not jump he jumped <laughs> down and damn near broke his leg i said oh lord they re- them kids really think that stuff is real. So I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I was like, I think I was seven years old or something like that, or eight years old, and I heard, I believe I can fly. <laughs> and I climbed, I climbed to the, because our house was not that tall, but at the time, as a kid, it was tall enough. I climbed on that roof, and I spread my hands and jumped. He was and I landed hard. Old. He did the same thing you did. He used, he hit that little button. He thought it was going, he talked about, I'm going to swing. He thought he was going to swing on it. Man, I don't know what the hell he thought, but he thought another thing was he hit that ground. He hit that step uh, ground. I know that's right. Man, he hit that step and rolled all the way down to the bottom. I felt so bad for him, but I told him, I said, boy, this ain't real. You asked me to get this. But this I tried to be the old school parent and explain to him what it is, but you couldn't tell him that it wasn't real. Right. <laughs> Yeah, because their mind is different. When when a kid sees oh, something, yeah. the, same, the same shit you're watching, he's seeing something completely different. So he told and me that's I why old. they pushed them. Old and I, ain't just, I just ain't know. I'm old. And <laughs> champ, that's why they push narratives now through cartoons. Because let me tell you another reason. Exactly. Like, 30 years ago, right? Mm. 30 years ago, anybody that was like 19 and watching cartoons was probably looked at as childish as hell. 
Now in this day and age, you will see a grown 30 year old man with a Yu-Gi-Oh shirt on or something like that, Pokemon or whatever. These are the type of days that we live in where that has been such ingratiated in our culture that, for example, it's going to be a 70 year old man playing 2K one day. And it's going to be looked at as normal because that's the age and generation we came up in. And that's what like impacted us. That's why they push all all these ideas. Hold on. I'm 64. I play 2K. Oh, <laughs> Give me a okay, break, bro. Well, no, but I, I'm just saying. Never mind. Never, never mind. Let me be quiet. Man. I'm just saying that's <laughs> normally now is more accepted, and I'm and guess what? I play the 2K with you because it's more accepted. But maybe 30 years ago, when you was 34 or whatever, they probably would have been like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, what you want, man? You need to be outside trying to, you know, do whatever y'all was that's doing 30 fact. years ago." That's a fact. <laughs> Facts. Facts. And, and you know, and and back then. Watching TV and playing a game was a privilege. You have to read your books. You have to, you know, everything you have to do has to be academically uh, yep. uh, accepted. It was all about books and reading. It wasn't about, watching TV was like what you get as a tip. If you do something right, you get to watch TV. You get to play the game. Well, it's not like that no more. You look nah, nah, nah. your ass if you don't let them play that game. And that's a fact. <laughs> and call your old head while they doing it. What? <laughs> if, you want, if you want to make sure your kid... Call the police on you. Goddamn, get the hell away from you to divorce you or whatever. Give them a video game and then take it away from them. I don't know what the hell kind of games they got now, but them games, them, my, my, I'm telling you, when I got my son, he's 13 years old, he came here, and, man, I, I said, what the fuck was you learning? He didn't know how to pump gas. And, th- and this is what I'm saying about some of the ladies. Ladies, are you guys out there teaching your sons how to pump gas, rake the yard, cut hell no. change the tire? Yeah. Jack up the tire. Are y'all teaching them how to do the things that men? Nah, do? they only they only care about getting the child support money. No, I'm just I'm just asking. I ain't trying to start no beef because I'm Uh-oh. saying. Uh oh. He said he said they want the child support. Yeah, I, oh I, man, Kwame, what, 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 what you doing? Yeah, I'm not going to care about. Hey, look here, champion. You trying to start beef? I'm just trying to ask a question. I don't want no <laughs> That's a whole nother subject. No, but. I'm just saying, because they they over there talking about, oh, somebody's privilege. He getting some some amount of money a month, and he don't. Man, look, but, somebody was getting that money before he was eighteen. But see, this is the thing. My baby mama, he was smart, but she's raising. She was raising the boy that the women complain about. He didn't know how to do things like a man when he get oh, around. Mm. Yeah, when he when he Say got that. around. Yeah, when he got around uh, women and we got around adults, he knew how to talk like an adult. He knew how to articulate because that's who he was around. But when it was time to get around his peers, other boys, he was a misfit. And right. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He kept coming up asking me questions. We, he, I would take him to the park. He would get fouled. He would walk off like he was tearing up. I'm like, what the hell going on? I said, oh hell no. I, the first thing I did, I put him in jujitsu. Every day we going down there to work out. It's gonna get you a level of confidence because that's where it starts. You got to have a baseline right. of confidence. Yeah, uh, yeah. Every day I'm showing you things that men do that women are going to require you to do. Facts. Every day you take out that trash. Every day you get up, you make up your bed. Every day you do this. Put that toilet seat down. Boy, go brush your teeth. Go do this. Uh, go trim your hair. Just get out of this gamer phase that it's okay just to go to school, get some food, drop your bag, and go play games. And that's it. Until you wake up in the morning. That's what he That's what he was allowed to do. Mm, right. And and, and I, I keep saying this. A, a, a woman cannot... A woman can raise a boy to a certain extent, but after a certain point, a man has to now put his foot down and do the job. I was job just getting ready to say that. I was just getting ready to say. As a, yeah, as, because I, I don't believe a woman can a, raise a man. I don't, I don't believe that because there are things can. that women can do. We you know, can. there are things that right. I got the shock as a of woman, my life. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, I'm sorry, Carmen, I didn't mean to cut you off. You were saying no, 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 no. I talk all the damn damn time. And I'm here to hear everybody else talk. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just I was just gonna say, as a woman, as a single mother with a son who is he finna be 17 and he's a foot and some inches taller than me. He's supposed to be six eight uh by the time it's all said and done. So, you know, I I I learned very early on, you know, as he was I would say once he got taller than me, which I think he was probably like about maybe 10 when he I ain't got 10. Yeah, I'm only five feet tall. I'm only five oh, feet. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Aww. but my son is, you know, he's 17. How you six. got a six eight son? My Ooh. ex I was ex, thinking that too. My ex 
<laughs> my ex husband is like was is like six five. So I, I was guess just about that. to say, you show yeah. my man, your baby that. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy! I don't need no more. Cause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going on mute. I'm going on mute. <laughs> Yeah, my my ex husband is tall, so I, yeah, I would have never thought my son would end up being that tall. But yeah, he's supposed to be six eight, and looks like he's headed that way. But uh, I remember the he was probably like about maybe nine, probably nine, really. Um, the first time I think we both realized, you know, and I, I had he had took something, and I was like, "Boy, get that to me!" And he raised his arm over the top of his head, like, "Yeah, right, mama, like come and get it." And oh, that's. Yeah. That was when I knew. I was like, oh, shit. Like, okay. Me, <laughs> me and a whole nother. I called his dad like, look, you going to have to do something. Because I this brother, he, he getting it now. He realizing. And so, you know, and, and we've had, um, you know, he, he just, he doing what every teenage boy do. You know, his little, you know, he's smelling himself and stuff. He get, you know, and I, I realize I'm, you know, so I pray all the time. I'm, you know, for. Does he, does he play sports? No, I wish he would. I wanted him to be a basketball player so bad. I really but do. something you still something. gonna have to you still gonna have to deal with the fact that I'm gonna tell you now, your son is gonna be six eight. I will yes. tell you, women like tall men. He's gonna get a look just because he's that tall. I know so, he just looks yeah, down. So you gotta be careful now. <laughs> and you, and are, you don't want to. You and the thing up, is, you are gonna see what I'm talking about. How the women go to chasing your son? You gonna see? Oh, I, they're doing it now. When he my <laughs> was a teenager, grown women. So no, I, I know. was just about to say the grown women one. He had the grown woman age. He had that. Oh yeah, them grown, them, them grown women be looking at my baby, and he do. He look like a man. I can't. You know, he got a beard and mustache and shit. So it's, don't let them older women get your son too early. Never. Now, them out. They gonna say out, looking man. like I'm an NBA age. prospect. Oh, hey, yeah. I'm hey, Kwame, why why don't you want them to give it to him? <laughs> she know what I'm talking about because I'm to... telling you, they yes. gonna turn him out and then he gonna be that, that consumes you. Them older woman to put something on your ass when you that young. <laughs> don't yeah. ask me how I know. But and then and then you you know what I'm saying? You, can, you listen. I'm just saying she better not let them older women get to him. No, I'm doing my best to watch him, but I you know it's a I'm just a I realize I'm a woman raising him. You know he's he it's it's different it's different and I, and, I and, and not to cut you off the thing is you know there are times when like I said once they get to that point where where you know like I, I don't believe a woman can raise a man anyway but advice works advice works you know what I mean they're gonna do what they want to do anyway but make sure yes. you put something in their head so when they're going the wrong way at least they know they're going the wrong way the worst thing for you to do is to be going the wrong way and not know you're going the wrong way. So even if you're going the wrong way and you know it, it's better because you know yeah. better. Yeah. And, and and once you get burned, you will know to go the other way because you know better. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So now but is the know, time I, to give them advice, advice, advice. And and you can never give somebody too much advice. But, but ass okay, whipping, ask yelling, you. all that shit ain't going to work. No. Oh, I figured that out earlier. Your home girl let, away me from you, let me Keep ask you guys. Home girls as away. I'm sorry? Keep your homegirls away from them. Why not? Why? Damn, Kwame, stop hitting players. Oh, I'm watching all. I watch everybody. Around. Too early. I'm telling I had to, you. I had to watch the teachers. The, I had to watch the teachers. No, you can't yeah. watch. I'm sorry. Now. See, I'd have been mad if you were my mama. No, 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 the the no. Let me tell you. No, the teachers. No, 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 no. I had to watch the teachers because one day they had the teacher had called me and said something about the fact that my son was no longer allowed to wear basketball shorts to school. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, and the first thing I thought in my head was, Big, why, why you, you know, oh, I was so mad. I was so mad. Teacher so looking at that, your son jump. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And so I told, I told his dad, I said, look, uh, we gonna have to get him some denim, and he get it's got to be thick. He can't have maybe the school just called and told me that he can no longer wear basketball. He can't wear any shorts of any kind with any type of thin material. Period. I would run that bed with the hoochie daddy shorts on next. Like, hey, <laughs> you, you like the that? Let me show you something new. If you, are you and the husband? Are you and the? Uh, you say that's your ex husband? My ex husband. Yeah. Yeah. See, if you'd have told me that, I would said, okay, son, I'm gonna take you to school. <laughs> talk to, talk to people, make sure everything okay. 
And that's what fathers do. That's what fathers do. Hey, now, baby son, you you too young for this, son. Let me let me handle this. Ah, that nigga terrible. And that's fine. I just don't don't mess with my baby. Don't don't. I wish a teacher would have told me that, Juicy. I would have came in there with the Eddie Murphy delirious pants on. You hear me? See, now, how did this came to tell her that it's not appropriate to talk to my son, but I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> see, when I was in school, they wasn't doing this. I was like, man, where these teachers at, man? Because I be hearing see on the news. They be like, man, this little teacher, she went and did. I'm like, man, she. I know it's wrong. Be but, jealous man. of them little niggas sometimes. Like, like, damn, where like, was man. I at? Now, where y'all at? Like, geez, where they y'all They got at? some young, fine teachers, boy. I'm trying to tell you. They, they, want, yes. they want them young kids. They really do. They do, because they, they be coming in early. Them. They be coming in uh, to teach at the age of 24, and they're teaching already. So you know they're not too far off from a guy who is 16 years old. They're not too exactly. far off. They listen to the same yeah. music, yeah. the same dance challenge, the same TikTok. Yeah. They see the same shit, so, and they talk the same way. So you know somebody's going to be gay. You know? I went and saw the football team. One kid, six, seven... 285 pounds in high school. I said, what in the Damn. hell? <laughs> That's the it's genetics. But it's the food. It, it's the, it's the food. Question. It's the food we eat. It's the go food. Ahead, ahead. Hey, Juicy, Juicy hey, Champion. Juicy Champion. That's why they ain't learning nothing. They too busy looking at Miss Parker. <laughs> hey, you guys. I'm finna get ready to get up out of here. Kwame. Hey. Don't forget, I'm gonna text you that um I told what I told you. Oh, I got my phone back. You helped me find it because you made me mad. She said, well, God bless him. I said, you know what? I'm going to check every damn well one more time before I go buy a phone. <laughs> and I found it. Well, I'm going to, you know what I'm talking about, right? What we spoke yep. on earlier. Uh huh. Okay. So make sure you call, okay? Okay. All right. I'll take you. It's nice talking to you all, uh, everybody. Juicy, uh, Tizzle, Reginald, uh, you Champion. Too, I can't Party. see the guy at the bottom, his name, but it was nice talking OG. to you guys. Oh, it was nice talking to you guys. All right, Kwame, I'll talk to you later. Good okay. talking to you too. All right, man. Fire. She think I was lying. Hello, man. sister. Oh, uh, but what you get out of here, uh, Juicy? So I'm, I'm glad I have all you men on the panel. I wanted because I've been wanting to ask you guys this for a long time. Like especially you, Kwame, um, and some of the other guys that are uh, always coming to chat, like Rare Money and Biz. Um, like watch, you know, watching you guys and listening to you guys over the years. When I hear you guys talk about raising sons, um, I always really tune in, obviously, because I'm raising a son. And even though my ex-husband, he's he lives across the country, so it's not like he can really be here. So a lot of what I'm doing, I'm doing on my own. And um, one thing I know Champion was saying, you were talking about giving advice. But honestly, what I feel like um, from um, like a, a, a young man and a mother, um, I think... I don't know, but sometimes I feel like we're past that stage. Is it, you know, like, you know, that point that young men get to where they're not really listening to their mother. Okay. Um, have, did any of you guys is, was that kind of like a similar situation when you were coming up? Um, and how was your mother able to get through to you? All right. Let me, let me, let me answer that question. You see, kids go through phases. Parents have to understand this. A one-year-old and a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, 16, they're not the same. They go through phases, all right? They're going to get to a point where all they've been told is what they should do. Sit down, shut up, go do this, go do that. They're going to get to the point where they want to do what they want to do, all right? When they get to that right. point, the only thing you could do from that point is to give advice and directions. That's all you can do. You're not, uh, they don't have a leash that you could put on their leg and tie it to the wall and then always go over there and check it. No, we, we passed that. So the only thing you could do from that point on when they want to make their own decisions and act crazy because that's a normal behavior with kids, advice and advice and advice and also a role model, okay? Find a role model figure, somebody that they will respect, somebody that they will look up to, right? In a positive light, have that person around to also help with mentoring them and showing them something different. You see, kids like who listens to them, who let them do certain things, but also somebody they can trust and respect at the same time. They don't like everybody just want to tell them what to do and don't do this, don't do that. They want to get a leeway. They want to fuck around a little bit because they're kids, but they like people who let them kind of fuck around, but help them with advice and also let them know when shit ain't right. Because I know growing up, that's how I was. I was always around that uncle that let me do certain things, but also put my ass straight. 
when I'm going too far. And that's just my thing on that, you know. Can I chime in? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is what my father said when he had problems with people getting to what he would say, his wife's face. He would just let them know, you know, that was my woman long before she was your mother. And if you get up in her face again, me and you're going to have some problems. And we knew that he was serious about that. Get into her face one more time, and we're going to have some problems. And then my mama would step back, and daddy just take care of the shit. You know what I'm saying? So when you're talking about a mentor, this, that, and another, there's no better mentor that a kid going to understand than his father. So it's important for a father to be in their life. You know what I'm saying? But that way he can do that discipline that that young son needs. Same thing with my son. I told him the same thing. You know, when we young, so we ain't going to do, you know, you didn't think it was appropriate for your parents to do it. You find yourself doing basically similar things that your parents said. And I found myself saying the same thing to my son. You know, your mother, that was my woman for you. That was my woman before she was your mother. You get back in her face, we're going to have some problems. Now, when you're a certain age, problems don't mean that we're going to do a physical thing, this, that, and other. Problems could mean that, well, you ain't going to have access to the car. All problems could mean that you might have to get up out of here. And then, if, you know, kids these days, you know, they start talking about, well, you know, we'll, dad, we'll just call the police on you. Okay. Well, we're going to have some problems before you leave. And I'm going to tell the police when they come and get you, keep you. But if they do bring you back, we're going to have some more problems when you get back. John, you pick what you want to do. And when you just strict and you let these young men know that you ain't bullshitting, then you'll be straight enough. And then again, my father also told my mother, when she was letting us come in late at night and this, that, and another, wait a minute now, you know, I told these boys they had to be home at 11. I mean, at 12 o'clock, no later than that. You've been sneaking them in for the last year or two. I'm from a big family. So they had that conversation. You know what I'm saying? And if you came back at 12 or 1, you sit on the porch or you went back to where you, you went. Look, after we realized that he was serious, we just didn't even come home. We had to deal with the consequences the next day. Parents got to be consistent. And they got to be consequences to young people's behavior. Right now, it's, there's no consequences to most people's behavior. Right. You know we're talking about accountability. We know anybody going to do, get a, if you get away with something, you're going to keep doing it. When it's consequences, you're going to change your, your method of doing things. That's just human nature. Whether it's your daughter, whether it's your son, whether it's the father, whether it's the mother. You know, if they get away with certain, they know they... It's wrong, disrespectful. They're doing it on a consistent basis of getting away. It's no need for them to change their behavior. So you got to put something in front of them to let them know, we ain't even playing here. We ain't even playing here. Yeah. But my father, realized, my father realized one thing. He dealing with my mother and all the kids. You know what I'm saying? Anytime the kids want to take over that house, we probably could have. What my mother and father got together and they realized, you know what, we need to work together on this. Yeah. You know, when everybody was under brother, 10, brother it was real. Hicks, we might be, brother Hicks, we might be kidding each other or something. Like that. That's how I feel. But let's go to uh, uh, brother uh, Tisdale One. How you say his name? Tizzle. It's Listen. cool. Hey, look, Kwame, I done been on here a couple times. You you get better every time. Yeah, That's I, all I, I, I can ask. ask you. You know, I, I be fucking up names. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but look, this this what I'm gonna say, right? I do agree with what um champion was saying. Like you for sure, you definitely need to uh, for a male, right? Growing up, you definitely need to have some type of role model. But I would say this, that I don't hear a lot of males say about raising a male to a woman. You must show yourself respect. If you don't show yourself respect, how can you expect your son to show you respect? It's just like if you, not you, I'm talking to women in general. If you got 10 different uncles that ain't they uncles coming around. You got these cousins that they don't know about. If they can just see a man come in and out your house, talk to you, disrespect you, this and that, of course, it's going to be a disconnect between the mother and his son because his role models are disrespecting his mother. So what do you think he's going to learn? Thanks. So I would say that's a big issue that we probably don't talk on. And I would say, um, Mr. Hicks and Champ did such a good point on the other spots. I would just say that uh, uh, the women need to respect themselves also because I would say it's a level of fault in that because we can't just be, and I'm saying parents, if it's men too, for 
girls or they sons too. We can't be sitting out here just going to the club or smoking weed or whatever it may be. That's your vice all in front of your kids and thinking they ain't going to pick up on that or at some degree want to try it or something else. So I would say as a single mother, they should have more respect for themselves. And I think that would go a lot further. Like you can't always be listening to like it's a female. I watched them earlier two females with a kid, a baby, the baby couldn't have been even two years old. And that, it, it's the little thing that's going around on Instagram. If you see your friend getting rich, baby girl, whatever. And they bopping with the kid in they arm. Like, that's like, mm. what do you think that kid going to grow up to be? Probably an mm. animal. If you treat them like that, not having no respect for yourself. So I would say that's a big thing to touch on. Facts. Facts. The bottom line is you, you can't be your kid's friend. You're their parent. Act accordingly. I, I don't agree with friends. that. I don't agree I, with that part right there. Uh, he, I don't agree with that. He, you, he just, he just you don't want your life. He, it's not even a matter whether you're a friend or anyone else. Let's, let's, let's let the other OG get oh. his one out. Did you get yours off, OG? No, but I agree with the OG before me, and I agree with the first thing the champion said and the other brother said, too. Uh, yeah. Me, you definitely got to listen and you got to talk to your kids and be honest. And you got to realize that your kids mature at different ages. It's like some kids, they might mature a little faster, some a little bit slower. You got to recognize that and treat them accordingly. When I say be honest with, especially if you and the mother is not together, you know, just don't lie to them, you know. Uh, if you say you're going to come, come. If you say, you can't come. You can't come. Just don't lie to them because you, you want them to trust you. And at the same time, you want to show them, you know, that they can come to you and, and, and talk to you. And they know that they can, they know you're going to be there. You got a, a habit of lying to them and disappointing them. they be like, oh, man, don't even ask him. They'd be telling the mom, don't even ask him. He, right. he don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then that's going to cause problems there. And from a mother's point, a male son, you need some type of man around. I mean, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but it is what it is because Fact. you could be the Fact. best mother in the world. You, it's just certain things because because you, your children start to notice you before they can even talk. You know, they learn. They know your your kids know you better than you do because they know every every facial expression. They know what you mean. You can talk to your kid without even saying a word. So right. uh, like as as they mature, they know you more. Some push the strings, because I know I push the I push my grandparents' strings because that's who raised me and my great grandmother. I push their strings. After I realized it, they all love me though. I was bad, but I didn't I did bad things, but I wasn't bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. You know, I wasn't a, a real bad guy, but you know, I did push the envelope a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Everybody was right. I agree with everybody. And this was a nice panel, a nice conversation. I appreciate being part of it. Okay. And, and, and my two cents is I agree with all of you, brothers. I agree with some of your points on each and every last one of y'all. I see my baby mama back here. Love, Blaze. Hey, baby mama. But uh, I, I agree with all of y'all, especially uh, Brother Hicks. Um, and I'll speak directly towards your situation, uh, Miss Juicy Fruit, because I know you said your husband or your ex-husband is across the country. But I do share the sentiment with Brother Hicks. Um, little boys need discipline and they need consequences. And some of us little boys know how to manipulate our mothers. We learn how to manipulate women first by our mothers. Y'all think we're so cute when we're little. We're the best cuddly, woodly little things. And you raise us like y'all are our friends or something. And then it gets to an age where we're bigger. We have interest in women. And a lot of times we're able to talk and manipulate our way out of consequences. And you can't let that happen to young boys because that's not what's going to happen in real life. When I do something wrong, there's a consequence for it. And I know you think you're short or whatever, but if you raise them right, he'll respect you. If he does something wrong, get on his behind. Uh, and I do think you need to get some sort of uh, male mentor or, or some type of guidance, whether it be an uncle, a coach, or somebody 
that right. can talk to him and teach him things uh, that's involving manhood. There's going to be certain things he's going to be embarrassed about coming to you with. And since he don't have his father, he don't need to be bouncing it off little teenagers his age. He needs right. to be bouncing something off somebody who's older. Uh, his father is supposed to be his roadmap. That's somebody who's been here before to guide him. Uh, that's going to tell him the truth and don't want nothing from him. But since he's not here, you're going to have to find a mentor, whether it be through the church or whatever. Uh, like I said, my coach, not my coach, but my mentor was instrumental in my life. And my mom gave him the green light. If he get out of line, you know, kick his ass. And and that helped me because uh, my brothers went to prison and, you know, my dad went to prison and my, my brothers went to prison. And that's who was like filling in the gap uh like my dad, like my older brother was making sure you're going to do your homework. You're going to make sure you're good. Anything I disrespected my mom about or came in late, my brother would enact the justice. My mom would too. Um, and she did not spare the rod. She made sure she came with that. You're going to respect and you're going to learn consequences and you're going to learn discipline and out, anything outside of that, you know, it was no, it was no talking. And we got to get back to raising young men like that. We are raising strong young girls, but unfortunately, we're coddling the boys. We're giving them free Jordans. We're giving them free things, and they're learning that you can get something for nothing. You should not give a boy nothing without him doing something for it. I don't care what it is. If he starts liking shoes, if he starts liking a game, it needs to be some sort of chore or some sort of work in order for him to receive that gift or that thing that he wants. Ain't no freebies because there's no freebies for men. A woman can go to the club or go to a bar with just her ID. She can leave there full and not thirsty. A man that don't know how to go get it, he's going to end up being a robber or he's going to end up being something worse. So you have to teach them those little things early. You want some money? Go rake the grass and I'll give you some money. You want to go to the movies? Go do this. And then this is what they got to earn it. And a lot of times you don't, these women don't make them earn it. And unfortunately, sometimes men do it too, uh, because we get a lot of money and we think we don't want our kids to suffer like we did. So we just give them stuff. That is the worst thing you can do. You got to teach them how to get it. You see a lot of rich parents that raise shithole sons because they gave them everything. Facts. So yeah, that's what we got to make these kids earn it. And so for you, I, like I say, the two things, Make sure you you stay on his ass. Don't worry about how short you are. You gotta you gotta rough him up, rough him up. But then be honest with him in conversations. You know, tell him some of the things you went through as a teenager, your shortcomings, because he'll respect you more because of that. And that's why I agree with OG when he said that my mom was honest with me when I was at a certain point and I did certain things. She would open up and say, "Well, I did such and such at your age. This is that." I didn't want to hear that, but it made it a little more personal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm being quiet, but I'm listening to all of you. But that's my two cents. Okay, thank you guys, and I really thank you so much. I, you know, I'm. I'm realized, uh, like I said early on, that it really wasn't something that I could do on my own. Um, and I know some people have. I've been seeing the comments, and people were like, "Where's your man at?" Well, you know, again, I, you know, personally for me, um, I don't have any other men around my children. I just don't feel comfortable. You know. Uh, with that. And so, you know, if it's not his father um, or somebody that I can really, really trust, um, you know, I'm not comfortable. So, you know, so I know, you know, Kwame, you were fortunate enough to have a mentor, um, you know, or somebody. And so, you know, the, in these days and times, I'm, you know, I'm always praying that God will send somebody um, that's closer, um, you know, that, that can be more hands on with him and, and you know, just kind of take him to the places that you know, I just know as a woman, I, I may not be able to take him, um, you know, but I, I will definitely take all of your advice. Like I said, I listen to you guys all the time. Um, you know, Kwame, I know when you were talking about your son, like early on and when he was with you and stuff. So, you know, I'm always listening to what you guys say. And um, I thank you for answering my question. All of you. Thank you. But you, I just want you to be encouraged. You got this. I, I don't want people to think right. you can't raise a kid. By yourself because it's definitely doable just be mindful of the things uh that you would want from a man you want a brave mm -hmm. man you want a man that know how to fix things and do things so uh put them in wood shop put them in things that men do 
And uh, he could be a well-rounded man as long as you're mindful of what men do. Yes, I'm. I'll be making them work, but I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna stay on them. I know sometimes I have a tendency to be a little soft on them, but the older he gets, the bigger he gets, the more I realize, you know, yeah, I can't. I can't do that to him uh, because it's not doing him any justice. So right. you know, I yeah, I you know, I definitely agree with all of you. I gotta stay, stay on him and stay on him tough. Is he is he in any boxing or martial arts? No, no, but he looks like he is. He's cut the heck up. I don't even know how he got so big and muscular, but no, he's not in he's not in any sports or anything. Put put him put him try try boxing or martial arts with him. Uh because a lot of these young men, the insecurity level, uh I know women don't want to hear this, but it changes a little boy life the moment he gets punched in the face the first time. Fact. Absolutely. Fact. It, Fact. Gives, it gives you a level, <laughs> a level of respect. Because I, at a certain age, you know, I thought I was bad to the bone. It just testosterone hit me. I just thought I could do anything. And we're never as bad as we think we are because when we get that first hit, we learn something. Fact. So, and that's what they missing in this day and age. Somebody that's just going to go ahead and just you know, let me go ahead and tighten you on up right quick. Right. And and I'm um, using me, for example, you know, before I even, you know, became a champion or whatever, you know, I used to think boxing was just, you know, you know if you Hey, I gotta throw that in there. But anyway, you know, I used to think boxing was just, you know, if you're strong on the street and you just, you know, you could outpower somebody, you could go in and fight. But when I got in there, I was getting my ass whooped, you know, when I first started, you know, I'm like, oh, man, this shit is different. So I have to learn this shit. You know, my, that first hit, you said it, man, it humbled the hell out of you, especially if it's coming from somebody that you think you can beat up. And then they they, they go ahead and show you how this shit works. So I learned it, you know, and I mastered it. And then I started fighting for real, you know. So what you're saying is right. Put him where there is competition. Put him where he feels like he has to be better than somebody. You know, wherever a child sees competition, it brings the best out of him. You know, they feel like, okay. Well, you preach it now, boy. You preach it. Yeah, they feel like, man, I, c I could do this. I could, if, I'm, if I'm better than this guy, I'm, you know, when there's competition, there's drive, right? And so, we need that. And, and, and tell a, ch a champion, a part of that testosterone that we have, it's like an energy dump. It's like my dog. I, if I don't take her out on two walks, she's going to be a bad dog up in this house. And us right. men, we get all that testosterone. That competition, we need that. We right. Need that. Right. As a young person, th there's always, you know, uh, joy in competition, especially if you're doing good and you're getting, you know, people here and there, you know, your name is out there, you know, oh man, that guy right there, you know, it make you feel good and it make you respect your parents even more because they put you in there. They gave you that opportunity. You see, yep. so now you have something else to look forward to instead of just yep. going home and playing a video game. You have something else mm -hmm. more exciting. You know, yep. now your mom can come out and watch you. Your friends can come out. Everybody's talking yep. about you. So I think that's a good thing as well. You don't have to be boxing. It could be anything else. That has competition where you yeah. feel valuable. You feel like, okay, if I show up, everybody's looking. You know, if I don't show up, everybody's like, oh man, where he at? They mm -hmm. feel like they're needed somewhere. You know, so yeah, that's a good thing. My daughters, my daughters hated karate when I first put them in karate. They mother hated karate. I mean, I kept telling them, look, you trying to teach them to wear little old clothes, to cheerlead and dance, and it could be pedophiles in this room. Uh, well, mm -hmm. why not teach them how to protect? one of the most prized possessions in the world that can start a war. I ain't going to be around all the, all the time. They need to learn a baseline of first how to protect themselves. So when my daughter went in there, she was crying through the whole first week. But then when she actually learned, she learned how to punch. She learned how to kick. And I remember the look on her face when she broke her first board and had her first uh, match. It was the most uh, exciting feeling she ever had, like when she broke that board. And when she got in that fight and she won. So mm. uh, that's, a, that's kids need to see those little lessons because you can't raise a, a, a young man, a young prince to be a king if he haven't had little tests throughout his life. He's not right. entirely tested. Most of these kids, they shoot so many guns because they're just afraid for the internet. <clears throat> they're afraid. Facts. They can't fight and they're afraid to lose. And losing right. a fight is, is not a bad thing. You get to go right. home to mama. <laughs> Facts. No, that's facts. That's facts. That's facts. You know, when I grew up, we didn't have guns when I grew up. Like, we didn't yeah. have access to guns. Like, you know, it wasn't like out there the way it is now. Yeah, you have how to fight you boys the way got them switches everywhere now. Like, damn. Right. right. You know, you have to fight the way out of everything. Women. Them niggas got skinny jeans on. How you gonna fight with skinny jeans? <laughs> and it's like, 
my thing was it was honoring the fact that you wasn't scared to get down. Like when I grew up, it we would they would they would jump you if you was from a neighborhood and you didn't get down and everybody else fighting you didn't. Oh no, it was on. You could Oh yeah, up. that's a fact. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, like I say, and another thing I want to say is this there's no pressure in you trying to find a man or don't you know this should not put you under any kind of pressure to find somebody you know what i mean there, there's no pressure you know take your time like you've been doing and somebody oh, will come along yeah you know? i mean like like uh tizzle the one said you know i think it's important as women you know that I, I was always very careful about that i didn't want my children uh to see a bunch of people coming back and forth as a matter of fact they really have never seen anything like that i don't have anybody right. in a home or you know what I mean? Just because I want them to feel safe and stuff. But I, you know, I think <clears throat> so. No, I don't feel under pressure, but I, I am, like I said, I'm um, accepting of the fact that I may need some additional help from outside. So it's and, either and, that and or what? he through may have to sports, go to his daddy. Guess what? Not to cut you off. Through those mm-hmm. sports, that will that will solve a lot of your problems. Martial arts. Right. Helped my some type of sports. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like when my daughter hit martial arts. Maybe the I noticed the difference like three months in, she started getting different belts. But after that first year, she was a total different kid. She wasn't as loud with other girls. She wasn't as aggressive because she knew she was going to fuck them up. And that's the long and short of it. When you teach them a discipline how to fight, it does the opposite. They don't really fight because they know they fight. I've heard you say that before. I've heard you say I've that. Heard. It does the total opposite. Yeah, It'll give you a long pass until you go too far. Right. Yeah. You know, it don't excite me to fight a regular motherfucker. Like it doesn't excite me to do that because I don't even know how to do that at this point. You know what I mean? Everything is so organized when it comes to you know boxing. So I can't go out there in the street and want to fight somebody. Like, and plus that's that's free. They don't pay for that. You know. But if, if I'm fighting for real, I'm getting paid. So why would I go fight for free? And it doesn't excite me to do it anyway. You see what I'm saying? So what he's saying? Something they don't see and damn near kill him. <laughs> yep. Right, you might hit him the wrong way. Now you got the police behind you, you know. So, you know, I, Look, when you learn champ, how to fight, you running you around there giving out the Mike Tyson hooks. You got to be careful out there yeah, in the street. You can't give no Mike Tyson hook in the street. Hey. You gonna hurt somebody for real. I've been tempted. I've been tempted so many times. I can't tell you how many times because when people see you fight, their mind is telling them they can beat you up, yeah. even though they never been to the boxing gym a day in their life. But something in their brain is telling them, man. Mm-hmm. Man, all you gotta do is take him in the ring and show him. That happened to me in DC. I'm telling you, I was like, it was a short dude. He about five, eight, five, nine. He was a boxer, Sean Bay Mitchell. I was talking that shit. And boy, look at here. It didn't work out in my favor. I got hit in the side and I thought my whole side went dead. My arm went dead. <laughs> <laughs> I had to the bathroom. I couldn't move. It was not a good feeling, boy. Them DC <laughs> niggas ain't no joke, boy. I went to Howard. I, I know. I was- Man. He, he set me up the whole time. I kept saying, I could just keep you back with a jab. You can't do that. And of course, we wasn't going full speed. I was just throwing it out there. But right. He kept saying, no, you got to snap it back. And I'm like, what the fuck is snap it back? Yeah, snap and that. I, yeah, so I would get it. I'd go slow. Man, he dipped to the right and hit my side. Boom. <laughs> and boy, I went down like a sweet Georgia pie. <laughs> Every know what I'm talking about. That shit hurt, boy. I ain't never felt no shit like that, boy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about liver punch, man. That shit, it had to be something. All I know is I, my whole side went dead. Come on, and, and that's because you never felt like that before. Like you never been hit like and that. I before. Never want to feel like that again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after a while, it feel different. After Good a while, morning. after Good a while, morning. it feel different. Morning, love, morning. How you doing, baby? My mom, where the kids at? Good morning. I told you they was on a field trip. Now listen. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Kwame, for um allowing me. I, I'd like to switch the topic just for a second. Um, not necessarily switch the topic, but um, ask some, ask a question about a young man who is, if I can paint the picture, please, um, 26, right? Um, he had, he he's aware of his biological father, but there was a, another man that stepped in when his biological father was not um, emotionally available, right? However, this young man goes through an emotional battle. So for the men that are on the panel, right? How do you, excuse my alarm, so sorry about that. How do, how do, How do you address that emotional battle that the young man may be going through um, 
shown a lot of love, shown a lot of um, uh, gratitude for the emotional struggle, right? However, um, therapy is not, um, he's not willing at this point for therapy. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out from the men on the panel, right? How, how, how would we address that? Like, how does this mom address her son who's um, obviously missing that paternal father that decided, listen, another man took my place and has been there, you know? Hold on. So just so I'm not confused. Okay. I don't want to be confused. Did you so you saying the twenty six year old is the one going through the emotional stuff, like yearning for the father, or it's another guy stepped in and now the father's coming back and the father feels away? No, you're correct on the first one. The tw- the young man is yearning for that paternal father. Okay, so is if I may say. Around- is, is the paternal father around, or is he is he not around? No, he he. When when the young man reached out to him uh, years ago, his paternal father said, "A man has already stepped in and taken my place, so you deal with that hmm. man." Holy okay. shit! Okay, so let me let me say this from a realistic. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a realistic answer, right? Okay. The first thing is. At what age did the second person come into the picture? That's number one. From day one. From day one? Yes. Okay. If the second person came into the picture from day one, I will assume that that kid have been knowing the second person from day one. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. So how can you yearn for something that you don't even know existed? If there was no, uh, let's say, for example, it wasn't like, okay, he came in from day one and in between times, the real guy will come in then bounce off and then you know what i mean if that was the case then i can understand that but if the other guy never showed up and the second guy came in from day one then if he's yearning for his real father that means something is being told to him as to maybe i'm doing too much maybe your real father couldn't do this for you or maybe you know what if you're you know why don't you go ask your real father to do maybe there is something that is being said to him in a negative way where he feels like somebody's being either less appreciated or he's not appreciating what is being done to him because his real father is not the one doing it. That's what I'm kind of picking from that. No, uh, and, and you're somewhat right, but a little bit off, right? So the young man found out about his paternal father right. was seven, right? He's now 26. So he found out about his paternal father when he was seven. He was, he found know, out from- right, he found out from his mom. Right. And him, his mom and I I don't want to call him a step. I mean, his father. Right. They they told him about his paternal father. Right. Like this man was young. He wasn't ready to be a father. um, So he decided to just step back. Right. So it's the emotional struggle that this young man continues to go through. It's the yearning from talking with him it's the yearning of you know why didn't my paternal father want to be there and when he found out about me and he reached out to his paternal father it was still a resistance there of I can't step in now because another man has already taught you loved you you know Do do you have a way to reach out to his paternal father no. Oh, because I'm saying that would be the best thing for him. But that that's natural. My godson did that for his mother. His mother uh, wasn't there for the first three years of his life. Uh, dad did everything for him. Well, three, four years of his life. Uh, and then he found out about his dad, uh, his mom uh, later on. And then now he lives with his mom. But he always wanted that nurturing. I, I guess these kids just feel that pull. Uh, and they really want both of y'all, but whatever parent is not there, they yearn for that parent, I believe, uh, because there's an emptiness that they feel. And uh, I just think that if the if he can't find his real father and, and have him step up, he's going to maybe have to do a little bit of counseling. Because uh, right. I know some guys that the stepfather felt that void and they were A-OK. The stepdad taught them everything that a father would teach them. Mm-hmm. 
So maybe stepdad is uh like not like champion is saying like he's saying something, but just when when it's not your kid, there's a different type of level of connection and love that you feel for that kid. Mm-hmm. Not to say he's disrespecting him or doing anything wrong, but when it's your biological child, there's a Nate, there's a spiritual pull towards that child. Right. And uh, you know. And that's what I was saying. So the young man, he's like, counseling therapy is not for me. And what I was explaining to him is you may think that it's not for you, but the level of misunderstanding or confusion and hurt that you are feeling, it will continue to affect you until you professionally address it. Now, there hasn't been um, a time of Uh, bad talk on his paternal father, right? Um, No one has spoken bad about him. They just explained to the young man the reality of it. He was young when he got your mother pregnant. He wasn't sure about his responsibilities or if he could handle it as a father, right? So he chose to step back. Love. Did y'all did they explain that to him at 26 or did they explain that to him at seven years old? Because it's a di- big impact on how that can hit at seven opposed to a 26 year old man. So we've been talking with him since he was seven on and off. Right. We started at seven when I found out about the conversation and I was asked, OK, where how do we deal with this? My suggestion was. Um, as honest as you all can be age appropriately as this young man grows would be the best thing. The other thing is if you all can help it, because I know that we have our own emotions and feelings about things, if you can help it, try not to um, bash the person that's missing. Just state what the facts are, you know, however you may feel, you know, uh, he was young enough to have, you know, relations with this woman, but didn't know how to be a father. Okay. Those emotions will not do the conversation any good. So we, they started at seven, um, age appropriate conversations on and off, right. Um, around 15, the young man reached out to his biological father, right. They were emailing back and forth and, his biological father explained to him, listen, I knew about you. Um, I knew that your mom was pregnant. I knew that she had you. But when I came to the hospital, Buddy was there. And Buddy told me, you know, you were his kid. So I just said, you know what? Oh, okay. Oh, so, so okay. You know, now you're telling now the juice. Now, now I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, getting. Oh, what, what, I was trying, what I was, what I was trying to do is just be kind of as quick as possible. You yeah. know, I want to take up a lot of time, and I do appreciate. It. No problem, but, but yeah, it, see that man. I was just wondering what the hell was going on. Why? Yeah. Why, why if given the opportunity, he didn't want to see his kid? Because a lot mm-hmm. of times there's a fight, and the men don't want to fight. Right. Uh, but if she, if he has the opportunity. Um, but he has some res- he has some resentment because he was probably hurt. Mm-hmm. He might need to go to counseling so he could be a better man for his kid. Yeah, but I love. I think the twenty six year old was traumatized because we can argue right at that. I, well, I can put up an argument that that's not age appropriate. At seven years old, you might not need to be telling the kid who his real parent is, who is not, because that man done already stepped up. Mm -hmm. And as you say, he's been around since forever and he's still around. Mm -hmm. So we could that probably traumatize that little boy that end up growing into a man thinking, why am I not accepted? And -hmm. then we keep having these conversations with a little boy that doesn't understand. And all he might be feeling is rejection. Mm -hmm. And then his dad doubles down on that at the age of 15, right before the age of another hit of puberty for men as Mm -hmm. little boys growing into teenagers and then you now he gets to hear his his real father say for one reason or another i don't want you that boy was traumatized and i will say this most men aren't fond of talking to a therapist now they might find talking to somebody therapeutic but a complete stranger and all this and that Mm -hmm. i i i 
even though it might be the best, most people still have to have some type of bond with you or some friendship or some relationship to want to open up and talk to you. Like it's still a stranger. Like they can take my, even though we know professionally, they're not supposed to speak on what I'm saying, but mm -hmm. like you just a stranger, you mm -hmm. can go say anything. You can judge me. You can look at me a certain way. Like, these are things we got to understand. And then, but I would say overall, that boy was traumatized. And I maybe when y'all told him at age seven, his daddy was, you know, left or whatever the case may have been. That might have been the, the, you know, the straw right there that broke the camel back for such a young age. Right. So, and, I, and I think, oh, it's not to cut you up. I think only, only I mean, his father, I think only his father can, can correct what's going on with him. It's like the brother said before me, it, that hurt because I've been <laughs> in a similar situation and that hurt. It, it made me bitter for a whole amount of time. I actually hated that parent in mm -hmm. retrospect, mm -hmm. you know, but we was able to, you know, like reconnect before they passed on. Mm -hmm. So I know exactly how that kid would feel. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that can really, really help him is uh, is his, his dad accepting him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's never going to be happy. He might put on a mask right. for therapies or whatever, but he ain't never going to be happy. And right. I, because I wasn't until, you know, I was able to identify with that parent. And right. can you imagine that though? You yes, somebody absolutely. tell you that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I was told that, but not in the same way. You know, I was just introduced as not who I was, but another family member, not mm -hmm. a child. Right. Man, that hurt me. So that's when you I know, so I can identify with how he feels. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that the parent is the only person that, you know, can really correct that. You right. would give therapy a try. I wish it was success. But uh, I think you would it, probably get better results if you could, you know, sort of forge some type of relationship with you, like with the father. Yeah. Here's what I think listening. made him mad. Wait, what wait. made him mad was the father actually said to him, I came when you was born mm -hmm. and somebody else was there. Mm -hmm. So that's what did the damage. I came when you was born. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I wasn't even there when you was born. I actually came mm -hmm. and somebody else was there. That's what the father told him. So yeah. that alone is enough to do the damage. Yes. Because he will feel like if my daddy came, why didn't you give me over to him? Why didn't you sign me over to him? Why would you let him come and walk away when he had the opportunity that right then and there? That's mm -hmm. what he, he's going to be thinking. If right. he said, I came and, did it, and, and and somebody else was there and mm -hmm. I felt like, well, I'm not needed. So I think that's what really is the mm -hmm. root of this, of this problem. It's not really, everything else is, is, is a topping on the cake. But the root of the problem is when I was born, my real father came and he saw somebody else there and then he got mad and left. So he's going to be saying, mom, why didn't you let him take me? Why didn't and you let him it. be involved from that point? That's and what not, he's going to be asking himself. And not to save the father on no level, but let me ask this. When he came in there, did he know he was the father or did this other guy potentially think he was there? Because like you said, he was there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Did the father really know he was the father? Was it up in the air? Because we know all these things could change the gravity of this situation by like like a big amount. Okay, so let me clear that up, right? So everybody knew who was the father. The biological father knew that that was his child. The other father knew that that was not his child, okay? The only thing was that the biological father uh, what do you say? When he came to the hospital, once the baby was born, when he came to the hospital, right, the other man was there. So apparently him and the mom, the biological father and the mom parted ways. Um, she said once he explained to me that he did not want to be a father, he was too young. What she said was, I just didn't push the issue. I told him, um, OK, and she moved on. Right. So there was another man that wanted to court her. And she said, listen, I'm already pregnant. So this is what this is. So everybody knew, gave, gave a heads up. Right. Pushing forward to this young man being born. And now he's seven. And there was um, I don't know how they. Oh, oh, oh weird. The father. 
right? No, wait. The biological father gave the father a traffic ticket. Oh, shit. Listen, right? So the the father, right, he was doing some type of, uh, I don't know if he read a, ran, read a red light or didn't stop, but he recognized the biological father, right? So he gave him a ticket. I, I, he was a police officer, so he gave him a ticket. He goes home. He says, wow, this guy is in the vicinity of my child, you know? So then he was like, okay, Lovelace, how do I have the conversation? And I was like, what conversation? Well, oh, Jesus. What conversation? Well, you know, I saw a police officer on the street and remember that that was your daddy? What conversation? What are y'all doing? So what I explained to them was, Whatever you introduce to this child has to be age appropriate. So they started off with, listen, um, I am not your biological father, right? But I love you like you are my own. I've been there since you were born. I was in the delivery room, okay? Okay, so that was one step. The second step was the the boy when he turned 15 you know this internet so he looked for the name found the name found the person found the picture everything correlated right reached out and said what he was told I was told that you are my birth father I was told that you were young you were in college and you weren't ready to be a father I was told that my dad and you met with each other at the hospital or you ran into each other I was also explained that you were hurt by that and you stepped back. Where, where can we start a, how, where and how can we start a relationship? So the biological father said, I don't know how to start a relationship with you. There is a man that has already been there since day one. I don't, I don't know how to start a relationship with you. And I would really like to just be left out of the dynamic. So in come in step me again, and I'm like, listen, young man, right? I'm talking to him age appropriately, of course, understanding that he's traumatized, understanding that he's hurt. However, now he's 26. And what he and I continue to talk about is the internal pain that he feels. If the biological father does not want a relationship with you, we can't force it. But what we have to do is try to help to heal you. And what that's what I'm asking men on the panel. This young man has a beautiful spirit, right? He's done the sports. He's done the martial arts. He graduated from high school. He did um, uh, all of those good accomplished things, right? However, this yearning that he feels, what the only thing I could tell him is that I have taken you to the point I, I can't go past this point. I don't know what else to tell you. If your biological father does not want to have a relationship with you, we have to help to fix you, help to heal you so you don't walk around with this pain, this ache, because honestly, we can't force anyone to do anything. You put it out there. You asked about a relationship. Unfortunately, he said no. So we can't force that we can only control what we can control what i so can he do. still want a relationship with his daddy now correct okay so here's here's what i would say on this okay the biological father right yes and the mother right yeah maybe they had a rough relationship or some kind of you know rough mm -hmm. going on or whatever nope. Nope. so i think that if there's any kind of beef that they had over whatever mm -hmm. the biological mother must have a conversation with the biological father and apologize to him for mm. whatever mischief or whatever it is that she did or he did or whatever. They need to uh, build a bridge between themselves to begin with and have a very, very open communication and conversation about, okay, I messed up on this end. I messed up on this end. It shouldn't be about debate or you didn't No, It should be about, okay, I messed up on this end. I messed up on this end. I messed up on this end. And then, let him also vent. And then once that is done, now you could bring the kid in. 
okay? At the end of the conversation, okay, are you willing to repair your relationship with this boy? Are you willing? You don't have to be in his life, like, be with me, like, you know, and start fucking with me again. And No, but are you willing to um, have a relationship with this kid? Whichever way you want to have it mapped out, I'm down with it. You know what I mean? Because I'm picking, my spirit is telling me that the biological father and the stepfather have some kind of beef. And that beef was going on before even he was, even while he was pregnant or before he was born or some, some, you know, <laughs> there is something going on. That's what I'm picking out, <laughs> right? Before he was born or something like that. And that beef is still there. You know there. what it was? No, and, 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 no, no, he, gentlemen. No, 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 <laughs> gentlemen. No, I'm sorry to use that tone, but you're, 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 you're going in a different direction. Okay. OK, so I apologize if my tone was too much. However, I want to keep it very plain and very simple. So we so I mean, because this is like one in a lifetime where I can get some information to try to help feed this young man. I'm painting the picture again. There is no mischief between the mother and the biological father. None. No arguments. None of that. Please be clear. OK, he. Okay. When they found out that they were pregnant, okay, he was in college about to graduate. He said, I don't, I can't be a father right now. She said, okay, there was not an argument about it. She let him go. His so way. he said he can't be a father. And then the stepdaddy miraculously was like, okay, that's cool with me. Yes. And then why did you show up at the hospital? The day I was, was just to about to touch on that point too because I must say this, right? I will even not go to the hospital if I don't want to be a father. Not, not even just that, right? If, if because you said I'm just using from what I've acquired from you, you said that everybody already knew. Well, at some point, like me personally, even if I am the biological father, I don't think when my woman is in childbirth or just had childbirth or something like that. I want to see another man that obviously end up being her everything, the guy she sleep with, whatever it may be in that hospital room where my baby is, whether if I knew they was connected or not, like this is a sacred moment right now, but and I'm just throwing that out there. Right. not saying that she right or wrong, nobody right or wrong. I'm just saying how I would feel. And well, if I don't want to be there, I'm not coming to the hospital, period. Like, I don't know how that works. I don't want to be there, but I'm going to come to the hospital anyway to see the kid and then disappear. I don't know how that works. Like, if I don't want to be there, I'm not going to show up. But I'm not going to show up to see the kid and then be like, okay, I don't want to be there. And then go ahead and take off. I don't think that makes sense, if, if you know. Well, so it, he could he could have not wanted... he could have He could have not wanted to be a father... But when the woman decided, hey, I'm having it, he understood that I have to man up. Like, right that's not that's not beyond that's not beyond reason where it's like, oh, OK, well, you are going to have this child. Then I have to man up. Hey, like, hold I on can't one second, bro. Before you continue, just so we know, I don't know if you heard this. He didn't man up, though. Hold on. Hold on. He came to the hospital, right? To do what? Why would he? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let him finish. Let him land right quick, champ. Let him land. Let him land. Once again, gentlemen, once again, here we go. Okay? Everybody knew who the biological father was and who was not the biological father. Okay? I don't want to make this confusing. I want help and understanding for this young man because he is hurting and I am scared for him that if we can't help him fix this ache in some type of way, that it will spiral and continue. And I don't wanna see a, a young black man that has so much potential to go down the wrong path. Black Love, what do you think, I, and I'm I, asking you this, a question to you. What do you think? Yeah, you keep up. saying that everybody knew. You keep saying you keep saying that everybody knew. So if everybody knew, it's obvious that even the biological father, he don't want he right now as we speaking, he don't want to be the father. Right. He came to the hospital maybe to say, okay, I'll give it a go. But once right. he saw the other guy there, just convinced him, you know, to that effect. Right. But if you're saying right. 
in right. the outset that everybody knew, it's it's painfully obvious to me that he don't want to be a father. He's justifying it by, you know, the you know the incident in the hospital that the child is not aware of. Correct. But Facts. um. Facts. I stand on what I said earlier. The only thing that can really get, like get this young man over that is is that man accepting that that's his child and apologizing to him. Mm-hmm. Love, you know, that's the only thing. Has he, Joe, even even if he successfully make it through the therapy, he's still going to have that. It's going to be it stuck in his brain like a splinter, mm-hmm. like a splinter in your finger. That's how it's going to be in his brain. I know. I was sort of. I have a parallel situation. Mm-hmm. Fortunately for me, we was able to, you know, like work it out. So I can understand and I can feel his pain and, and the reason he's grieving. Thanks okay. for listening. Let me ask you this before we get started. And I and once again, if my tone was too much, I do apologize. I just want to make sure that I am painting the right picture so we don't have any confusion. I know that every, I understand rather that everyone has an uh, emotional tie of their own possibly to it. However, the picture that I am painting is exactly how it is. Okay. The man found out that his girl delivered the baby or that Mm -hmm. the young lady delivered the baby. He came to the hospital Once he found out that the other man was there, he stepped back and has not returned. And he gave the young man the understanding that someone else has been there since day one. I don't know how to get create a bond with you. I I, I don't know how to do that. Now, for the young lady, um, there, there was no animosity. She hasn't spoken bad about the biological father. The father of course he's saying listen I love you so what's the yearning for and when what I explained to him was once you all decided to enter in his biological father whether it was name or story you set you both set the precedence mm-hmm. for, for this absent feeling right yeah can I jump in and black thoughts was right on it right when everybody knows Right. However, I just don't know how to help this young man. And he's not willing at this age and stage to go to therapy. But I don't I don't know. how. Well, let me just ask you this question before you take off and anybody can take off. Do you is there any indicator like is he just being sad or do you think that it could be even worse? Like he might do something particular to hurt himself or something like that. Like what energy are you getting that he's giving off where you like I must intervene? All of the above. Oh, God. Okay. So here's my thing. Let's move forward. I don't want to go back and forth. Let's move him forward, right? Today, from today on, right? Okay. I feel like, though, um, you should talk to the biological father in a way to let him understand that, okay, look, man, there's no pressure. Okay. I just want you to be involved in his life, you and him one on one. All right. You're not paying mm-hmm. any child support. Mm-hmm. You're not, you don't have to come and lay with me. We don't have to live in the same mm-hmm. house. I just want you to have a communication line with this kid and then see did where it goes from there. I'm not telling that. you what to do. I'm just begging you respectfully. Mm-hmm. If you can, please mm-hmm. help me do this. If there's one thing you could do for me, I just want you to have an open communication line with this kid. I don't mm-hmm. need child support. Don't come and stay with us if you don't want to. I don't even want you to be with me if, you, if that's not what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You don't have to spend one penny on this kid. I just mm-hmm. need communication and uh, uh, some kind of um, relationship that doesn't mm-hmm. involve you breaking your back because you didn't want to be there in the first place. Right. So that's the kind of way that I would talk to him mm-hmm. to kind of make him go, okay, you know what? I think I should find a way to connect with my kid because at the end of the day, I'm not paying nothing. I'm right. not having to break my back. I'm mm-hmm. not going to move in with him. I just got to talk to him on the phone and maybe meet up with him or hang out with him. Maybe I could be able to do that. So mm-hmm. I think that's the kind of conversation that you should be having with the biological father to kind of get him to see that there's no pressure because some guys, once they hear child support, Oh, they're running with three legs. Mm-hmm. They're running, you know? So, and I don't, I don't want him to get that idea that maybe you're trying to pin his ass with a child support, mm-hmm. you know? So we want to have an open communication, a friendly mm-hmm. one, a warm communication mm-hmm. to let him know that there's no pressure at all. He mm-hmm. can come in and just have an open line with his kid. And then right. another thing is, so we did that. Is, we did we did that at age nine. Okay. okay I'm not, so okay. I so if we, okay. So if you didn't agree, 
if you didn't agree, then the kid himself is 26. All right, yeah. we're not talking about a child, he's a 26 year old kid. Man. Right? So, right. what we can do with him is if there's a uh, where well, you say you don't want to go to canceling or whatever, right? Well, ask him one on one on a mild day, you guys are not fighting or anything, just sit down and ask him, okay, now that your dad don't want to talk to you, and now that you don't want to go to counseling, what do you want to do? And he hear what he has know. to say. He said he doesn't know. He said, mm. he said, with, he said, with respect, you know, I, I'll figure this out. And what I explained to him is when you're, as you're figuring it out, right, what I'm letting you know is that you don't have to do it alone, we're here for you to talk to us. And he was like, yeah, you're real easy to talk to. And I was like, I am. However, I'm also serious about accountability and growth. Okay. So just to piggyback off the statement about the talking with the biological father, we did that, right? He, me, him, and the mom, we sat together and we talked. And what I asked him was, Okay, so there was obviously a misunderstanding at the hospital. Why didn't you reach out to your child's mother? Yeah, why, 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 what stopped you two from having a conversation to bridge this so none of this could have been a factor in this young man's life? So they just didn't. They didn't have a real reason why they didn't reach out to each other. It's, you know, hey, he didn't want to be a dad, so it is what it is. It's like, hey, when I got to the hospital, another dude was there. So it is what it is. And what I explained to them is, do you now understand that you have put a young black man in a situation, thought process of it is what it is. So now this young man at 26 is feeling unwanted. Like we had a conversation the other day and he basically said, I learned that nobody wanted me. It broke my heart because I was like, they all wanted you, honey. They all did. However, sometimes as young adults, we just make effed up decisions and we don't have the proper tools to communicate as we should. And it affects our loved ones. And what I explained to him is this is the furthest I can take you. You, to me, gentlemen, he wants to hurt. And I'm sorry to say that, but to me, it's like, listen, we've been talking for years now, but you want to blame somebody else for the things that you're doing, for the bad behavior, for the, for the recklessness, you know, that you want to try to do, you know, you think it's cool to to mouth off you you're you're taking this mental understanding of if i'm upset everybody around me is going to be upset you're taking this stance of um power that somewhere you felt like you lost it you've never been powerless i when love I, just yes. real quick and that, this is just a, a question for the chat real quick because i see the chat going off and i still want to you know, have some communication with them because I see a lot of people saying that he's older, this and that. Is there an age, do y'all think, where people should just kind of give up on that? Because I want to say something to fellas, right? He can be 26 year old, but how many of y'all niggas don't feel sad about that same little that little bit that done cheated on y'all with somebody else and now y'all sitting there feeling sad, lost, and your emotions, all this and that. And niggas just be like, get over it. You're almost 30 years old. Right. So is it a time that people should get over it like that or what? Like, what what's y'all feeling, chat? Do like I want to hear some of the chat, but continue, love. Go ahead. I, I can't see the comments in the chat room. But Look, that's how you do it. You but let me that? say this. Yeah. Let me let me say this. Okay. With respect to anyone in the chat room that is making a comment. Because I can't see it, so I don't know what you all are saying. So respectfully, I'm going to say this. If anybody in the chat room has ever been hurt, I don't care if you fell down and scratched your knee. I don't care if your feelings got hurt to the core. Each and every one of you understands what hurt feels like. So if you are in the chat room saying get over it, or anything negative, please stop. 
have some compassion for another human. Please, please forgive me for my tone. I just, I, I take Man, issue. speak your truth. I take speak issue your truth. with our people not understanding or even giving one another a little bit of mercy and a little bit of grace. The same little bit of mercy or grace that you would want if these shoes were on you. So anybody in the chat room that is saying anything, get over it. Oh, you 26 now. You ought to been past that. I'm coming to say there is a young black man. Aren't we talking about young black men? Aren't we talking about helping them? Ma'am, ma respectfully ignore the chat. You got a bunch of people that just want something to say in real like Just don't even listen. Everybody know what happens in in real life. Everybody been hurt. Everybody can act like, oh, I'm a super thug and this and that. It's a bunch of buffoonery. Ignore the chat. It, it doesn't even make sense to even address the chat because ha half of them are just in there typing because they have fingers and the other half just want to be followers. And a few who are real with themselves. So I wouldn't even address the chat. It's useless. Love. Black thoughts. Black thoughts. Black thoughts. With respect, you have um, you've been really quiet. You and Kwame, right? And I appreciate this time, Kwame. Thank you. If I get uh, any more long please just let me know. I don't want to, you know, overuse my time. But Kwame I'm, is sleep. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Can I ask you one question, please? Yes. Can I ask you one question? Yes. Do the young men understand the difference between a father and a dad? Because there's a big difference. Do you think he understands the difference between a father and a dad? I'll, I'll ask. I, I don't think I've asked that question. Well, I think I've. I, I think that's. I think that should be the focal point because you start bringing up the past and this, that, another. That's going to just make everybody upset. Why even okay. do this? If he, once he understands what a, a dad is, and it should be no problem. You want to go see your biological father? I'm gonna help you do it, and mm -hmm. I'm spend some time with your biological father. All that back and forth. Mm -hmm. Truly, what I truly believe is this. I believe the two men need it together and they should figure it out. Hey, I'm going to send your son to you. You his biological father. I'm his dad. But I'm going to send him to you. I'll make all the arrangements. And then I'm going to come spend some time with you. Mm. Now, if he had respect for the man that raised him, that's what his loyalty is going to be. That's no mm. disrespect to the father. He wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And bringing up all the stuff from the past, that's, that's throwing gas on fire. You don't right. want to do that. You see, you see the young man already confused. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He he's at the age where he should be able to make an intelligent decision. Mm -hmm. He's getting some buzz from somebody. You know what I'm saying? This ain't your biological father. This ain't he, so somebody. You don't have to be from his mother. You don't have to be from his father. Could be friends, relatives. He's mm -hmm. getting some kind of buzz that's making confusion. Make Facts. things simple. Life ain't as complicated as people tend to make it. Absolutely. If you make things as simple as possible. That young man will find his way. Right, right. And the two, right. The two, once he understands what a dad is, mm -hmm. see, you can love your dad and have respect for your biological father if the, if that respect is warranted. Okay. So let him spend some time with his biological father if that's what he wants. Everybody should say, you know what? Not only we want you to do that, we're going to help you do it. You ever heard of the phrase, um, hell is paved? With good intentions, yes. absolutely. So, 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 check this. When when people are confused, right? A bunch of voices saying different things will make them even more confused. Facts. Uh, a, a good therapist uh, is a is a good un unbiased ear. Uh, a good therapist doesn't insert their ego, their ego, and their complications into something that's already confusing and complicated that's right mm -hmm. and 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 that's the root of the problem everybody a lot of people have told this man different mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and um the root of it is not 
what the father did, if the the the, the guy that didn't want to take responsibility wasn't man enough, or <laughs> if the guy that did take responsibility was man enough. The root of it is is shame. And it's not about anger. It's not about any of that. It's about the shame that was transferred to this youth who grew up with this shame into manhood. Okay. And that's it's, it's very simple. You know, a lot of people will try to add like complex. I, I, I agree with the brother, man. Make keep it simple stupid and that's not a offense to anybody but that's a phrase that they teach in the business world it's called k-i-s yep. keep yep. it simple stupid mm -hmm. and they're telling you they're telling you that keep the thing simple now people adding their two cents mm -hmm. even even and with all due respect sister when you even when you kind of switch the vibration and say he wants to be hurt no nobody wants to be hurt Nobody wants to be in pain. Right. The thing is that well, people are not recognizing the shame that they had, that they transferred upon this child who grew up in this shame into manhood. Mm -hmm. you, know, it's, uh, you can't reverse time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. You, when you I can't made this talk. statement, now, when I made this statement that to me, it seems like he wants to hurt. What right. I what I meant by that was when I talk to the young man, I say, listen, these are the keeping it simple things that happen, right? We can only control the things we are able to control. The past does have an effect on you, but it does not have to be your future. So now that we've graduated to this point, counseling. So respectfully, like, respectfully, oh. respectfully, are you... And this is just a. This is just a. Because there's a lot of veils in the story. Is this a story that you are? Is this something you are assisting with? Correct. Or is this something that you are? Is it you? Something I'm assisting with. Okay. Now let, let me let me let me address that. Okay. Because you you you're saying things to this young man as a therapist. You're taking the position of a therapist. Okay. But, but see, the thing about therapy is it's only as good as, as it only works if the person wants to listen. It only works if the ego wall is broken down. Correct. Facts. And, Facts. And, and a lot of us think that we're adding uh, our two cents, we're adding knowledge in, we're adding our wisdom in, but a lot of times we're adding our ego. Mm -hmm into the mix mm -hmm. and that just makes the situation more confusing because mm -hmm. it has there's there's words words are word the word sound power is is deep and it the, you use the word graduated it hasn't graduated it hasn't graduated into anything because nobody is recognizing the initial shame I'll, you get what me, you can't tippy you can't tippy toe around the initial shame the shame in the man who went to the hospital and saw that there was somebody else in the mix. Now, now, granted, you could say Fact. he was a man or he wasn't a man. He told them he wasn't a man. He told them, I am a young man. I'm trying to do this. I'm going through college. I am not man enough. But that's well, I don't mean. agree with that. And I think and I think to say it. that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me listen. Let me, I've been listening to him talk the entire time. Let me let me let me finish, Elder, because it's a it's a it's a it's a wisdom of what I'm saying. Because I'm I'm not I, I'm telling you that when they asked him the question, he said that he was not ready. He was not ready to man up in that situation. You know, I'm not trying to. Right, touch well, I arrived. I gotta go, man. I, uh, thank you for having me, Kwame. Thank you, panel champion. What's up, bro? What's up, see you, guys. To you, my boy. Be safe right, out there this morning. You looking good this morning, bro? How you doing? <laughs> on, on my way to work. Thank like you. What's up, there? All right, guys. Have a good morning, man. Have a good All morning. Right, have a work, all right, brother. You all take right, it brother. easy. Bless up. Yeah. So all I'm saying is that when we add a bunch of egos into the mix, it makes confusion. You know, the root of it is shame. That shame was transferred to a child. That child grew up into a man 
having that shame. You know, we can say, uh, we can try to force him. We can get frustrated that he's not getting over it. But I mean, that's like the same argument that people make when they tell um, black folks to get over slavery. Yeah. Mm. It mm. don't make sense. Mm. If, if, if you can't get over 400 years of slavery, how is a, 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 a child that was exposed to shame early on and then that grew? That's all he know. He mm. That's a goddamn good, damn good point you mm. just made. Mm. I, I, I like that point, man. I'm not going to lie. Let me just right. chime in. I know the guy has said don't speak to the, to the chat hey, or whatever. Point. Great point. I'm sorry. Great, Great point. Oh, no, absolutely. I must agree, bro. Like, I've never heard that articulated like that. And I heard guys say, like, don't worry about the people in the chat, but let me just keep it a buck. I was just a person in the chat, so I'm going to acknowledge the chat also. I want to ask y'all, if y'all was the guy that was the 26-year-old, what would be y'all's solution? And then now y'all just take off. Y'all can take right back off. What would y'all be looking forward to? But y'all continue. Now, I could, I could, I could help the chat answer that question, you know, because the thing is, you have two situations. You have a situation where you was born, your father is absent, and there is no father, there is no presence of anybody else at all but your mom. Then you have another situation where this kid had the presence of a man from day one, even though his real father wasn't there. So I don't think, uh, in my opinion, that he should be, he should be that messed up to where he feels lonely or left alone or nobody wants you. Because if nobody want you, your mom is the only person that's going to be there, period. But somebody else was there who is not your biological father, and that person was there from day one, and that person did is pretty much being a dad or whatever to you till today. So the idea of nobody want me, that one is out of the window, all right? So um, how I would feel about it is very simple. If I was born in that situation and there was no man around, it was just my mother, I would be mad. I would feel like, okay, you know what? You know, what's going on? But if there's another guy there, I won't feel too lonely. I won't feel too neglected. I won't feel too rejected. That's just how I will feel about the situation. I don't know about everybody else. And we talked on that as well, right? We did. Him and I we spoke on that as well. What about, and we're just, you know, him and I just go back and forth with, I listen to him a lot. And, you know, I jot down some questions and then when he's ready or when our time permits again, I'll ask him about his thoughts on this particular thing. And I asked him that, you know, I hear you when you say you're you feel like you're missing something from somewhere. But what about the man that stepped in when you were born and has been there up until now? And I told him I didn't want him to answer that I just wanted him to think on it and then the next time that we talked right I wanted to hear you know what his reasoning was or what his thought process is on it um, I'm not a therapist however this family trust me because I keep it straight down the middle and I'm not on anybody's side I'm just here to listen and if I can offer anything um, within reason, then I'd like to do that. However, what I explained to this young man was, in my opinion, right, therapy, like a, you, it's, it's time for a professional to step in to help you to, to and I'm going to say my word again, graduate to the next level. And I understand that maybe that graduation word was uh, maybe not to somebody's liking, and that's okay. But we do level up. And we do graduate from different things. He understood what it was. He graduated from that. He talked about it later on. He graduated from that stage. So don't take don't take my words out of uh, context. And maybe I should, you know, rephrase them because it's different levels to every stage, right? But we have gotten to the level where I feel like this young man does need um, a professional therapist. I just. I'm just looking for. So, so my my question is, what did he graduate? And since we since we since that's the that's the nerve. What did he graduate into? This is what I'm trying to understand. When he, in my opinion, when he first found when they first found out, you know, that's one stage. Okay, so you found out, you understand, you graduated from that. What are your thoughts? You, okay. you know what I'm what I'm what I'm asking exactly what did he 
what is he graduating into? He, what is he, he graduating he grad out of? In my opinion, right? He graduated from the misunderstanding to the correct understanding. Now, now, if he has the correct understanding, what is the problem? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, that that's, that's it right that there. That in your opinion, he graduated, and in actuality, he hasn't. Right. And that was my original point. It doesn't, it's not emotional. It's not about liking the word. It's about understanding what graduation is. You know, it's, it's a word. It's, a, it's, a, it's an actual word that is chosen. Mm -hmm. you understand? And you got to choose the right words. Right. You know, if, if you're really going to assist the situation, mm -hmm. if you're not, if you're not choosing the right words, you're just complicating Mm -hmm. the situation. Now, that's, that, I that's, used that's, to read it here because I'm talking to adults with life, with more life experiences. I didn't use the word graduated with this family. No, we're so talking I, about, you so talking I, about this conversation though. We're talking yeah. about right now because right. my, my original point was that mm -hmm. ego, a good, a good therapist, a professional therapist mm -hmm. is not, they're, they're trained to use the right words. Right. They're trained to not insert their ego into the situation where they're trying to break down an ego wall. Right. An ego wall that is based on shame. Mm -hmm. See, his fear is he don't know how to live outside of shame. Mm. Okay. And if people, if people keep, if, if there is nobody that can show him how to live outside of the shame, that he he is he is found comfort with, mm -hmm. you know, or guide him into out out of that shame, or guide him into a new type of liberty. Mm -hmm. All they are doing is complicating the situation because a good ear is one thing, mm -hmm. but inserting inserting opinions into a situation mm -hmm. that is not your situation is another and be harmful. Yeah, you know, I, and, and, and I'm. And I'm and, and this, and I'm saying this with all due respect. Even, even I didn't mean it. I'm not here to touch anybody's nerve. Even what I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. before I got cut off with the elder about the man, he said people tell you who they are. Mm -hmm. It's it's very simple. Like, but 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 and our I, ego, we like I, to we like to make them into what we want them to be. But a lot of times, people will tell you what they're capable of and who they right. are, and we don't <laughs> accept that. That doesn't mean it can't be changed later. It can't be uh, growth later. But what I'm saying is that if he is the focus, mm -hmm. what 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 we think this what we think the situation is doesn't matter. The, what mm -hmm. matters is breaking down the ego wall and getting him into a zone where he's not used to operating in outside okay. of shame. Okay. You know, now, then, now, 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 now spinning your wheels in the shame doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Talking about the man that was with him doesn't do that because there's a bunch of dynamics that we will never know. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody come in, even in the biological world, man, and if a, if a, if a wolf come in and dominates, if an alpha wolf comes in and dominates the, uh, another wolf mm -hmm. and throws him out of the pack, all of his line are shame. Mm-hmm. That's just natural instinct, you know? So we don't, we don't know how that was done. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the, what the uh, unless everybody's sitting around breaking down what they were actually feeling in the shame. And, and, and honestly, uh, nine times out of 10, that will never happen. Mm -hmm. So the key is not going back into the situation that, that the, the, the effed up situation and spinning your wheels in it. The key is, Focusing on getting that young man beyond what he is used to. That shit. Well, he got an old lady or something. Like, do he got a girlfriend? Do we got some homeboys he can hang around? Like, do he have somebody that he can vent to that's not probably family or somebody that he can talk to and say, shut the hell up every now and again? Like, somebody that he can just really vibe with back and forth like that to talk to instead of people so super close. Because one thing we do know, we can pick friends. We can't pick family. So right. maybe you want to holler at some of his friends. Is that mm -hmm. possible? Do he have friends or? I, I, like you know because i'm sure all that plays a role yeah he's he's talked to different friends he's ran it by um some different people that he trusts 
Um, however, he still comes back to the understanding of um, I wasn't wanted, you know, and I didn't have the opportunity to bond with uh, my biological father. And it, in, in his words, it seems like all the adults do is make excuses and tell their story. Okay, so uh, exactly. the brother... that's exactly what's happening. He's right. absolutely right. The shame, that is the shame. Right. Because and, and... They're, shamed, they're too shamed to tell the truth and they just keep telling their versions of the story. And he's, he's wise enough in his young age to smell through the bullshit. Right. Right. And then, brother, when you speak of shame, are you speaking of shame in terms of like where I grew up, you know, in the village? A shame will be you have a baby and then two people show up. We don't know for sure who the father is or this guy thinks he's the father. The other person thinks he's the father. And then that situation might make somebody else not want to be there because they think, okay, that. somebody, you know, so that's, that's could, the, that, could that be, the, could the, that be the, the, the root of the problem where, OK, maybe somebody feels like, oh, really? Oh, really? OK, you know what? I'm out. Is that could that be the shame that we're talking about, brother? That's 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 that viscerally on a visceral level. I would say exactly. But on the next level, it, the shame is that the people that are telling him the story haven't mm. reconciled with this shame. Facts. They lying to him. And, and people, man, people ain't stupid, man. You know, right. It's a, right. It, there is a ruse. There is a lie going on. He detects that lie. And because he detects that lie and they keep lying, he feels like nobody really wants him because they ain't, they ain't, they ain't investing the truth. Right. And that's and then, the uh, Right. And then if you look at the situation whereby somebody came to the hospital, actually, the same day he was born. Right. So maybe two people had to know somebody was having a baby on that day to be there at the same time. Right. And then somebody said, look, I came to... When you was born, I was there. I came there and then I saw somebody else there and then I left. So that was that's where the shame started. That's where the I whole thing even, started. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even tire my brain out to read that deep into it. You know, and 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 this is with all due respect. That's that's a that's a deep read because we don't know if they lying, you don't know what they felt. Lying is not just words. Lying is, is masking feelings. See, mm -hmm. there's a big problem in our community. You know, it's ego. It's the ego wall. Mm -hmm. You understand? See, I got I got good friends, man. I've been a lot of my friends. I've been friends with 20, 30 years. Right. Mm -hmm. And if, if they hurt my feelings, I could say, damn, nigga, you, you hurt my feelings. Right. The investment. You understand investment. what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, if you don't have that kind of rapport. Mm -hmm. See, that's what a therapist is for. It's not just about, oh, I got a license. I got a piece of paper given by the, the white man. It's rapport. Mm -hmm. If you don't mm -hmm. have a rapport where you can be in truth and speak truth with people, it doesn't matter who you share your story with. And that's Because everybody exactly. going to be lying to you. They're going to wear a mask and lie to you. Those are Because they're not going to tell you the truth. And that's what's happening in the chat right now. A lot of people lying. That's lying exactly. to their self. Those were those were my now, exact words to that. That, young man. that is what he detects. It, it ain't about what mama did or what the man that stepped in did. He detects the lie. Right. Ain't nobody, Bro, I ain't don't nobody. think the people. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't think the people in the chat lying. I think they really feel that way on the stuff they saying. Because let me say this: I didn't want to get into my story, but shit, I didn't know who the fuck my daddy was until I was twenty two, and that nigga happened to walk in my house. Like, hmm. so like we can sit here and do all this, and I ain't shed not a fucking tear about that man, not one. So huh. that's what I'm saying when we say the people lying in the chats and this and that. Well, well, when I, I say the lie, you know, when, I say the lie when I say the lie, let me let me clarify what I'm saying about the lie. The lie is the ego wall. We all okay. put up ego walls. See, remember what I was saying is I have friends that if I just say, hey, man, you hurt my feelings, I can just be real with. Right. Now, that's without judgment. See, mm -hmm. the, the, what I mean about the lie, I'm talking about the judgments, mm -hmm. everything, the reading into the situation. All that's a big part of the lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The truth is, do you have people that you can talk with in truth? 
that mm-hmm. you can cipher with in truth, that you could parlay with in truth. And that's mm-hmm. what the lie is, because everybody will say what I would have did, what I damn, I would have did this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, hey, can't he 26 years old? Can he just get by? Da, 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 da. Yo, none of that matters. Mm-hmm. And what matters, what mm-hmm. matters to save this man's life, <laughs> what, what will save this man's life is, does he have real people around him that he can speak real reality where it's not going to just be mass and over uh, over, over, overpowered by a lie. Now, the lie is what we project. Mm-hmm. You and know, it's just like the brother, the brother saying some real things about his experience, right? Mm-hmm. But in society, the average, the average brother is trained to walk around and live in lies regarding situations Correct. like that. Correct. They don't, they don't, you ain't supposed to expose yourself. That's, a, that's the word they use. Mm-hmm. He got exposed, but that's what you have to do. You can't heal without exposing yourself. Exactly. And those were my words to him. Right. So when I asked him that about the who do who do you trust? And he explained to me a couple of friends that he has. And he said, and I, I know I can trust you. You don't come with a judgmental uh, piece to the conversation. You have no stakes in it but how do I tell the people that hurt me um that they that I feel some type of way and what I explain to him is you do it in the most respectful way that you can sometimes you know respect may have to go out the window however when you're explaining how you feel one thing I asked him to keep in mind these are your real true feelings. You have every right to say how you feel. And if there's a point where you feel like that you are being judged or the conversation is going different, just respectfully stop the conversation. Just stop it. Because the goal is to help you to heal, not anybody else. And this is why I continue to say to him, Counts a, a professional therapist is your next level. It's your next level, right? Because you and I have talked, I told him you and I have talked on several times and we've gotten some good, you know, some good things out of it. Um, and you and your father have talked, you and your mother have talked and you're still feeling some type of way, right? So now it's time to stop talking to mom and dad for just a minute about how you feel and it's time for professional counseling so you can do uh, the healing process that's needed for you to be the best person that you can be without feeling judged without somebody else telling their story you know it's just about now your self-work and your growth and your healing that's all it's about at this point the adults in this situation have done the adult thing, right? However, at 26, I told him, you have so much more to get out of life besides hurt, besides pain. And now that the same word has been brought into it, I appreciate that word because I would have, I would have never um, thought about, you know, shame. I would have never thought about shame on any um, areas of it, but that's a really good um, way to put it into perspective. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody's opinion on the panel. Um, I appreciate Kwame for your time. And and hopefully um, I can take some of these things back, you know, to this young man. But I, I just, like I said, when I came up here and the men were talking, I really just wanted to try to get an understanding of how can I help this young man? Because he deserves to be... Ex- <laughs> Austin, you silly. He deserves to be extra happy and he deserves to have um, uh, added, you know, happiness to his life. I'm just trying to find a way to help him. But because when I say therapy, he says, I don't, you know, I don't think I need therapy. I don't want to go to a therapist. And what I tell him is, okay, but when you're ready and you settle yourself, I just want you to give it a thought. And if I can do anything in the meantime, 
I'm always here to listen. And if you want to hear anything that I have to say on the matter, you know, I'll wait for you to ask me my thought or my opinion. However, the main thing I'm going to piggyback on is you need professional counseling to get to the next level of your healing. You need that. Now, I have a I'm question. Sure. I have a question, I'm you know, before you go, I have a question. What about, oh, by, yeah, what about, sorry. yeah, Can I have I a just, question. I just, Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm about to drop down, you guys. I only got a couple more hours before my kids wake up for school. But I really just wanted to say thank you all uh, for your wonderful advice, Kwame. Thank you for allowing me to be on the panel. I know me and you don't always see eye to eye all the time, but I love you, brother. And it's all good, and it's all opinions, and it's all love. And I thank you all. Well, for I all thank you for saying life. that, because a lot of people, we have a little spat, and then they just go on panels and want to kill me. So I appreciate no. it. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> still liking the brother. That's I appreciate that. No, I appreciate you. I always I learned so much from you. Um, even in the midst of your roast and your joking and stuff, you always dropping gems, and I'm here for it. I support you. I love you. I love my bus life fam, and uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, all of you. Thank you so you much. You know what, beautiful black queer. I hope you have a wonderful day too. Me too. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye guys. Hey Kwame though, I got I, I gotta say something to you, Kwame. What's you, up, bro? Real quick, bro. You lied to us. KD said that it, he ain't never seen nobody get hit like that in the locker room. You said that be happening in the locker room. KD said that do not happen. KD said that. KD said that he ain't never seen nothing like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's all selective. I came up in a different era than KD. Uh, he came up. So you came up with Oak. I, yeah, I had, I had heavy hitters on my team and I, I, I came Anthony Mason, uh, Derek Coleman. These guys were still in the league when I came in the league. So you had four, five power forwards that'll knock your head off. Jermaine O'Neal. You got all guys that'll fight you in the middle of the game. Yeah, well, I guess they ain't have to get out behind the camera then. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, this era, David Stern had it a little bit different. This era is more uh, freedom of movement. Everybody's cool. Everybody hangs out. Uh, everybody plays uh, basketball together in the summer. When I grew up, uh, when I came up, they we didn't play. We didn't fraternize with them like that. You know, we didn't. No, nah, it was it was different. So. Yeah, it's a different area. So he could be right based on his perspective. Am I the only one that feel like if somebody hit me like that, I might have to sneak him in the locker room? Like, I might not even have to square up with him. I might just have to sneak Draymond. I ain't going to lie to you. Like, boy, I got to get you. I ain't yeah, going to lie. I got to get me one off it. I wouldn't care if he was looking or not because uh, the way he <laughs> fired off on me. So I would have to definitely get him. Yeah, Jordan Poole is a better man than me. I can admit that. Well, yeah, Kwame, so, you, you, Kwame, you also have to remember, you was a lot more smarter than some of the other people. You was there for another purpose. You, mm -hmm. you was there for a person right. to get away from your situation. So mm -hmm. I, my only personal uh, feelings from hearing your story, I think you would have walked away. Well, I from, think you would have walked right. away. If, from, if you uh, didn't do it with Pre-punch or post-punch? Yeah, uh, it's not even about uh, all that. I'm just saying... I think Kwame is smart enough to know I'm not going to stop my money. But see, in my era, they wouldn't have stopped no money. They, I mean, <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> in your era, wouldn't have stopped no money because it would have never been public. Yeah, it would have never made it public. Either I would have got whipped. Or and, that was a, and, that, and, that, and that was a guarantee. Whatever happened, that. You know, whatever happened in the locker room, as you said, if, as, as you said before, so. I think, and I didn't want to say this, but I'm thinking because Steve Kerr got hit like that back in the day by uh, Michael Jordan, I think that was a little bit personal for him. And maybe he wanted that to get out. I don't think there's going to be no internal investigation that produced nothing for y'all. Because that's something, you got to look at it. The head coach got hit just like that and had to take it. So that might be personal. You never know. <laughs> You know, really? somebody gonna somebody gonna tell a man up. That's gonna got him winning the, the fifth championship. That's what we trying to do here. Yeah. Somebody you know told me the other day. Hey, hey, Draymond Green got in KD's face. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Talking some shit. There, he got and, suspended and, for calling and, KD a bitch. Yeah, yeah but you, what KD do? What KD do? 
Nothing. Nothing. He turned his head yeah. down. No, he left the team. Yeah, that's the difference between KD and a lot of other champions. I, I've said that before. I've never seen somebody as good as KD allow somebody to run up in their face like that. If he would have done that to MJ, MJ would have head butted him, and, and, and it would have been <laughs> like like a lot of people. I know I tell y'all I'm not a celebrity and all that, and, and and the reason why I say that I'm telling you, celebrities hate when you treat them like celebrities. If you want to have a weird encounter with another man, treat him like a celebrity when he's just in his leisure time. And mm. you know, that's why a lot of these encounters with celebrities go bad because people are, are treating them like celebrities in spaces where they're not at work. And so, you know, MJ, <laughs> believe it or not, he is just like one of us. And if you think you're going to be able to treat him like a celebrity, you probably get punched in your mouth. I'm telling you. Damn. It's like one of us, man. I, I promise you. Another thing is you have to pick a battle too. You know what I'm saying? Kwame Brown is like seven foot tall, so it's not like a normal thing for just just run up on him and just throw a punch, just like that. You know, you have to pick your battle. If, MJ if, if had like, hands like baseball gloves. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you have a guy like seven foot tall Shaquille O'Neal or um, you know, uh, uh, what's the name, Parkins, like big guys like that, no matter what happened, as long as you are smaller than them, you don't just run up on them and throw the first punch. So the right. guy we're talking about is not as big as, you know, the biggest person in the league. So I can kind of see why he did that because he's not as afraid of what's coming back to him. But if he was like a bigger person, I don't think he would have, you know, did that. If That's just my opinion because you will know how to pick your battle. Especially Hold on, no. Draymond <laughs> Green, you, y'all you acting like y'all forget he slapped the college kid. He done talk crazy to the coach. He done talk crazy to KD. Yes. He done got everybody team, and now he done put his hands on Jordan Poole. That boy is a troublemaker right this, now. This ain't his first time. You can tell by the video. This ain't his first time doing that. I'm telling you, that's why I think somebody in that organization released it. Maybe even Steve Kerr helped it, but, you know, because he's, he's the commander-in-chief. I'm telling you right now, if yeah. that would have happened with a head coach there that I knew, man, they would have fired everybody. You would have saw it in the media. Every media staff member would have been fired if they didn't want it out. So it may be something that it's an inside job because of the way that Draymond has been acting and people didn't see it. They knew the court of public opinion see something like that. It's going to look different. Y'all are going to look at that like most people are going to look at that like an assault. Us basketball players look at that. If you heard what most people said, was who the hell let the video out? <laughs> because they right. know that they've seen that before. And yeah, I no. think, like you said, I think, like you said, Kwame, contract negotiations is coming up. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They might not feel they want to pay the, uh, Draymond Green that that money. You know what I'm saying? They plan these. Yeah, but then doing that, the, doing that is not going to pay you. Doing that is not going to get you. Money. I'm talking about absolutely. I'm talking about, do, 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 absolutely. Listen, listen. He didn't get. He's still playing, right? Yeah. They still feel like he's valuable to the team at this particular point, right? Yeah. They're just gonna get him for a lower value. Potentially. Yeah. So they they might you know they might take five million out of his contract and say so you, you deal with that or you got to move on. Or I think Jordan might stay with You know what? You gave Jordan Poole a, a one forty. If I don't get better than that. I'm gonna have to move on anyway. He and gotta that, go. The end he, of the story. I don't want to be disrespectful. Green, they're gonna get him at a discounted rate because of what. Yep. He did. Yep. yep. That's what I'm saying. Gentlemen, but that's not necessarily good for the Warriors organization, Hicks. You feel me? Because now he's undervalued. Even though we might not want him for the extension like that, now he's undervalued as a trade piece. But you know who just went up in value? Jordan Poole. If I was Jordan Poole, I'm going to collect that money and then I'm going to say, fuck the Warriors. I'm gone. Y'all got me bent. Y'all shouldn't let he up here taking rings and smiling and I'm giving him these dime passes, bounce passes, making him look like he actually know how to do a layup. Uh-uh. I ain't going for that. Yeah, I'm about to take this money and put me on Sacramento. Put me on the clip. Put, put me anywhere. Put me in Atlanta with them young boys. Put me somewhere. Put me on the Pistons. Shout out Detroit. We need them. Put him on the pistols. Put well, him, ain't, no put, ain't no guarantee he's gonna get that, that. You know he might be on the bench more than he had at, at, uh, the, the Warriors. You know. What I'm but saying? look, I uh, believe that. But he still is pivotal to a culture now. I ain't gonna say that he like the. I don't, the I don't, think, I don't know if he came around. Like, I don't that, know if he right. if he moved a buck like that, but he's definitely somebody that you would to an extent want in the locker room to help build a culture. 
Mm-hmm. Am I saying that basketball? Am I saying basketball players are violent? Uh, I think every man or woman has the potential to be violent, but I think in the sports world, we 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 go to training camp, we're hitting each other all the time. Like sometimes a, a, a little scuffle will happen over a foul. Like sometimes it don't be that big of a deal. Um, guys are gonna be guys. It, it's just depending on the team and depending on the culture. I will say the closer you are to winning a championship, uh, those teams normally have a situation where people fight to iron things out. I'm just let me, Kwame, let me ask you this then. Who was tougher on their on they teammates in practice, Kobe or Jordan? Kwame, before you answer that, man, mm-hmm. please, and I, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say again, thank you for your time. Kwame, I appreciate you. Thank you to everybody that was on the panel. I appreciate you and your input. And I'll take this back uh, to this young man, to this family. And, um, you know, hopefully I can follow up with you all uh, one day on the um, the bigger results. But I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for your time. And I appreciate you. I'd like, you. To, say one th- I'd like to say one thing to you before you leave. Yes, sir. If you're going, if you're going to go through the therapy process... You should need to help him pick a therapist because all therapists ain't good. I've, I've, I've said that. Okay. Too. Since yeah, he I've trusts said. you, mm-hmm. if, since he trusts you, you know, yeah. you might want to lead that charge. You know, we, whether he know about it or not, you go yeah. out and you try to find a therapist that you feel might be, you know, has some specialties in that particular field. And you know, if you have to have a consultation with him, you know, that him, him or her, you know, what I'm saying, take that step, and that way you can feel comfortable with putting them in that position. But I still feel yes. that this young man needs to have a conversation with his father. Everybody thinks the grass is green on the other side of the fence because mm-hmm. they don't know what's on the other side of the fence. When well, yes. he said he had the opportunity to sit down and talk to his father, yes. and if there's some paternity issues and this, that, and the other, I'm sure you can dad, you know, uh, man, let's take this paternity test. You know what I'm saying? If that's, if that's the issue, let's just take a paternity test. Because mm-hmm. somebody yeah. lying to the, man, the young man and he's confused. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, we, it ain't as complicated as what people think. Always right. look for a simple solution because life ain't that complicated. People make life complicated. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same thing in politics and everything else. Our personal lives, are, you know, I'm guilty of it. You know what I'm saying? Then I had to learn. <laughs> take the, <laughs> take, take the, the least common denominator. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate yeah, it. I was going to ask you a question before you go. I was going to ask you, what about his biological mother? Like, what is their relationship like? You know, do they have a good relationship to where she can tell him the truth and all the truth about everything that happened? Or do they have, like, this, you know, you know what I mean? Like, off, they like, they have you know. Really, they have a really good relationship, right? I know this family. I know everybody involved. I was present with the mom when she met the biological father. I was present with the mom when she met um, the actual man that stepped up to be a father. So that's why when they came to me, when when the the father and the mother came to me, they were like, you are one of the people that we know, you won't sit in judgment. We can tell you our truth and you won't criticize us. You won't, you know, judge us. You won't condemn us. Um, and when they shared their story with me, I, I told them I, I need to be very honest. And they were like, okay, be very honest. I said, this is so effed up. I am, I want to say ashamed of all of y'all for allowing this boy to go through this trauma. All of you as adults have to take the accountability in what you have now instilled, whatever it is in this young man, the hurt, the trauma, the pain, the confusion, each and every one of you need to take your own accountability. That's not judgment. And that's Mm, uh, uh, understandable reparations this young man as he grows i told him this at seven this young man as he grows is going to need counseling and i recommend all of y'all and i said this when he was seven all of y'all are going to need some type of counseling to heal from whatever your own feelings and trauma is through this right so you know we did the paternity test thing because i like to get i like to have a, a clear understanding i don't want anything to be left out 
who is the actual daddy? I know everybody said that they knew. So first things first, let's take a paternity test. Right. Did that? Did that? The results came back. Had the conversation with the biological father, with the mom. Just let just. I was just sitting there, you know, and and he asked, you know, so why is why are you here? And I said, you know what? Um, I was here because I was asked. And at the end of the conversation, he said, you know what? I came off disrespectful to you. Like, why are you here? But I am glad that you were here. I said, I'm only here to lend a helping hand if needed. I just ask that everybody understand there's one person at stake here. And this is y'all son. That's the only thing that I'm trying to get an uh, understanding is how you all help this boy because he's going to grow and as he grows he's going to learn to understand things that he is told but he's also going to learn and understand what he's feeling so everyone needs to be prepared to when he comes and says hey I've got questions about this I've got questions about that and now that's where we are past the point now where he's saying I heard everybody's story okay great got it However, he still got this inside feeling. And what I explained to him when he asked me my opinion of what he was feeling, I said, I hear hurt. I hear pain. I hear you need professional counseling. You do. You need someone that doesn't know anything where you can go in and they can help you professionally to get to the next level of this because I don't I, I, I don't know how to, you know, we've done all the addressing individually and, 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 and I'm just trying to figure it out, but um, I'm just trying to help him figure it out rather. But I, I want to say Kwame again, thank you very much. I appreciate everything you are doing um, for the community and staying strong yourself through everything you persevere. And, and I know it, I feel like it must be hard for you as well. But I still appreciate you, brother, for everything that you're going through um, and everything that you choose to share with us in the public. You're amazing. And like I always say, continue winning and continue to be great. You're doing great things out here, brother. And I appreciate you. Miss, Miss Lovelace. Yes, and they want to know if you have any children. They want to know if you have any children. They, they want to know if I have children. Yeah, they want to know if you have any kids. Who, who is they? The chat, they're asking, do you have kids? I do. Yeah, me oh. and Lovelace got babies. We already talked yeah, we about got, that. Yeah, we got three together. Y'all didn't know that? Stay yeah. Mind, mind your business. Where's mom boss at with them t-shirts? Y'all right. mind y'all business. Worrying about <laughs> get on out of here. <laughs> but I do. I do. I Miss Lovelace, I want to I wanna share a, a, yes, a tone with you. Yeah. I want to share an invitation with you. The word is reparations. And the, and the root of that word is repair. Yes. Everybody involved has to be willing to do whatever is necessary for repair. Yes. If they not, if they not, they don't need to be involved with the situation. Okay. Reparations. Yes. You know. Um. um thank you very much. And um, uh, I want to share a quick observation, and then I'm gonna be out. Um. I run a research center here in Belize, right? I meet people from all over the world. And um, I, want, I want to just say something about what you're saying about professional counseling. Yes. What he needs to seek is reparations, repair. Uh, a lot of people, uh, let me just say it just, just bluntly. Mm -hmm. Most of the white people that I meet that's moving around the world, they have shameful situations, situations of, of, of destructive family situations just like anybody else, Indian people, white people all over the world are going through the same things. Now, they're handling it differently. Yes. Now, if you, go in, if you go into a situation with a therapist or where you are seeking uh, an, an ear mm -hmm. or you're seeking somebody to have a, a balanced exchange, it can help. Mm -hmm. But um, observation I wanted to share is a lot of people, um, they're going through their therapy just traveling the world putting a backpack and hitting the road. Absolutely. You know and I'm, I'm going to tell you, a lot of us are so stationary and stuck in our ways and stuck in our familial situations that, that don't work for us. And, you know, all kinds of things that aren't working for us. We, we're, we're sedentary. And what we need to do is if we, if we want to get away 
from situations and, and heal. We need to we need to put them feet on the road and walk the burning desert sands. You know, and that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate therapy. Getting tested, you know, going out here in the world and getting tested, you know, and and that's what it's all about. You know, it's how I got to where I am, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in life, you know, all the time people are not gonna be willing to sit down and repair. Yes. And that's just the truth. Yes. They don't have it in them. They're not mag the work, they don't have they're not magnanimous enough or generous enough. To, to invest in somebody else's repair. And mm -hmm. that's the majority of the world. Yeah. So, so before we die and, and, and fall away or go postal or end up in jail, a lot of times we got to throw that backpack on and, and walk them burning desert sands and um, deal, with the, deal with the test of time. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the ultimate therapy right there. Absolutely. And I agree. And thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm going to drop back down. And um, you You're are welcome. beautiful. All right, thank you. you deserve Hello. it. Uh, Kwame. Kwame. Ma'am. These kids going to be here Friday. Okay. Leave before they get there. Uh, before they get there. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. And that child support going to look real good, too. Now, she, yeah. all, she already get that. I, I get it. I, I, I put it in the mailbox and then I take it out before I mail it out. He said that nigga champion speaking too good now. Y'all are funny. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I do. Right. Just call him Uncle Kwame. <laughs> Uncle Daddy. I'm Uncle Daddy. Uncle Daddy. <laughs> Uncle Daddy. <laughs> Listen, you ain't is you ain't is <laughs> All right, you be good, love. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. The highlight of my day is leaving this conversation. <laughs> And all of you shared a smile with me or a laugh with me. And I appreciate that because you black men deserve it. All oh, of us men deserve to smile more, laugh more, enjoy life more. And I pray that for all of y'all. I appreciate you. Thank you. Get in the chat. You're welcome. Get in the chat. Too. Get down here, love lace. <laughs> Who is this in the chat? <laughs> People in the chat crazy, boy. <laughs> Kwame, don't let them talk to me like that. Now I'm gonna get yeah, back. You ain't trying to talk to my baby mama all kind of way. What's wrong? Right? <laughs> I'm, what, what's this? I'm, I'm still in love with her now. I just can't. I just can't come home. I, I'm still in love. <laughs> These kids gonna be here Friday now. Friday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm leave, I'm leave. What time they get there Friday? I'm not telling you that. Get here. Yeah, cause I gotta make sure my flight leave right before they get there now. <laughs> 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 and you gonna go missing again? You see, you not even you not even helping the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank All right, you. lovely. Have a good day. All right, y'all right. right. hey, crazy. This y'all the panel crazy. The chat crazy. What's going on? You know, we're gonna stay off. We're gonna stay off the wire. <laughs> Man, we're gonna pull it all night. What you was trying hey. to ask before? Um, oh, yeah, I was saying, what's the difference between like I kind of forget, but it was more alluding to this like, how is it being under Kobe and how is it being under MJ? Is it really the same, or do they like one meaner, or is one liable to put their hands on you, or is they both just workhorses? What's the difference um, or the similarities? It's like uh, Kobe. It was like Kobe was the closest thing to MJ I ever seen. They were almost the mannerisms, the walk. It's almost like he studied Michael Jordan. To be honest with you, he almost did the same moves. He almost. I mean, he was almost like the same person. It was weird. The energy was there. The aggression was there. The the uh, wanting to tear your head off in practice was there. Everything was there. It looked like on that last dance documentary, Michael Jordan would be like in practice calling niggas hoes and shit. Was Kobe <laughs> like that? I mean, they Kobe gonna test you. Kobe would start with the big man on down. He go he gonna test everybody. Uh, okay. I, MJ did the same thing uh, because he wanted to know who was gonna be there with him. It, it's to it's like a, a affirmation. Like he would do that to see who's gonna be there with him later in the foxhole when it's time to win the championship. If you folded, uh, I don't think he liked you. If you stood up to him, I think he liked you a little more. That's why he loved uh, Oak. Oak stood up. To, he wasn't no pushover. He stood up to everybody. 
M couldn't do Oak like he did everybody else, so he made him his best friend. That sounded about right. He knew he couldn't play with Oak. Oak go down swinging. He ain't going to go down. He going to swing and you going to go down. <laughs> oh, well, shit. That's even worse for MJ. Nigga don't want no ball head skin. <laughs> oh, yeah, because uh, Oak was that player. He didn't care that if he was a superstar, he was going to It was gonna be a Draymond situation. It's going to be on. Yeah, it's- say, that- and Oak will fuck around and stand over you and finish you off. Look. Yeah, like, it, nah, yeah. most people, they lost the fight. Nine o'clock. Anything. Uh, Oak, Oak liked to slap him. He didn't punch you. He slapped you right in the mouth to see what you did. But Oh, yeah, he the ultimate disrespectful nigga then. Oh, yeah. But, he wants to slap but, you and see what you do. But then I feel like back then when you was playing, uh, the reason why they was like that was because it was more difficult to play back then versus now where it's much easier. You could just shoot threes all day. But back then it was like – play hard, score from inside the paint, you know what I mean? Use your body and your weight and, you know, and your height and all that. But now it's much easier. So the way they will talk to you and mentor you back then will be different versus now where you just shoot from anywhere and it just go right in there and the yeah, game is over. That's true. That's a, yeah, yeah it's, that's a different, right. it's a different style of game. Like, I think the reason why it's less fights now because of, of the freedom of movement. Like, before, you had to fight to move. Like, a, a dude was chucking you all the way down the court. Right. When you were diving through the paint, Derek Fisher used to boom hit you with that forearm. He would get low and put right. his forearm right in your sternum when you're cutting through the basket. So that guys, he would make sure instead of you looking to get a free layup, you're looking for him. And Derek Fisher would take one. I used to like hard-nosed guards like that that would just take a hard foul to let you know he was there. And the next time you kind of get gun shy, you'd be looking like, oh, shit, is this motherfucker going to elbow me in my sternum again? Yeah, that explains right. a lot about Derek Fisher. That motherfucker will take one. What? He like, taking that foul. first quarter, boom, right in your chest. I don't care who you is. He's going to elbow you right in your chest to let you know. Ain't no rolling through this paint getting no easy layup. You know, no. Now, Kwame, now you know you done triggered some guys when you said that. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> Almost triggered me. I was ready to go in right there and say, like, it was somebody that fouled him at a house party. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't even trying to trigger no guys. He's just one of those guards that uh that you know that that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna stick. He's right. gonna, man, I'm telling you, he didn't play that. Um, there was a lot of guards that would attack attack you instead of letting you attack them. Um, when you tried to set a screen, they would attack that knee. They would pull mm. your knee. They would hit your knee with their butt. They would do anything uh to try to make sure you were scared to set a screen on. Them. Mm. Mm. See, Somebody, nowadays, they just oh, shoot. See, nowadays, everybody shooting center, center. Mm-hmm. Everybody just shooting. Everybody, like, if you look at the Golden State, at one, at one point, everybody shoot threes. So, it's I think it's much easier now. Somebody was saying, no, it's not. But it is. If you look at it now, it's much easier to, like, play in the NBA versus back then where you have it's to, like, more fight. It's spacing. Hey, that's why y'all said he triggered. He talking about Derek Fisher, take a foul and take your lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. Hey, that's exactly what I didn't want to say it, but that's why I said you done triggered me. <laughs> that's hey, exactly hey, what you said. Carcino call him long stroke D fish. Long stroke. Fish. <laughs> hey, Barnes driving damn near 200 miles, 100 miles an hour. That boy was losing it. While he was supposed to be at practice, 182nd of his contract. You know how much money that is? Man, damn near thought it wasn't he supposed to be at his practice, damn near though. That's what's crazy. Like that, that's nuts. But look, let me just say this real quick. Somebody in the chat brought up something very well. And I want to know, do y'all agree with this? And people in the chat, y'all can chime in too. They put Jordan number one, Kobe number two, LeBron number three. Is that an accurate representation of you, Kwame, or would you look at it different? And same to everybody else up here and in the chat. Um, I I would say yes. Um, if you going to put, is you talking about of all time, just Kobe, or LeBron? You said Jordan, Kobe, and then LeBron, best player of all time. Yes, I think that's what they put. Um, ah. If you're going to just – is there any more choices? I don't know. Like, LeBron – Just out of those three. Now, let's let's do oh, this. Let, let, you have a, let you have a Mount Rushmore. Who your, who your four? Well, hold, hold on, right? Akeem Olajuwon got to go in there for me. Like, a lot of people don't give Akeem Olajuwon and Tim Duncan the proper – Tim record. Duncan. Thank yeah, you. Water, mm. water, them got it. I, I, I might have picked Tim Duncan over LeBron just because of the consistency. And mm. 
Uh, and just because of the impact of the game, like Tim Duncan. Mm. He and you know what's funny, Kwame? I will pick Olajuwon over Tim Duncan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Elijah Warren or Tim Duncan would be my three, and then LeBron would be maybe four or five my, in my picks. So Jordan is not on there? Jordan would be number one still. Oh, okay. It would be a, I would have an asterisk like one, two with MJ and Kobe because they were so close in, in what they did. So I mean, I wouldn't be mad if you said Kobe, and I wouldn't be mad if you said MJ. Yeah, but whenever they do this comparison on ESPN, it's always Michael Jordan and LeBron James. So they forget that people actually played when Michael Jordan was playing. And they were, they were actually guys who were actually as good as him or, you know, in different positions as well. So they skip everybody. They're going to pick out Jordan and pick out LeBron. That well, doesn't make I any don't, sense. I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think they're picking out Jordan. Jordan went to a different level, man. <laughs> Straight I'm, up. I'm, saying like, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm not saying picking him out like they gave it to him. I'm saying, like, after they say Jordan, the next thing is LeBron. Like, they're going to skip everybody else and go straight to LeBron. Yeah, no, LeBron is not two for me. It's, it's, it's Kobe for sure. It's either – Kobe's one or two for me. Me playing with Kobe and MJ is no question that those two are either they're going to tie at number one or you can put one – MJ at one, Kobe at two. Hmm. But, but we can say for you for sure LeBron is not one or two. He's definitely not better than Kobe in my book. That's what's up, man. Real talk. Hey, can I say I, I, something? I agree. Did anybody watch Shaq on drink camps when they asked him this question? What? No, no, no. What did Shaq say? So Shaq said, okay. Shaq said, okay. Now, we have this argument, right? But the thing is, once LeBron James passes, um, uh, what's his name for the all-time scoring, because we know it'll probably happen this season. Can you say that he's not the greatest player ever? Because honestly, here's the thing, right? As far as stats go, a lot of people, it's going to be another 40 years before someone surpasses LeBron as far as stats go. And if and if y'all disagree with that, that's crazy. Black. So, well, I don't look at stats. In the yeah. Stats that most people look at stats because. You have to look at impact. Uh, you you got to look at LeBron takes 25 shots a game. That's a Over a 20-year span of time. Yeah, he's, in well, year tw he's in year 20 shooting 25 shots. He should score 30 a night. If you shoot 25 times and you get anywhere close to 50%, you got 30. That's a fact. Okay, but Kobe took a lot of shots too. Kobe averaged about 22, 23 shots, but not in not in year 20. I mean, Kobe, he lightened the load. I mean, And I'm glad you just said that, Kwame, because here's the next point, right? We have to remember how Kobe had broke down at the end of his career, and he was climbing up them charts too. So yeah. we know that injury matters because I think Kobe, if he would have stayed healthy, he would have made it to year 20. And then this whole little thing right now, we'll be talking about Kobe passing Kareem for number one. But so we have to put these things in perspective a little bit. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we will be talking about that. Nine, I don't know. Nine, Achille, nine Achilles torn Kobe. I think he could pull it off. And I'm not a Kobe hater because I got I got a plaque of Kobe up in my house. Let's be clear. But I'm just gonna be honest. It would again, Shaq. You know, I don't want to speak for Shaq because I don't necessarily remember everything he said. And I think you guys should go check out his answer on that. But one of the things he said was, "Look, when Kobe." Passes and gets the oh, Kobe. Excuse me. When LeBron gets the the number one scoring list, is does that mean he's not the greatest player? The problem is, right? I think everyone views it different, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's what we got to take into consideration. Somebody will say Michael Jordan, right? Is the is the is the greatest player because he got five rings. If that's the case, if you're going off rings, six. then Bill Ru six. Excuse me. Six. Then, okay, but if that's the case, if we're going solely off rings, then Bill Russell is the greatest basketball player ever. They're, def they're definitely not going solely off rings, right? Robert, Robert Ory will be over MJ, so they're not going off rings. But what I'm saying is, uh, you're gonna watch the Lakers get blown out a lot. Oh, the Lakers was trash this year. Right. So you're gonna see an older player just taking 25 shots a game. To beat some record, does that mean that he's a great player, or does that mean he's taking twenty five shots? Can he score? He can absolutely score. 
I, I can't believe he's making these type of shots at his age. It's very impressive. I'm not taking anything away from that. But far as carrying the threat, far as winning, winning basketball, LeBron winning basketball days is over if he's going to take 25 shots. Oh, that's, that's a good fact. That's you a have fact. to get other players involved, and that's what's wrong with the Lakers. They got three guys that shoot the ball all the time, and then everybody else is just like out there. They, How they you going to have your big shooting for about 17 to 26% from the three, man? That's craziness. Right. If I if I was the Lakers, I would feed Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis, and let LeBron be a closer. But yes. If it's all about LeBron getting the scoring title. Then go out there and let them chunk up shots, and then they're gonna lose almost every game. But if they run it through AD and let them young guys use those legs and stretch out, and LeBron is good enough to run the court and get his spots when he, to me, he should average about 20, 25 points a game. He's not gonna do that. But if he averaged 25 points a game, that'll free up more shots for other players. And they'll have a better feeling going into the playoffs. But if they play like they played the other night, playoffs is not even in their future. Nope. Yeah, but and I knew I knew that Westbrook thing wasn't gonna work from the beginning. When they made that trade, I said, Jesus Christ, these guys just screwed themselves. Yeah, that I was mean, simple basketball. Sometimes, Sometimes you can't have too many superstars in one team. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Because if nah. you have too many superstars in one team, everybody wants the ball. I'm I'm Westbrook. Can we say when it worked, bro? They don't have shooters, right? That's what they it is. That's the and, shooter aspect. They went on and 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 um and got a whole bunch of run into the basket guys. That's what they did. They didn't they they needed guys that could shoot. And, and, black, the and a whole bunch of old players that was past right. their prime like that. You you can only use like one or two of them veterans. You don't need a whole bench full of them. You're trying to sell tickets. Boy, how many tickets you thought was going to get sold with a Carmelo jersey and a Dwight Howard jersey? But they're trying to still – because the thing is, people go by name too. Oh, Westbrook is playing. I ain't Dwight bought Howard that Westbrook that. jersey yeah. either. Yo, did Melo get picked up this year? No, nah, they they didn't pick him up this year. Oh, nobody picked him up this As year. As a matter of fact, he's an um yeah he's a free agent. He was just showing some more um because I you know I love basketball. He was just showing um some more stuff how he's still in the gym. He want to get back another year. This and that and all that. Oh, Melo, Melo, go home. Can he play defense? That's the same problem with LeBron. Like I, I I like being able to get stops. And what I saw with the Lakers, they can't stop anybody. Even Golden State had defensive problems. Like, they, they both got to get better on defense. And LeBron can't keep guards in front of him no more. So that's Absolutely. Gonna every time, every time they're going to get into the heart of the defense with LeBron guarding. I'm telling you what they're telling young guys. Run LeBron and go by him. Make him defend mm-hmm. him. Because <laughs> the more don't, the energy. The only thing I remember. Fill out threes. The only thing I remember last year, uh, Kwame saying, who is Jordan Poole? Yes, Lord. <laughs> I so remember that. Is, that, <laughs> that. That young boy was getting in there lighting shit up, doing all kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? And where did he, where did he come from? But I, 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 I have no idea. That boy came I out. I remember Kwame just saying, who is Jordan Poole? Man. And, don't forget, and don't forget about it. What's his name? Uh, Joe Lamont. What's his name? Kaminga? John Lamont, what's his name? Young boy. John Moran. Like shit. John Moran. Yeah, John Moran. Dunking on oh, everybody. Oh, I ain't know how. I was like, who is he? Okay. No, he dunking on everybody. He ain't scared to come in the paint. He ain't scared of nothing. He made me no. feel like 90s basketball. I will say that. Like 90s, early 2000 basketball, John Moran. And then I like young uh, LaMelo Ball. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I like his game a little bit. LaMelo Ball. Yeah, he's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of exciting young players out there. You know what I'm saying? And it's time for some of the old people. We've been on live, live for nine hours, boy. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, we don't, don't run a marathon. Man. I live is too good. Two, time, two three times. <laughs> Look, live you be good. having them. When you be having them lit, them lives, I ain't going to lie. You've been on fire. 
with the sports. Uh, like, look, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, but he be on fire with the uh sports commentary. I'll be checking it out on the gyms from comedy gyms from comedy. Bro, you heard me? I say this nigga being on fire had me laughing all type of shit. I'm like, there we go. That that's that's it. Because hey, you look, you listening to. I'm gonna just start a new one. If I right. can get another one back, I'm just start a new one and go from scratch. You're so, listening to unscripted um, sports commentary. This is yeah. not something they wrote down and you reading off of a script. And then when the script is off, you don't know what, to, what else to say. He's right. giving you organic shit. It's not something he wrote down and have to keep hey, looking champion. back and forth. Making sure he's saying the right thing so they won't fuck around and get him off the TV. When you know that nigga I mean? said he had, had the dope fiend, the nigga, I say this is my favorite nigga in sports media. I was like, when that nigga said, <laughs> I said this is my no, favorite. The, the next practice is oh, that nigga better not turn his head nowhere. <laughs> yo, yo, here's the question I want to ask, right? How does Draymond Green look out of that system? Uh, Draymond Green would look normal. He gonna be like Kendrick Perkins. He look very normal because like, he would be having. He would have to score and do certain things. The what that team needs, Draymond, and Draymond needs that team. And what, absolutely, yeah. What but, the Warriors is going to show him, and they're trying to show him and get him to understand. You'll be good on defense, but but without the shooters and the things that we have for you oh, here yeah. in Golden State, then your game is not going to flourish like it is now. Absolutely, because we Same know thing. that. The, my fault. Go ahead, brother. Same thing with the Kansas City Chiefs. They got Tyreek Hill out of the place, and you see how Patrick Mahomes looked now. He looked regular. He looked like everybody else. They win, but they struggle to win. They don't just blow you out by 40 points. And so that's what, what I think right? what happened with the Warriors. He looked regular when he could sidearm it for 60 yards. I don't think. Yeah, that nigga. No, no, no. But, but yeah, funny. You just don't you have know. a guy that get open like that every play. I, I see Absolutely. Him. When they had Tyreek, anything could be a touchdown. Like any play oh, yeah. could be a touchdown. Yeah, any sure. mistake you make could be a touchdown. That's, Tyreek Hill is like a cheat code. You got to back off the guy 10 yards. He's still an outrun. Yeah. They call that nigga the cheater for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheat code. It's like, yeah, you you got to give him too much room and then. If you give him that much room, then he can just curl around and catch it in the flat. And then right. he, yep. tackle, he might break out after that 10 yard catch and get a touchdown. That little right. nigga, you know that boy's strong and fast. His head, his chin connect to his shoulders. Yeah, that nigga's strong. Right. Any mistake you make could be a touchdown. Any mistake you make could be a touchdown. But now that he's gone, Patrick Mahomes is like, he looked like, like, literally like, who, who is, let me say, he looked like Josh Allen. He looked like a regular quarterback. But when they had that nigga, man, you could just close your eyes and just launch it. So, Kwame, I know you probably don't want to say this one, but I'm going to ask you anyway, brother. Is there anybody in the NBA, it could be present or in the past, that you felt was overrated? Anybody can answer in the chat panel or anybody. Well, I mean, sometimes the way they talk about these guys, they they they, they over. They, 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 yeah. Man? Yeah, Drummond Lane was one of them. Uh, there's another guy. There's another guy. Uh, um, as, at one point, Pagasol was a little overrated. At one point, okay, because no, I, like uh, uh, I don't uh, know about if Paul, Paul was. Uh, Paul was nice. No, not not Paul. His brother. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Mark, he was, oh, uh, the brother. The brother. Uh, yeah, the, the other guy. Mark. You know, I say Jeremy Lin is because they got so crazy and excited. You could have looked at twelve or ten or twelve point guards that was doing the same thing he did. But because I think uh, his race had a lot to do with it, absolutely and in New York too. You know they needed something to lay, latch on to. And Tim Tebow yeah. wasn't. When oh, it was hold on now! Don't talk about the Knicks. You're gonna trigger me now. Come on, no, bro. No, you no, know I, them I, boys I, ain't I, been I, nothing. I, the best I, thing they done I, did I, in I, the last twelve I, years was get to the second round of the playoffs, barely with Carmelo, oh, and then they got oh, stumped now out. To, now you about to trigger him for real? Now. Yeah, for real. I've been listen twenty years. I've been. 20 years I've been sitting there fucking putting myself through a heart attack every season, and I'm doing it again this season. Hey, don't Black. trigger me, brother. I don't want to be triggered now. Black, I feel <laughs> your pain. Hey, me and Hicks feel your pain. We from Detroit. We got to deal with the Lions. Hey, so mm. I feel <laughs> your pain. The Lions ain't going nowhere. The Lions ain't going nowhere. The reason why I say Jeremy Lin is because, like I said, because there was a lot of guards that were doing that same thing, but I, right. I do think that was a good thing that the NBA saw because it, it let them know that, damn, do you know how much money they made off that little run Germany had? Oh, oh, facts. That little, and that was only really like a 10 to 13 day run. 
No, no, they, they made it last. Like it was a 10 or 13 day run for us there, but when he yeah. went to LA, the all I'm telling you, the yep. whole Asian community packed out those arenas everywhere this guy went. He was like the MJ of the league for that time. I believe right. yeah. because they looked at they looked at Yao Ming, he was gone, so they needed somebody else to come in and fill in that space, you know. So Jeremy Lin was somewhat, you know. Closer, and then Tim Tebow was in the NFL at the same time. So oh, they was man. comparing. They were comparing the two. They were like, "Oh, Tim Sanity and Lynn Sanity," because they both was playing for New York or whatever. You know, one was playing for the Jets, the other guy was playing for the Nets. So it was kind of like Tebow Lynn type, and then that was really what made it even bigger. My boy said Tim Sanity. Tim Sanity. <laughs> they were saying that shit. They were saying that shit on TV. I didn't make that up. Hey, but look, I would say this though, right? If I'm going over it, I don't know. I'm gonna wait till y'all say y'all's. I'm gonna say mine last because I don't I don't want to break the internet. I just feel that um Kobe and um Jordan just a different type of player. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? They they was just vicious. You know, so they didn't just want to beat you, they want to kill you. Man, you know, early, you know, keep that foot on your neck. And they was that kind of player. LeBron a great guy. I ain't gonna take it from him, but I don't think he got that killer instinct like the mother too. You know, and so I, me, one in, I feel them one A and one B. I will say this though, uh uh my fault, Mr. Hicks. I think when you such a like it is other ways to play, and I will give it that because we will see LeBron be great at what he does, how he does it, opposed to and he can give you pressure. But I get it to say somebody just want to eat at you. Like, I don't want to guard him type. Like, I don't want to guard Kobe because I know he's going to try to feed me 35. Like, okay. that's a big... Go ahead. So, can I tell you who, who I know is overrated? Blake okay. Griffin. I always hated oh, the way God. they act like Blake Griffin was this great player. When all he did was dunk, he still barely evolved. I don't want to go there because he uh, also came to a Pistons team. You hear me? But I would say, and, 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 I and guess really, what? He I did really absolutely feel, nothing. He, hey, I feel me personally, me personally, that the way he was brought in to be the lead, because if we remember that time of the lead, he was, they were showing all this dunks, all this. So they was kind of prepping him to be like a LeBron type, but he didn't fill up to that. But I will also say that he didn't get the same opportunity because when you run to Chris Paul, you're going to follow that lead, bro. It's a winning lead. Like, honestly, to follow what Chris Paul is doing, but at the same time, I don't think that he could have, like, he didn't get a chance to showcase all what he could have did for a 10-year run by being the second or third option, mainly the second option, though. Are you making excuses for him? I'm just telling you why he didn't, I think he might have not evolved as much as you said. Nah, he, all he did was dunk. That's all he did. Man. Make dunks and push and fill. He, don't make excuses for him. He was overrated as hell. He still ain't made – he's been how, all around the league and ain't made no impact nowhere look, yet. How, let me ask you this. How he overrated? We didn't think he was going to be like a top five player. Are you crazy? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't remember the, the, the nonsense going on around Blake Griffin? Everybody – Everybody was acting like Blake Griffin was going to be something. I just said that they thought he they they prepped him up to be like the LeBron type. I gotta go. Hey, I'm still on the phone with y'all, but I got to go grab a blunt from the store across the street. But look, I'm gonna <laughs> say this: they have prepped him to be one of the faces of the league. True enough, but after like two years, you don't live up to that. You know how that go. He was just yeah. another. It's not about he didn't live up to that. He never evolved his game. All on top of want to dunk on somebody looking stupid in the face. That was it. Getting off top of with Blake uh, Blake Griffin, he's a hell of a roaster. Did you see him when he was on this roasting? It was a roasting uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Oh no, he's an actual what? comedian. He does stand up. That, good. Does he? Yeah, that Blake Griffin does com comedy. He's yeah. funny as fuck. Well, I gotta go see that. Yo, I gotta I'm check saying, that out. It's, on, it's on YouTube. This was like six, seven years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did something with the one white boy. Yeah, I'm telling he's funny as fuck. He was I, gotta, I gotta check that out. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do play I was like, what the hell he did? He actually was good. 
He told he told Caitlyn and Jenna, you know, I want to thank you for giving your daughter's daddy issues. <laughs> I want to thank the whole NBA. I want to thank all the rappers. <laughs> yeah. they, they no, disrespect to, no disrespect to nobody, but my player is Tracy McGrady, dog. I ain't going to lie to you, and I love Tracy McGrady. What? I bought his shoes and everything, oh. but I'm going to say he... I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I think he's a little overrated. They act like he could have been like, he like, because once you start pulling threads and, and hairs and shit like that, no disrespect, T-Mac, he was one of the hardest guards he ever had to deal with. Yeah, without, I'm without just telling injuries, you the facts. Without the back injuries and the knee injuries, man, Tracy was uh, was a lot to deal with. Man. Facts. He had everything. Hey, but let me ask you this. Who would have been more pivotal for that Orlando team, Tracy McGrady or a uh, 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 upstanding Grant Hill when he couldn't play? Because Grant Hill might have been. Yeah, I'm, taking Tra I'm taking Tracy McGrady, man. He did everything. The athleticism that he had, he shot the deep ball, he shot the mid range. He didn't get tired. He gave you everything when he wasn't hurt, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, that was Tracy McGrady. He was injured a lot. He had back problems, back spasms. Man, his back was jacked up. Man, you could be the best player. If you don't have a championship, people still don't, like, recognize you like that. You know what I mean? Sometimes the best players are in a bad team. Mm -hmm. So your effort just goes You heard what Tracy play. McGrady said to J.R. Smith. He said anybody can be a champion. Only few can be a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. mm. Let, me get a, let, me That's get a, let me get one of them purple packs right there, brother. This man in the store for real. Yeah, yeah you bro. Right across the, the street, bro. Put the mic on. Get down, panel. I'll see y'all on the next right, round. Salute to, to you, brother Hicks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you, you letting me up, man. Have a good one. All right. Yo. Hey, hey Caitlin, Caitlin Jenner was, uh, Caitlin Jenner, uh, he won the Woman of the Year Award his first year as a woman. They gave him the Woman of the Year Award. <laughs> I think that was a good <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what they did on BBC. They're trying to start a goddamn fight right now. <laughs> they gave him the Woman of the Year award. His first year as a woman. I think that's a big accomplishment. <laughs> Can you imagine playing your first year in the NBA and you go to the championship and you the and you the MVP? That's a big deal. So I think that was a big deal. Yeah, for him. Yeah. I, I'm not fucking with you, bro. No <laughs> excuses, got excuses. You don't like T Mac either. Yeah. I like T Mac, boy. He got to a point where he got lazy. Told me he want. They have a bed for T Mac at the fucking court. They have a, a what's the name for his back where he gets to lay down and shit. Hold on, game. but Come I can't now. say he was lazy because we remember Larry Bird was laying on the side of the boy, court. That, he, that, that back fucked up. That's back he just ain't have no bed because he could have had one. <laughs> like I think if he had one, he'll be laying on the two now. <laughs> yeah, they had a little something for Steve Nash to lay. Remember, he was lay on the baseline too when his back was jacked up. And then you still, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, if I'm coming to a game, I'm I'm coming to to play. I'm not coming to lay down or because my back hurt. I'm coming to play. Yeah, yeah but that boxer mentality, man. She is one punch hey. down. That's that kidney shot. Fuck that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I ain't even get paid. That's fucked up. Go with boxing. Have you ever had a you bad back No. Yeah, with boxing is different. You don't want your opponent to know that you have any kind of problem. If they know you have any kind of injury, oh shit, it's over. They will come at you with full force. With... Absolutely. When you got a run and cut at basketball, I think your back tell on you. You you shit. You ain't trying to. Hell yeah. But you go drop. <laughs> Y'all even heard Kobe what he said about T Mac. He said when he was like uh, T Mac was like, I remember he was guarding me and I could have swore he elbowed me in my back. Kobe said, I was like, shit, how you gonna feel when I hit that motherfucker though? So niggas do be like on that a little bit. They, they're gonna take advantage if they can get it. That's why they used to say, Jordan, if you listen to the little clips, he'd be like, Hey man, don't tell me that you hurting because I'm gonna take advantage of that spot. That's definitely a true thing. They 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 used to say, "Don't take your hand, don't do nothing," because they'll slap your hand. They'll do anything when you hurt. Right? I'm sure, they hurt. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that happen. Yeah, fact. That's yeah, 
Yeah, it's different. It's different with boxing, man. You know, it's a different arena. Man, stop <laughs> trying to beat people up, man. Ain't nobody finna box. We old, man. We ain't finna box. <laughs> hey, this, right, right. We talking about crossovers. You talking about laying the nigga down. Two different things. <laughs> oh, look, I, yeah, I'm gonna tell you, yeah, it's different with boxing. We don't even want to know, bro. We don't want to know. I don't want to know. I know what it's like. Them motherfuckers get in that ring if they want to. <laughs> three minutes. Hey. The average, the average person with no skills, three minutes, they'll be so I give them 90 seconds. They'll be so goddamn tired. <laughs> For real, with somebody that know how to box, that's punching them in the stomach, that's fainting at them and making them run and move, shit. Right. Yeah, because you've been training for a long time, so you're used to it. Yeah. You know, you're used to it compared to somebody who just came in to do it for the first time. So of no, course, I had a, I, my trainer, the trainer we had for the Detroit Pistons, he was crazy as hell, like martial arts and like boxing. So, to to one of the things to get you back in shape is he he'd have you uh, running around and he'd be swinging at you, and you can't swing back. You just block and move and run, and then he would throw tennis balls and all kind of shit. And I'm like, man. I ain't no damn boxer. I don't feel like doing all this shit. That's some of the yes, best you could ever be in. Somebody swinging at you and you moving and, and jumping around in the boxing ring. That that shit is crazy. It, hey, it, it's part of it, it's part of um reflex. They're working on your reflex. You know what I'm saying? On, they, I thought reflex. they were working on dropping my lungs out. I was tired. <laughs> <I'm> tired. <laughs> Man, you ain't never. How y'all do that when they go oh. try them out? Well, you don't got hit in your face that much. Your eyes roll, nose hurting, side hurting, ribs hurting, and there's no time out. So you got about two minutes to go. How the hell? Then they say sit down, now get up and get punched some more. Like, right. oh, hell. Nah, it's, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> it's the ways to catch breaks in boxing, man. If you get yep. hit hard, you hold. You have to hold. Well, right? We saw referee... what a break looked like for uh one of my team, one of my former teammates, Nate Robinson. We saw what a breaker looked like. Oh, <laughs> look, 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 Yo, we Kwame, not, you need to chill, bro. Kwame, you got to chill, bro. Yeah. Yo. That sleep deprivation, I'm tired. I was supposed to go to bed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that don't count. what a break look like. <laughs> hey, that don't count. That don't count. You know, that don't count. Playing, he was going on how to full head no, like a bull. He asked me to get in that goddamn ring. I was smart enough to say no. Uh uh, that count. You should have known better. <laughs> <laughs> but then the thing is, with him, I feel like he was coming forward with head first with no protection. So whoever was training him, they was just teaching him how to throw punches. They wasn't, yeah, they him set how to him block. up for failure. They said, ex exactly because everybody you know, knew the way he was. He was out just listen, he was out there street fighting. Let's be real. It looked like he never sparred, though, bro. I, I promise. I done sparred a couple of times. What he right. did, it looked like he never sparred before. Because if you yeah. sparred, you'd have known better than do that. That's why I said right. it. He was just out there swinging it. Yeah, now, but then I, to... I'm not saying I would look great, but I wouldn't have been out of position dropping my head just going like that. You'd have had to catch me a little bit. Goddamn, trick set me up now to use your boxing skills. But that right there, yeah. he might have well just stuck his chin out. Yeah, but you have to blame his trainer. You, you can't blame the Nate Rob. You have to blame the trainer because what they tell you to do is what you do. Say, for example, if you don't know how to fight and the first thing I'm teaching you is put your head out like this and do this. That's what you're going to be doing when you get into a fight. So I blame the trainer for not teaching him how to defend himself. You True. see what I'm saying? Because you holding up the pad like this, one, two, one, two. That's not all you need in boxing. You still need to know how to move your head, put yeah. your hands up, you know, take a... um. When you when you stand, you don't want to stand, uh, like you know, like this. You want to stand like this. When you stand like this, you available to get hit. But when you stand like this, you don't get yeah. hit as much. Yeah, you gotta you, you gotta stand thin on them boys. You know some champion. Right. Yeah. yeah, you know you gotta sure. stand Anybody thin. Anybody that name themselves champion, you know damn well they know something. Well, I'm the fight night champion on the Xbox, so you can hey, see me. Hey, I ain't myself you know, champion. You know, I have a, I have a, I have a ticket belt, okay? Oh, hey, nigga. Hey, listen, man, get up, nigga. Hey, 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 get up. No, no, no. You got to cam up. You got to cam up so champion can see you. Dude. Oh, God. Are we, do yeah, are we doing this hey, early in the morning? You going to bed tonight, man? You know the bed of my You had some keep your ass. No, we ain't letting you up on the panel. You might fuck up the panel. Had to, had to come on for one second, then come on the Hey. I don't call myself champion. I got a belt, okay? Shit. I work hard for this shit. He won't let me talk, man. I just wanted to see if he wanted to fight champion. And you know what I'm saying? I guess I can sponsor the uh whoever lose, whoever win, the money go to their charity or whatever. And see if he wanna fight you. You know, look I ain't got no goddamn charities. I got a pocket. 
Uh, Damn right, I got pockets. Yeah, that's what I want to know. It's just three rounds, you know. This nigga, this Give nigga, Kwame trying to see a, a murder for free. Uh, uh-uh. <laughs> hey, you don't think you can, you don't think you can last two minutes, three rounds? Oh, I'm gonna swing and bang like never before. But uh, <laughs> you will last, you will last two minutes if you're going against somebody who's standing in front of you. But if yep. you're going against a guy who's using his legs, circling the ring, you're not gonna last two minutes. Well, no what if we like can we do MMA in a little bit? I will wrestle the shit out your ass. You hear me? No, I don't do that. I don't do MMA. That is not for me. That is not for me. Uh-uh. That is not for me. Wrestle the shit out your. That is not for me. Uh, MMA is not for me. I go right mm-hmm. at them boxer knees or them, them boxer legs. You hear me? You hear me? <laughs> I'm, I'm kicking the motherfucker in the leg and we going to the ground. Even the chant <laughs> know, right? The Even the chant know his leg. He like, nah, I'm not with it. I'm not with it. I will never do MMA. I will never oh, do yeah. MMA. That shit is oh, too don't, difficult. Don't even spar one of them MMA fighters. That shit is it's, it's too difficult. I have to worry about your leg. Your like, elbow, you grabbing me to the ground, all that. Uh-uh. There's too much issue. I gotta think about all kinds of shit now. Nah, Nigga gonna lead a sparring session with Dumbo ears. Hell no, right. I'm straight off that. So right. you got what people choking you? Oh no, no, that's too much. I just don't worry about <laughs> your hands. That's too <laughs> you ready to go? You ready to fight champion two, three rounds, D Santana? Oh no, nah, he's scared. How many pounds you weigh, bro? He done muted his mic. He said what? You re- How many pounds you weigh? How many pounds I weigh? I'm about 180. Okay. 180, okay. Okay. So you think like, like you is, bro? I like MMA, bro. I like more than MMA. And tell I don't do MMA. Like, oh, no, bro. I'm saying, hey, hey, D Santana. Hey, I'm hey, they call me. How about? Hey, man, you talking too goddamn fast. This nigga must be high, man. I'm trying to ask this nigga a question. He trying to get there over talk. Me. Right. right. We're trying to figure out if you're trying to get knocked out like yeah, your I'm dad used to. One thing, man. Do you want that smoke with uh champion? Yeah, yeah I want that smoke with you. How about that, nigga? No, I'm scared of you. How man. about that, nigga? Yeah, I know. Man, I, think you want, I think you'll get me in the ring and hug me or some shit. He ain't know. no professional fighter. I'll fight him standing up always. Let's go. Let's fly yeah. me out. I'm out yeah. here. No <laughs> Give me two weeks with champion. I need to spar a little, get my shit together. But then <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> No, nah, don't spar no goddamn boxing now. You better spar No, nope. hey, I got to get my shit up quick. I need to learn ASAP quick. Like, fuck it. Quick. This motherfucking boxers ain't going to play with you, boy. Put me in the terror dome, then. You hear me? Put me in the terror Hey, if you spar with me, I'm going to teach you some stuff. That's all. I'm not going to go I'm not going to go hard on you. I'm going to teach you how to fight. That's all. I'm not going to go hard on you. Don't do not believe that's that. just how they all say that shit. I got in there before that nigga said that shit. I know you weren't lying when you said that nigga hit you in the kidney because the nigga did me the same way. I said, What type of shit is this? <laughs> You're not gonna let him go out like Nate Robinson champ. You go, you're nah, not gonna nah, let him go nah, out nah. like that. You can't do that when you're sparring with people now. Come on, especially with somebody who's trying to learn how to fight. There's no honor in that. Yep. You gotta take it easy on them. You just can't punch them like hard. You just gotta, you know, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you somebody, can't just do somebody that. Somebody like us, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Somebody <laughs> like us going to fuck around. You're going to fuck around and hit him one time. You're going to catch him with a good shot. Then he going to beat your ass. Yep, because that's all that's going to happen. Going to hit that nigga a little too hard. Then he going to act like a nigga really a champion in there with him. And then he going to start shooting the That's like. exactly what's going to happen. He going to bite down that guy. Oh, nigga, you want to. I thought you were playing. Oh, okay. For real? I swear to God, I was spear your ass like Goldberg. Keep it up. The guy, he laughing. He know what the fuck he's going to do. Goddamn box is crazy. I had one time, this kid, you know, I was just, you know, working with him or whatever. This nigga hit me hard. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> that woke me up. <laughs> that woke like, me okay. up. Oh, what did you do after that? Don't say old oh, shit and laugh. What did you do after that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, uh, Hey, black dog, this motherfucker trying to set somebody up. You get it? <laughs> Yo, I hear him. I hear him the way he just laughing there, like, yeah. When that nigga hit me hard. I'm like, oh shit, that woke me up. With old conniving ass laugh, 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 too. That nigga had a um, conniving ass laugh. But hold on. That was a sneaky ass laugh. <laughs> but hold on. What did it? Hold on. Yo, good champ. So it woke you up. I got that. But what kind of wake up was it? That's the question. What did it wake up? I thought I was in a real fight. So I had to do <laughs> something. See, your goofy ass done got woke up and done put him to See? sleep. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> they all do that same shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna hit you. I'm just gonna teach you. I'm gonna learn. And then we all in experience. We gonna fuck around. We gonna mess around and catch them clean. And they gonna act like it's all good. Oh no, no problem. Cause they no problem, bro. 
<laughs> oh, oh, no problem. But next time you throw a punch like that, boy, look at here. It's going to be old. Man, you know something. I know that much. Like no motherfucking ring with no train box. That's the, same, that's the same way I feel if some civilian basketball player, somebody who didn't play professionally, come and try to play me. Right. I don't give a damn if you went to college, whatever. It's some things I know you don't know. And when you come find out, you're going to say, damn, it looked different. I thought this nigga was a player. No, Kwame, fuck that. We're going to do what you said. They said do to LeBron. We just going to run past you fast as hell. Work them knees out, boy. You got up. It's going to be damn near the good knees challenge. How I'm running around that bitch like, uh-uh. And that's the thing, though. For my size, I'm pretty damn fast. All right. And then the advantage that I got, I'm going to be able to back off you and give you a step or two, and I can still bother you. Yep. Shot. Yeah, I'm just playing half court. My ankle's bad. Fuck this shit. I'm playing half court. I'm going to go in the 40 and over league half court at the YMCA. I'm going to have wristbands all over my leg. My <laughs> like if your ankle's, ankle's bad, it's about time for me to do my best Kyrie Irving impression on that court. You hear me? I'm trying my hardest to do some shit. <laughs> All right, bro, don't mess around and hurt yourself now. But you hear me, bro, damn near broke my ankle before. My arm. Yeah, shit. that's what I'm damn. saying. You know, hey, you but look. Try to break somebody else's ankle and you hey, end up Black, hobbling off the court. It's crazy. I took a jumper, right? And my ankle rolled when I came down, but at the same time it rolled, a nigga jumped on it. Yeah, wow. shit man. felt boy. I had to get carried off the court. I hey, you know it was real. I left the Jordans <laughs> on the side, of everything. I ain't no. Hey, I looked up the next day. A white boy had the Jordans on. I said, I got to get him. He got me fucked up. Ain't hey, about the dope fiend him. Like, hey, bro, where you get them Jordans for? Where you get them Jordans from? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was fucked up because you know now nigga only had the basketball shoes. I'm like, oh. I can't. Uh oh, yeah, like right, we got you a fade right here. Uh, we got you a fade now. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -oh. oh, how much you talking about? How much you talking about? How much you talking about? I don't fight for free. Yeah, they, they, they man, a champion. He ain't changing the fight for goddamn nothing now. I'm not gonna get hit for free. How much you talking about? And we damn sure ain't gonna let Champ get embarrassed for free. He fuck around here. Hey, he's not getting hit for free. He trying to slice it up. He fuck around and get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> Why they feel it? Yo, you know, you just said, I'm like, Shit, I don't fight for free. How much they talking about? Did anybody hear champ earlier? I don't go around. What he said, I don't even want to um, hit nobody in the street for free. For free? I'm to tell you, he got their box of love to fight, man. I'm trying to tell you. Hey, I'm I'll fight in the ring up. any day, but I'm not finna fight outside and I'm not finna get in the ring for free. So, how much they talking about? Shit. I feel you on that not fighting outside because that curve stunt me. Nigga be having to roll all types of yeah. shit in the fight outside. You be having to move fast as hell. Like, uh-uh. Damn right. KB set up a chat basketball tournament. Yeah, shit. As long as it's half court. Fuck that shit. <laughs> three on three. This nigga, this nigga Kwame trying to use shit to his advantage because he know he's tall. <laughs> this nigga. I, ain't I ain't trying to run up and down. He ain't gonna lie, man. Please. I ain't gonna lie. I've seen some clips of you on the big three, my boy. You was out there saucing a little bit. I ain't know you. I say he still got some gas in the tank. Okay. No, I, don't want no, I don't want no smoke. I don't want no smoke. Y'all motherfuckers talking about Kwame and basketball. He got a whole boot on. Them ankles <laughs> are already done for. They done. Yeah. Oh hell no! You don't want to spot this motherfucker. No, don't do it, champ. Who? That that's Jared Enos or whatever his name is. That yeah, don't do that to him. Don't do it, champ. Hey, look. As long as you're 160, 165 pounds, I'm down, bro. I ain't, I ain't afraid of nobody. I think he Errol Spence weight class, right? One forty-seven. Errol Spence is waterweight. He's one forty-seven. I fought at one forty-seven yeah. before, but yeah, uh, you, you don't know who Jerron Enos is, the one that he trying to fight Errol Spence. I know Boots. Boots mm -hmm. Ennis, yeah. I know him. Everybody's saying Boots is really the one that might give him a problem. Boy, that boy, they're good. But see, I think I think um, Crawford going to give him everything he's looking for. One thing about one thing about Crawford is he fight, he fight Southpaw and he fight Orthodox the same, like, equal. Like, if he yeah. fight you Southpaw, you would think you're fighting the Southpaw. If he switch, you think you fight. The guy is just too good, man. He's too good. His yeah, his his yeah. switch stance is impeccable. I must say, yeah, he's, he's too good. He's too good. He's too when good. He switch stances, he better, in my opinion. 
if he can beat you on a southpaw stand, that fight is over. So, champ, I got a question. How do you feel, man? I I really thought Keith Thurman was man, really man, like man, that. He man, that man trying to get Boots Enos to whoop some man. What is wrong? Hold on, he trying to get my nigga put on a milk carton. Yeah, Hold on. I'm not taking no bet. I'm betting against your ass, champion. If it's Boots now, that I'm not fighting that man. I fuck? wouldn't either. That motherfucker, that cold boy. Mm -hmm. Hell no. I mean, the thing is, once you okay, let me put it this way, right? Boxing is like playing chess. Once you know it, you know it. It's about it's a matter of who lands the big punch first. Yes, that's what it is. Who lands the big punch first? That's really I was what out is. there fighting somebody. I was looking like Ali dipping and that bap, bap. That nigga hit me one good time. My nose got watery. I said, "Hold on, I had to wrestle." I told you I'd get to that wrestle game quick. Tail that nigga hit me so hard in my nose. <laughs> Boy, that nose ain't no joke. That shit, man, it fuck up your eyes. It, you have blood running out your nose. You can't breathe. I mean, you could you could catch breaks in boxing. People don't know that. You could hold, and you could hold. You know, you get hit hard, your best bet is to hold. The referee yeah. going to come and break the fight. You hold him again. You could hold as many times but as champ, you can. In real life, the only thing niggas going to end up holding is they nose. They be like, hold on, bro, my shit. Like, uh-uh. Yeah, he trying to get them. Man, we not fighting, man. The, the fight off. Fight off. <laughs> I don't want to be like that me to fight? movie John Flag. Don't you know he gonna kill your ass? Who they want me to fight? Sit down. He gonna kill your ass. Yeah, we, <laughs> Who we they want me to fight? They was bro. talking crazy about Kwame. Let Kwame let somebody on this panel get knocked out because he having too much fun. They gonna <laughs> cash. The we, gonna get, we gonna get this nigga right here. All right, <laughs> gonna get, hey, hey. hey. Oh man, we don't want to hear all that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> let him talk. Let him talk. Oh, we want to hear We gonna mess up the whole live with this dude. <laughs> we just want to say something negative. Oh, we got the energy for him, Claude. You we don't might not, but we got it for him. Hold on, go ahead. I ain't got shit for me. Hey, I got. Go ahead, you, dummy. Bitch, nigga. Hey, I ain't talking to you, bro. Hey, Kwame. Um, what the fuck? Hey, can you beat Brian Scalabrini while you talking shit? I, I don't think you can. It been a one on one game. You can't beat him. Bro, Brian Scalabrini. Yeah, you can't beat him. The you white mamba? Oh, yeah, man. You can't beat him. I already beat him one-on-one. -on -one. You did? We had the same agent, sir. You ain't wow. beat him one-on-one. -on -one. You a liar. You can't shoot. I beat everybody one-on-one. -on -one. That's how I became All right, liar. <laughs> that thing is... <laughs> so you yeah, took them all down that way. I beat everybody one-on-one. -on -one. What are you talking about? Do you beat that? Oh, you beat everybody one-on-one? -on -one? I'll tell you what. <laughs> you tell the Washington <laughs> Wizards to release that film of what happened. Yeah, please. Oh, no, please why you think they buried the icon? Why you think they buried the film uh, and act like it never happened? When I heard got, what happened, you didn't listen, win, listen, nigga. I'm trying to respond to you. They got cameras in that gym. If they wanted to show you the work, they could easily release those workout tapes. It would amaze you, motherfucker. You say that shit. I had niggas looking crazy, huh? Well, what was hey, the yo, score? I was bink, 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 bink. <laughs> what was the score? It wasn't even close. Mm. Say he look, no, no disrespect to nobody, but I'm gonna say it. It looked like any other white boy that come to the hood. It shit just was just a tall version. Dog got busy. You know how it went, D. Yeah, he was good, bro. He was good. But they got Tyson think he was Chandler. In there. They got Tyson Chandler in there twice. Tell him to release. You, you work Tyson Chandler. And it, hey, Santana. I don't need this shit, man. Hey, Santana. Fuck. Yeah, Santana. Oh, it's, oh, like, why hey, Santana. It's on What's up, bro? What's up? You, you know, like you know, camera? you know, back then, right? You yeah. they didn't have like YouTube like we have now, so you re right. re you really have to play in front of in front of agents. You have to play in front of recruiters for them to say, okay, this guy is actually good. So sometimes they don't really have videos of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they no, didn't they have got, YouTube. They then. Got a video of this one. This no, just, I, like, I, just, like, uh, <laughs> just like in the gym with uh, Draymond Green, that all the facilities <laughs> have cameras in them. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't at any point if they wanted to. Hey, man, once again, let me just make this shout out real quick, because once you made me think of the facility, I'm thinking about the one down the street. Shout out to the Pistons. Shout out to D-Rose when he was on the Pistons. He signed my autobiography, D-Rose autobiography. Uh, and I hope that man's career be long still. Hey, he get a couple more years out of the game. God yes. damn it. Where D-Rose at now? In, in um, New York still? I thought he was. Am I wrong? I thought he went back. I yeah, thought he, he went back. Too. I could be hard. I try to really stay on my sports, at least basketball to the top of most. Man, he yeah, well, he rolled is in New York, and he was throwing up some shots last night that was pissing me off. 
Oh, yeah, you, hey, if I need any New York news, I know who to go to. Yeah, yeah he, he was pissing me off. If it wasn't for the knee surgery, he'd still be in Chicago right now. Because that nigga was a beast in Chicago. He Potentially, because by now, you want me to tell you the truth? By now, I think they would have tried to rebuild. Like, if he, he could have got a championship potentially, but I think with all the other pieces, because we see how they end up breaking down somewhat and going to different organizations like Noah, for example. Noah would have broke down. He probably would have gave you five more good years, peak years, especially with that team Great with time. D-Rose. But after that, he probably would have not gave you – uh uh. Damn, what the the Lou that was in the corner? He probably would have fell off a little bit. You feel me? It was it was Keith and Tyson. So it's I like, no. I just thought every I just thought everything started with a knee surgery. If it wasn't for that knee surgery, man, that nigga's a beast. He was oh, but that's true. Right I agree with you one hundred percent. When you have two knee surgeries, bro, it's hard, man. It's hard to come back and play like for real, for real, without thinking about your your life and your career and your money and all that shit. It's hard, man. Look, I don't got hit before, and I thought about some money. Question, you know I mean? so, go can ahead. Can I ask you a question? How yeah. in the hell can I show I got heat in my house? <laughs> How can you? <laughs> oh, man. Somebody, hey, you think about that. You want to know what? Please. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> yes, out how Please, go ahead. That. Please, can somebody give him an idea? Yes, because I want to see steaming hot water, and I want to see heat in this house. How about I just turn the steam room on? No, nah, look I at the see, oh, How about you just turn your shower on? Look at the thermostat. You it know was, what I'm saying? Then when you when man, you turn that the, man was sleep. Uh, that man, I guarantee you, that man turned his, his camera on right now. That man's still in bed with a hoodie on. <clears throat> hey, what's your beef with Kwame Brown, bro? Oh, I got a hoodie. On. <laughs> 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 what's wrong with this nigga on, on, on the camera? You done made this nigga come on the camera, sexy and shit. What's wrong, Kwame Brown? Kwame Brown. This nigga just wanted to see your nipples. That's all. This nigga just wanted to see your nip. Like, why you worried about if a man got heat in his house? That's some Why? old because gay I'm, shit, I'm man. Get up out of here. Right. You don't even like Kwame. You should want him to be cold. You were in your house. Hey, what? Well, hey, well, help your daddy. Help that nigga get some heat in his house. I'm glad he's warm right now. Man, I'm <laughs> Brown, you ain't got no heat in your house, Kwame Brown. Hey, all the reason you got that fuck off, bro, man. because you sweating bullets over there. Cause you Hell yeah, I was sweating bullets. That's why I had to take the motherfucking hoodie off. Nigga. Oh, yeah, not because you had to I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I hope you do get on. Cause it's always good to have a nigga with some pushback that talking shit. Cause you see the gang in here. We gonna all talk shit. Yeah, right, right. That's, like, really? that, that's what y'all need to tell this nigga to stop being so damn sensitive. Well, he gotta be PC, right, but it's niggas like me that'll come bro, to this bitch to talk PC. stupid. Bro, is this nigga PC? Anything this nigga do, this nigga get on here acting. Yeah, this nigga right dunk. here sit the cops in my house. Rashida, this nigga right here sit the cops in my house. I think he texts me right after the goddamn. Oh, Are you fucking with the police? I ain't called the police on him. This man, why? Hold on, let me get this off. Why you text me after the police left? That shit got so real in the trenches. That nigga left. Look, hey, did you uh, did the police come by and talk to you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> that nigga got them call the police on me, man. That nigga make a nigga want to buy a whole new phone number. Like, fuck wrong with him. Police ain't me. I ain't mad at you though, D Santana, but you can't be doing that. You taking this YouTube shit too far. I ain't gonna lie to you. Them niggas took my mailbox. Oh hell no! You know you a petty <laughs> bitch. You a petty bitch. <laughs> that nigga disrespectful. Taking niggas mailboxes. Fuck you gonna do? <laughs> they gonna drop your mail on the, on the floor. They that nigga drop won't. Your mail on the he say he want them to put that nigga shit on the sidewalk. That nigga disrespectful. <laughs> They're gonna drop your mail. See, I got two mail. It's one pole and one mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> they gonna hang your shit. That nigga trying to plot how to get the second one. You hear me? That nigga ride. They in the car right now, riding around like, okay, I seen Kwame in the bed. I'm going. He like he in the bed. I'm going to grab the second mailbox. Kwame got niggas so mad. They about to catch a Fed case fucking with a nigga oh, mail. <laughs> case for the mail. These niggas. <laughs> God damn. So they be talking about it's just YouTube, but the shit they doing, they, gonna, they can go to jail for this shit. They stupid. Dumb as hell. <laughs> These dummies ain't seen Charleston White getting niggas locked up on the YouTube left and right talk crazy. Y'all niggas better pay attention. 
Oh yeah, that nigga on some different shit. That nigga on some on a different level. That nigga Charles and White, oh boy. <laughs> He's funny than a motherfucker. Silly nigga, but I you know what? Funny than a motherfucker. He's a funny motherfucking goofy ass nigga, but some of that shit he be saying it do be going too haywire for me. But a lot of that shit it be yeah. hitting, but niggas don't want to hear that shit because he really just saying it raw. He ain't bowing down like you know the gangs. This he be like nigga fuck them gangs, nigga. <laughs> they bad <best look." laughs> Niggas be like okay. Yo, hey, was, yo, Kia, show me your face in the back room. Yo, let me tell you though, right? To be honest though, our like the culture is going too far. First of all, you got a trust fund baby, a mansion baby acting like he a gangster. Now, what does that tell the kids that's really from the hood? That's a problem right there. Mm-hmm. The culture is going a little too wild. And people yeah. need to rail it back in. Yo, I was t- I was on another panel, right? I was talking to a dude, and I asked the dude, yo, some pissed me off so much, I had to jump off the, the, the ignorance spewing out of old boy. I asked old boy, I said, would you rather be T.I. or Dr. Ben Carson? This dude said T.I. The whole panel said, wait, wait, what? He tripped. He yeah, was like, yeah, T.I. Yo, and he went, in a, went into a whole soliloquy about why. And I'm thinking, yo, all you motherfuckers know is this debaucherous culture. Y'all don't know nothing else. They, they can't even fathom doing what a do- being a doctor or any of that. This shit is crazy. Yeah, but then you have to look at what is being promoted. You know what I'm saying? What is being well, celebrated? That you is know, true. What, do the girls, what do the girls gravitate to most? Is it, is it Dr. Carson? Is it the doctor? Is it the, the lawyer? Is it the guy that, that wear his pants and pull it up and, and, and tuck in his pants and, and put on his, you know, a uh, button up shirt? Is that, is that what they like? No, it's the guy that is smoking, right? Sagging, gang banging, shooting, rapping, whatever negativity you can, you can put out there. Those are the guys they put in movies as the cool guys. So that's what they see. So that's what everybody want to be. Now, I'm going to give you something else. T.I. son, you know what I'm saying? In my opinion, these do have no reason to even want to be hard. Like that's nigga, what I'm saying. You have no reason to want to be hard. Like you, you, you have no. I'm not saying you can be, but well, if he, you want to be hard, hard, you're missing it though. He does in our culture. If he's not hard, guess what they're gonna do to him? Because I was just about to Kwame get to Brown, the point your dad is saying, rich as hell. Kwame Brown, yeah, your dad no, no, is rich no. as hell. What you want to be hard there's for? A, there's a there's a lot of added pressure on the kids that are kids of like made men or like men like Ti. There's a lot of pressure on that. There's going to be a lot of pressure on LeBron's son. Absolutely. There's a lot of on son. So our community, uh, unfortunately, his dad was a rapper. So in our okay. community, he can't be no college kid. They're going to look at him like a square. He don't okay. want to be like a square. I, 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 I don't <laughs> like a square like a motherfucker. I'd have been running Aku. Let's take it up a notch. Okay. Uh, a so who are you surrounding yourself look, with, right? Why is he surrounding himself around. with people, right, that – want you to be a thug like why are you surrounding no, yourself no, with no, that no. that go back Fact. to what we were saying earlier though hold on because we got to put it all full circle right we yeah. can understand i'm glad Kwame brought up the one point about that it's added pressure and i'm gonna tell you uh black i, I think that's your name right there but it's blocked off by the bottom but i think it was yeah black. yeah 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 that's so, cool yeah yeah so <clears throat> if um they had that added pressure. Now think about it. T.I., he's still around the hood. They still get the same influence, if not more, and moving the culture, even if it's by 1%, T.I., son. It may not be nothing major. Maybe if it's even a tenth of that. But he's still thrown into the same shit as the other kids. Oh, got to be tough. Oh, got that stick. Oh, but he had access to it, and he's probably around – um, a area because not to say T.I. running from the hood or not, he still probably want to be around these people. So inevitably, his kids are going to run into people that's about that life or they want to live it. All of these factors, we know it's still variables in there. He might not be strong enough of a kid to say, fuck the rap shit in this life in general, or have that mentality and say, I'm going to just be a computer guy or whatever the fuck the vibe is I want to do that's not this shit. We know it's a lot of variables in this. Okay. There is a lot of variables, and I and I and I don't discount that. But the whole thing is, you a mansion baby. Your whole life is a mansion baby. Right. What, like you, you don't know anything about that life. I mean, right. I get it, right? You watch it on TV, but in real time, he doesn't know anything about that life. He is right. a mansion baby. Like hey, so, can I ask it, you this, Black? 
do your Go dad ahead. have would your dad have influence on your life? If your dad put straight street nigga, and I'm sure he's still the king in his household, no matter what the case is. If he pushing his energy off, he might be receiving it a certain way still. Like I gotta be a top flight certain type of nigga. Cause my Let daddy me. like this and he cutting his house, even though we get money. Remember what Kwame said also that, that celebrity shit. Take that celebrity tab off these niggas. Nigga just living in a bigger house than us. You feel me? Shit like okay. that. I, I, let me comment on this, right? So, if you come up in a situation like that, right, where everything is already made up for you already, if you want to be hard, you have to be hard organically, okay? That means you have to step out and carve your own lane, right? You can't be in the mansion eating from the palace and you want to be hard. No, you have to carve out your own lane. Find something to do where you are now using your name and your talent and your skill to create your own lane, not your palace, uh, 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 you know, privileges. Because if you want to stay in the palace, you can't be in there and be a gangster in the palace. No, carve out your own lane and be a gangster. Then you will get the respect. Then whatever it is you're trying to prove, you will get the point uh, proven. You'll get your point across. For example, let me Le LeBron James, right? He, he, he plays basketball. His kid is playing basketball. You see what I'm saying? His kid is playing basketball. You but know, also his now, kid is not T. His dad is not Ti. It's LeBron. Right. So, right. So now, now he is not uh, riding on LeBron's name. He he's actually good. I've seen his videos. The guy he's actually good. Ti song, on the other hand, I have not heard his song. I have not seen him make any uh, rap song or uh, any of that to where I can say, okay, you know what? This guy actually has talent. I haven't seen that. So he has to carve out his own lane, whatever it is. Go to the studio, boxing, soccer. What, you have to carve out your own lane and dominate in that field. So now the separation is there. They're not going to associate you with, oh, that's T.I. shit. No, it's, it's yeah, T.I. Let my me say this. Rest, this is my shit. Let me say this, though. Honestly, T.I.'s son is being set up for the for the, for the, for the okie doke. Here's why. Them real street cats his age... They're going to say exactly what I'm saying. You a mansion, baby. What you know about this? I'm finna lay your ass down. And we all know that's the truth. You know them real street kids his age? They like, nigga, you ain't hard. Get up out of here. I guarantee you he ain't hanging around no real street niggas because they looking at him like, bro, you a mansion, baby. You don't right. know nothing about this. So he right. being set up for the okie doke in real life. Right, can the kids hanging around are kids who just want to get you know something from him? If he hang around real, real ghetto street niggas who have never seen millions of dollars, who have never been in the mansion, they're gonna tell him, "Yo, you live in a fake life if you're gonna I'm be not, acting like this." Look, but if you hang not, around other rich kids, then what you're doing makes sense to them because all y'all is rich. I'm champ. This is the thing, though. I'm not arguing if his influence is real. I mean, my fault. If his inspiration and motivation is real, fake or not. I'm just saying these could be the reasons, and we know because of that added pressure, because that's what the conversation also was talking about, just added pressure of celebrity kids. I'm sure at some point, Kwame kids have probably had more added pressure than the average man, just, you know, because he was a basketball player. It'd be like that. Right, but and I'm the gonna question say is, who is adding the pressure? Though? Where is the pressure coming from? Because I don't see anybody saying, if you don't do this or don't do that, you're not real. You're not T.I. kid. He's no, the one no, doing no. it by no, himself. No. And see, now, when we talk about what his achievement or what he thinks success or realness is, factors different for everybody. Just like the next kid, like you said, LeBron, he following his dad's footsteps, but in a different way because he do something else different. So, you know, the achievement and what he figures success is, you know, something different, even if he is fucking up because he's probably not looking to be a basketball player or whatever. You see what he, type of time he on. But so let me tell you something about LeBron kid, right? Black. LeBron's let me, kid. Let me, let me just and I'm about to shut up and hear where the pressure come from. Living up to the name of that's how you perceive it. I think if my dad was like somebody, I would think that I need to live up to something. It's a standard. I'm the next generation of trying to. So you know, that's where the pressure come from. Like, but like I said. It could be a different achievement for him. Being a thug might be the pressure he might feel or whatever. 
but it's just the pressure. Go ahead, Black. So let me say this about LeBron's son. Here's why I actually feel bad for him, right? Because he could average 20 and 10 in the NBA, and they still going to tear him apart. They still yeah. going to tear him apart because yeah. of who his father is. That's why, like, so that, you know, it's going to be hard for LeBron's son. Now, how many players in the NBA average 20 and 10, right? So he could be in the top 1% in the NBA, and it's still going to be hard for him because he ain't living up to what his father did. Well, you have to look at one thing, too. You have to look at the recruit. Okay, is he, is he a first-round pick, second, third round? You have to look at all that, too. It's not just, okay, you come into the NBA, you're not living up to your father. No, you have to look at what round he was picked as well. Because the thing is, when you have your own lane, when you carve out your own lane, you have to be judged by what you do, not by what your father did. You see, but that's so, not how the NBA work, bro. You know it's not going to work like that. They're going to be. Every... What I'm saying is, it's going to work like that because they're, you're going to see how they're going to do the recruiting. For example, if he was, if he's in college and he's not doing all that good, he's not going to go number one. So if you come in, if you come in number three or on the third round or fourth round, nobody's going to sit in in on, on TV with their remote and be like, "Oh my God, he should." No, they're going to be like, "Well, what hey, do you no, that's not true, bro." Off his name, if he if somehow you know make it into the NBA, if his daddy is LeBron James, no, it ain't. I know it's been a lot of great stars that had kids in the NBA, right? But at the same time, not LeBron James. That's like Michael Jordan kids. It was already pressure when they went to college. Imagine if they went to um to the to the league. And then people, even if they was the last round in in the second round, the 30th pick, they would still want to see what Jordan gonna do. People gonna turn on these TVs to see that. What Jordan gonna do? Is he like so let me man? You so publicly you said this. you were through with your kids. Do you still feel that way today, Kwame? What you say, bro? Fuck is this nigga talking? Kwame about? said he was pub publicly said he was through with his kids. Does he still feel that way today? Hey, nigga, I don't know who you is, but don't come on my panel acting like you some white boy, bitch. Show your face while you talking to me, then. Just answer the question. Show your face while you talking to Just me. Just answer, answer the, the question. question. Yes Show me or your no. Face first. Shut your bitch ass up. Who was having a good conversation? So anyway, like yeah, I was man, saying, you, know, you have come up here, yeah, man. you have two kinds of people that watch sports. You have fans, and you have people who actually know the game, right? If people who are watch who knows the game are watching, and mm -hmm. they see you go, no, and they see you go on the fourth round, fourth round. I don't care if your dad is 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 MJ plus LeBron plus Kobe. People who know the game, if they see you go fourth round, they're gonna say there's a reason why he went fourth round because he's not all that good. So when you come in, the expectations are not really that high, even though your dad is whoever. Now, fans will say, oh, my God, he's in there. He suck. He's not good at all. Look at him. His dad scores 30 points. And he only scored two, two points. Those are fans who don't know the sport. But people who know the game, they don't look at it like that. They look at it differently. But, you know, also, like I said, if he make it to the lead, and this is, I think, this would be business at this point for like an owner or something. I'm going, he's going to get eyes. On the TV, I, I guarantee it. I guarantee Fact. it, bro. It's gonna be hey, worth man, the payoff. Hey, let me ask you something, man. Should we call the people for that black dude culture appropriating with white face? <laughs> that dude that just left up here. He, that's the same dude. He keep culturally appropriating with white face. Yeah, yeah we, we should. We should, yeah, we should call him out. Right. Yeah, call we out. should. Let's get the woke mob on. Why yeah, the nigga scared to show his face? That's that bullshit. <laughs> I'm trying to pretend to be white. That's that. I thought you don't like Master. <laughs> <laughs> they love Master when it's beneficial to them. You know that. When it's beneficial to them, oh yeah, they love Master. When it's against their talk, their talking point, oh, they don't like Master no more. We know how they oh, play. Yeah. We know how they play. But anyway, back to what we're talking about. Nigga, hold, hold on, champ. Let me just say this right quick, everybody, just for one pause. These niggas be weird as hell. Like, I can only imagine. Like, it's funny. Like, damn, these niggas really popping on here like that. Y'all niggas weird as hell. Y'all would do this shit for the clout. Like, what type of time is you on, my nigga? Shit, you ain't saying nothing. When, when, like, Kwame, first started, when Kwame first started this, uh, he, he used to do... um. Uh, uh, on week wheels and Wednesdays, he will have like detractors moment where any detractor man they be doing some shit. He had one time I will never forget this. This guy came in 
and he bone rush. He have this thing in his garage where he, you know, like a punching bag. Soon as the camera got on him, this nigga bone rush the fucking punching bag. And then the other guy was driving. And he said, here go the police, here go the police. The nigga looked back. He really thought the police was behind him. Yo, that shit was funny to me. Kwame, you remember that shit? Oh, you forgot. Uh, Kwame, Kwame, you sleep? Uh, I forgot about what I was reading these damn chats. What did he say, uh, KB, bring out the strangest people in the world? I didn't bring this nigga out. Don't put that on me. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you be having motherfuckers come over here doing all kinds of shit. Yeah, man, man, I did not bring this dude out. I don't know what's wrong with these people, man. <laughs> I don't you got niggas with pictures of long hair white boys. Like, oh my god, they everybody tripping around this motherfucker. Yo, yeah, my whole thing is for a moment just to say, Oh, I got under his skin. Oh, I fuck with him. Oh, I this, and they don't know. I'm just I'm just gonna fuck with you back and then go right back to normal. You should bring up uh, what's the name back or uh, Santana. Oh, D Santana, he just came up here and smiled and ran with his uh boot thing yep. and came up here and said he, something to him. Yo, my whole thing is though, Jesus Christ, my whole thing is what's everybody's beef with this man? Like you got random people across America coming up here wanting to hate this guy. What's everybody beef? Like, yo, yo, Kwame, was you running around fucking everybody, bitches? What what what's going on here? <laughs> 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 so I had to go to sleep on that one. Like I ain't even hear that shit, nigga. I swear to God, on my mama. <laughs> no, man, I ain't do nothing. Oh, here go this nigga, man. Here go this hey, nigga, hey, nigga. Kwame, you know that's one of your supporters, right? <laughs> cool, man. Oh, man. 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 This man, this man, he look like he's so <laughs> This nigga acting like a sponge, oh, <laughs> Show us them dirty ass goals, man. Hurry hey. up. Hey, show us that dirty ass house, Oh, you nigga. took the goals out. Show, show us the oh, dirty you ass ain't really house, got nigga. no teeth in your mouth. Nigga, fuck you. I ain't take shit out. <laughs> you got nigga. teeth? Yeah, nigga. Why the fuck wouldn't I have teeth? Can you I got, see the teeth? Hey, you, you got, got shifting teeth? Hey, you got shifting teeth? You got shifting mm. teeth? I got what? You got shifting teeth? Go eat some almonds real quick. Go eat some almonds? I don't have yeah. no almonds. Yeah, you ain't got shifting teeth? Yeah, you do. What the fuck? Go eat some Boy, that, that shit pie. was stale as hell. That nigga came over here. That's how you cooking. Oh, man. Put it Boy, up. I got shifting teeth? Yeah, you do. What the fuck? What the fuck? Don't act like you surprised. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Boy, <lame laughs> that nigga do got shifting teeth. So yeah. you done been in my house. You done been in. You, you a been, dentist. I've you been know my everywhere dental around record. you. You know yeah. everywhere. You been everywhere around me. Yeah, is that, oh, no, is that no trespassing sign still knocked down? No, but the one on the tree up. Oh, oh my God! Hey, what the fuck? Hey, what about that pool, bro? You got cement in it? What pool? I don't have a pool. You got a pool in the back of your house, nigga. What the fuck? Damn! Tell what I got? It's a dry age pool. It looked like a nuclear bomb was dropped in that bitch. <laughs> I don't have a pool at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> I do not have a pool. Man, do y'all want to see these pictures? I, hey, Kwame, if I send them to you, you want you going to post them? You going to send me pictures? Oh, uh, your pool. Yes, yeah, sir. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to send you pictures of your pool. This nigga won't let me finish. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 D. Santana, was hey, it true that you nigga, is man. it true that you called 12? No, I didn't call him on it. He just man, lied. Yes, you did. Nigga, you called you him. Lied. Told me, I know who called him, but I ain't telling you. No, oh, how you knew right after the police left? Because I knew who called him. How you think I do? <laughs> so y'all conspiring to call the police on me and shit? No, I don't know. That's their business. I ain't calling on you. Man, so listen, what if they were the Black Lives Matter me and shit, man? That what you man, wanted? they wasn't about to, you, you was about to run, shit. You could, the only thing to stop you, you had a damn boot on. That's the only <laughs> thing to stop you. You was about to be, Why? hey, you was about to be, hey, these, hey, ask I don't, these I don't in that fucking woods. Officers. You was about to get ghosts. I don't run from police officers. I just don't open the door. I know, they gonna tackle your big ass. You ain't got no warrant. Why the fuck would I open the door? Because you scary, man. That's not scary. Uh, I know. Oh, wrong. you weren't gonna shoot them? They came on your property, right? Why would I shoot a police officer? But they came on your property, right? No trespassing, right? That's because a dumb son bitch called them. I know they called them for a wellness check. They thought you oh, was wellness going to, check. Yeah, they thought you was going insane yesterday. <laughs> you see what you did yesterday? So, yeah. so hey, wait, guys, do you think you did the wellness check yesterday? Hold on, let me ask you a question. So you gonna call the police to check to see if I'm well? What the fuck? I didn't call. I don't want no friends like you. 
I ain't Nigga, you could have called the ambulance to see if I was well. thought you was losing your mind yesterday. <laughs> well, why didn't you call the ambulance instead of the police? Well, shit, they should have. They should have called somebody. What if they, what if they would have popped me, bro? That's what you want for me, man? Nah, man. That's fucked up, dog. Then all your friends' YouTube channel will go down. <laughs> <laughs> why would it go down? We your content. We are you guys' content. We? Yeah. So what? what so what's the name of your group? Did you see Gilbert last night? Oh, please don't. No, oh, man. <laughs> this nigga dumb. This nigga, try, this nigga tried it, boy. Did you see him yeah. go for an underhanded? Yeah, man. You can't. You can't nigga, man. We, not, we not mentioning nobody over here. We don't need those guys. I don't know how in the hell he say that we, his content, when every time I go live. We ain't never seen that bitch ass nigga live. Yeah, crazy, man. Listen, he said I windmill for y'all windmill for me. Who that nigga windmilling for? Who is this guy? But they, mm -hmm. but they say you need all the help. Man, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You heard him say we, 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 we got them call. I say, man, as soon as the police walking off my porch, this nigga texts me talking about, hey, did the police come by there yet? I said, what the fuck? <laughs> How he got your number? They put my number on the internet. Damn. Motherfucker, no way you're leaving everything. He said, man, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, they put my address on the internet. That's crazy. Ooh, that's crazy. You got these stalking ass niggas out here moving like crazy females. That shit out of control. That's what I kept crazy. asking them, like, who the fuck is we? That's all they talk about. It. If you notice, they love to say we when it's fucking with me, but they always talk about, you can't be alone. You can't be alone. <laughs> I don't understand this shit. That's crazy. Ooh. Ooh, that's crazy. They paying that's crazy. people. They paying this woman to sit in my backstage all day. I I didn't record her ass, but they paying her to sit in my backstage. She get drunk, get on camera, and and, and talk about me on the panel all day. I could not understand what the fuck she was saying. She was so goddamn drunk. But goddamn, I don't know. Man, you don't got so many channels created, <laughs> all talking about you, man. Shit, you a, you a, you a YouTube celebrity. Shit. <laughs> man, they gonna prove my point. They're like they, they trying to make it out like it's some game, and they just playing a game and attack celebrity. But it's plenty of celebrities on YouTube that they're not attacking. So right. they come at me for I don't know what reason, but I think I got a good clue. Oh, we know, we know what reason. Yeah, they broke. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I got a good clue too. <laughs> <laughs> you got people saying hey, no fool, man. let me call let me mute my mic so I can call <laughs> you got people saying even if they're having sex as soon as he go live they're gonna leave sex and jump on live ain't that a motherfucker oh yeah oh shit bitch I gotta get up bitch I'm Kwame live bitch get your punk ass up off me <laughs> I am not leaving sex for nothing until I finish now hold on hold on somebody really said that yeah, yeah. oh no alright oh, oh no nah. Oh, no, nah, Kwame, these dudes in love with you. That's love right there. That, that's real love right there. Shit. Because I ain't, listen, leaving sex to go leave watch sex. another man? Nah, yeah. man, you won't, nah. Well, leave a man. They both said, I've been studying YouTube, but when you really turn out and look at it, he's been studying me. I've been the study on his YouTube time, because now... They they all do, especially they they boss that's causing all this mischief. Uh, he he's doing everything that I do, saying everything that I say. They love the word, this one. All right. they, they say shit I say so much I don't want to say it no more. Like ouchie, I don't even want to say that shit no more. With them <laughs> niggas I'm saying, them niggas done took over Mike Tyson. Them niggas take over everything I say. Shit. Them niggas said they gonna no, 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 share no more shit. I ain't gonna share no more of my lingo with them niggas because I don't want them niggas sounding like me every day. Them niggas, Mister Me Too ass niggas. These the dudes said I'm say, gonna yeah. leave a woman to the go watch them. Um, yeah. yeah. The only thing, the only thing they say yet is mama's cooking. That's the only thing left. That's the only thing they ain't say yet. Is mama's about not now, Kwame on live. <laughs> 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 them niggas be threatening their girl, bitch. If you don't take your hand off my leg, I told you. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's <laughs> tough. You know, in the game, come on after that, bitch. I done told you now. Them niggas be bad, bro. I don't get it. Oh, my goodness. This shit crazy.
<laughs> well, you feeding it. The thing about it, you ain't telling no lie, but these niggas are really obsessed like that. That's crazy. Yeah, but if you look at the positive, it sound part, like a joke. It sound like a joke, but it's a nigga out there doing that shit for real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you look at the positive side, Kwame's just feeding a lot of people. He's feeding haters. He's feeding friends. He's feeding literally everybody's getting mm-hmm. fed by by Kwame. So that's the positive side. You know, haters are getting fed. They really don't hate the man. They just making money from you know acting like. Oh they yeah, it, it, it paid way more to talk shit about that motherfucker. Right, you know <laughs> they done saying? found out. Right, so they know they know how the algorithm works. So everybody's it's getting money. These, these guys are free agents for white supremacy. Won't never crash. Ridiculous. Man, they really gonna be mad in like uh, about two. Two to three weeks, they gonna be, boy, they gonna shit bricks. <laughs> I'm telling my, they literally gonna shit bricks. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> that shit crazy. This shit is out of control. The chat is going up right now. Is it? Yeah, them niggas so negative, dog. I got the fucking flu or whatever I got. They see me having hot, cold spout. I put on a hoodie. Oh, that nigga ain't got no heat. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, what is wrong with you niggas, man? That nigga ain't got no hot water. Uh huh. Oh, my goodness, bro. I tell you, you feeding a lot of people, man. That's a good thing. I mean, shit. You're a living legend. You know, whoever got fed this much from one person? Facts. I've been trying to ask them that, but they keep telling me I ain't shit. You're a walking <laughs> legend, bro. I ain't shit. You're a walking legend. Say that boy, you two legend. Fuck you mean. I think a walking legend. Like, so let's, let's be for real with this shit. What did I say this much from one person? Like, after like two, three weeks, everything dies down and that's it. It's been going on two years and this nigga still feeding motherfuckers. Come on. Yeah, nigga, yeah. Nigga, never fucking oh, nigga, That nigga not your business talking about I was getting some head, getting, getting some head. Hold up, Kwame live. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if a nigga doing like that, boy, you need to get your life together. Oh, oh man, I fuck with Kwame man. too, but I ain't put hey, look, hey, 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 I don't give no fuck about that when when she doing that. If I, get a, if I get a phone call right now, uh, I'm coming. Are you home? I'm on my way. Okay, I'm gonna hang up. I'm gonna get off this live real quick. Oh, you gotta see you later, Kwame. It was Jeez. good talking to you. this live real quick. <laughs> <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> Turn my fucking light down, nigga. Put my music on. What? What? Get my shit ready. What? No, 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 no. These niggas are doing too much. I'll catch the post recorded version, please. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. These niggas are doing too much. Only time I will not mess with a female is if I have a fight coming up. If I have a fight coming up, then I will turn your shit down real quick. Other than that, nothing else will make me miss on my shit. Nothing else. Unless I have a fight coming up. That's it. That's the only thing that will make me miss out on my shit. Mm -mm. These niggas are crazy. These niggas are crazy. Can't do it. Absolutely can't do the shit. Kwame the big homie, but shit, look, hey. Look, hey, you y'all, hey, we know how I go, fellas. Shit, I, I, Kwame will get off the goddamn live. It's shit. He'll be like, all right, people, I can't let off. It was good. I've been out here chopping it up with y'all, but I gotta go. Apparently, we don't know how it goes. Man, <laughs> I was gonna get off the live, but y'all was having such a good conversation. Like everybody who came up, they were just banging out the topics. Like it wasn't a. It like we got a little spicy in there here and there, but we all you know toned it down. And, and I heard everybody point, even when I didn't uh, understand what ears were saying in the beginning. When he when he said it in the end, because uh, he wanted to do the one part first, but when he said that one part, I, I got it. So yeah, facts, facts. I think we had a good panel. I yeah, mean, it would it would it wouldn't be a fair panel if you didn't have somebody up here to push back. This panel would be way too one sided. So I gotta be goddamn. I, I don't mind being the bad guy. As long as y'all don't got them no, gonna cuss you, you, as long as y'all don't go to cuss me out and call me out my name, I don't mind y'all. I, 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 I don't ever do that. That, I, I, that ain't me. <laughs> I, I might got them say, hold up, hold up, let me say something. I am first up for that's stupid. Right, right. Yeah, I, 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 I can take right a disagreement. Up. I ain't got no problem with it. And I ain't gotta say you wrong or you're right. I can still, you know, keep my opinion and whatever and move on. Shit, I'm not here to try to be hundred percent right. I could be wrong. 
But I know how I feel and how I see it, and that's how we all should be able to have our own opinion. I right. can rock with a motherfucker like that all day. You don't got to come up off your point to appease nobody. You can say, yeah, no. Nah. I'm going to still keep my point and what I'm saying and how I'm saying it, but I respect your point, and we can go on to the next point. That's how and, you got to rock. And that don't make you a bad guy either, you know what I'm saying? Because to have a balanced conversation, you have to have different point of views. Because right. if everybody agree, something is wrong, okay? Right. Some, there has to be some kind of a different way of thinking, different opinion, different idea. Or oh, let's right. see it this way. Let's see it that way. It doesn't make anybody who is opposing a bad person. It just means they think differently and they see right. things a little different. And we are having a balanced conversation. We're not liberals where we just go yeah. all that. We all go left. I took, think a little, uh, I took a little piece from all of y'all that was on the panel. I agree with a certain point of everything that everybody said on the panel. That's the beauty of, of having conversations with people. It's not about agreeing with everything. It's about finding that through line. When I'm having conversations with you or anybody on the panel, I ask questions to induce things out of you, not to cut you off. Right. When my question, when you when you respond to my question, normally you give the answer that I'm looking for throughout the conversation. So if I interject to cut you off to ask you that, it's just to get something out of you for you to keep going. That's all it is with me. Facts. 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 But I take this from everybody because everybody has I look at it like we got five people up here with five different uh, vantage points like that movie. And it doesn't mean that you're wrong. We're looking at the same target. We're looking at the same situation, but we all are figuring out different ways to get there. And we look at we look at it different. It don't right. make it wrong. It don't make black thoughts wrong. It don't make how you say the damn name again. This is a funny little damn name. Tizzle. <laughs> it don't make it wrong, and it don't make champion wrong. So right. it, that's the way it go. We got to all start moving with that energy instead of. I'm not trying to talk uh, nobody into. Uh, believe in my point. I just want you to hear my perspective. That's it. Right. And then some topics are, are more polarizing than others. Some of them are more sensitive than others. Some of them are more touchy than others. Some of them are, you know, very, very, you know, liberal. You know, some of them, you know, so I think that the the, the energy. <laughs> and, and that'd be my my yeah. thing too. I just want to make sure my point, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm getting off what I'm saying. I don't give a damn nobody agree with it. I just want it right. to be heard. Right. And, and that's what we need. We need a healthy debate. We need, you know, like I said, some subjects are very touchy than others. And, you know, the, the emotions uh, uh, that, that, we, that, we, that we invest in those conversations and the intense and all that is all needed. You know, the energy, you know, all that is, is, is good. You know, at least we're learning from each other. Because when I come on here, I'm, I come to learn. Really, I, I come to learn because... Mr. J, you rolling and listening. You know how to roll. Oh, Lord, let's get married. Oh, oh, my bad, keep going. Shit, you over here. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I need to roll up too. I'm gonna go to sleep, but fuck this shit. I'm gonna roll up. Roll up. And the only thing is, I'm, I'm, about to too. I'm on my way to this damn job. Shit, it's about that I, time. Mean, I don't smoke. I don't, and I don't drive, drink. Bro. I don't smoke. I, don't I got drink. a late start this morning. I had to go take me a little nap. <laughs> Oh, hell no. You, hey, look, I fell asleep one time when you was debating. I fell asleep. Like, oh, shit. I, I, I got off. I was like, man, I'm about to go to work. I thought I talked about six. So I go to work then. I was fucking around. I was like, man, I need to take me a nap all over again. I had to slept all day yesterday. So that's why I was up. So I said, like, I need me a whole nother motherfucking nap. I already put my energy out fucking with Kwame. Man, y'all help me out a lot because with this cold sleep, it, it, like the nighttime is the hardest thing for me because right. I be cooking up coughing and shit. In the daytime, I kind of get my energy, and then sometimes I can fall asleep in the day, but at the nighttime, it's rough, boy. And right now, it's like 50, 53 degrees right now. So well, it's, that, it's that cool. weather changes so quick, boy. It, it ain't got a little nippy down here, even in Florida. Oh, what you said? It was freezing. Shit, I don't know how cold it is there, but it's 53 well, degrees cold. right now. So it's, it's, it's really like it's, it's cold. Not too cold, but it's cold. Cold enough to wear a jacket. Yo, down here, one day with 70 degrees. The next day, I'm getting up to go to work. Step outside, that, that cold biting on the ass. I'm like, damn, what the hell done happened here? When it get cold in Florida, Florida, I know everywhere else is fucked up. I mean, Texas don't be cold like that, but, so, but sometimes it get real cold. Like last That's time they had a fucking or they had the pipes had busted because it was so cold and they had snow. Oh yeah. 
few years back, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you, man, I wish I could have moved to Texas around, well, went to Texas for a few months around that time. Boy, I'd have made so much money. For real? Yeah, I'm a plumber. So I'd have made, oh, I'd have made okay. boo-boo bucks. Yeah, because we wasn't ready for that shit. We don't even know what that shit looked like. So we had people boiling the snow and then using it to cook the water to, to bathe and cook. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they were oh, up. Man. <laughs> yeah. That's that, it was bad. It was bad. It was very bad. We wasn't prepared for that shit. And then every time it's snow in Texas, they don't have the truck that go and, and, and scoop the snow off the street and clean it up. We don't have those trucks. Mm. So we just sit there and let it and let it just melt out. So however long that takes, that's how long it takes. And people be skiing and shit when they're driving, running into the fucking barricades. So yeah, it it's, bad out here. it's always interesting to me when I see places down south have snow. You know, I know it. It, it be just how you, how you say it be like anarchy, baby anarchy. They they're not ready for it. Like oh yeah, man, yeah. that's crazy. Yo, down here in North, well up here in North Carolina, well down here in North Carolina, right? They had a, a quarter inch of snow. Let me tell you, there was no bread, milk, or eggs for miles. Let me, listen, they, 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 canceled, they canceled school. They Nobody was on a the road. They went haywire. Now, I'm from New York, so I'm looking. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I step outside. It's a, a quarter inch of snow. I'm like, what the hell? They, yo, yo, they go crazy. Hey, Ken, yeah. you done went to sleep and woke up, too? Because I did that, too, during this live. Shit, I done went to sleep, woke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. I'm like, yo, when I turned it on this morning, when I was driving, I said, is this pre-recorded or is this live? And then when yeah, I heard I, the when young When I woke up, I was like, God damn, these motherfuckers still live. I was like, I went to the kitchen, got me some coffee and all, drunk me some tea and coffee. I say, man, goodness gracious. But you know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the bear of bad news because at the time they was having a really good conversation, right? So I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm just." Gonna I gotta go back and catch what y'all was saying when I was gone. I didn't. I didn't want to uh, end up falling asleep, and then they got tired of talking, and then they ready to go. They like, "Kwame, Kwame, where you at, Kwame?" I'm like, "Oh shit!" But my eyes had closed for a second. Boy. Yeah, we've had a long live. This is probably the longest live we've ever had. Shit. Yeah, nah, I see them I have mine online, but this done took the cake, boy. Yo, champion, how long was you up here? Shit, I was here. Champion came up here the, the whole time. No, I came in here. When, I came in here. I came in here when it was like three hours in. Oh, I was three hours in when you came. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, so I was about cussing and talking shit at first. Wait, so the champion pulled the eight hours shift, huh? <laughs> he done did the whole route. Oh. <laughs> for the I whole damn. I be coming in late because you know I'd be like, okay, after 40 minutes it ended, boy. This shit went forever. Man. This shit went 10 hours and 24 minutes. Oh, oh god. They, they had conversation. People wanted to talk. Shit. I say, man, look, I can't cut this live off when they got content like this. We had 700 people, 600 people in the chat maintaining the whole time. <laughs> And and everybody was the chat been lit the whole time. The whole time. Uh, that then was we go in the chat lit to the motherfucker laughing. The motherfucker done switched. The motherfucker done switched on me three, four times already. Oh, they switched well. on me so many times. <laughs> <laughs> they they were talking shit about me. But it make me oh, laugh. Yeah, champion funny. take that shit on the chin. He the man, champion be the one. They be like, shut the fuck up. One minute. They be like, good point, champion. Good point, <laughs> champion. Yeah. I <laughs> I noticed that. I was like, man, Champion need to shut the fuck up. Man. Oh, yeah, Champion telling them facts. <laughs> I just told him to shut the fuck up. Now he telling them facts. <laughs> I be laughing. Chat, though. You cannot worry about the chat because they going to say all kind of shit. Quality I be laughing. Let uh, ears talk. I be laughing, bro. Well, they, they be killing the, everybody in the chat. Yeah, they don't give a damn about nobody in the chat. They don't give a damn. They don't, they don't have a favorite. They just go after everybody. Hell no, nah, they ain't got no favorite. The motherfucker got there, get on any goddamn body here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> when, <laughs> when Love Lake, when Juicy, was, uh, Juicy Fruit was up there, and she was talking. I interrupted. I said something. They talking about, Quabby, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to lie, because I'll be in the chat trolling Quabby sometimes, too. 
<laughs> Nothing would have been shit. <laughs> yeah, and I so, laugh. Man. I take it in stride, man. Especially when I go, I, I damn sure don't trip. Them trolls, sometimes I just use them as content. But I just be laughing, man. This chat is I be laughing. That's all I do when I look at the chat. I just laugh because those guys are funny, man. They be calling yeah. me all kinds of shit. They be like, oh, champion, you wasn't, you're not even from here. Why are you talking about black people? You're not even from here. Um, excuse me. Oh, damn, I missed that one. I might have bust out laughing. Oh, you they say it all the time. Look, where you from? I'm about to say, I bet that's a go-to shit. Oh, I they say you. that all the time. They be like, Champion, you're not even from here. Why you keep speaking about black people? I'm like, um, what the <laughs> what? <fuck?" laughs> you black. Like, where do I need to be from to speak about black people? Like, I thought I was black the whole time. Like, what the fuck? Man. I mean, these people are crazy. They're like, where he from? I'm like, I told you so many times. I was born you in Chicago. About the chat is undefeated. You cannot beat the chat. If you worry about the chat, your ass is going to get a headache. I'm yeah, I'll be laughing. Not, that's all I'll be doing is laughing when they say that shit. I'm like, y'all niggas crazy. I told y'all so many times I was born in Chicago, bro. I went to Tilden High School. How black do I need to get? Like, They don't want you to talk like that no more. They want you to talk like them. What's up, bro? <laughs> I mean, I can do that too, but I don't be, I don't be trying like to do us, that. You know what I'm saying? Real though, my nigga, straight like that. <laughs> That's how you got to talk to be black now. I mean, I do that, but then I don't prefer doing it. You know what I'm saying? I don't prefer talking like ghetto. I can talk ghetto if I want to, but I don't prefer doing it. I don't you think know. you can do it. You got that goddamn smooth ass action. She, I don't think you can do it. she, 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 like Idris, Idris Elba on this motherfucker. How you say his name? <laughs> Idris Elba. You know about this boy look like Idris. <laughs> Idris. <laughs> Who said I look like Idris? Oh my God! I say you, you got that. You got that voice. You using this voice? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You oh, Idris, Idris, my Idris Alba, the actor, right? Yeah. I don't sound like. Do I sound like him? Shit, I don't know. I just thought it'd be funny to say shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about to say Bobby just over there talking about <laughs> shit. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> trolling. If I trolling. Talk like, <laughs> <laughs> I right, look. If I, if I talk, if I talk like this. <laughs> Um, Man, I gotta let this. I gotta let this girl up. She been in the back room so long. I don't understand what the fuck is going on. You been back you. here ten hours. What the fuck? Oh, she on? came on me. You been back there drinking and smoking for ten motherfuckers. Your face red in the motherfucker. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> no makeup, baby. Oh, you got music in the background, girl. You know you cannot play no fucking music on YouTube. Turn so what if music. I talk? What if I talk like this? How are you guys doing? How is everybody doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who that was, Kwame Tam? Who that was, Kyle Kwame? Uh, who that was, Kyle? Kyle Kwame? Yeah, who that was? That's the same young lady they keep interviewing. That's the same young lady they keep interviewing. Talking about she my wife and she go beat up JJ and all kinds of shit. I'm like, what the fuck? They interview her? Yeah, she yeah. was drunk than a motherfucker the other day. She said, hey, hey that's when we game say, fight for your man. You know what I mean? Fight for your love. <laughs> like, what the fuck is you telling this girl to fight for the love? What the hell is you talking about? <laughs> man, them motherfuckers be running plays, man. That, that shit crazy, man. That shit sad. Oh. These niggas grown? Are these grown men, y'all? Are, are, are all the men in the panel? Yeah, can y'all please tell me? Are these grown men? Like, what are y'all seeing? I don't get this shit. I don't know, but this shit gets spooky and spooky about a month. So I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Not he interviewing people to talk about what? Wow. Um, somebody got a whole channel from Kwame Brown. So this shit is real. Somebody got a whole a whole um he got a whole like channel from Kwame Brown. He couldn't go up of his own name. He needed Kwame's name. So this shit is serious. This shit is serious. This shit is serious. Told these niggas to go do that shit. <laughs> yeah, but they don't even <laughs> believe gonna make a they don't believe they could do it. It's so, it's it, okay. <laughs> Muffle got a whole channel off his I name. Thought the motherfucker was gonna make a page and then be able to, you know, take the the, the look that they get and do their thing. Like I didn't make Urban Politician page, but I think he does great content. He took the little lick, the little shine, and kept doing what he do. I didn't make damn these page. He got some subscribers and he did what he do. I was bit. It, it helped me to use his videos as well. So. I look at things as a mutual beneficial thing. I just don't look right. at the way they see it. And you know how and you know how this this YouTube game is like it is an algorithm game. If everybody go subscribe to this guy and everybody subscribe to that guy and all of them like if you do it like that, everybody gonna be making money like crazy. But we that's don't what get they it. were doing at first. We don't it, get it. Wasn't it. Until, it wasn't until Tammy started it when he didn't get the interview with Judge Joe Brown. 
Then he kept going and going and going. He has a large cult like following. So they're going to run with him and think it's funny with all the stupid shit that he says. Because a lot of people are cowards. So they take uh, joy to hear somebody fat mouthing behind a computer. Right. Um, uh, they're used to doing that in video games and all kind of shit. So now that they think that I took Tommy off the internet, because that's the narrative that they put out, then all of his fans attack. Uh, then, then this group over here didn't like me no more. This person finding a reason to say something because it makes money. So right. everybody want to get paid. So that's why I kind of stay back. I don't really get close to people like that. I stay back. I salute you. But I don't want you to be the guy. That, that ain't nothing worse than double cross. You right. are in real life, you ain't close enough to bother me. Mm -hmm. You say whatever on the internet, but in real life, though. And, and the, the surprise that, that, that happened with you is, you know, they have, um, you have one hit wonders. Okay. They blow up. After five minutes, everything goes, you know, everybody forget. That's what they thought was going to happen with you, but it went on and went on and people started making money after money after money. So you became a giant. And now it's like, Instead of making money, they want to see how they can defeat you. But this is not a fight. This is not a fight. This is not a let's, let's get him down so we can get up. Oh, you don't have to do that. Hey, but hey, look, Kwame hey, is hey, winning hey, the battlefield. Subscribe to my page, we. And somebody go make that page for real. What? <laughs> look, but Kwame is getting the battlefield and talk that shit. That's why niggas, even the haters, gonna come back because we we want it. Niggas do promote that bullshit. Y'all do know that though. He getting that battlefield, so niggas be want to hear that shit. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. And that's that's facts though. That's facts because you know the the mind you know cannot be occupied with just positivity. We always like like a little drama here and there, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of get a balance. You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and that's cool. But make it about that. Don't just go haywire to where they now. They making money with the rose thing, but they they started going dark. People don't want to hear you talking about deceased people and loved ones and all that. Right. If they would have kept it between the content creators and, and things like that, man, people would have enjoyed that shit. Don't nobody give a fuck about your feelings. Right. And then this, and then this is the internet. People will say things that will hurt you. Like people will literally say things that will hurt you. But that's oh, it's gonna internet. crush you if you let right. it. it is like that, that, that's, that's just the stop internet. On your ass. Exactly. That's just the internet. You know, people just take everything to the heart. Like somebody sitting in front of them. Like no, once you turn your shit off, you forget everything. It's the internet. That's why when they talk about cyber bullying, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Cyber bullying. Can you imagine walking around <laughs> with your big ass talking about somebody was bullying me online? Huh? That's what you saying about me. I don't understand. But here's the thing. What's that champ? But let me ask you this. It's like this. And everybody can weigh in, chat, everybody. It's like, but when a motherfucker. You say, huh? No, I was telling ears. He got to unmute his own mic. Oh. When what's the problem with somebody responding back? You see, like a Katie respond back or something like that. Niggas only want to make it a big deal when it's somebody with a lot of paper fame. They like it don't. You know what I mean? Like, oh, why is he responding back? Because, I'm gonna tell you what it is, bro. They, they, it hurts their feelings when we respond back and we get one off. Do you see what DJ Academics did? He was okay when he was picking on that woman. He was fine and dandy when he was winning and everybody was laughing. The mm -hmm. moment she said something that everybody else laughed at, it changed the mood in the room. Right. And and if you crazy. notice, they bring they bring up girls that really they they in their opinion, they they bring up girls that are not really that smart, and then to kind of embarrass them and then be like, you see, this is this is the kind of girls that is out there. This is what every, they want to use those group to to paint everybody, you know, in one brush. But then they get surprised when they get a few smart ones. And those ones challenge the shit they be saying, then now they want to say something to make them mad so they can kick them out. Because they don't want to have a healthy debate. They want to have a got you moment. I told you so moment. You see, these girls right here, they don't know nothing about the real world. And then they will get the ones that are not really smart and then have them say some stupid shit and then they kick them out. If you want to have a debate about, man, bring me up on that show. Let me show you how to have a debate. You know what I'm saying? Because some of these girls, like I said, they only fans, they don't know shit about life besides OnlyFans. So if you want to have a debate about women, you don't bring those kind of people. Talk to people who have common sense, people who are in a professional world, people who are making money and paying taxes. You know what I'm saying? People who have a uh, you know, career, who have a goal. Bring them on your panel and let me see if you can kick one of them out. You will never do that. Because anything you say, 
they will be able to have that conversation on that level with you, no matter how deep you want to go. And they will have it respectfully without being mad or having tantrums all over the place. But they don't want to do that. I just don't understand. Just I, I just don't understand how they talk to the females like that in person. Like I ain't never seen dudes talk like that in real life. Like that's not you're not gonna get a good outcome like that. If yeah. if a good outcome is what you're looking for, you might want to leave out the B word and might want to not yell and might not want to be so aggressive. So to but see then, DJ academics like that, I'm like, damn, no wonder he friends with that dang on Tammy. Oh, yeah, man. But the thing, yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, they, they know the girls they're talking to, in my opinion. They know these girls. They see these girls are only, if you are on OnlyFans, you know, you've lost a lot of respect for yourself to begin with. So it doesn't really matter how somebody talks to you or approach you. So those yeah. are the kind of girls they bring to their show to begin with. They don't bring girls from college who have something going on to their shows. They only bring girls who are from OnlyFans or Instagram models. Like I said, people who really who they know don't have it up there, yes. so they would disrespect those ones easily, easily. versus somebody who have it up there. Absolutely, you know what I mean? if my auntie sense. goes on that show, they will not disrespect her because first of all, she's a she's a um, nurse practitioner. She have her own clinic. You know what I'm saying? She's been doing this for 20 years. She have kids in college, so if she goes on that show and talk about anything, they will never disrespect her because they have never seen her naked. Or on OnlyFans, or the level of respect is different. But the ones they get is a bunch of thoughts who want to twerk on, on, on well, live. But let's be honest, right? Many in our community don't even want to have a coherent conversation. They mm -hmm. want the drama. They want the bullshit. And it, and look, we all want to do a little bit of that, but it can't be about that all the time. Sometimes you got to educate yourself. But, yeah, you know, people and, just feed the bullshit all the time. Right. And you say many, many in our community don't want to have that conversation. The truth is they do, but we don't go after those ones. These fools don't go after those ones. They go after the knuckleheads. Because like I said, if you want to, bro, I've met some women who can hang like intellectual conversation about some important shit and they can hold their level against me. You know what I'm saying? And I respect that. You see, and I've met some knuckleheads who... If I go any deeper than I go, oh my God, they will lose you real quick. They'll be looking at you like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? You see what I'm saying? So those are the ones they're looking for. You know, if anybody's on OnlyFans, man, I have no respect. For, I'm not going to say I have respect for you, but I will never take you seriously if you're on OnlyFans because you, you're you selling yourself for $3, right? $3, everybody's paying to watch you. I'm not paying $3, but for, by the way, but I'm just saying, that's what they're doing over there on OnlyFans. So if you come to my panel to speak, I will not regard your opinion. I will not um, look at you as somebody who have something valid to say because you're on OnlyFans selling yourself. But if you come in, you dress appropriate, you carry yourself very, very appropriately, speak correctly, you have some kind of educational background, I will talk to you like somebody who I can hang with uh, intellectually. Champ. You sure you're not paying for OnlyFans? Because three dollars—that was the odd number to just throw out there, and they'd be like, "I'm not money. paying the three dollars." That's a lot of money. Three dollars is a lot of money for. I was thinking that looking. too. Like, why you keep going to the three dollars subscription? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, like, that's how much it costs. That's how much it costs on there. If you go, if you go on Twitter, if you go on Twitter, they be having their page advertising on Twitter. Two ninety nine, three dollars, three ninety nine. That's how much it costs. And I will never pay that much to see something I can see for free. You see what I'm saying on X videos. It's free, so why would I pay three dollars to watch it on, on, on some dumb website? All right, we and don't even know why people can do that. Can you imagine having a kid and they on OnlyFans? That's 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 terrible. I mean, what would you tell your child? Y'all talking about OnlyFans? Could you the kids that are doing list crawlers? Y'all know what that is? List. I have no idea what that is. Well, look at my son on OnlyFans. I wouldn't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> so if well, I, you, say, daughter, I'm a cry. you say your son that's a boy i'm not saying yeah, i'm not giving him a pass only, you had, had a boy <laughs> i give a whole had a boy <laughs> i mean I, if, I hate to say it. sorry lady if but he a guy i mean i won't give him a pass but a guy is different from a woman you know a guy is like you have so many chances to to mess up and get it right but a woman you only have limited chances to mess up and get it right that's the difference a guy could mess up so many times and get it right at some point. Yeah, that you for saying that shit. Oh, I'm just giving you facts. A woman have only a few 
chances to okay for example if everybody have seen your video where you're doing some fuckery as a woman i know it's guys out there who will still marry you and have kids with you because we know a guy who did that but it's not like what everybody wants that's not the kind of woman that everybody wants but do, everybody, year, agree? do everybody agree with that say that one more time brother yes he's completely right okay so let me say it again if everybody see you on video doing your fuckery with different people on video are you the kind of person that everybody would prefer to marry as a first choice oh no i, I, I can't no, agree with that not, yeah I, I would have to say no, i decline no, that no, notion exactly but if a guy is seen on video doing the same fuckery i'm sure it's women out there that will marry him oh yeah it would it would be women but it would be also women that's disgusted though you see what I'm saying? So for a guy, you have so many rooms to make mistakes. But for a female, it's only limited. It's only limited. You know, that's why every time you ask a girl how many people you've been with, sure. she will say maybe one or two. It could be 20. She would just say one or two. Because if she go any higher than two, now you're like, mm, hmm, why I got to do all this just to get it? You've been with like four people. You want me to do this and this and this just to get it? Uh, no, let me go try somebody else. That's just what you're going to get. That's how guys think most of the time. You know what I'm saying? But if a guy tell you he's been with five females, six females, and he got money, they'll they'll let you, you know, they'll still fuck with you. But the female is different. I'm just being honest. The the playing field is not level. I didn't set the rules. I'm just saying. But at the same time, let me say this right. Without knowing a female body count, a nigga is really in frolicking in the mind anyway. You want to assume that this be, don't ain't been messing with nobody. You hear me? Even though she got two or three kids, you like to have this grandiose idea. Oh, no, it's really just me or maybe three or four of the guy. Nigga, you don't know this girl, Pat. This woman been living 35 years. You think she ain't got down? You think you know, she ain't shook that tree a couple times? Like, did you say three. a nigga is frolicking in the mind? Like, nigga, you to frolic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... How I see it is, how I see it is, when you were a woman, you have to mentally tell yourself that you're the only one and just kind of live with that. That's just how that goes. The moment you get out of that zone, now you are in wonderland. Now you are, now you got to start looking through shit. Now you got to start asking questions. Now you got to start being sneaky and all that. You ain't got to just believe that you are the only one. And that's just that. That's just how it is with a woman. You know what I mean? You have to have that mentality like, okay, you know what? I'm the one here, I'm the one now, and that's what it is. Don't worry about what she's doing out there because if you look, you will find. And if you find, you might not like what you see. So don't stress your brain. Just relax and just play along. And when you get tired, it's okay to break up. It's not a contract. You know what I'm saying? It's not a contract. You can always break up. But whenever I'm dealing with a woman, I always have it in mind that I'm the only one. That's just my thing. Hey, hey I, I, I agree with you now, uh, uh, champion, because most of the time when I'm dealing with a female, I just be like, man, you know what? As long as I don't catch your motherfucking ass, don't let me catch you. Fact. I just, I just keep it out of my head. I know she going to do what she going to do regardless. Fact. But if, if I'm just here for my personal reasons or whatever, and like you say, if you, if you can't take what the fuck you find out, then you got to go. But just don't yeah. let it hurt you no more than you can you can put out that shit. And sometimes you could self-inflict wound on yourself. Because like I said, right. if you find, you will find, brother. Because one thing I know is this. If I'm in the house with you, the moment you leave that door, in my mind, I have no control over whatever is going on out there. So why should I worry about what's going on out there when I can't even control it? It's not like I could press my remote and press pause, rewind, forward. I can't do that. So whenever you leave out that door, in my mind, I have no control over what's going on out there. So I am going to tell myself I'm good. You say right? you're going to tell yourself, give up on the bitch. So she leave out the door like, uh-uh. Like my, my feelings thing is are disconnected now. <laughs> my, my thing is this. My thing is this. I love you when I'm looking at you. Once you leave out that door, shit. <laughs> and when you come back again, I love you. That's just how I see it. Because, hey, well, I know you never, I never, I know you never told a woman that shit, but you ain't got no I, woman. I, I never told. Like, look, hey, see, hey, ears, 
ears, look, there are things that we never tell women, but we keep it to ourselves, right? right because right. there are things you... I'm just saying, I love you and I'm with you, but when you go out that door, I mean, you could be doing whatever out there. I don't know. So whenever you come back, I love you again. But I'm not going to tell you that, but that's just how I feel. Because right, I know right. what I do. I'm just telling you the truth because I've been in situations where, matter of fact, five years ago, I was doing, no, seven years ago, I was doing security, right? I was, I was a security officer. Now, this shit goes down at the parking lot almost every time I go to work, you see. So I know what I do when I step out the house. And I'm assuming that they're probably doing the same thing. So why would I sit here and be stressing myself over something I can't control? You see what I'm saying? Like, it can happen quick. Like, man, you never had a quick, quick. It can happen quick, real fast. And everybody go by their business and go back to their husband and their wife and their boyfriend. It happens like that all the time. So That's when you with me, I don't, when you're out there, I don't know. And when you're out there, you know, when you come back, I love you again. That's just how it is. And see, that's the conclusion you come to when you done fucked a bunch of dudes, girls. That's when you know, oh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Hey. Listen, listen, what shorty lead a crib? I'm out of here. But you only come to that conclusion when you done banged a bunch of dudes, girls, and you're like, oh, this shit is real out here. Blank, right. blank. I fuck all the niggas, females. How can I trust mine? Big facts. How can I trust mine? I fuck other dudes, females. How can I trust mine? So the same shit I'm doing to other motherfuckers, motherfuckers probably doing it to me. Yeah, but again, I'm not going to stress myself over that. Of the dice. Mm -hmm. It's a roll of the dice. Exactly. So you can't look at a female, you know, you know, like um, somebody who has no control over her life. She have freedom, just like you do. She have 100% freedom to leave, come in, leave. So you have to have it here that I'm the only one. And that's all you need right there. Unless you see something, then you do something. If you don't see nothing, just, you know, just keep it moving like that. And sometimes cheating can help a relationship last longer. People don't know that. Let me tell you why. Only if I'm cheating. I've helped so let, many. let me tell you why. You see, oh. sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, there is this one person that you always go to to relieve your stress from your old lady. That girl or that side piece have kept your relationship going for years. If it wasn't for her, you would have been broke up with this chick. But because you have a side stress reliever that you go to, it allows you to keep dealing with your chick for however long. Some females have the same thing. They have a guy that gives them, I'm you know. Gonna, I'm going to have to come out and give major pushback against that. I oh, man. Know. Kwame, you can't. Ah, Kwame, you, you can't do that. You can't I do want, that. I'm speaking for a lot of guys right now. I'm speaking for I a lot of guys I want champion right as now. my therapist. Shit. Sometimes I, I, there's this one chick. Does that work both ways, though? So is it okay? No. Are you saying that the dude can uh, make the, the woman want to stay, too? I'm not saying it's right. Oh, wrong. Oh, yeah, because I'm, I'm just saying, brother, I've never done it. I, I When I'm in a relationship, I, I, I haven't done that. Shit. Uh, I'm going to have to give pushback uh, on this panel uh, for all the men that don't do that. Black men don't cheat. Um, yeah. Now, now let me say this. Let me say this. You see, yeah. some see people... Last motherfuckers that were saying that. Some yeah. people have come to terms with this reality. That's why they have an open relationship. Because <laughs> it happens. And they don't want to deal with it like that. So they don't, you know what? Let's just have an open relationship. Some people have come to terms with this reality. And some people still believe that, you know, it's not happening. You get what I'm saying? Why I know this is because I have been a therapist for somebody. You see what I'm saying? Every time she come over, I am her therapist. <laughs> That's and what I you call it? You're a I therapist? therapist. <laughs> 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 you said you were giving somebody therapy. I have been a therapist for somebody. So whenever she come over... Yeah, stroke and, therapy. And, <laughs> hey, hey. Whenever she come over and give me all her problems, I'm going to give her the therapy. And then she goes back home happy. Hey, look, the women you agree know? with you. They said facts, champion. They agree with you. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, when you've been with somebody for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, the same problem that you deal with the first time you, you, you met them becomes harder to deal with later on. Boy, you ain't lying about that. Is low. Where is that drunk white lady? Oh, she right here, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, damn, so, Kelly, you've been waiting back there patiently, ain't it, girl? 
Oh, I don't know what so, the fuck she wrote. I don't so, really know what she wrote. So, so what I'm saying to you, uh, she did me the same way the other day. Uh, Kwame, my bad, not to cut you off. She did me the same way. She sat back there for hours. Every time she came up, her mic was fucked up. I was like, damn, what the hell going on? So, what so, I'm saying is, KB, you know, a lot of us in who have been in a long term relationship, we have a getaway. A lot of relationships are lasting 20 years, 30 years, because there's a getaway. I'm just giving you facts from what I know. There is a getaway somewhere, somehow. W- women have oh, their I'm getaway. I'm not getting married, then. Fuck this shit. You done fucked it up for any girl that I was going to think about marrying. Because you get away, you ain't got damn it. Uh-uh. Hey, man, don't talk, don't, talk to no, don't, don't talk to no young man. Don't talk to no young man that's thinking about going to get married. You're going to fuck that whole man world. No, up, I, man. I told you. <laughs> hey, Aries. Aries, I told you. All y'all women that can't agree with this Aries. shit. Get away. What the fuck? Hey, hey Aries, you, I told you, you, you have truth. to think that you are the only one. I gave you that too. But I'm also telling you another side of the reality. The reason why some relationship lags for a long time is because people have getaways. Just because you don't catch them or see it, don't mean it's not right. happening. And they accept it. Like you say, you know, they accept it. They accept what they can't control. You know, like if you're a type of person that you you just got to have all the control and shit, you probably ain't going to make it. But you, you got to accept that. You, you got to accept that, you know, after maybe seven, ten years, that you ain't going to be the same fine nigga that you were to her back then. The same and vice versa. You and might love the hell out of that person, and, but, you know what and, I'm saying, it might be a little bit mischief, but the best right, thing and, is, and, don't ask no fucking questions and don't look for nothing. You right and, and right and the stroke game the stroke game is a little bit more like quickies because the right. first time you want to you want to make impression you want to let them know i got this you want to pull the wig off drag the lace off the tracks the wig. You show them, i got this right but after five six years you're not gonna use that same energy no more because what am i trying to prove like hey man I've, trap been in some wild situations Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> look Jeffy I'm saying, Jeffy been, been wild out here in these streets, man. We think Jeffy hey. got down straight up and down, dude. Jeffy been running through something. Hey, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, when we talk as men, you like, you know, you will hear some shit. But all I'm saying is this: all relationship ain't perfect because we see it online and we see all of them ain't perfect. There is something that's there's happening behind the scene that is keeping it going. Every relationship have that. Some females just have this guy that they talk to on the phone for an hour and he will just make them feel good on the phone and they'll go back to their man and keep it moving. Some people have this guy that they go get some from. Everybody have their getaway. Your man can be everything. Your female can be everything. You got to have a getaway, which a lot Hold of people on, do I have. got somebody to call. Y'all take over the panel. Fuck this shit. I got somebody to call right now. I'll be back. <laughs> You trying to call your getaway? No, uh, no, no, no. Hell no. Hell no. He trying to call his man. Make sure she ain't trying to get away. <laughs> he, he gotta call his man, make sure she ain't trying to get no little getaway right now. <laughs> you about to get somebody fucked up. Man. Hey, you, you done got quite a round up. You're like, oh, hell no. Nah. Hell hell <laughs> hey, look. Hey, uh, 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 here's the thing. Here's what's saying. If you have control issues, my thing is this if you have control issues, don't apply it to women because you're gonna end up stalking them. You're gonna end up making them uncomfortable, asking them where they at, who they're talking to, but, looking but at their a person phone. with control issues. They usually can't be by themselves. They gotta have somebody to control. You know right, but saying? the thing that's, is, that's kind of how that works. Yeah, but the thing is, you don't want to apply it to a relationship because now you're gonna be stalking your own somebody that you live with. You're gonna be stalking them. What sense does that make? I had champion. Check this out, bro. We got a goddamn unicorn in the house. Hold on, let me see. I never Shit. cheated on my husband. Yeah. And we've been together twenty one years plus six years married. That that, that wow. that's facts. That could be facts. Do you I mean you never got caught? Uh, now cheating does. I mean, some some women only consider cheating when they get caught. Facts. Facts. <laughs> I'm just being. Now, what about this new shit? Did they ever take a break? Oh that's yeah, what, that that break should be that mean. break shit. That's what I'm saying, bro. You yeah, you guys are making my point. It's, it's times when you might get argue with your girl and be like, okay, well, fuck it. Yo, you fuck you too. Y'all take a two, three day break. She been Within waiting for day, I took a two year break. I took a two year break. You and be back. like, damn, that pussy was on go quick as hell. That break was short as hell, bitch. It was a weekend getaway. Like you said, that, that be got away. Hey, have you ever seen uh, Ladies Night Out? You ever seen Ladies Night Out? You need to yeah. go. You need to go to that. You need to go. Go and see what, what happens over there. 
Go to ladies' but night. I ain't gonna lie though. Sometimes a break will make you realize how much you love your 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 other your significant other. You know, you might go out, you might smash something. You like, damn. You think you realize you're thinking about the woman that you've been with the whole time while you smash. Like, damn, I might want to be with my woman. Why am I doing this? Sometimes Seriously. you might make that mistake. Eric, can I tell you something? Same thing with the women. Can I tell you something? They might break from you, and there's yeah. Hold on one second. They might break from you, fuck a dude, and realize he ain't shit. They realize how good they man is. Sometimes you might it, it, it might be a little necessary, but you know I wouldn't recommend it. Yo guys, I'm gonna jump yeah, off. I, I told you guys later. I wouldn't recommend it either. You I, hear I, me, met yo? one, <laughs> I met this one chick, right? I met this one chick, right? Real story. She told me she was going through some shit. She just wants to fuck. That's it. She don't want me. She don't want to be with me. She don't want. To, she just wants to fuck. She just wants to have sex. That's all you she wanted because of what she was going through, right? You still got no, I'm just bullshit. The number is pointless because <laughs> she just wanted to fuck for that one time, for that date. And as a therapist, I give her the therapy. You see what I'm saying? So, Man, you telling these women you ther- you're a therapist now? Boy, you're a bad boy. Bro, I'm a therapist <laughs> because, because I don't have a problem listening to your shit. But it has to be leading to being compensated for the shit I'm listening to because I don't listen for free. Okay, I don't listen for free. Like, if you're going to sit there and tell me all that shit. Wait a minute, you listening for sex? <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen hey, for free. That's that. a fair warning. Y'all niggas better listen to your girl. A uh, nigga like Chad, me going to listen to her. You're going to be in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to sit there and shit. I'm going to listen to your shit. All right, oh, all right. Yeah, I'm I got to sit on the phone for about an hour. I'm going to call her right now. I'm going to get off the phone. <laughs> I'm going to make a phone call while y'all on the line. I'm going to listen to your shit, but it's not for free. So, you know, but what I'm saying is most women are in a relationship, but they feel lonely. They feel like they're single, even though they're in a relationship because they don't talk to this guy. There is no communication. It's just you in, you out, you in, you out. We have sex and then we in. There's just a lot missing. So there are guys who are out there to fill in those gaps. And sometimes it will lead to sex. They might not leave their man and be with you, but sex will come out of it. You see what I'm saying? This happens a lot, but people don't know it. So when you're talking about we've been together 40 years, 50 years, just know that in between times, somebody is making this shit work behind the scenes. And that's just a <laughs> fact. That nigga say it's a special effects behind the scenes person. Don't worry. It's a director that put this movie together. Hey, champion, you just fucked up my life. I was thinking about getting married in the next year or two, but I, I don't think that's. Hey, you I can do. still get. Hey, you can still get married, but just make sure. Hell no, I'm gonna be thinking hey. about any time she want to go to the grocery store. With every time she talking about going on a walk, I'm gonna say, hey, 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 hey motherfucker, is this the nah, thing? Let me give you a secret. <laughs> let me give you a secret. Just make sure you know her therapist. Make sure you know her therapist. Make sure you know who he is. She ain't gonna have no nigga therapist. She better not have no nigga right, therapist. I feel you, please, motherfucker. All that knowing him, everything. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'll tell you what, the goddamn therapist that fuck with my wife gonna need some therapy. <laughs> son of a bitch. I'm gonna be mad to the motherfucker. Your ass gonna need some therapy. Say hey. some physical therapy. Uh huh. So, mm-hmm. Every time somebody tell you they are a sex therapist, you don't think they be having sex with their, with their, with their, or with their clients? You don't think that? Shit, you don't, you don't think that they do they do because you are giving her solutions to answers to that she's been looking for so as that i don't want no girl that's going to a sex therapist because i'm like you said oh I they have a lot therapy. of them kwami they have a lot of them they have a lot well, of them I'm, I'm gonna be a goddamn therapist, huh? they have a lot of uh, people who go to um you know sex therapist you know they want to know about sex counseling so oh, they have a lot of sex is a woman she 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 could do what she want i don't look at that as cheating Mm-mm. she ain't cheating right you know most of them are women <laughs> but you, but you also have male sex therapists but what i'm saying nah, is ain't, ain't no such thing ain't no such thing that ain't going to exist with my wife uh uh-uh. <laughs> cuz i would i would never go to a woman therapist without her around i wouldn't do that i wouldn't be submitting to no woman and listening to her what she's saying about sex if I got married, I wouldn't do that to her. The reason why you go to a sex therapist in the first place is because if your bedroom game is not right, if there's something missing, and maybe you're not the type of guy that takes the things she's saying or even pay attention to what she's saying, you just want to do it your way and go about your business. That's why you go to sex therapy. So they can tell you guys, okay, look, spice it up. Try this. Try that. Do this. Do that. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's needed because a lot of people don't know how to have sex. I'm just being honest. Just because you have a thing don't mean you know how to use it. You see what I'm saying? 
So, and then just because, you know, you, you a freak don't mean, you, you know, you're good enough for somebody either. So that's why you have to listen to each other or go to therapy and have somebody tell you, okay, try this, try this, you know, do this, do that. Sometimes I don't they need, I don't, up, I'm, I'm going too far, champ. I'm I, going too I'm far. I ain't be needing no therapy. Look, why my girl, it, it my, it's some core issues in the relationship. If my old lady need a third party to tell me how she need me to dig her out, that's some real deep issues. It happens now. I'm telling you, this shit happens. There are therapists out there, sex therapists out there. It happens. You can look it up right now. It happens because a lot of times some people, especially, especially you know, uh, older people, some of them don't really have time to pay attention to these kind of things. They just do what they want to do and go by their business and they leave their wife unsatisfied or leave their husband unsatisfied. And now they're looking for a therapist. And then when they run into me, who will give the therapy, I have a fee when I give my therapy. You know what I'm saying? I don't do it for free. So, and sometimes it leads to, you know, extra therapy. You see what I'm saying? Which I ain't gonna I lie. You, I ain't gonna lie, champ. You playing with getting your head but You better be a good boxer. You hear me? <laughs> you gotta get I'm trying to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could throw some hands now, but, you know, but I'm also, you know, I like to make jokes. I like to be funny, you know, sometimes. But I'm for real about that relationship shit. Like people do, they be dipping. Yeah, they have side dips. They have side dips. I've been one. You know, I've been a dip. So I know. I know for sure. May I, sorry, gentlemen? Oh, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning again. So I'm down in the chat, right? And I'm listening to what Champion is saying. And if we are and can be honest and transparent, all of ourselves, right? What champion is saying is really true. It doesn't mean that you want to or have to step out of your um, relationship or marriage. However, it, it can always be a possibility. So right. I'm one that loves to, I'm one that loves to do self work. Like you got to be able to look at your in the mirror and understand what the po the possibilities of life about you can be with someone and you can love that person and want to be faithful to that person however just come to the understanding that something is missing so if you if you two can't communicate transparently with one another and say you know this is what i'm missing or this is what i need to your spouse then at times you do go and you find that other person that's willing to listen, right? And with that willing to listen comes, hey, you know, kind of try this or try that. And it can happen. And also sometimes like what Champion was saying, like when your person goes out of your eyesight, you can't control what anybody chooses to do. And a lot of us try to control our partners by the threats or the... um what do you call those? Um, the things when you tell people, hey, if you do this, then, you know, kind of whatever. Um, right. You can't intimidate or shouldn't intimidate your person by saying ultimatums. That's what I was trying to say. Um, ultimatums, you know, can't and don't and won't. You, you, in my opinion, should have the conversations with one another before and during um, your marriage or your relationship, I call it checking in on one another, right? That's what me and my guy does. Hush one. So, um, right, when me and my man, when we talk, we check in with one another, right? I want to know how he's doing. I want to know, you know, what he's thinking and, you know, if there's anything that I might be missing. And he does the same thing with me. And it's lasted up um, since 98, right? And we respect one another um, with our thoughts, and we um, we hold that to the understanding of that person is coming to us as transparent. And it's hard to hear sometimes, but I respect and I appreciate the fact that we can be transparent with one another. Um, there was a couple that was married, and they um, the the husband went out and he cheated, right? and then brought his side chick into the marriage and his side chick and the wife bonded 
right? Um, and so they were all just kind of happy-go-lucky, right? And then the wife then got attracted to the side chick, okay? And so the wife and the side chick are having their relationship. The husband and the side chick are having their relationship. And nobody is the wiser. Mm, mm, mm. 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 However, what she did in that marriage, okay, and it's going to sound far-fetched, but it happened. What she did in that marriage is she helped both of them to see it's okay to talk to one another openly. It's okay to receive the information that you might not even understand from your partner. And though that couple, right, is still married to this day. They got stronger. The side chick is nowhere involved now, but her her specific reason or season for being in that um in that marriage or in that entanglement or whatever you want to call it, it right. helped to build a it helped to build a stronger bond with that couple because where they were lost at, they were able to reconnect and be okay with um, <laughs> stepping outside and having an understanding. And like I said, it's not for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. um, some people are like, that's a hard no. And that's okay too. As I feel like if you, have the conversation before you become a couple, before you have sex, and then as throughout your relationship. And then if it leads to a marriage, be able to have that conversation even throughout your marriage. It's super important, in my opinion. If you're gonna invest in someone else's feelings, do just that, right? Try your best not to be judgmental. Try your best not to criticize. Try your best to put your their shoes on your foot for just a moment and communicate with each other transparently right and build with one another it's very easy to tear somebody down it's hard right to build somebody up and have the respect the trust and the understanding to know one another to create that bond that a, a, a marriage and a relationship should be built on I just right. wanted to add that. Thank you. Now, now let me let me follow up by saying this. You see, mm. you have two kinds of women, right? Majorly. You have ones who are emotional and jealous. And then you have ones who are not really jealous and they're not too emotional. If you have a woman who is emotional and jealous, there are certain things you don't tell her, even though it's the truth. Because you already know who she is. And you know if you tell her this, she's almost going to kill herself. So to save her from herself, you're not going to tell her that. That's number one. Those women, for example, if you are standing, let's say you were her, and some other girl walked past and you look, and she gets mad. If she can get mad at that, can you imagine telling her that you went and did something? Because you wanted to be honest and be like, babe, can I tell you some truth, man? I really, really want to tell you. And you, you. Can you imagine telling her that? So you will keep those things away from those kind of women. Now, the other kind of women who are not really jealous or emotional, those are the ones that you can look at other women in front of them together. Like you look, she will look and be like, oh yeah, she got a fat ass. Oh yeah, damn. Ooh. And, that was, and that's it. That ends right there. You go about your business with her. Fact. You, could, you could go out there to the club. While you are at the club with your guys and other girls are there, you could video call her. You can call her. She can be texting you. You can be texting back without her saying, oh, you better not be fucking other hoes while you're out there. You better not. You, you get what I'm saying? She can go to the club and we will have female friends and be doing her thing. And you're not out there on the other side like, mm -hmm, let me find out you're out there fucking. Because you know each other. And you know she's not the type of person to take things to the heart you get. So the reason why there's a lot of lies in relationship is because, first of all, who you are with, can they handle the truth? That's number one. If you know they can't handle it, why give it to them? Why do that? Hold on now. I, I let, let me give some pushback on all this now. You can give anybody the truth. That's it. Cause you, you just because you got you don't want to give them the truth, don't mean you had, you had to go behind their back and do no foul shit. No, no. What I'm saying is, if something hold on, is hold on, ready, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me fly for a second. Cause look, at the same time, like you said, she said it could be a hard no. I ain't about to like. Even though I'm out here kind of messy, 
I'm going to condone that I'm messy and I'm doing what I want to do. I'm not going to act like it's the right thing to do, as we would say, um, like how they would say righteously. I don't necessarily think it's that. So I, I just want to make sure that I, I push that narrative for me in here. Like I can understand that I'm doing completely what's just making me happy. And it's really kind of greedy and selfish if I look at it like that. Because for all of like even myself to be sitting here like, oh, yeah, side girl can help this situation. That's still me being messy. That is still me being messy to the female that I'm in a relationship with. I should be able to control myself, handle myself if I say I'm going to be that man, period. All that going around, and I know I'm that guy that's fucking up right now. But also, I'm not going to act like it's all cool because I wouldn't want that woman doing that to me. Still on the other side of that. And I can recognize that much. Now I'm, You know what I mean? Like Let's, let's keep it a bug now because I don't want it to just seem like Everybody can, you know, this whole let's do what we want and not validate the people that we love feelings on that level. Like, Absolutely. it's a lot going on. Okay. okay, look at this part. Absolutely. Look at this, the point that's I was making, right? right? Oh, okay, go ahead, champion. Sorry. Okay, the point I was making is this. And I like I like to be, I don't, I don't know how to be fake. I'm just being honest. There are times mm -hmm. when things might happen in a relationship. You might step out and do something with somebody or whatever right there are women that you can have that conversation with hey babe i went out there things happen and this will never happen again i'm sorry whatever whatever there are women that you can tell that and they will understand and you guys can deal with it there are women that you can never tell that shit no matter how bad you want to tell her but you, you want to know some champion now hold on hold on hold on more wait, women I'm coming, you can I'm coming, tell it too Hold on, now I'm coming, I'm coming. If that kind of woman is the woman that you have serious relationship with that involves not only your finances, not only your children, not only your business, not only other aspects of life that you don't want to lose, if that's the kind of woman that you have, not only do you stand to lose all these things, you also stand to lose her as a person. You see what I'm saying? So because of that, you will not tell her, look, man, I went out there and fucked somebody. I didn't mean to, but it happened. You see, Thanks. so sometimes we keep a lot of secrets because of who we are with. Not because we don't want to tell, but because we know if we tell, it's going to be, that will ruin a lot of shit. Not just her saying, okay, I'm mad at you for a few days. You're talking about your house. You're talking about divorce. It, all kinds of shit because she's that kind of person. She don't know how to take, she wants to, the truth, she want to hear it, tell me, I want to know, but. She don't want to, like, you know, if you give it to her, it's going to be some problems. So you want to know, kind of know how to deal with it. So you want to know, it's funny how you had said that. I would say, like I was saying, I think more ladies are willing to listen to stuff, whatever it may be, than they're not. But the guy has a fear of telling her something and losing her. Or, like you were saying, it could be that she's crazy, but what you're really saying is she could do this, she could do that. You're talking about losing stuff, so you really have a fear in yourself of why you're not telling her. Why you're not. It's not, I mean, you can say it how you want, because just a lot of people ain't going to be that real enough to say, hey, I'm out here, I fucked up like this. It is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to say every relationship. I done told somebody, yeah, I done been out here doing that. So it ain't, I, I get it. But all that right there, we still got to know and realize that we wrong. Like, we got to realize that we, we can't just hide that and act like, you know, that that's cool. And the reason you can't tell a person once again, like, cause I feel it's like, because you're afraid to lose something, even if that is her. But it, but you got to realize you were still a dog. I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying what is right or wrong. I'm just telling you this happens a lot. I'm not saying I like it. I'm not saying I support it. I'm just saying it happens a lot. And because we don't know, your partner don't know, don't mean it didn't happen. What you didn't know didn't mean it didn't exist. You understand what I'm saying? If everybody pull out their secret from their closet in their relationship, 90% of people will be single right now. You will see some shit that like, what? Really? For how long? Whoa, damn, huh? My friend? My sister? Really? Oh my and, god. And I got an even stronger point, right? You how can that. you how can you be with this person right here for so long that you built all this house, this marriage, this car, these kids, and this and that, and you really don't have that bond with that person where you can tell them that. 
Okay. That it depends on the right? person is what I'm saying. Right. That's yeah, saying. go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead, Right. That, that's what I'm saying right there, brother. How can you build so much for so many years with a person, however you pause, either one of you, pause at telling each other the absolute truth, being the best friend that you can be to one another. How, how I don't, I, I take issue with that part and I don't understand that. Uh, you know, sometimes when I hear people talk about their relationship, it's like, oh, we've been together for years and now my person has done a whole 360 or changed or cheated or hid something from me. I would take personal issue with myself if my man was like, I love you. We built so much, but I couldn't talk to you because you might be upset with me, because you might judge me, because you might leave me. I would take issue with myself before I took any issue with him. I would want to understand from him, babe, what made, what made you not feel comfortable enough to talk to me? How did you not, what did I do to not make you feel safe enough, right? And it's not blaming yourself for someone's actions. That's not what I mean. What I'm saying, like friendship, true friendship in a relationship before you even add sex, before you even add a relationship, before you even add a marriage to it, I would like to see more people being friends first, trusting one another enough, and then checking up transparently with one another. I feel like that builds a stronger bond when you check on one another. And if there are uh, boundaries, then you understand those boundaries as friends, as, as the relationship progresses, and then as the marriage goes. And, and prayerfully, it will make a stronger friendship, which creates a stronger marriage that even if something does go Gray, you can part ways and still be respectful towards one another and handle business. That's all I was saying. Thank you. Okay. Now, now look at this. Because like I said, I don't know how to be fake. I just like to be real. You have a person, right? You have a guy, right? And his nature, right? He likes to have multiple women. That's just his thing, right? But Given that he knows this already about himself, he goes and get married to just one woman. What do you think is going to happen in that relationship? He will always step out to go do what he does, which is in his nature, right? So what happens is now, depending on who you're married to, if you're married to somebody who is more or so lenient, all right, with that kind of behavior, all right. And they knew it from the jump. Whenever you do some shit like that, that person will not take issues with it that much. But if you're married to somebody who is very strict, who does not tolerate their behavior, and you never told that person that, okay, this is how you are. Whenever you do some shit like that, there is no way you're telling her that. Because the moment you do, you know what's going to happen. That's the point that I'm making. Now you have another point. If you like multiple women and that's your thing, it's better for you to be polygamous. It's better for you to have multiple wives. So that way you won't be cheating on anybody because you're satisfying yourself based on how you are. This same advice goes to women because there are women out there who like multiple guys, but they go on and get married to one guy. And every time they get a chance, they go outside and get the remaining balance. You see, so... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving it to you how it is. Hey, that sounds wild, but you're right. You're definitely now, right. Yeah. I'm just I, giving it to you I love it. that terminology. You know, so they go outside and get the remaining balance. So now they come back home to you. Do you think they're going to tell you, oh, by the way, I want to fuck this guy? They're not going to tell you that because they know what's going to happen. So my advice to those ones will be, okay, if you like multiple guys, find a way to have a relationship where everybody's going to be coming in and out versus being with one person. But the truth of the matter is one-on-one -on -one marriage, meaning man, woman, uh, just one, two people, you know, marriage. It's what's more acceptable. It's what's more respected. So even somebody who is polygamous will want to marry just one woman just to be accepted, just to be respected by society. 
But what happens is he will end up cheating on her because that's not who he is. But that type of relationship is what we respect. It's what we value. Same thing with women. So that's why I was telling you, it depends on who you with. I've been with a girl who took me to a swingers club. I didn't, I, I would love to be the one to suggest that, but she suggested it. You see what I'm saying? So we went to the swinger, swinger club. It was me, her, and another female. And then I was it. I'm like, okay, is this what, like, is this our thing now or whatever? She said, well, that's not her thing, but she did it because she knows that I have eyes for other women. So she kind of did it to kind of satisfy me in a way. That relationship lasted long as hell. You see, the ones that last quit, that they don't go anywhere with me is the ones that's like 100% one-on-one where there's nobody else involved. Because I get bored, man. Like, I get bored after, you know, after, after I knock it off a few times, I get bored, man. You know, hey, I'm man, this was like, a, hey, look, let me just say this real quick. I'm getting out of here, y'all, man. It was a great conversation. Shout out Champ Ears, Love, Kwame, and what did I say right there? What did I say? Rare, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out, yeah. Shout out to you. Peace. Peace. Salute, bro. So back to what I want to Go ahead. I want to give Raymond. you a little pushback, champion. Uh, so you can be a counter in the chat. Yeah, I, I get Salute, what you're bro. saying. And I see what you mean when, as far as you're not saying if it's right or wrong. Um, But I guess it, it depends on one's perspective. And I agree with you as far as men, it's in our nature to, um, you know, be with multiple women or, or you know, it's, it's but I, 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 that's why I say, I guess it's your perspective. I, I kind of try to live my, my life um, by the Bible. And, 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 and then, let me, when I say that, I'm far from perfect. Uh, I am married, but what, what I do is I always tell people who, who's trying to get married or in a relationship, you have to find somebody that understands you. When a, a marriage in a relationship will last a long, long time, that's my best advice I can give somebody. If that Absolutely. woman understands you and you understand that woman, that woman understands and he just got out, he don't feel like being bald. I can tell he had a long day. And, you know, and, and they know how to give you your space when they, they automatically know from, from experience with you and all that stuff like that. And they don't take certain stuff personally. Um, it's, 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 when you find somebody that understand you and you understand that person, you're good to go. You ain't got to worry about no cheat. You ain't got to worry about none of that. And it's also confidence too as well. Now, when I say confidence, you don't want to be naive and 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 think your, uh, your woman ain't going to cheat on you. But if you're handling business, and you're a hell of a, 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 a woman or a hell of a man and, and, and home is taken care of and you're going to have your, your issues here and there and all that, but you, you fighting over, the arguments are over a little small petty stuff. It ain't over money and bills and, and um, you ain't doing this or you ain't doing that. It, it, it's over you, you close the cabinets and stuff like that. I spoke on that one time before. So it's, it's mm -hmm. all about finding somebody that understands you. And when you find that, you're good to go. Cause my wife, she she knows. She look, she look at that, that that ass fat ain't. Yeah, it is, baby. Ooh, ooh, she ain't got nothing on you. Nah, that you know that one a little bit bigger than mine. Like my wife does that, but she know I ain't like she allows me to look. You get what I'm saying? She know I ain't gonna touch it or whatever. But we look at it together, and she don't Fine. go that way or whatever like that. But she she has enough confidence. She knows she's beautiful. To me, she knows she 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 knows she a dime. You know what I'm saying? So she has the utmost confidence in herself. And I also instill that in her, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I treat her like a queen. I let her know she's beautiful and, 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 and you know, so it's, it's all about within with me as far as uh, all that. Because I, I used to run the streets. I used to be a, a cheater <laughs> back in the day. I used to, uh, I had my fair share of women, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and my fair share of women with, uh, Taking other other dude, uh, female. I just had a mouthpiece. I knew how. I knew, I, like you said, champion. Man, all a woman wants you to do is listen. You listen. Mm -hmm. You good to go. You listening to her. You can make a crack a smile. You in the door. Right. And, you, and, mm -hmm. and I always was myself, and I never tried to be nobody else. But when you do that, man, you'll find a woman, man, that'll come to you, and, and they can crack a joke with you. They can take a joke. You can have. Y'all can be out at dinner, and y'all can see something and look at each other, bust out laughing. 
and don't even say a word, but y'all laughing at the same thing. That's that's what I mean by finding somebody that understands you. So that's my advice. Uh, I don't think I had champion. too much pushback, but it's just, you know, I just no, look at it from that perspective. Rare money, right? That's exactly your opinion on it. And peace to you, brother. Your perspective on it right there is honestly, in my opinion, champion. And you you jump in here if I'm not correct. Champion and Rare Money and I are saying the same exact thing. It's just worded. The, the words or the understanding of it may be different because in my opinion and champion, like I said, if I'm if I'm incorrect speaking for you, let me know. But the exact same way that Rare Money just just explained it is exactly the same thing that Champion and I are saying. What you think, Champion? You're you're right. You're right. If you have if you find somebody that understands you, and and you know and can live with um you know, and can live with you with whatever um package you come with, of course it's it's, it's going to make your relationship even better. And at this point, there will be nothing to hide because. You already know who I am from the jump. The problem that we have in relationships is the things we find out later. That's the really the big problem sometimes is the things that we find out later when we already fall in love already. Now it's too late right. to go back. So right. now we're Those finding men. out this new shit. Mm -hmm. Now your feelings, your emotions, everything is involved. And now it's kind of hard to even right. deal with the problem because you, you can't even address it because you don't have the energy, you don't have the effort because your, your feelings, your emotions, everything is just tied into it and you're mad and... You feel like, you know, somebody sold you a fucking lie or somebody, mm -hmm. you know, sold you a fake chain. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that um, come up when you find out new shit, when you're in love with somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's what ruins relationship in most cases. Not the things you find out early on, it's things you find out later. I just can't understand, Absolutely. like, how, how can you be, like, like, I know people are, are good deceivers and the people can hide stuff from you. I guess I'm just one, I pick up on discernment a lot. Like, I can tell if somebody full of shit just by looking at them. I, like I can shake somebody's hand and I can tell the way that man shakes my hand, he ain't he ain't right. And then something that came down the line, well, when I first met that person, they showed themselves to me. You get what I'm saying? And at first I thought I was crazy. So it's like a, uh, I guess by me having a certain level of discernment, um, I just don't see how you can be with somebody uh, and not pick up on uh, this person on drugs or this person had a, a, a violent um, history or something like that because uh, you only can hide who you who you truly are for a certain amount of time. That's just my opinion. You can't just You're go in right. and okay. fake it. Real money. Right. Real money. Let me give you this one. So what you said is you could pick people up from the first jump or something like that. Now what if you miss it from the first jump and then find out later when you're already in love with this person, when you would have a kid with this person, when you have properties with this person, you see, because some women know how to package themselves correctly for you to jump in. And once you jump yeah. in, then you will find out. And by that I time, get, it might be too I get late. What you, I some, get what you're saying, but I'm saying at some point, in life, let's, just, let's just for an example, let's just give two years. Let's just say I'm dating somebody for two years. Within those two years, that two year span, it ain't gonna always be peaches and cream. So let's just say if this woman has a violent, she has a tip of tamdra or something like that. I'm I just I'm just in the belief that certain stuff that I might find out um about you, I'm gonna get little small signs from it. And once I get those signs, you should be able to pick up on this person ain't telling me everything. And then you open up to, I guess I'm just really, I ain't finna just let you sit here, and not you, I'm just saying that, like a woman. You ain't finna sit here and just try to sugarcoat that and hide that from me. So I'm gonna bring you it to your be attention be and, and be I, like, yeah. hey, well, what's up with that? Uh, blah, 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 and all that stuff like that, and whatever, and, I'm a, and I'll spark the conversation. And I, I, I'll, I'll be able to spark the conversation. I, and I guess this is just me personally. I'm Can I throw man, something in there? I, I agree with you. Um, go ahead. Well, with, with some women, what, what I've seen in, in my past, if you meet somebody and you're doing good, 
that person a lot of times they will they will cover themselves while you're doing good in the relationship. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Like financially and stuff. So you could be with a woman two years and you was doing all the manly stuff like buying her all these nice things and all that. She'll stay her ass in line. But say you fuck around and fall off in them two years. And goddamn, mm. you know what I'm saying? Now you're struggling. You're not gonna be the same person you was, and she's not gonna be either, and vice versa. I'm not just saying that only with women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, so that's a, that's a good and point. then that's, that's a good when point. a lot of times we find out that the person that you met ain't the same person because right. it was yeah. the conditions that they were happy under, not just you. I got that's you on problem. that one. I got you on that one. That that one right there, that financial situation. When you give that example, yeah, that that that'll change a lot of stuff. That changed a lot of shit, yeah, and a lot of rich people everybody. learned that the hard way. That when they was on top, that woman did everything she you said. She cooked, she cleaned, she did that. But then you fucked around and hit in that hard fall, and now all of a sudden, what the fuck I gotta cook for a broke nigga for? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? You ain't getting your dicks up. You ain't come right. home with no money. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you find yourself in love. Now she's messing with the next motherfucker, and you don't know how you gonna start acting once you see. That, that woman that you put everything into or that man you put everything into, they're not the same no more. And Fact. that'll change the person's whole fucking life. Facts. Hey, uh, Nina, show your face in the background for me, please. And then another thing is, another thing is, just like he was saying, you know, sometimes... Jump off, I'm about to, uh, pull up and I'll jump back in. Salute, y'all. You know, Right. Yeah. Peace and man. another another thing, another thing is, based on what I've seen and the people I've spoken with, you know, about you know marriages and all that stuff, I realize that it's more Neither. difficult. It's more difficult for a rich man to find a good woman versus a poor man to find a good woman. Let me go deep. A rich man have a broad option. He have all kinds of options, right? Because everybody wants what he got, right? But it's hard for him to pick a good one out of the crowd. A poor man doesn't have much options. Maybe a few here and there. But he's guaranteed to get a good one because, nigga, you poor. There's nothing for me to come and take over here, right? If I'm with you, I'm with you because of you. You have nothing to offer. So you have a higher chance of getting a good woman as a poor guy versus as a rich guy. And I learned this for myself and I've, people I've talked to and counseled, they go through the same problem. As soon as, you know, they lose their job or something happened or whatever happened, that's when they start coming to me. Oh, she's cheating. Oh, she's doing that. Or oh, what do I need to do to spice it up? None of that shit comes to you until they go financial. You see what I'm saying? Because women know how to be, um, how to play their part, depending on you know who they're dealing with. They know how to play their part, depending on who they're dealing with. You know, but if you vet them correctly, without showing who you are, you have a good chance. Same thing with men. Men know how to vet. Men know how to package themselves. Cool. It's, it's men out there who they come at you the best way possible. And not knowing that this dude have two baby mamas with kids laying all over the place. And you will never detect that until you get pregnant yourself. Then you're going to find out it's you and two other motherfuckers. And now you have a whole dilemma. So that also happens. I just have to throw that in there. But sometimes they know all that stuff. They'll just take it because they see that you are financially, you know, up or whatever. And they're like, okay, I don't give a damn what it don't benefits her. It benefits me because he's doing all this sweet stuff for me. And she don't find out until they're not on good terms no more. Then you realize that now you're in the same boat as the last one. Mm. You know, so it, it, it can, it, it, I get exactly what you're saying because that's kind of what I was saying. Like when you meet somebody, you're doing all these special things in that honeymoon phase, what they call it or whatever, it's easy to trick somebody, especially if you're coming out of a bad situation, you know, um, mm. and, you, and that person is just filling in those needs. But sometimes it's a lot of times for selfish reasons, you know, because we all have our selfish reasons, you know. But right. it usually backfires, you know, down the road. And it's not pretty because usually that's after you don't put your emotions in. It might have started out as fun, but then you right. put your emotions in and then realize that that person was only there for the situation. They weren't there for, you know, uh, who you really are. They were only there for what you can provide for. Right, and, and then I'm when pretty sure Farmer seen that a lot of times with you know NBA players and stuff like that. They shit, they have a woman that got them would jump off the bridge. You told him to when, when he when he was up, but when he down, oh man. <laughs> right, and 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 when your emotions are involved, sometimes you would just rather have this person lie to you 
just so the, the relationship can keep going on. You know, some people know that, okay, he's lying, all right? He's lying. I can deal with whatever, but at this point, it's too late. You are so much invested. You are, your emotions, everything is, you are so much invested into this relationship to where lying to you is a, is a good thing, right? Lying to you is like, okay, it is better. Just lie. Don't, because that's what I'm saying. When we tell people the truth sometimes, they will kill themselves. So when you know this person is deeply rooted, like emotion wise, sometimes it's better to just, just, just tell them what they want to hear and just keep this thing going. If not, it's going to go south. All right, Nina, you can get off camera. I'll put you up there. With ahead, man. Love, are you there? Yes. Oh, hey, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so basically, I won't be on long because I'm working right now, but I really do respect and appreciate everybody's perspectives. But I actually feel kind of bad, like from the bottom of my heart, champion, because it seems like somebody really hurt you. And did you always have this outlook on love or did you begin to feel this way after you had your first heartbreak? Okay, let me say that. I'm glad you said that, Nina, because you, me and you've been together for 10 years and you ain't cheating on me. You're so silly. <laughs> okay. Let no, me, I mean, let me, I'm even because you know that's how rumors get started. Uh -huh. I have never met Kwame. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> So oh, let me oh, let me okay. let me ask you a question. Love lace. Don't you do me like that, baby mom. <laughs> oh, let me ask you a question. Um, I've never been heartbroken before. I've never been in any of that situation before. I'm just telling you something that is happening. I'm not saying I condone it or I'm against it. I'm just telling you something that is happening and why it's happening. It has nothing mm. to do with heartbreak. It has a okay. lot to do with um real life situations. It's just that we don't know. And because we don't know, we assume the best. But when you yeah. are a therapist or a counselor or somebody who even listens to people who have these kind of problems, you will know that it's happening. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When people... No, I, I totally... Oh, I'm sorry, hon. I don't need no, to okay. cut you off. Go on. Oh, okay. So when, when people are in a happy relationship, you know, in my opinion, some of them, there's nothing going on behind the scene. And some of them, there's a lot going on behind the scene. And it's still a happy relationship because we don't know. And that's just the truth. No, I totally get that. You're, you're basing what you're saying off of real life situations that happen and that you've seen. But Facts. I just wanted to share that every relationship isn't like that. And I know it Facts. sounds like I'm living in a dream world, but, you know, I've actually never cheated in a relationship because. <clears throat> and I'm not better than anybody, you know, I just haven't done it because personally, I don't see the point. Like for me, if I feel like I, I might get in something, then why stay, you know, and there was a young lady that spoke earlier and I really value her perspective also, but I would like to challenge her and say, well, you know, she now there is maturity in asking yourself, okay, well, what made him go out and do this? But I would like to challenge that with maybe there's something on the inside of him that made him go out and do that. And maybe it's not on you. You know, I've been cheated on once that I know of. And when I asked him, why did you cheat on me? This man said, I, I don't know. He's like, you're a good woman. You, you do everything right. I don't know why I cheated on you. And, you know, he begged me back and I never looked back and I left because you know, I'm the type of woman where I'm not going to tolerate that. You cheat on me once, that's it. Because I feel like if I'm doing everything right and I'm giving you honesty and I know what I bring to the table, I know the type of love that I give is rare. You know, the fact that I'm faithful and I listen and, you know, I'm self-aware. You know, I'm the type of person where, I, where I'll say, you know what, I, I'm kind of tweaking today. I don't know what's wrong. I think I don't even think it's you today. I think I'm just having a bad day. And I apologize. Like, is there anything that I can do to make you feel better? You know, that's a good woman. And if you cheat on that, well, it's like, well, you really don't deserve me and I shouldn't look back. But I just want to say that there are people out here that are faithful and there isn't anything else going on. And I think it's important to find somebody, you know, like the gentleman said earlier that understands you and you understand them because when you're really in love with someone you don't want to look outside of that I feel like a lot of people are settling for whatever reason maybe they're older 
you know, maybe they don't think real love exists. You know, maybe they think that, you know, maybe they have a skewed mindset on love where they think, well, you know, I'll never find the kind of love that I really want and crave. Maybe it's just a Disney movie. Maybe what I want doesn't exist, you know, so I'll just settle for this. But I feel like when you settle for something, like you said, you feel like you have to go out and get a remaining balance, which I like how you put that. By the way, that's kind of clever. But I feel like when you're not in love with someone, you feel like, okay, well, I'm missing something and I have to go out and get it here. So either you feel like you're missing something or you feel like maybe there's something inside of you that you need to address. And I, I mean this in the in the most compassionate way because I think everybody should get therapy, me included. You know, I think everybody has their own type of trauma that they deal with. So I say every every single human being should get it because I think it can help you dig deep into your psyche and uncover, you know, take things from under the rug and figure out why do I think this way? Why do I do why do I do this? What hurt me that made me start to behave in this way and when you address those things and you begin like the young lady said earlier you know that journey of self-discovery and self-awareness it can be life-changing you know champion I just don't want you to miss out you know on a good thing going forward because I feel like there some people don't believe this but I truly feel like there's some someone out there for everyone and you don't want to miss your beat you know, having a skewed outlook on love. And I mean that in the most respectful way, but there is a pure love that exists. And, and you know, that's all I want to say. Okay. Now let me, let me follow up with you on what you said. You said you had a guy that cheated on you, right? Mm -hmm. And you said you are a good woman. You do everything right. And this guy cheated on you, right? So right. you are, you are making my point. The yeah. reason why, somebody is cheating on you it's not because you are a good woman or a bad woman no it's because they have appetites for other women but they just right. happen to settle for just one woman do you understand so yeah. now they feel like they are owed some balance that they have to go and collect so that is mm -hmm. why and that time that you call him cheating on you could not have been the only first time maybe he's been doing it but he's been real clean with it until he got oh, caught no, i mean that's that's the only person that i ever knew of you know cheating on me i had been in relationships before but that was the first okay. time that i had been cheating on that i know of like okay. in, in general okay so the point i'm making is this let's say you didn't catch him let's say you didn't catch him at all and you're doing everything you're doing and he's doing everything he's doing the right one you know doing everything you like and you know being the way you are and you never caught him and he's doing it does it change the fact that he's cheating on you uh no, I mean, well, you're saying if he was cheating and I didn't know about it, does mm -hmm. that change anything? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, of course, because if you don't know about it, then you don't know about it. So you're saying what you don't know won't hurt you kind of a thing. That's all I've been saying is. Well, if I know, <laughs> then it's over with. But it, I mean, exactly. eventually everything in the dark comes to light. There are things but... that never come to light. There are things in the dark that will never come to light. There are things in the that dark that we never do. I think what he's saying is, oh my God. No, I'm just saying, I was, I was agreeing with Champion. Like, women can get an easier pass because as long as a woman, if I, if I, if she came to me and told me the situation, and 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 I was still out there and I knew she had a guy, I would never say nothing. I could walk right past him and don't say nothing. We not, we not like women. Women. Have they'll lock eyes with another woman and then your woman will be like, You had sex with her, didn't you? What the fuck right. going on? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I say to you from across the room. Facts. Right. And and yeah, that's like, the thing, you know. I just know that a lot of things, you know, that we see today is not what it seemed to be. You know what I'm saying? That's saying why he was up front with you and told you, Hey, uh, I love you, but I might want another woman. You probably wouldn't invest all your into it, you know what I'm saying, no. like that. And but a man, a woman could tell us that and we'll be like, okay, as long as I know shit, but right. we know we're gonna fuck around too. And then that might be y'all, you know what I'm saying, y'all thing or whatever, whatever. Y'all might end I'm up falling in some that. kind of love where y'all don't even wanna do it no more. Y'all don't wanna yeah. fuck around no more. Facts. Because y'all were so honest with each other. I just Here is you just summarized everything I'm saying. If you tell now, them the truth up front, they're not gonna say yes. Now earlier, um, you were on the conversation of 
<clears throat> excuse me, we were in the conversation of inviting somebody else in, you know, to the relationship, keeping it interesting. Now, I challenge you with this. Oh, 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 did I, hold on, ma'am. Did I fall asleep during that part? <laughs> <laughs> now, I... <laughs> Damn, say everything y'all said before. I'm going back on me. I'm going to sleep. I really oh, that part. I missed that whole part. Damn. Wait, 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 wait. Let me. <laughs> oh, Kwame is a nut. Okay, so okay. we were on the conversation of that. <laughs> now, um, I'm not trying to be funny, but I don't know if any of you are familiar with that show, Love After Lockup. And I know somebody say, oh, well, that's a TV show. Um, now, this part I don't think is scripted. So this this couple, they invited somebody else into their their marriage because the woman had um, a girlfriend in jail, and I guess like they were still best friends until this day. Um, to make a long story short, her husband knew about the woman, and I guess like they still had feelings for each other. But the woman that had got out of jail was being faithful to her husband, you know. But I guess she wanted to incorporate her into their marriage. And, you know, the husband wasn't really comfortable at first, but he did it to make her happy. Fast forward, now he started having some kind of affair situation with the, the best friend behind her back. You know, somebody mentioned a scenario like that earlier where, okay, the, both people started catching feelings for the side piece. Now, in their case, the side piece is no longer a factor. She's out of the picture. But in this situation, and like many others that I've heard of, not just on the show, but, you know, outside of the show, where people invite someone else in and it destroys their relationship because essentially the man starts catching feelings for the person that they invited into their home. And it, it kind of just makes me feel like I just think it's a some people say, oh, well, you know, it works for us. But it seems like, you know, usually a lot of times, sometimes a woman is just trying to make the man happy. And it's kind of like they're they're not really being true to themselves. And I'm not trying to jump around here, but it also makes me think of, you know, Princess and Ray J. I don't know if you're familiar, but um, there was a story I just saw last night on the shade room where she said, you know, she she was she opened herself up to having threesomes for him. But. She was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I did this to make you happy because I love you so much, but I don't want to do this. And, you know, he started getting really emotional and upset. But honestly, I was kind of proud of her. And I don't want you to think I'm going on a tangent. I'm going somewhere here. Just stay with me. You know, you have some women that do that, but they don't really want to. They're just doing it to make that man happy. And my opinion is I, I just don't see why. I know everyone is different, but for me, I'm a one person is enough kind of a person. And I can't, me personally, I can't even date more than one person because like I'm so into that one person, I don't see anybody else. And I think there's, like I said earlier, there's somebody for everybody because you do have people that they can only focus on one person. And you have others that they feel like, well, there's nothing wrong. And yeah, you know, you could say, well, dating, you're supposed to explore your options. You could say, well, you're supposed to, there's nothing wrong if you go on dates with multiple people. You're getting to know who's the best option. You know, you're, you're trying to figure out who you should be in a relationship with. I can't even do that. Like, I can only date one person at a time. So I would have to date somebody that's also like that. But Can I chip in? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure, sure. I think that's kind of where Champion was going at earlier when he was saying, like, if you see somebody and you know they got that kind of appetite, you're trying to if you're trying to force yourself, that person to be a one person person, but you already know that they're not, you're kind of setting yourself up for the, you know what I'm saying, for the, for the new um, little yeah, twist. I agree. Because I just agree. because he's willing to love you right now, his appetite is eventually going to come back. You know, Fact. you can't right. get rid of his appetite. You know, that's just who he is. So that's but where a definitely. conscious decision is going to come in and like, hey, am I going to be prepared for this in the future? Not for right now. I know he's cool for right now, but in the future, this guy has an appetite. So if I'm not willing to share that appetite, this ain't for me. I shouldn't tie my emotions and feelings in my life into but that. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of where he was standing at earlier. Like, 
you got to understand the person you're willing to invest in like that and either accept it or move on. Fact. I totally agree with that. Now, if Fact. that woman knows that he has um, an appetite for other women and she tries to change him, now she's in the wrong because you cannot change a man. The only person that you can change is yourself. Now, if that yes. man pretends to be a one woman man, then, you know, shame on him because you you didn't know. You know, like they right, say, first right. time, shame on what, what is that saying? First time, shame on you. Second time, shame on me kind of a thing. You know, so if he's putting himself out there like he's a one woman man, no, he's not, then he's in the wrong. But if, if, if you don't know, then that's not on you. But I, I'm really enjoying this conversation, guys, and I'm going to go. Um, and I, I might still keep listening while I'm working. I hope you guys have a great day. And thanks wait, to, I thank wait. everyone for sharing their perspective. Oh, wait, yeah. Nina, wait, wait, Nina, wait. Hi there. <laughs> I'll wait. Thank you so much, uh, beautiful Nina, for coming up. Oh, What's thank up, you for Paul? having me. Well, I apologize for timing, uh, uh, for lying on us. I thank, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no worries. I just had to clear it up because you know how people will just take something and run with it and start doing videos about it. You know how people are crazy. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. <laughs> All and, right, and, have a good day, everybody. And, and, oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Wait, you, you wait, wait. Okay, I did yeah. two, two things quick when you said that, right? And Kwame, mm -hmm. I was going to say this yesterday, Kwame, real quick, right? Um, I apologize in the chat, but you made a very valid point, right? Some of the people that cannot understand that mature adults are having a joke, and I put it out there that we, you know, had three children together. I was joking <laughs> in the moment the joke first came up, right? However, I felt what you said about now there's a people out there conversing about whether we have children together or not or whether oh, you know you pay. I, I just wanted to say Kwame I, I was joining into the joke and I do apologize to you brother sincerely if that caused you any extra you know what I'm saying ignorance from other people so I, I'm woman enough to start the joke and I'm also woman enough to come up here and apologize to you you know I understand you and I can joke and other mature adults in the uh in the world can understand that we were joking however brother i respect you enough that if it caused you any extra you know what i'm saying unnecessary heat or uh jokes or foolishness you know i do apologize to you brother and respectfully you know we still gonna keep these kids and they can kiss our ass but uh nina right as long <laughs> as you don't care i don't care it's just I, I like the fact that they hang on to everything i say and keep wanting to talk yeah about it's it. actually it's hysterical weird. right Mm -hmm. And the key is going to be here Friday, Kwame. Nina, so I, I wanted <laughs> yes. to ask you, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, was there anything that um, maybe you wanted to address what I said or are we good on the same page or because I, 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 I would, I, I love the fact that much good. Month, and I, okay, great. Okay, good. Because I wanted to make sure I love bonding with um, my, my female sisters, the the males. I love all of us bonding, and I would I would pray and hope that none of us would be you know on an opposite page. But I love your thought process. I appreciate you taking time to come up and join in the conversation, and I really hope you have a great day. Ah, uh, thank you so much. You're such a sweet heart, and your voice is so comforting, by the way. Um, but yes, I really I told, enjoy. I told her I'm gonna start also. bringing her. I told her I'm gonna start bringing up the read bedtime stories. We just gonna have bedtime stories. <laughs> well, I might actually have to tune in because her voice is so soothing, like a therapist. Oh shit! Yeah, okay, so let, I know where this is going. I no, see where it's going. I am I a heterosexual woman. New, no, I'm talking about. 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 Yeah. Okay. Oh no, no, I love 